When Ho Xiaoxia woke up, she felt like she was in a warm ocean. The feeling of security, which she had never experienced, gave her a feeling of relaxation. But gradually, the vast ocean disappeared, and after a strong push, it continued to fall, stretching and being squeezed out. Until then, there was a loud cry, He's out! The child came out! The overhead lamps were burning brightly. Huo Xiaoxiao was all sticky, as if she had fallen into rice soup. She felt very uncomfortable because her whole body was covered in mucus. She opened her mouth and wanted to say something, but then blurted out something childish. Wa wa ah ah, a crying baby? But where is the child himself? She subconsciously opened her eyes to see what was happening around, but saw only flickering blurry shadows. The thick smell of blood and disinfectants filled her nose, and Huo Xiaoxiao's mind was confused by the strong odors. Is this the maternity ward? The nurse held her in her arms while she gently washed her, then wrapped her in diapers and carried her to the bed. Huo Xiaoxiao felt a kind gaze fall on her. Someone gently touched the back of her clenched hand. The soft touch was as gentle as a feather. The man clearly didn't want to apply too much force, as if he was afraid of hurting her. Although she could not see clearly, the warmth and inner peace caused by the closeness when this person touched her fingers was exactly the same as what she felt in the vast ocean. She opened her palm, extended her hand, and squeezed her finger tightly, trying to see the owner of the hands. But a wave of fatigue washed over her. Her heavy eyelids gave way and she gradually fell asleep amid the incessant noise. At night, the hospital was completely quiet. Several lamps emitted light, and whispers and quiet footsteps were sometimes heard in the deserted corridor. But soon, everything became quiet. The heating was turned on in the children's room, so that the temperature remained constant and in a comfortable range. Huo Xiao Xiao woke up from her sleep and opened her eyes. Her vision was still blurred, and she could only see a sliver of the white surface above her head. Who am I? Where I am? What am I doing here? Child? In the hospital? Huo Xiao Xiao gradually came to her senses as she thought about her current situation. As a newborn baby, she didn't know how long she had been in the nursery. Only from the nurse's short words did she understand that she had been here for a week, then a month, two months, three months. In her memory, every time she briefly woke up, there was only a gentle young nurse. Then she remembered what happened the last time someone held her fingers tightly. This poor child's mother ran away as soon as she was born and said that her father would take her. But the father of this child still did not come. Our hospital has almost turned into a kindergarten. Huo Xiaoxiao struggled to raise her hand and wanted to stand up to see her current state. Despite her best efforts, it was obvious that her small body could not withstand such strenuous movement. So now she was just a three-month-old baby who couldn't talk or walk, whose father didn't love her mother and whose mother didn't love her. It looks like that. Otherwise, she would not have stayed in the hospital where no one needed her for so long. Huo Xiaoxiao's mood was complicated. It was very strange. But that wasn't the strangest thing yet. Hello, I am Xiao, your system from today. Your identity is the daughter of Huo Suicheng, the main villain you saw in your memories. Your job is to guide him? Otherwise, Huo Suicheng will die in an explosion in three years. Huo Xiaoxiao's head was buzzing, and she had no time to think about the memories that had been forcefully shoved into her head. She only made out the key information from Xiao's few words and phrases. Save the villain. The villain is her father. Her father will die in three years. Three years later, Huo Xiaoxiao waved her plump white hands. You want me to guide this scoundrel like this? Inability to take care of oneself, how would it save a person? Ka, sorry, I was wrong. I transferred you into an embryo, but fortunately there was no miscarriage. After a short silence, don't you want to? Don't you want to? This task is simple and easy for you. Huo Xiaoxiao wanted to say something, but hesitated. She didn't want to believe it, but she had to admit that it wasn't a dream. Although these words sounded doubtful, nothing was impossible in her current situation. It was simple. Just three months after being born, she already had to save this villain within three years. Three-year-old savior. Oh my god, what utter nonsense. The system really appreciated it. Huo Xiaoxiao would already be grateful if a three-year-old child could walk on his own. But saving a villain? Imagine a three-year-old child wearing diapers, sucking on a pacifier, and saving a person. Huo Xiaoxiao really didn't want to take on this easy task. Just yesterday, she received an acceptance notice to her ideal university, just a step away from realizing her dream. But in the blink of an eye, she went from a full-fledged boss to a newcomer, imagining the picture of a baby in a diaper and holding a baby bottle. Huo Xiaoxiao closed her eyes in despair. This was definitely an impossible task. More importantly, it was due to Huo Suichin's mistake one dark night. They said that the tiger, although cruel, would not devour its cubs. But there was no sentiment here at all. If Huo Suicheng knew that the woman he had a good night with after drinking was pregnant with his child, he would never have allowed the child to be born. 
Huo Xiao Xiao even doubted that she would be able to see her villain father before she turned three. System. In three years, the villain will die in an explosion, and you will die of starvation due to lack of care, because there will be no one to look after you. This was too much. System. I will help you strengthen your body, making it much stronger than an ordinary child. What do you think about that? Everything seems to be fine. Huo Xiao Xiao carefully went through the chaotic memories in her mind. Almost all of the evil consequences caused by the twisted character of the villain in the novel could be traced back to his past. After death, villains usually brought the reader to tears due to an unhappy childhood and desperate fanaticism. No Ho Sweetsheng was an exception. He had neither a tragic childhood nor a terrible past. He was simply ruthless, ambitious, and arrogant. If he liked something, as long as he wanted it, he got it by doing whatever it took, be it money, power, or a woman. That is why he insulted the hero and heroine of this novel. The young hero of this novel had to kill a treacherous villain. Yes, this was the norm in the endings of such novels. Did the system say it was an easy task? It was clearly an iron plate, and she had to rely on her own efforts to make this hard iron plate soft. It was as difficult as saving the country. If it was because of his dark childhood, then perhaps she could figure out a way to untie this knot. However, Huo Suicheng's character was only determined by his nature. How could he be saved? Rely on her face? It was too easy. Huo Xiaoxiao reached out and pinched her chubby face. She herself didn't know what she looked like. My mother is an outstanding person and my father is handsome. I don't think I'll look any worse. After a short pause, she turned and looked around. There was no one there, just a few babies in a crib. They were neither noisy nor sleeping. However, Huo Xiaoxiao, who was tightly wrapped in a diaper, felt stuffy and hot. She kicked the blanket with force with her feet. After kicking twice, she could no longer gather her strength because this small body was too weak. She took a breath and rested a little. In the end, she felt even hotter. With no other choice, she used both arms and legs. Kicking her legs and jerking her arms, she finally threw the blanket off her body. Huo Xiao Xiao believed that she must first learn to roll over in order to save the villain's father. The newborn baby was as fragile as a porcelain doll, needless to say, when turned over. Few of them could open their eyes. Who is she? But who is she? She was Huo Xiao Xiao, 18 years ahead of her peers at the start. She had to learn to crawl first, talk after a month, and start walking after 100 days. By the age of one, she should be able to understand the first five, zero, 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 year old Chinese characters. By the age of two, she should learn addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Finish kindergarten at three years old, go to middle school at eight, high school at 10, and Beijing Tsinghua University at 13. She will reach the pinnacle of her life. Huo Xiaoxiao clearly planned her future. The more she dreamed, the more energetic she felt pushing with all her might. With her right arm and leg, she reached for the edge of the crib, trying to rise. However, her right arm only dangled in the air and her leg trembled. She had short arms and legs, and she lacked strength. As a result, she was unable to roll over and lay sullenly on her back. Everything is so difficult at the very beginning, very difficult. Even though the soul was 18 years old, it still could not use this newborn body. Forget it, this is only the first day. I'll just adapt to this body, keep up with kids the same age, and be a quiet child for now. Huo Xiao Xiao thought with disgust. Creak! The door opened. Hasty, careful, light steps were heard approaching her crib. Most likely, a nurse came to pick her up. Huo Xiao Xiao closed her eyes and pretended to be asleep. The next second, someone picked her up. She didn't even see the face of the man who was holding her until she found herself tightly hugged. She listened to the energetic heartbeat in the man's chest, which was hurried and excited. Obviously, this man was not serious about caring for children. Child theft? Human trafficker. Just when Huo Xiao Xiao was wondering whether to shout, a deliberately muffled female voice asked with alarm, Ji Xu Yang, what are you doing? Feng Jing, please help me this time. Just pretend you didn't see anything. I have to take this child. Take the child from here? Are you crazy? Silence reigned in the nursery for a while. Huo Xiao Xiao listened and heard rapid and heavy breathing at the top of her head. I'm not crazy at all. My sister's child should never grow up next to Huo Sui Cheng, but... You also know who Huo Suicheng is. The child will not have a good end next to him. Ah, uh, this is the uncle of the original? Mm hmm. If she remembers correctly, the uncle was a minor character and couldn't survive even one episode? Is he a reliable person? Then measured steps were heard in the corner of the corridor outside the door. The sound of leather boots walking on the floor was clear and loud. Judging by the noise, there was more than one person there. Mr. Ho, the child is in the nursery. You can be sure that the child is healthy and can be discharged at any time. Ji Xu Yang and Fang Jing looked at each other. In the end, Fang Jing was defeated by Ji Xu Yang's expression. She pulled him in the other direction, toward the stairs. When the two figures had just disappeared into the nursery corridor, four or five people in strict black suits and 
leather boots appeared at the door. At this moment, Huo Sui Cheng was lazily standing by the window. His eyes were deep, calm, and reserved, and his thoughts never showed on his face. He looked indifferent, as if nothing in the world could affect his emotions. Even if he came here to pick up his daughter, his expression remained the same. There was not a trace of joy in him. The nurse entered the nursery and found that Huo Xiao Xiao's crib was empty. Huo Sui Cheng looked at the staff coldly and narrowed his eyes. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? These words passed through the suffocating pressure around the nurse, and she immediately broke out in a cold sweat. The child disappeared, and this was a violation of hospital rules. This was not something she could bear. At this moment, Ji Shuyang arrived at the hospital, put Huo Xiao Xiao in the passenger seat, looked in the rearview mirror, and asked Huo Xiao Xiao, while wrapping her in her diaper, behave, uncle will take you away from here. Put a three-month-old baby in the passenger seat, haven't fastened your seatbelt yet, don't you know the law? Huo Xiao Xiao was already starting to get nervous. Stopping at a red light, Ji Shuyang answered the call. Then he looked nervously in the rearview mirror, cursed quietly, pressed the accelerator all the way and rushed down the road. Fortunately, early in the morning, there were not many cars on the wide road, which was clear. He was moving too fast to slow down when turning right. A beautiful drift left several noticeable tire stripes on the asphalt of the road, accompanied by a sharp engine sound and tire smoke. Huo Xiao Xiao, who was still just a child, almost fell from her seat. Shivering in her blanket, she reached out her plump little hand and gripped the seatbelt tightly. This turn scared her half to death. In her case, wearing a seatbelt probably wasn't very helpful. While she was overcome with fear, Huo Xiao Xiao decided to never believe his words so easily. Ji Shuyang watched what was happening behind him while turning the steering wheel of the car. He angrily hit the steering wheel when he saw several cars chasing him. Their car almost lost control at an intersection. He wanted to leave the city, but the road ahead was being built and was blocked by obstacles. Ji Shuyang wanted to find another way out, but the car following them blocked their car on the road. There were pursuers behind, a dead end in front. Ji Shuyang made a hasty decision. He hugged Huo Xiao Xiao, got out of his car, and ran into the night. However, he was soon surrounded without any chance of escape. Huo Xiao Xiao felt that her tender heart, liver, spleen, lungs, and kidneys were about to burst out, and a strange feeling spread down from her spine. Uh, no. The three cars trapped Ji Shuyang in the center, and the headlights were turned on so that he could not open his eyes. Ji Shuyang raised his hand to cover his eyes. However, as he did so, the child in his hand was grabbed. All that was left in his hand was Huo Xiao Xiao's blanket. The man was kicked to the ground. Ji Shuyang was too weak in battle and was soon defeated. He quickly lost the battle, unable to counterattack. Maibak arrived late. The aura of arrogance and power quickly spread throughout the area. Huo Sui Cheng got out of the car and stood in front of Ji Shuyang in the headlights. The tall figure was shrouded in darkness, and his expression could not be seen. Someone was holding Huo Xiao Xiao in front of Huo Sui Cheng. Huo Xiao Xiao, who had been stripped of her swaddling blanket, was wearing only a white hospital jumpsuit. Her little face was flushed. Her calves were stretched out, her toes were curled. Her arms were clasped together. Her muscles were tense, and she looked tense. But in fact, using all her willpower, she fought against a nervous system that wanted to set her up. She couldn't help but cheer herself up. At 18 years old, in front of such a large crowd, with so many spectators, I absolutely cannot do such shameful things. Hold on, we must hold on. Looking at Huo Xiao Xiao, who had a wrinkled little face, Huo Sui Cheng felt a little unusual and took her with one hand. She was very courageous. She didn't even cry at such a scene. At the last moment, her small body defeated her 18-year-old soul. The strictly contained reaction was no longer controllable. Eventually, she came out. No, I cannot write. There are so many people in front of her. We must control ourselves. Control! A cool breeze blew from all directions, causing countless goosebumps. An electric shock quickly spread from the end of her spine. Huo Xiao Xiao's young heart began to beat wildly. It's over. I, I, I can't control it. Drip, drip, drip. President Huo. Huo Xiao Xiao's thoughts became clouded, her lost eyes looking at the iron-faced man standing in front of her. Her body involuntarily went limp. Although she was still alive, her eyes seemed dead. Whistle, whistle. The wind blew on her wet buttocks. Cap, cap. On this dark and quiet night, the sound of liquid dripping onto leather boots was extremely clearly audible. For a moment, everything around suddenly calmed down, leaving only the howling of the wind in the open wasteland. Currently, Huo Xiao Xiao was dying of shame and resentment. She never thought that at 18 years old, there would come a day when she would not be able to control herself in front of a large crowd. There are so many people watching her now. How will she console herself in the future? Not to mention the fact that she peed herself in Huo Sui Cheng's arms. Looking up, 
she saw that Huo Sui Cheng's face had turned blue. His teeth were clenched, his chin was tense, and his eyes were full of strongly suppressed rage. Obviously, his patience had reached its limit. Huo Xiao Xiao frowned. She wanted to cry without tears. Huo Sui Cheng was ruthless, aggressive, and stubborn. In his early days, he used dirty methods to gain a foothold in the business world. How big fish hunt small fish, and small fish eat shrimp. She didn't know how many companies he had captured so far. In his later period, his ambitions increased, and he did many bad things to maintain his position at the top of the industry. You could even say that he used illegal means to make money. Judging by the current situation, her fate was no different from when Zhao Yun went behind enemy lines to rescue Liu Bei's son, Adu, in the Battle of Changban. The little boy was thrown to the ground by his father. Maybe she will die here, but she was only three months old. How could she control such things? Why did this person get so angry? She didn't want it either. When Huo Xiao Xiao became angry with embarrassment, she took advantage of her childhood privileges and started crying loudly. Her cry was clear and loud, sharp and piercing, echoing in the silent night. Ji Shuyang, who was being beaten, heard Huo Xiao Xiao scream, gritted his teeth, and tried to get up from the ground. He then wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth. His eyes were full of anger, and he finally spoke fearlessly. Huo Sui Cheng, this is my sister's child. Since you don't love my sister, I will take care of her. Don't worry. Hi, I won't tell her who her father is, and I won't let her appear in front of you again in the future. He appeared seriously injured and his entire body was covered in bruises. However, the bandits were extremely professional, and there were no serious injuries, only skin wounds. Huo Sui Cheng was deaf to Ji Shuyang's words. His trousers were wet and his sleeves were smeared with mud. His restless mood had reached its peak. After handing Huo Xiao Xiao over to the person standing silently behind him, he took out a handkerchief from his breast pocket and dispassionately wiped the back of his hand. After that, he took off his jacket and wrapped it around Huo Xiao Xiao. Huo Xiao Xiao. <laughs> Wait, wow, wow, don't put this on me. My piss is still on her. Huo Xiao Xiao, tightly wrapped in a suit, almost went crazy. If the clothes are dirty, throw them away. Why does it have to be wrapped around me? You are a ruthless villain, not a kind father. Huo Xiao Xiao held her breath and everything was confused in her head. She almost fainted from the surge of emotions. For some reason, it seemed to her that it was a familiar smell. Was it fatherly love? Oh no, oh no, it was suffocation. Seeing that Huo Sui Cheng was about to put Huo Xiao Xiao in the car, Ji Shu Yang roared, Huo Sui Cheng, give me back the child. She's innocent. If you don't like it, give it to me. I'll take her away from here. Don't hurt her, Huo Sui Cheng. Sooner or later, you will receive your retribution. Huo Sui Cheng, who was about to get into the car, stood in front of the door, his eyes flashing coldly. Break his leg. Huo Xiao Xiao, it was too cruel. She finally understood why Ji Shu Yang was a minor character who could not survive a single chapter. The minor characters were like that. Even if the enemy greatly outnumbered them and the gap in strength was too great, they still did not know when to retreat. He was just so badly beaten. But no, he just had to point the knife at the big boss. Even if the big boss was going to let him go, he still had to open his mouth to provoke the other party. Although she was now forced to go through an exciting situation with him, no matter from her uncle's or father's point of view, this leg should not be broken. She had to find a way out. Oh no, oh no. Wah, wah. Suddenly, Huo Sui Cheng's voice was heard above her head. Are you crying and begging for your uncle? Huo Xiao Xiao's crushing scream stopped for a moment and then rose even higher, crying even more intensely. You're protecting the wrong person. Huo Sui Cheng reached out and pinched her little white childish cheeks. There were several rough and hard calluses on his wide and thick palm, which made Huo Xiao Xiao's cheeks hurt. Ah, ah, ah! Huo Xiao Xiao squeezed her head and continued to hide in her jacket. Huo Sui Ching gained strength and gently stroked Huo Xiao Xiao's cheek, controlling his voice and temper. Don't cry. Under such circumstances, how can a child understand its meaning? No matter what he said, Huo Xiao Xiao continued to sob at the top of her lungs. Smile and I will let him go. Is Lion really talking to her? Letting a three-month-old baby smile? Can a child even understand you? Wasn't it because he wanted to break Ji Shu Yang's leg? Luckily, she was reborn. Otherwise, Ji Shu Yang's leg would have been doomed. Huo Xiao Xiao suddenly stopped crying and sobbed several times. She tried to lift the corner of her mouth and smiled at Huo Sui Cheng. Her violet eyes seemed to fill with water, and her long eyelashes curled with tears. Huo Sui Cheng's eyes drooped slightly as he looked at Huo Xiao Xiao, barely holding back a smile. Is this even a smile? Break his leg. Huo Xiao Xiao, is this too absurd? I smiled. Good. Did I smile so dazzlingly that your eyes went blind? Huo Xiao Xiao only knew that her father was a ruthless villain, but she had never heard that he was also blind. This is simply absurd. She immediately gave him a kick, but her legs were too short and she just dangled her legs in the air without touching Huo Sui Cheng. 
Huo Sui Ching took her legs in one hand. They were plump and meaty, but still her eggs were quite strong. She hit his palm hard twice, but it was so strong that he barely felt anything. He didn't say anything. He simply wrapped her legs in his suit and got into the car. The door closed, isolating all the noise outside the car's window. No one spoke in the car, and Huo Xiao Xiao didn't cry anymore either. Not to mention that after this concert, she did not have the strength to continue crying. She opened her mouth, sobbed twice, wrinkled her red nose, and got out of the awkward situation. I don't know if my uncle's leg was broken. Be sure his leg isn't broken, he's just injured. This is good. It seems that the scoundrel father is not at all as cruel as she imagined. If you think about it carefully, this must be the initial stage, and has not yet reached the point where the heart becomes hard as iron. Well, at least he was released. Huo Sui Cheng's arms were bent as he tightly held the child wrapped in the suit. Obviously, he had no experience holding a child in his arms. He looked at his hands, frowned, and placed Huo Xiao Xiao on the seat next to him. When she can speak, she will have to ask this person to install a child seat in the car. The driver smoothly sat down in the driver's seat and respectfully asked, Mr. Ho, where are we going? It doesn't matter where you go. The main thing is how to place me. Huo Sui Cheng was silent for a moment. His one-night stand resulted in a baby, and he didn't even know it until today. However, it was his own flesh and blood. In addition, the Huo family was not short of money. They could feed the little girl. The old man in the family was already thinking about hugging his grandchildren. With this child, his dream will come true. Go back to Ho's mansion. Okay. Huo Xiao Xiao looked back. Huo Sui Cheng looked back. Two pairs of eyes met and sparks flew in the air. Huo Xiao Xiao closed her eyes for a second. Huo Sui Cheng's eyes also narrowed slightly. And after three seconds, he changed his mind. We return to the Royal Orchid Villa. Yes. Back to the Royal Orchid Villa. Yes, Etta Villa was located in the very center of the city in an excellent location. This was the famous central villa, Huo Sui Ching's private residence, and he never brought anyone there. Half an hour later, the car stopped at the gate of the Royal Orchid Villa. Huo Sui Cheng lifted Huo Xiao Xiao with one hand. The attendant opened the lobby door for him with a smile, pressed the elevator button, and waited until it closed. Only then did she see the child in Huo Sui Cheng's arms. This baby is so beautiful. The skin was light. The crystal violet pupils stood out brightly, and the small chubby face just begged to be pinched. Nuna was a little surprised. She was a staff member who worked alone for Mr. Huo. As soon as he returned to the Royal Orchid Villa, she immediately served him. One could even say that every week a certain close contact was established between them. Yet, she had never heard of a pregnant woman being near Mr. Huo. Moreover, she had never seen Mr. Huo bring anyone back. Or was this child not Mr. Huo's? The baby was wrapped in Mr. Huo's clothes. Who is this child for him to treat him so well? While she was wondering whose child it was, they had already arrived on the desired floor. Without time to think, she stretched out her hand to block the elevator door and allow Huo Sui Cheng to leave, then bowed and closed the door. When they got to the house, Huo Sui Cheng walked through the living room with Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms, stopped for a while in front of his master bedroom, turned around, walked to the second bedroom, and put Huo Xiao Xiao on the bed. Lying on the bed, Huo Xiaoxiao watched as Huo Sui Cheng put her down and turned to leave. She saw no desire to take care of her. In desperation, she extended her hand to him. Mr. Ho, Mr. Ho, Mr. Ho, Dad, don't go. Don't leave me here alone. Am I really too much trouble to leave me here? By the way, take away the suit wrapped around me. She straightened her legs and tried to throw off the suit that covered her. But Huo Sui Cheng really loved her. Fearing that his little daughter would get sick due to the wind, he wrapped her tightly and even tied her sleeves in a knot. Huo Xiao Xiao moved her legs, but could not take off her jacket. Finally, she collapsed on the bed, breathing heavily. Besides, it is unknown whether it was a psychological effect, but she always felt that the suit marinated her like salted fish. She looked like a salted fish, unable to move. Others who migrated experienced brilliant fame and wealth, but she was naked and helpless. Gu I can't even eat rice! Huo Xiao Xiao's hands touched her noisy stomach. From the hospital to the vacant lot, and then back here, Although only one hour had passed, she was dying of hunger. She had not felt such hunger for a long time. It seemed to her that her chest was pressed against her back, and her stomach was hungry and empty. Moreover, the thought that there was only Huo Sui Ching in this big house made Huo Xiao Xiao despair and close his eyes. A person who had never raised a child probably didn't know how to even prepare baby milk, let alone feed her every two hours. Huo Xiao Xiao exerted all her energy to raise her head. She extended her trembling hand and tried to turn over but like a salted fish, she fell back. Now it's not so important to save the villain. Sooner or later, she will die of hunger. From a full-fledged boss to a newbie, it was obviously a waste of resources. A strong soul was imprisoned in this weak little body and had to be left in the end. Never. She couldn't continue like this. 
In order not to die, she had to do something to survive. She had to find a way to save herself. Looking around the entire room, the floor to ceiling windows, the desk, the double bed and the closets, she saw that all the furniture was spotlessly clean and there were no signs of use. The door was closed and sounds could be clearly heard from outside. In order to avoid starving to death, Huo Xiaoxiao used her last strength to burst into tears. However, there was no visible movement outside the room. She became even more desperate. This old fart won't leave her here even for one night, right? Huo Xiaoxia collapsed on the bed and stared at the ceiling with a pale face. She no longer had the strength to cry. Everything in her eyes looked like food. Even her own hands seemed like buns to her. She wanted to take a bite so badly. All men are useless. Looking at her plump little hands, Huo Xiaoxiao drooled. She was dripping with saliva and put her thumb in her mouth. She could not bite off a piece and shed humble tears. Did this prosperous and harmonious society really want to starve her to death? Or did A Xiao push her ending forward? Just as Huo Xiao Xiao despaired, the door opened. She looked over the door in surprise and saw Huo Sui Ching walking with the bottle. Meeting Huo Xiao Xiao's gaze, Huo Sui Ching brought the bottle to her mouth without changing his expression. Drink, this is powdered milk. Just because she is a child, can he be so careless? Dad, I'm your daughter? Your blood flows in me. Blood is thicker than water. Do I really deserve only milk powder and plain boiled water? Huo Xiaoxiao looked at Huo Suicheng. Huo Suicheng looked at Huo Xiaoxiao. They looked at each other helplessly. Don't you like it? Huo Xiaoxiao looked over her head, disgusted with her father. Huo Suicheng stood by the bed and watched for a while. Obviously, she was just a child born a few months ago, but he felt that he could see the complaint and refusal in Huo Xiaoxiao's eyes. Having no experience in caring for children, Huo Suicheng was not a patient person in trivial matters. He immediately furrowed his eyebrows and immediately handed the bottle to Huo Xiaoxiao. The moment Huo Xiaoxiao's gentle lip touched the bottle nipple, she almost subconsciously bit it, unable to wait any longer. How could this happen? Huo Xiaoxiao felt confused. Why was this mouth out of her control? Huo Xiaoxiao didn't want to drink milk. Still, she couldn't resist the temptation to press the pacifier against the baby's body. Soup, soup. Once the child's strong desire was calmed, all the panic and anger also subsided. Her heart trembled with a pleasant sensation. Since her body was so honest, Huo Xiaoxiao stopped struggling and lowered her legs, holding the bottle with both hands. Her plump baby cheeks seemed to tremble and shake, and she closed her eyes with an ecstatic expression. She had seen other people's children focus on their pacifiers before. They cried when they were taken back and could not sleep without them. When it was her own turn, she didn't expect it to be so convenient. Huo Xiaoxiao was ashamed, but she was happy. The doorbell rang outside. Huo Sui Cheng took Huo Xiaoxiao's bottle that she was sucking so happily, causing her to look at the milk bottle with a puzzled expression. Huo Xiaoxiao finally understood why these children cried when someone took away the bottle. Previously, she was so comfortable that her legs were swinging in the air, but the next second, she lost her source of happiness. Really annoying. Why do you want to take my bottle if you're leaving? In the living room, Two or three employees laid out the baby supplies they had purchased on the floor. Baby food, diapers, baby clothes, baby stroller, and all types of baby toys and toiletries. Mr. Ho, I'm really sorry. Since it was already too late, there was little time to buy these things. Please check if anything is missing and we will send someone to purchase it. Huo Sui Cheng didn't know what might be missing here, but everything the children needed was here, and that should be enough. Everything is fine. Okay, do you need us to recommend a nanny for you? No need. The employees smiled all the way and left having received a satisfactory answer. Huo Sui Ching looked at the various objects on the floor, opened a can of baby milk powder, and scooped two spoons into the bottle. Remembering how impatiently the baby had just taken the bottle, he added another spoon. He didn't know how much milk powder was appropriate for her age or how much water she needed, but he noticed a few lines on the milk bottle. Based on his life experience, he added water to the bottle by eye and stirred it. After stirring thoroughly, he took the bottle in one hand and checked the temperature. It was warm, so everything must be right. Holding the bottle, he returned to the room. Huo Xiaoxiao sobbed quietly. Her eyes were full of tears, and her mouth was wrinkled with injustice, as if someone was mocking her. Huo Sui Cheng's connection with the children was practically zero. He would neither comfort her nor hold her in his arms. With furrowed brows and a serious expression on his face, he said in a sharp tone, Don't cry! Huo Xiaoxiao's mouth was lowered like a duck's, as if she was about to open it to turn the roof over. Then the bottle was handed to her. Huo Xiaoxiao couldn't help but happily suck on it again. Huo Xiao Xiao's eyes widened. This was not tasteless boiled water, but baby food mixed with warm water. Dad is such a bastard, but he personally made the milk for me. Is this really the taste of a father's love? So touching. Huo Xiao Xiao held the bottle and sipped it cheerfully. 
She didn't pay any attention to her father, who was still in the room. His eyes were focused on her. After drinking a small bottle of milk, Huo Xiaoxiao belched, her mouth full of milk bubbles. However, she still could not remove the pacifier from her mouth and continued to suck on it. Seeing that the baby bottle was finished, Huo Suicheng did not spoil her and mercilessly took the bottle away. As soon as the baby finished drinking the milk, her hunger disappeared without a trace. Huo Xiaoxiao was in a good mood and didn't care about taking revenge on Huo Suicheng for taking the bottle. She felt that she had unlimited energy at the moment and could finally get rid of the suit that was wrapped around her legs. Seeing the stain on the suit, Huo Suicheng untied it and pulled her out. She was glad that she was finally freed from the smelly suit. Dad saved me from extreme suffering. What a sweet dad. I will always love my father. But then she frowned when Huo Suicheng carried her to the bathroom and put her in the sink. There was more than enough space for her in the round sink. Huo Xiaoxia's heart trembled. Bathroom, sink. Is this for giving her a bath? Huo Xiaoxiao's mood at this moment was extremely difficult. Although she was only three months old, but is this good? She felt a little shy. After a while, Huo Suicheng brought baby shower gel, baby toiletries, and a little duck. The shell was soon filled with warm water, and a yellow duck and a white tender baby were placed in it. Huo Xiaoxiao was the only person who was personally served by Huo Suicheng. Since childhood, he was always looked after by other people. He never cared about anyone. After getting wet in the sink, Huo Xiaoxia blushed, expecting Huo Suicheng to rub and wash her. A minute later, Huo Suicheng, who was standing the sink and watching it soak, picked it up. What? Huo Xiaoxiao watched as Huo Suicheng brought towels and dried her with them. And it's all? Huo Xiaoxiao's head was full of question marks. If you soak me in water, will that be enough? At the very least, how about using shower gel? Won't you wash me? Pull me out after you rinse at least twice. They don't even wash vegetables like that. This is an unprecedented, most superficial bath she has ever seen. Huo Xiaoxiao came to her senses and laid down in the big bed after being rinsed with water. Tisk, tisk. In any case, it is better to get wet than not to touch the water at all. To the side, Huo Sui Cheng took out one child's outfit after another from the pile of shopping bags and finally chose a white one-piece romper to put on her. The jumpsuit looked good, but was actually quite difficult to put on. Simply watching Huo Sui Cheng fiddling with the overalls for 10 minutes was enough to come to this conclusion. Huo Xiao Xiao has already become a real favorite. Why? Dad took her like a doll and served her in the best possible way. She was still alive and well, and completely satisfied with life. Huo Sui Cheng, who had been working hard, seemed to finally understand the trick. He spread the jumpsuit on the bed, put Huo Xiao Xiao's small limbs into the four holes, fastened the buttons, and found that he had put it on upside down. Her legs were hidden in her sleeves, and her arms were hidden in her trouser legs. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at him with a stupid expression. This trivial matter greatly undermined Huo Sui Cheng's patience. All of today's time was spent doing boring children's things. These things tested his patience, but Huo Xiao Xiao just looked at him innocently. Huo Sui Cheng restrained his anger, unbuttoned one button after another, took off his overalls, and put them on again. Fortunately, Huo Xiao Xiao behaved very well. She said nothing and made no sound, cooperating throughout the entire process. After all this, Huo Sui Cheng breathed a sigh of relief. It was already late in the evening. After a busy day at work, her scoundrel father went to take a bath before going to bed. However, before going to bed, Huo Sui Cheng hesitated a little about his bed today. There was no cot in the house, and it was unsafe for such a small child to sleep alone. What if she rolls onto the floor or covers her head with a blanket so that her nose and mouth are covered? He couldn't afford to not care about her, but he was not in the habit of sleeping in the same bed with someone. After thinking for a moment, Huo Sui Cheng carried Huo Xiao Xiao to his bedroom and put her on his bed. She smelled of milk and something unique to children. Huo Xiao Xiao had no opinion about where to sleep. After a long day spent eating and drinking pine needles, she became drowsy. Her eyelids gradually drooped and she fell asleep within three, five seconds. The encyclopedia on Baidu talked about how often a newborn is fed milk. Newborns have a small stomach capacity. Gastric emptying also occurs relatively quickly. As a result, they will soon feel hungry, which will lead to a significant increase in milk consumption. When a newborn is hungry, he needs to be fed on time. This is the principle of on-demand feeding, which can be done approximately seven times a day for four, six months after the birth of the baby. In other words, she needed to be fed every two to three hours. At two o'clock in the morning, Huo Xiaoxia woke up hungry. Boor, boor. Her stomach was empty, and at the same time, the diaper also became useless. Without an alarm clock, she didn't know what time it was. Huo Xiaoxia looked at Huo Sui Cheng, who was lying with his eyes closed, wondering whether to wake him up or not. After much thought for the sake of her own life, Huo Xiaoxia decided to take a softer path. She pulled her hand out of the diaper and slapped it on the surface of the bed, 
trying to slowly wake up Wo Sui Chung. However, she seemed to have overestimated her several inch long arm. Her hand patted the surface of the bed as if it were a speck of dust, without disturbing the air. Bu Ur, this is not good. I am very hungry. Assessing the distance between herself and Huo Sui Chung, Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed the blanket on the left with her right hand and turned sharply to the left, biting her lips and exerting all her efforts. With a noise, the whole man turned over and seemed to be lying on the bed. By hook or by crook, lying on the bed, Huo Xiao Xiao was shocked. I am definitely the most brilliant child in the children's world. I learned to laugh and roll over a few months after birth. Maybe the first words and steps are just around the corner. Huo Xiao Xiao pushed herself up with her arms. She excitedly crawled a few steps forward and found herself next to Huo Sui Cheng. However, Huo Sui Cheng slept soundly. Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't wake him up at all. Bu Er, Bu Er. Her stomach began to cry again. Huo Xiao Xiao's small hand tapped Huo Sui Cheng's shoulder twice, but he did not move. She pushed Huo Sui Cheng's chin, but he still did not wake up. She pinched Huo Sui Cheng's ear, but there was no response. Huo Xiao Xiao swallowed two mouthfuls of saliva and felt increasingly hungry. She redoubled her efforts to wake up Huo Sui Sung. Ten minutes later, there was still no answer. How can you sleep so well? Why don't you wake up? Wake up. Get up and feed me. Huo Xiao Xiao was so hungry that she accidentally hit him in the face. Bam! A sharp sound was heard in the room. Huo Sui Chung's eyebrows finally knitted together. After being hit, Huo Xiao Xia felt guilty as she gently blew on her swollen palm. She saw that Huo Sui Ching seemed to have woken up, and almost subconsciously, she immediately closed her eyes and spread her arms as if she had not done anything for a while. Huo Sui Cheng woke up quietly, watching Huo Xiao Xiao sleeping next to him. His mood was very complicated. I'm not sleeping, I'm not sleeping. Huo Xiao Xiao's mood was complicated. You're such a slob. Are you awake and not taking care of your child? I'm still just a three-month-old baby. Are you really not afraid of any accidents? My parents really have no sense of responsibility. Bu or Huo Xiao Xiao's eyes opened slightly and secretly watched what was happening but they accidentally met in the dark with Wo Sui Cheng's open eyes. Damn it. She was caught red-handed. The enemy was too cunning to deceive her by pretending to be asleep. After being exposed, there was no longer any point in pretending. She raised her head and cried first. In any case, she was a child and her blows did not hurt that much. Besides, she was hungry, so she screamed and hit him by mistake. Do you really want revenge? Wo Xiao Xiao screamed loudly in desperation. They put a pacifier in her mouth, and suddenly her crying stopped. Huo Xiao Xiao sipped her pacifier and hiccuped with tears as she looked at Huo Sui Cheng. What a treacherous man. He even covered her mouth with the pacifier. After Huo Sui Cheng had dealt with her, he looked at his watch. It was three o'clock in the morning. Rubbing his tired eyes, he probably knew that this little girl would only cry when she was hungry and couldn't help herself. So now she was most likely starving. She had to get out of bed, fill a bottle with baby food and put it in her mouth. Thanks to Huo Xiao Xiao's efforts, the milk in the bottle disappeared in the blink of an eye. Are you full yet? Huo Xiao Xiao sucked on her pacifier and didn't say anything. Huo Sui Cheng's face was hidden by the shadow of dim light as he said, Sometimes I really doubt whether you are a child or not, but it's okay, it doesn't annoy me. Huo Xiao Xiao didn't pay attention to him. Until she says this, no one will know that she has an 18th soul in a child's body. In any case, no one will be able to find any evidence. However, if you think about it, the villainous father was not so bad. Since he saw her for the first time, he has not done anything bad to her. He remained attentive to her as much as he could. Perhaps because a tiger, although cruel, would not devour its cubs? After eating and drinking enough, Huo Xiaoxia yawned. Fatigue overtook her and she fell asleep. On the other hand, Huo Suisung checked her breathing, turned off the two lamps at the top of the bed, and closed his eyes to fall asleep. Huo Xiaoxia slept until the morning, when she was awakened by a loud noise. She opened her eyes and saw only white spots. A pair of hands reached out and picked her up, and then some woman about 40 teased her with a smile. Awoke? You are hungry. Then she raised her voice and shouted, Xiao Shu, give me hot milk. A cheerful young voice rang out, and soon a bottle was stuffed into Huo Xiao Xiao's small mouth. Currently, Huo Xiao Xiao did not have time to think about other things, and was engrossed in drinking milk. There was really nothing to think about. She knew that Huo Sui Cheng asked the two people in front of her to take care of her. After yesterday's worry, she didn't expect him to have the patience to continue taking care of her. Aunt Zhao, look, this child is so cute. Yes, this is also my first time taking care of such an adorable child. When she wakes up, she doesn't cry or make a sound. Aunt Zhao, do you think this child is really President Huo's child? Aunt Zhao was stunned and glanced at her. The young girl looked good, but curiosity filled her eyes. She always seemed to want to know something unknown. It was not a very good habit.
Xiao Xu, President Huo invited us to take care of the child. How can I find out about President Huo's personal affairs? Xiao Xu was somewhat embarrassed, but quickly hit it with a smile. I will follow your instructions. An Chao, you are absolutely right. I won't ask anymore. I will follow your instructions. An Chao, you are absolutely right. I won't ask anymore. Located in the French concession of the last century, Ho's mansion was built by the British consul in an authentic French architectural style. There was a garden with fountains in front and behind the house, four stories high and covering an area of more than 500 square meters. It still retains the style of the last century. The gate of the mansion opened. The manager hurried out of it and whispered to the young man left behind, Chiao Wu, you will first buy all the things that the old master asked for, and then you will personally go to the Royal Orchid Villa and take little young miss back. Having said this, he handed the list to the man. Don't worry, Manager Chen. I'll take care of it. Go quickly. Seeing Zhao Wu leaving, Manager Chen breathed a sigh of relief and looked at the door with concern. An angry voice was barely audible. Oh, you bastard! This is my granddaughter! Do I need your permission to visit my granddaughter? What the hell are you talking about? Huo Sui Ching, I'm telling you. If you don't let me pick up the child today, then don't. You dare come back later. Hearing these words, Manager Chen sighed. The young master returned early in the morning and solemnly invited the old master to talk in the living room. When he said that he had a daughter out of wedlock, the old master's excellent purple clay teapot was broken. This was initially a joyful event, and if the young master had not used blackmail to lure out the company's shares, the old master would not have been so angry. You are already so old and in poor health. With your granddaughter accompanying you, it is also time for you to retire and take care of yourself at home. It is useless to hold these shares in your hands. It is better to give them to me. Old Master Huo refused to give in because he knew about his ambitions. For five years, even though Huo Suicheng inherited the position of Old Master Huo, the old man owned most of the shares of the Huo Group. He could also interfere in one or two major group decisions. Huo Suicheng could no longer hold back. In addition, Huo Suicheng also knew that the old master always wanted to have grandchildren. Now that he had a granddaughter, Huo Suicheng immediately used her for negotiations. So, have you decided to sell your child today? Huo Suicheng was silent. If I don't agree to transfer the share, will you not allow me to see the child for the rest of my life? You must be joking. How can I not let you look after my child? I just think your time's up and young people have to take over. Your ideas are still not suitable for the future development of the company. Why do you insist on keeping these small shares? The two remained at an impasse for more than half an hour. Old Master Huo looked at him with burning eyes. Sui Cheng, tell me honestly, how long have you been thinking about the shares in my hands? Ten years. Ten years? Have you thought about this since you first joined the company? You are already old. In fact, Old Master Huo was not that old. He was already over 60 years old and in good health. However, he and Huo Sui Cheng had different ideas about the company's development, and they often clashed. He believed that Huo Sui Cheng was too aggressive, and his risky endeavors could be the reason for their downfall. However, Huo Sui Cheng believed that his father's ideas were old-fashioned and too conservative, which was not conducive to the further development of the company. Seeing that the company's senior employees were retiring one after another, the management replaced a whole batch of people. Old Master Huo clearly understood that sooner or later he would retire. He simply could not control Huo Suicheng and his ambitions. Great, I promise you. Great, I promise you. Huo Suicheng took out his cell phone, made a call, and then stood up. I will wait for you tomorrow in the company. I have work, so I'll leave first. Wait, what's the baby's name? Huo Suicheng was stunned before casually saying the name, Hu Xiao Xiao, childlike and cute. Her father must like her. Royal Orchid Villa. After drinking milk after changing her diaper, Huo Xiao Xiao, tired from playing with the nanny, slept for a while and woke up to find that she was in a different place. She behaved so well. Is this my granddaughter? Huo Xiao Xiao blinked when she saw the kind old man. She smiled at me as soon as she woke up. Little young miss is your granddaughter, so of course she wants to smile at you. You see what a lovely little miss she is? Her small nose and eyes are exactly the same as those of the young master. This boy was very noisy when he was a child. How can he be as cute as my granddaughter? Old Master Huo calmed the child and all his love shone in his eyes. Look at this girl, how lovely she is. She doesn't cry or make noise. By the way, have you already washed the baby's milk bottle? Huo Xiao Xiao was stunned. Grandfather, when did the environment change? At this moment, a Xiao's excited voice rang out. Tomorrow, Huo Sui Cheng will be able to completely control the company. Without old Master Huo's suppression, he will show his fangs very soon. I can't help it, Huo Xiao Xiao said, waving her hands. Don't worry, I have a way, but I'll have to bother you. Twilight, at the banquet, Huo Sui Cheng 
stood calmly in the crowd with a glass in his hand, listening to the compliments of those around him. The eyes of beautiful women were fixed on him, and various aromas of perfume were in the room. He usually didn't like this kind of environment, but today he was in a good mood and could still bear it. President Huo? The man approached Huo Suichung and clinked his glasses and added, I heard that your company won the Nan City Project. Congratulations. Thank you. My company also has a project that I think will be very interesting to President Huo. We will discuss this when we have a chance to talk, but I hope President Huo can keep the project a secret. Huo Suicheng took the business card and took a sip of wine. Huo Suicheng never regretted what he did. His father's ideals were not suitable for this era. Everything he did was for the sake of the company. After swallowing the wet wine, he felt that his body temperature had risen and his mood had become inexplicable and gusty. He put down the wine and went out into the air to put his thoughts in order. Beyond the terrace, there was a spacious garden in which beautiful flowers grew. The breeze carried a sweet scent to his nose. Today was rare, beautiful weather. Overhead, there was a sky full of stars and the Milky Way sparkling brightly. It was a good place to be alone. At this moment, footsteps were heard nearby, and Huo Suicheng looked inside. In the garden, a girl in a red dress with open shoulders walked barefoot along a path of wide and flat stones that still retained the warmth of the sun. She looked like a person who was not afraid of worldly affairs. She was lively and witty, ran among the flowers, and from time to time bowed her head to smell the blossoming flowers. Even in the dim light, the red dress caught attention against the gray background. The green grass and bright flowers were darkened by her presence. Huo Suicheng's eyes narrowed slightly. He only felt that the red dress was stunning. His eyes continuously followed the movement of the red spot in the night. He stood there, calmly watching without disturbing her. The phone rang and broke the silence. It was his father calling. Huo Suicheng answered the call. The old man's voice on the phone sounded serious and anxious. Sui Cheng, where are you now? Xiao Xiao has a fever. Come back soon. Fever? Huo Suicheng's thoughts were instantly occupied with a plump child the size of a palm and her sweet-smelling milk. He wanted to say that if she was sick, then he should send her to the hospital. But the words got stuck on the tip of his tongue, and he swallowed them for no reason. Suddenly, he remembered the scene of a crying child. I don't want to stay here anymore, he whispered looked at the girl in the garden for the last time and left. The sound of a door opening was heard in the garden. Hearing the sound, the girl turned around. The place where Huo Suicheng originally stood was empty. She suddenly stood up and looked around the garden, but there was no one there except her. Ho Xiao Xiao's illness was sudden and unexpected, and no one foresaw it. At first, it was just a slight fever, and her nurse and maid thought it was simply because the blanket was too warm. However, the temperature gradually rose rather than fell, reaching a point where it was already burning. The baby was quickly sent to the hospital. When staff checked her temperature, it was 39 degrees, and it skyrocketed within hours. The hospital immediately reported that she was in a critical stage. Old Master Huo almost had a heart attack from this announcement. Noon still pretended to be calm and called Huo Sui Ching. He did not mention critical illness, only a slight fever. Sir, don't worry. All the doctors here are the best in their field. Little Miss will be fine. Old Man Huo slowly closed his eyes. The girl developed a high fever as soon as she returned home. The doctors treated her for so long. He remembered that five years ago, the fortune teller said that the Huo family's bloodline would end with Huo Suicheng. Is it really, really necessary to take the life of his only granddaughter? Was the fortune teller right? Am I really not destined to have grandchildren? Do you still believe in this fortune telling nonsense? Didn't you hold little miss today? You can be sure that everything will be fine. The words of the old servant did not play a big role. Although Master Huo was old, he had survived the storms of the wave and his heart was as bright as a mirror. He could tell Huo Xiao Xiao the current situation, but why did the little child who was laughing in his arms five hours ago suddenly end up in intensive care? A child who was so healthy. Was this really God's will? The group of doctors and family members were distraught, as was Huo Xiao Xiao in the intensive care unit. I've seen unreliable people, but I've never seen anything more irresponsible. A three-month-old baby with a temperature of more than 40 degrees? Is my body temperature rising instead of falling? She knew that Aishiao's existence was unscientific, but whatever she did, it must comply with the laws of this world, right? An adult would not be able to withstand such burning, let alone a child. Huo Xiao Xiao finally determined that Aishiao must have advanced towards her ending. She was on the verge of death. In her every thought, she heard die for me. What fate changes in the life of a villain? It was just a game with her. However, in the eyes of outsiders, although Huo Xiao Xiao looked as if she would explode in the next second, she herself felt healthy and did not experience any physical discomfort. She was just a little hungry, but no one fed her. One doctor after another sighed in front of Huo Xiao Xiao. 
It would be difficult to understand the mystery of which body was still alive at that temperature. Manager Chen, I have never seen such a strong child in all the years of treatment, he said quietly. It's 42 degrees now. For four hours, we used every possible cooling method, but it's no use. The temperature is still rising, but the thing is the baby is still awake. Manager Chen sighed. Don't mention 42 degrees. As long as the child is alive, we cannot give up. The clock hanging on the wall of the hospital was ticking, affecting the hearts of many people inside and outside the ward. The black Maybach stopped in front of the hospital. Huo Sui Chung got out of the car and stepped forward. Xiao Wu, who was waiting at the hospital gate, saw Huo Sui Chung and rushed after him. Master Huo, he said anxiously, you have finally arrived. How are things going? Little miss is in serious condition, and the doctor said that she is in a critical stage. Suddenly, the footsteps stopped. Huo Sui Ching turned around sharply, his gaze as sharp as a knife. What did you say? But that was all he asked for. Turning around, he quickly walked forward. Nurses walked in and out of the intensive care room. Huo Sui Ching walked up to his father, his eyebrows tightly knitted. How are things? How are things? Old Master Huo shook his head heavily and sighed. Through the glass of the intensive care unit, Huo Sui Cheng looked inside. Doctors and nurses crowded around the hospital bed. The ECG monitor was working with all its might, and an oppressive atmosphere hung inside and outside the entire department. Huo Sui Cheng stood outside, clenching his fist tightly. He said, children suffer from many disasters and diseases. It all depends on her whether she will survive or not. Old Master Huo closed his eyes. The clock on the wall made another half a circle, and the doctors in the ward calmed down after the turmoil. Huo Sui Chung saw the ECG graph smoothly stretch into a line. In the noisy crowd, it seemed to him that he saw a child the size of his palm, who lay calmly, not crying and not making a sound, so small and fragile that the fever could have killed her. The doctor pushed the door of the intensive care unit and said regretfully, Mr. Ho, I am sorry. We did everything we could. Huo Sui Cheng was silent. He didn't feel anything when he heard it. He wasn't sad either. Only when he heard the word sorry did his heart stop for a moment. Just one second. It stopped for one very brief second, but it still took over his emotions. I'll go and talk to her. The doctor retreated silently. Huo Sui Cheng entered the intensive care unit. The ticking sound of the ECG monitor was annoying and hard on my ears. All the nurses left. The baby lay calmly in the hospital bed, looking exactly the same as when she fell asleep next to him the night before. He picked up Huo Xiao Xiao. Her body was hot. The temperature did not drop even after her heart stopped. She was still so small, without any weight in his hands. She had not yet matured, had not looked at this world, had not looked at her loved ones, had not looked at herself. Huo Xiaoxiao opened her eyes and looked at Huo Suicheng. Then Huo Suicheng raised his voice and shouted, Doctor! Then everything got out of control. A child whose heartbeat had stopped suddenly came to his senses after being hugged by his own father. Not only that, but the body temperature gradually dropped until it was within the normal range of the human body. Her physical condition was good, and every organ was healthy. Huo Xiaoxiao even fell asleep after drinking a bottle of milk. The results of the examination showed that nothing happened. It was unscientific. The doctor who took part in the rescue was suspicious of her life. Old Master Huo, who had been waiting in suspense all night, finally breathed a sigh of relief. Huo Suicheng, having witnessed the revival of his little girl, was in a very difficult mood. Old Master Huo, in fact, there are many things in this world that cannot be explained by science. There are still many diseases that have not yet been fully studied by medicine. Little Miss Huo's illness is strange, but fortunately she is now healthy. And this is more important than anything in the world. Under the repeated questions of the old Master Huo, the doctor almost said, the most important thing in life is to breathe. Hu Sui Cheng did not say a word, neither asking nor saying anything. The expression on his face seemed indifferent because it always seemed to him that he was being played with. But this time, it didn't seem like an illusion. The group hurried to the hospital and left again in a hurry. Returning to the Huo mansion, old Master Huo finally sat down and took a breath. Master, it's already late. Go back to your room and rest. Little Miss is under our care. Even though he was old, he did not feel tired after traveling for most of the day. Everything is fine. I am not tired. I'll go back to my room and rest later. Remembering today, as day, he smiled again. The fortune teller said that my descendant from the Ho clan is not destined to have a future. That's crazy. My granddaughter will be able to grow up healthy after the misfortune she experienced today. I already told you not to believe these fortune tellers, but you don't listen and always take it to heart. Are you finally sure? Don't worry. Old Master Huo smiled and frowned, but today was really quite strange. This child's illness came and went in the blink of an eye. Manager Chen looked at Huo Sui Cheng with a smile. Is that if I remember correctly, Little Miss woke up after Young Master hugged her? Maybe because she felt his care. 
or maybe because of the affection between father and daughter. Old Master Huo thought for a moment and nodded, deciding that this was true. You are right, Huo Suicheng. In the future, you should come home from work every day. Spend more time with Xiao Xiao. Huo Suicheng raised his eyes. I forgot to tell you that in two days I will be leaving on a business trip. Business trip? Where is this going? Business trip? Where? There is a big cooperation project abroad. I have to keep an eye on this myself. Abroad? How long will it take? If quickly, then a month or two. If not, it may take five or six months. Old Master Huo frowned. I don't care how long you stay away. You must return to Zhao Xiao's 100-day banquet. Hu Suicheng did not immediately agree with his father. After all, he never made unnecessary promises. I will try my best. Then he got up and went upstairs to rest. Passing by Huo Xiao Xiao's room, he stopped and looked into the slightly open door. Two orange nightlights were burning next to her crib, and two cute bear cubs stood by the bed. The baby in the cradle was fast asleep. Huo Xiao Xia woke up hungry in the middle of the night. Aunt Zhao, her nanny, fed her milk. Huo Xiao Xiao, full and full, finally found the strength to discuss the fever without Xiao. I think you tried to kill me, and I already have proof. A normal person has a temperature of 42 degrees. Did you want to burn me to death? She really burned alive. I don't thought you'd dare say that this was a test to see if I was mentally and physically ready for this. Don't be angry. I'm helping you. The most amazing thing is death. You died and were resurrected in Huo Sui Cheng's arms. He will always remember this. Dead and alive, how big must the heart be to forget about this? Fortunately, you are no longer that useless daughter. Be a little lenient. We won this round. Although Huo Xiaoxiani wanted to admit it, she had to say that it was true. When she looked at Huo Suicheng, his eyes really changed. The news that Huo Suicheng was going abroad came from Nanny Huo Xiaoxiao. When she learned that he was leaving for a few months, she became bitter. The three-year sentence was already short, and there was nothing good in shortening it by a few more months. Thanks to eating and sleeping every day, Huo Xiaoxiao gradually turned into a lazy slacker. Sometimes she was taken out to bask in the sun, and she became even lazier. However, aside from not doing anything special, she did not forget to learn to crawl and roll over, successfully rolling over the next month. But the father did not return. Three months later, she returned to the first villages, surrounded by the entire Ho family. But the father still did not return. At eight months after learning to walk, old Master Huo held a three-day banquet. Guests gathered to watch the magnificent feat of the Huo family's little miss. But her father still had not returned. After learning to walk, Huo Xiaoxiao stood at the door every day and looked outside. For a long time, her eyes were empty, and her facial expression did not correspond to her age. Why hasn't Dad come back yet? Why didn't he even call? I feel like an abandoned wife, motionlessly waiting for her husband. Be more confident. Sister Shu, who was taking care of her, squatted in front of her with a smile. Little miss, do you want to go sunbathe? Do you want me to take you somewhere? Huo Xiaoxia glanced at the young and beautiful sister Xiao Xu standing in front of her. Xiao Xu was Huo Suicheng's maid, who was invited to look after her along with An Zhao. She was younger than An Zhao and had higher education and knowledge, but why did they choose her? Because Huo Suicheng believed that children should learn from a very early age, and the natural language learning environment was crucial. Therefore, Xiao Xu always spoke English, and taught her this by holding her every day and pointing to the golden retriever at home, dog. On the first day that Sister Xiao Xu came to take care of her, Xiao Xiao already knew the thoughts of this Xiao Xu, who always claimed to be her elder sister in front. In reality, she was only after the Huo family and Huo Sui Cheng. Her desire to sleep with Huo Sui Cheng was obvious. Pretends to be an older sister, but acts like a stepmother. She wanted to be close to her, but was still thinking about becoming a mistress of the house. Will Xiao Xia think about Sui Cheng? Relax. When you turn one, Sui Cheng will definitely return. Huo Xiao Xiao felt goosebumps all over her body and opened her mouth to vomit. Sister Xiao Xu was a little worried. Xiao Xiao, did you eat something missing? Huo Xiao Xiao, no, it's because of you. Xiao Xiao, fuck your grandfather. Hearing her grandfather's words, Huo Xiao Xiao smiled joyfully and ran to old master Huo on her chubby legs. The old man squatted down with love and hugged her. In a couple of days, you will be one year old. Your father will also come back for Xiao Xiao's birthday. Are you happy? He ate peas slash tea. Roulette.ru slash book slash 38921. Even more chapters to read. In a couple of days, you will be one year old. Your father will also come back for Xiao Xiao's birthday. Are you happy? Huo Xiao Xiao was shocked. Her eyes lit up and she nodded with a smile. The day Huo Suicheng returned to China was not a good day. A sudden storm in the air almost threw the plane back. But when it finally rose, the clouds cleared and the sun shone brightly. Xiao Wu came to the airport to pick up Huo Suicheng. Seeing that the first year banquet had started and he still had not brought Huo Suicheng, he became worried like an ant in a frying pan. 
He pressed the accelerator and finally arrived on time. Brother Ching, don't be so careless. If the old man doesn't see you, he will be furious. Huo Suichen was resting in the back seat. Why such a rush? Today is little Miss's birthday, why not hurry up? Even if I tell you, you may not believe it. This year, when you were abroad, Xiao Xiao laughed as soon as she saw your photos. Ever since she learned to walk, she stood at the door every day. You are the father of this sweet girl. How can you miss such an important event? Huo Suiqing raised his eyes. The year he went abroad, his father often mentioned Huo Xiao Xiao on the phone. Shortly before returning, his father told him that he had already missed a month since the birth of his daughter and a hundred day banquet. If Sui Cheng doesn't show up for his first birthday, then there is no need to come back in the future. During the year spent abroad among his hard work, he gradually forgot about Huo Xiao Xiao. He only remembered that day in the hospital when Huo Xiao Xiao was in his arms and her body was hot like boiling water. A whole year has passed already. I don't know how the child grew up. I don't think I remember her. An hour later, the car was parked at the entrance to Huo's mansion. Even standing there, you could hear the laughter coming from within. He pushed the car door and went inside. The three floors of the Huo mansion's lobby were filled with people. Even when he returned, no one noticed. If you looked through the crowd, you could see a large table covered with soft flannel. In the center stood a little girl in a white dress and a crown. In front of the girl lay a book, a writing brush, an inkstone, a bank card, a blue diamond necklace, a Lamborghini car key, a door key, and some other modest little things. Old Master Hui persuaded her. Xiao Xiao, look at these things in front of you. You can choose what you like. It will be yours. Huo Xiao Xia's base was surrounded by spectators, and she did not have any pressure on her heart. She took a look at what was prepared for her. The writing brush was a jade brush used by a famous calligrapher in the Qing dynasty. The inkstone was the same as this brush, also used by the famous calligrapher. The amount on the bank card was definitely not low. The sapphire necklace was even more valuable. She happily climbed over it with a brush in her left hand and an inkstone in her right. Since the inkstone was heavy, it was worth just throwing it away. She grabbed the sapphire necklace with one hand. Looking at the bank card, she pressed it between the necklace and the little finger of her left hand. She then hung the car keys on the finger of her right hand. Finally, she looked down at her overflowing hands. Damn it, I only have two hands. Looking down, she noticed that her thick feet were empty. She curled her toes and placed a set of car keys on her big toe. With a smile on her face, she grabbed the door key from the table. Only adults make choices while children want everything. The crowd that was still discussing what Huo Xiao Xiao would choose suddenly became quiet. They had no doubt that if Huo Xiao Xiao had more than two hands, there would be nothing left on the table. Immersed in the happiness of an adult, Huo Xiao Xiao suddenly looked in a certain direction in the crowd. Her eyes sparkled as if she had seen something she liked best. She stood up and, stumbling, wandered in that direction. Dad? A childish and ambiguous voice sounded, and everyone followed Huo Xiao Xiao Tzu's gaze. Hu Sui Cheng suddenly found himself surrounded by a crowd. Huo Xiao Xiao exclaimed excitedly as she walked. I Huo Xiao Xiao! Finally! It would be a lie to say that she was not excited. Huo Xiao Xia lay in the cradle for a whole month. She finally learned to crawl when she felt that her limbs were almost atrophy. Her arms and legs had hardly rested since she learned to crawl. Besides, she will never lie in her crib like a bum if she can crawl. Later, when she learned to walk at eight months, she happily walked around the mansion on her two short legs every day. Now that she could speak, Huo Xiao Xiao was so excited that tears filled her eyes. She ran towards Huo Sui Cheng on trembling legs. To make sure she could speak correctly, her mouth mumbled continuously. She neglected her public image and seemed impolite. At a distance of five or six meters, she quickened her pace, made a dash, tightly clutched the gifts in her hands, and jumped into Huo Sui Cheng's arms. Her small mouth parted all the way to her ears. Her large eyes, like black grapes, narrowed into a slit. And she called out to her father in a muffled voice. Perhaps it was instinct, but Huo Sui Cheng thought faster than Huo Xiao Xiao as he turned to look at her. It didn't take long for his hands to appear. Instinctively, he prepared himself in advance and hugged his daughter. When he finally reacted, the little soft ball in his hands raised its head and smiled at him. The smell of milk in his nose was still fresh in his memory. On the way back, Huo Sui Cheng thought that since he had not seen his daughter for more than a year, he had long forgotten her face. He might not even recognize her. When he took Huo Xiao Xiao from the hospital, she had just recently been born. Most likely, she didn't remember it either. But when he walked in and saw Huo Xiao Xiao's face, he didn't feel that she was a stranger. Instead, an exclamation rang out in his heart. This baby has grown so big. The one-year-old child also seemed to remember him and rushed to hug him. A minute ago, he saw her racking her brains over how to take possession of these gifts on the table. But the next minute, 
She rushed into his arms. It seemed that in her eyes, these gifts were no longer as important as if she had seen something much more valuable. Huo Suicheng hugged her and went to his father as usual, without any expression on his face. Even his child, who called him father and hugged him, could not make his mood change. He came back late, so old Master Huo was not very happy. Why did you come back now? But he did not scold him too much. When old Master Huo looked at Huo Xiaoxiao, his eyes became gentle and affectionate. You have no conscience. Your grandfather has been taking care of you for more than a year. Huo Xiaoxiao opened her mouth to please the old man. But even after two attempts, she could not utter a word for a long time. She discovered with horror that, although she could speak, only dad could speak. Ba, ba. Huo Xiaoxiao was in a difficult mood. The old man felt sorry for his granddaughter, but he didn't care who she called, her father or her grandfather. He looked at her plump arms, at the car keys hanging on her toes, and smiled. You are a smart little girl. Do you feel that two hands are enough for you? Look what was left on this table. The old man, who always liked to tease his granddaughter, immediately took the things from her hands. Whether she understood or not, he told her, if you need them, come to grandfather. Huo Xiao Xia sighed. Old Master Huo was good at everything, but she was helpless because he treated her like a child all day. Was there a need to choose? Money may be precious, but a family love is much more expensive. Was the father-daughter affection between her and Huo Sui Cheng comparable to those sports cars, villas, and bank cards? She and her father had not seen each other for a year. How could she leave her father because of this? She and her father haven't seen each other for a year. How could she leave her father because of this? Compared to these worldly things, of course, dad is more important. She grabbed the collar of Huo Sui Ching Datsawa's suit with one hand and her little skirt with the other and looked at old master Huo with amusement. Come on, putting it all in my pocket. Love for dad prevents me from loving sports cars, villas, and bank cards. Antiques, a necklace, a bank card, a sports car, and a villa. It's all mine. Nothing will be missed. Seeing this, old master Huo laughed. Okay, okay, everything belongs to you. Old master Huo brought the small backpack in which Huo Xiao Xiao usually kept her baby bottle, stuffed everything inside and hung it on her back. Are you satisfied? Such a greedy little wretch. In the end, Huo Xiao Xiao blushed slightly and silently turned to hide her face on Huo Sui Ching's shoulder. Oh, she just smiled. And after all, she was only one year old, so she didn't know anything. It was called innocence. Dad. The feeling of being able to speak was too cool. Since Huo Xiao Xiao, who had wanted to talk all day but couldn't because of her age, was finally able to say a word. She couldn't wait to let out her emotions. Dad, 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 dad. Her cheerful voice continued to ring in Huo Sui Cheng's ears, her soft breath enveloping his neck with warmth. A gentle touch to his eyes melted the frost between his eyebrows, making him much kinder. He patted Huo Xiao Xiao's back and quietly replied, Hmm? Huo Xiao Xiao's first birthday celebration was almost over under the full attention of the public. The price Huo Sui Cheng paid for being late was to hold Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms throughout the entire banquet and not let go until it was over. After a hard day's work, Huo Xiao Xiao sat in the corner of the sofa. She was too tired to open her eyes, but she forced herself to drink the milk. However, after two swallows, she became drowsy and her eyelids drooped. The moment the pacifier fell out of her mouth, she was awakened by a tingling sensation and subconsciously smacked her mouth. She looked around blankly before clutching the bottle tightly in her mouth. After seven or eight sips, the milk finally ran out. It was time to fall asleep after eating to my fill. Huo Xiao Xiao tried her best to look in the direction of the second floor. Old Master Huo and Huo Sui Cheng had already gone upstairs for almost an hour. It looked like they still had to talk. Let's leave it at that. She's too tired. We can talk tomorrow. Just when she was about to close her eyes and get a good night's sleep, a gentle and gentle voice rang out in her ear. Xiao Xiao, get up quickly. Don't sleep. How about you and your big sister play with blocks? Huo Xiao Xia frowned and ignored her, but the voice continued to buzz in her ear like a mosquito, preventing her from falling asleep. She opened her eyes angrily, looked at Sister Xu and said to her with her eyes, go away and leave me alone. But obviously Sister Xu didn't want her to sleep. She continued to torment her. Xiao Xiao, get up quickly. Don't you love daddy the most? Maybe we should go and find dad. Huo Xiao Xia chuckled. I treated you like a sister. But you want to be my stepmother? Dream. When she could speak, the first person she wanted to fire was this sister who wanted to be her stepmother. Without seeing any movement, Sister Xiao Xu hugged Huo Xiao Xiao. Huo Xiao Xia usually hated it when Sister Xiao Xu made physical contact with her. Therefore, as soon as she touched her, she woke up and began to struggle right in her arms. Xiao 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 Xiao, don't dot create problems. I'll take you to play with daddy and then go to bed, okay? What's the matter? Hu Xiao Xiao increased her resistance when she heard a deep voice. 
Zhao Shu put Huo Xiao Xiao on the sofa. Master Huo, I saw that Zhao Xiao wanted to sleep. I'm afraid she'll catch a cold here, so I wanted to take her upstairs. Huo Xiao Xiao's sleepiness was completely broken by her. She angrily got off the sofa and ran up to Huo Suicheng on two short legs, holding his pants tightly. Huo Suicheng looked down at her. Do you want to sleep? HTTPS colon slash slash TL dot RU Latte. Rue Book of 38,921. Even more chapters to read. Huo Suicheng looked down at her. Do you want to sleep? Huo Xiaoxia yawned, took Huo Suicheng's leg and closed her eyes. While no one was arguing with her, she was so sleepy that she could sleep standing up. Old Master Huo whispered behind him, take her to the room so she can rest. Huo Suicheng bent down and picked up Huo Xiaoxiao. The moment her cheek touched his shoulder, Huo Xiaoxia fell asleep with her mouth half open. Huo Suicheng rarely touched children, so this was the first time he had seen her sleep so well. He gently carried her to the nursery and put her to bed. It was easy to wake the child. Huo Xiaoxiao opened her eyes the moment he put her on the bed, but the next second, she saw Huo Suicheng in front of her and closed her eyes. The room was dimly lit. Two small nightlights were burning at the head of the bed. The two bears on the bed were the same ones that Huo Suicheng had seen a year ago, before he went abroad. He stood at the edge of the bed and looked at Huo Xiaoxiao's plump cheeks. Without thinking whether he would disturb her sleep, he reached out and pinched her, like an angel. It was so strange, this small face, not as big as his palm, was soft like cottage cheese. The moment he pinched it, an indescribable warmth flowed from his palm straight to his beating heart, as if a raging fire met soft cotton candy. So strange, after being pinched twice, although Huo Xiaoxiao didn't wake up, she frowned and muttered a few words. Then the small face rubbed against the back of his hand, which was squeezing her cheek. Huo Suicheng was shocked. He then moved from pinching to touching, gently stroking her red face. He even laughed twice without noticing it, covered her with a blanket, tucked her in the corners, and quietly left the room. He found old Master Huo and asked, frowning, what's going on with this nanny? Old Master Huo asked in response, isn't Xiao Shu appointed by you? What? Are there any problems? Huo Suicheng's face changed and his eyebrows frowned even more. He shook his head after a long thought and swallowed the words back for a while. Nothing? In the middle of the night, Huo Xiao Xiao slowly opened her eyes. She had gotten into the habit of waking up in the middle of the night. When she was hungry, she cried twice, forcing Xiao Shu to mix baby food for her to drink. When she didn't feel like eating, she got out of bed and began to practice crawling and walking on all fours. There was a reason for this effort. The main thing was that she felt that her body was probably a little weaker than ordinary people and that she could not afford to lose at the start. Otherwise, her body would not be able to keep up with her and having a brain would not be a solution to the problem. She quietly crawled out of bed, squatted down and pulled a small stool towards the door. She stood on her tiptoes, reached out her hand to the door handle and resolutely pulled it down. The door opened. The door opened quietly. She stuck her head out of the room and looked outside. The corridor was quiet. At the right end was old master Huo's room and at the left end was Huo Suicheng's. She narrowed her eyes and smiled quietly as she slipped into Huo Suicheng's room without making a sound. The first step to saving the villain was to establish good relations with him. She guessed that the connection between father and daughter had weakened during the year spent abroad. This means that it was necessary to reduce the distance between them in order to improve relations. At this moment, Huo Suicheng was still awake. He went into the bathroom to wash up after taking care of the company's business unaware that the small white bun behind the door was carrying a stool to open his door. When he came out of the bathroom and was about to go to bed, he discovered that his bed linen was arched in the far corner. When he lifted the blanket, he found Huo Xiaoxiao curled up on the bed, sleeping like a dog. Seeing Huo Xiaoxiao sleeping in bed, Huo Suicheng subconsciously looked at the door. The distance between the door handle and the ground was greater than Huo Xiaoxiao's height. How did she get here? Maybe it was the nanny who brought her here? With this question, Huo Suicheng opened the door. Behind the door was a small stool, which Huo Suicheng saw next to Huo Xiaoxiao's bed. The baby was just a one-year-old child with short arms and legs. She couldn't climb onto the bed alone. At the same time, she didn't like other people holding her down like a cripple. So she put a small stool in the room so she could get up and down during the day. Was she the one who brought the stool, opened the door, and entered the room? Huo Suicheng poked his head outside and looked at the corridor. The door of Huo Xiaoxiao's room was half open, not far to the right. Warm orange light poured into the dim corridor. Who brought her here? Huo Suicheng returned to his room and looked at Huo Xiaoxiao, sleeping in the corner of the bed. Perhaps because she had been lying under the blanket for so long, she was sweating a lot. Her soft black hair was wet and stuck to her forehead. 
His eyes were glued to her smiling face. Huo Suicheng frowned slightly. When he was about to carry her into the room, Huo Xiao Xiao, who was fast asleep, turned over and unconsciously muttered to herself, Dad? Huo Suicheng sighed. He had no choice but to give in. He moved Huo Xiao Xiao from the corner of the bed to the right side. Tomorrow he will need to have a good talk with the people who care about his daughter. The child in the room disappeared at night, but no one even noticed. Going to bed, Hu Suicheng slept on the left side of the bed. There was almost a meter distance between them. He did this so as not to crush her at night. In the middle of the night, Huo Xiao Xiao suddenly woke up. She woke up not from hunger, but from a sudden feeling. Realizing what had happened, Huo Xiao Xiao felt ashamed to death. She was no longer a newborn child. How could she still wet the bed? Although such awkward things happen from time to time, she was already one year old. After she was potty trained, she seriously protested against wearing diapers. Even if she had to wear one, she secretly took them off at night. With her strong self-control, bedwetting was a thing of the past. Why did this suddenly happen today? The room was dark, and when she woke up, she obviously did not realize that she had climbed into her father's bed. She suppressed her shame, lifted the blanket with both hands, and slowly stood up. Her upper body lay prone on the bed as she slowly extended her leg toward the floor. She wanted to get out of bed, stepping on a small stool and change the bed, but her short legs dangled in the air, not finding the small stool that she usually stepped on when she got down from the crib. She searched again but found nothing. She suddenly woke up, remembering that she was currently in Huo Sui Cheng's bed. The next moment, Huo Xiao Xiao became furious. She was not afraid that Huo Sui Cheng would wake up and blame her for wetting the bed. The fact is that bedwetting itself is a personal matter for everyone. Why would this man know about this? Huo Xiao Xia removed her two legs that were dangling in the air. She reached out her hand in the darkness and touched the sheet, feeling the size of the wet area. Her heart instantly went cold. If he knew about this and saw it, she would not be able to accept Huo Sui Cheng's look and expression. This is too shameful. She had to find a way out. Well, maybe in the morning, but I don't know when he will get up. What if I don't wake up early in the morning? But I don't know when he'll get up. What if I don't wake up early in the morning? Using her little head to think, she felt that she could not sit still and wait to die of shame. She slowly crawled to the edge and carefully leaned down from the bed. This bed was much higher than the one in her room. Her legs swung several times in the air. She clutched the sheet in her hands and gradually went down. Finally, her fingers touched the floor and she loosened her grip. Overestimating her body, Huo Xiao Xiao fell backwards and landed on her butt. Fortunately, the floor in this room was covered with a thick carpet and she was not seriously hurt when she fell. This really scared her. Huo Xiao Xiao snorted, forget it. Who is to blame that she is only a year old and so small? Recalling the decor of the room she saw when she entered, Huo Xiao Xiao walked to the table in this dark atmosphere. There should have been paper towels on it. She could press them against the sheet to absorb the water. This would help it dry faster. However, she seemed to have overestimated her sense of direction again. Having made two circles in the darkness, she had no idea where she was. She stood in the same place, not knowing where to go. Fortunately, a ray of moonlight broke through the curtain. In the dim light, she saw a table under the window that was too high for her. Not to mention climbing on the table to get paper towels using Huo Sui Cheng's chair at her current height. It would take her two years before she could climb up. Because the task was too difficult, her plans were destined to fail even before they were completed. Forget it, I'll just wait for the sheets to dry naturally, Huo Xiao Xiao thought wearily. She went to bed along the path she had already taken and stepped on a piece of cloth next to the bed. Huo Xiao Xiao picked it up and touched it. It seemed to be cotton, cotton. An evil thought flashed through Huo Xiao Xiao's mind. She gathered her strength to climb onto the bed with a candle without causing any disturbance. Then she pursed her lips, moved her bottom to find the mark on the sheet and placed the cloth on it, wiping it thoroughly. If the sheets had dried quickly, there would have been no evidence that she wet the bed tonight. She sat for a while and then threw the rag off the bed. Since she could no longer sleep in a wet place, Huo Xiao Xiao quietly crawled over to Huo Sui Ching and lay down next to him. The moment Huo Xiao Xiao closed her eyes and fell asleep, Huo Sui Ching's eyes opened. He slept lightly and woke up very easily. He woke up as soon as Huo Xiao Xiao got out of bed. The eyesight of adults was better than that of children, and although the room was semi-dark, the faint moonlight breaking through the curtains was enough to see the entire room. He watched as Huo Xiao Xiao struggled down from the bed and sat down on the floor. Just when he thought the child would cry, she stood up as if nothing had happened and began to circle around the room like a headless fly. He didn't know what she was looking for. Huo Sui Cheng simply watched calmly. It was only when Huo Xiao Xiao climbed onto the bed with his pajamas, wiped the sheets with it, and then snuggled up to sleep with him that he realized what had happened. To test his assumptions, 
Huo Suicheng quietly reached behind her back when she fell asleep and touched Huo Xiao Xiao's small pants. Of course she was wet. Huo Suicheng couldn't help but feel upset at the thought of Huo Xiao Xiao climbing up and down the bed due to bedwetting. He didn't know if this little demon was stupid. He realized that she was shy and, having wet the bed, tried to find a way out. She was smart enough to dry the sheets but not take off her wet pants. How uncomfortable is it to sleep in such clothes? Thinking of this, Huo Suicheng stood up and went to Huo Xiao Xiao's room, brought a pair of clean pants, took off the wet ones and replaced them. The baby slept so soundly that she did not wake up at all and even snored a little. Huo Suicheng couldn't help but smile and pinched her nose. This little demon sleeps like a pig. This little demon sleeps like a pig. The next morning, Huo Xiao Xiao opened her eyes in amazement. She woke up, but her mind was still foggy. She closed her eyes, intending to go back to sleep. The moment she turned over, a piece of memory flashed in her head. Immediately, she sharply opened her eyes. Bed, wet bed. The scenes that had happened last night seemed to be replaying in her head. She was excited, and all sleepiness disappeared. She touched the sheet from memory, but did not find a wet spot. Has it dried out? To be sure, Huo Xiao Xiao moved her little butt from the head of the bed to, to the end. She carefully felt every inch of the sheet to make sure there was no wet spot and finally felt relief. It worked out. No one knew her bedwetting last night. Of course, cotton is the most absorbent material. Yes, I'm a really smart little girl. At this moment, the door suddenly opened. Aunt Zhao, who had been taking care of her since early childhood, walked into the room, saw that Huo Xiao Xiao had woken up and smiled. Why did you wake up so early today? She took Zhao Xia's hands and walked out. You little demon. You ran to Master Huo's room as soon as he returned home. Not seeing you in the room in the middle of the night, I was scared to death. To apologize, Huo Xiao Xiao took Aunt Zhao's face and kissed her. Aunt Zhao Nei gently stroked her small face and smiled affectionately. You are really smart. This aunt knew that you loved me. Back in the room, Huo Xiao Xiao sat quietly, waiting for Aunt Zhao to wash her. When she looked down, she saw the pair of pants that she was wearing, and a big question mark appeared in her mind. Wait, she wet the bed last night, so this pair of pants should be wet too. Moreover, if she remembers correctly, she wasn't wearing this pair last night, was she? Huo Xiao Xiao clearly remembered that she did not wear this pair of pants yesterday. They were pink and she hated that color the most. She had to face one fact. Someone had changed them last night. Why change pants? Because someone found out that she wet the bed. But who? Who knew about this? Who else could find out? There was only one person with whom she shared a bed. This fact was like a bolt from the blue. Huo Xiao Xia sat without any expression on her face. She was completely shocked, and her blush covered her entire face and neck. Uh, Xiao Xiao, what happened? Are you uncomfortable? Why is your face so flushed? Wu Wu, great tragedy. What's the matter? Tell me what happened. Wu Wu, someone knew about her bedwetting. An 18, no, 19-year-old woman wet her bed. Huo Xiao Xiao really wanted to commit suicide because of this embarrassment. And Zhao couldn't understand her. So she hurried downstairs while holding Huo Xiao Xiao. Seeing Huo Suicheng and old master Huo in the living room, she said anxiously, Old master, Xiao Xiao, his face is very hot. Something seems wrong. Huo Suicheng stood up, hugged his little girl, put his hand on her forehead, and stood there for a few seconds. Huo Xiao Xiao's hand holding Huo Suicheng's clothes was limp, but she recognized this familiar feeling. How could this be similar to the cotton cloth she picked up from the floor last night and wiped the sheets? Can't be. She touched him again. It's really the same thing. Huo Xiao Xiao, who was originally in his arms, suddenly began to struggle violently. Huo Sui Cheng hugged her even tighter. Ah, don't do this. Let me go right now. Hurry up, Dad. Please let me go. I want to go to my grandfather. What's happening? Did something happen? Huo Xiao Xiao? His two small hands continued to reach out to old Master Huo. Out of excitement, she opened her mouth and shouted, Grandfather! Facts have proven that people show limitless potential in times of crisis. To avoid intimate contact with Huo Sui Cheng's suit, Huo Xiao Xiao fought to the death and never allowed her father to touch her. At this time, she was in a hurry and was so excited that her grandfather screamed. Huo Xiao Xiao was also surprised when she blurted out the word. Once she started opening her mouth, learning to speak was not difficult. Yesterday, she said the word dad, and today, grandfather. After that, there will be three symbols from the classics, along with hundreds of new words and thousands of symbols. Old Master Huo took care of Huo Xiao Xiao for one year. When Huo Xiao Xiao reached a certain age, his grandfather taught her to speak for more than half a year, but his wish never came true. To make matters worse, he heard the word dad yesterday at the banquet. This clearly infuriated him. The child who had been with him for a whole year was the first to say, dad? Heartless little girl, your father doesn't even want to talk to you abroad. And yet you missed this guy all the time. For many days and nights, 
he waited for the word grandfather and finally heard it from his beautiful granddaughter. He cheerfully took Zhao Xiao from Huo Sui Ching's arms. Xiao Xiao, hurry up and tell Grandpa. Grandpa just couldn't hear well. Please say Grandpa again. She had to say that one word Grandpa really saved her from trouble. Huo Xiao Xiao, who had gotten rid of Huo Sui Cheng's evil grip, felt relieved. She clung to old Master Huo's clothes, afraid that she would be carried away by Huo Sui Ching. Grandfather, eh, you're so good. You learned to call Grandpa so quickly. You truly deserve to be my granddaughter. Repeat again. Grandfather. Really good. One more time. Grandfather. Grandfather still wants to listen. Repeat it again. Grandfather. 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 Huo Xiao Xiao had a feeling that she might create a hornet's nest here. However, it didn't matter. She hasn't spoken in a year, and she wishes she could speak more every day. Old Master Huo grinned from ear to ear as he listened to his adorable granddaughter's voice. Holding his little granddaughter in his arms, he headed to the dining room. Is Yao Xiao hungry? Let's go have breakfast with Grandpa. Huo Xiao Xiao kissed Grandpa on the cheek and hugged his neck. She didn't dare look at Huo Suichen. <laughs> there was a saying that dogs don't choose poor families, and the mother of a child is never too ugly. Still, she had no intention of leaving her father. Who asked him to wear clothes so casually? At the dining table, Huo Xiao Xiao sat on old Master Huo's leg, holding a bottle of milk. From time to time, she swallowed the egg cream that old Master Huo brought to her mouth. Huo Sui Cheng broke off a piece of bread and looked at the daughter who rejected him so coldly. Chen Bo, could you talk to the person who takes care of Zhao Xiao at night so that he can show more attention? What, what's the matter? Last night, Zhao Xiao opened the door of my room, pulled up a stool, and went to bed. A child disappeared, but no one noticed? Chen Bo immediately became alarmed. Yes, I will talk to them later. Old Master Huo looked down at Huo Xiao Xiao, who was drinking milk, and scolded her. Why did you go to your father's room in the middle of the night? The corridor's so dark. What if you fall off the little stool? Don't do this again, okay? Huo Xiao Xiao, busy devouring milk, perceived her grandfather's words as the wind flying past her ear. She acted like a child who doesn't know anything. Chen Bo took pity on her and said, Master, how can little miss understand your words? I will talk to the nannies later and let them look more strictly at night. However, Huo Sui Cheng also took this opportunity to say, Chen Bo, please change my bed later. However, Chen Bo was old and liked to grumble. They just changed it yesterday? Is it because of the fabric or the color? However, Chen Bo was old and liked to grumble. It was changed only yesterday. Is it because of the fabric or the color? Huo Sui Cheng glanced at Huo Xiao Xiao. Huo Xiao Xiao, who was suddenly noticed, became nervous. Cold sweat appeared on her back. She had a feeling that Huo Sui Cheng would announce her bedwetting in the next second. No, Huo Sui Cheng continued to look at Huo Xiao Xiao and was silent for a while. After a long silence, he spoke. Xiao Xiao was in my bed last night. Dad, Dad! Huo Xiao Xiao was furious and abruptly interrupted Huo Sui Cheng. She knew it. Her dim-witted father must have wanted to tell everyone about her bedwetting. Is this interesting? How does it feel to say it out loud? You won't even spare a child? Huo Sui Cheng took his daughter from the hands of old Master Huo and said to Chen Bo, Just change it? Okay. Huo Xiao Xiao felt relieved. But before she could take a breath, she heard Huo Sui Cheng's voice whispering in her ear, I don't know who wet the bed last night. There's no need to be ashamed. Huo Xiao Xiao's face turned red. She really wanted to bite him back, but fortunately she couldn't speak. Okay, I'll take note of this neglect. Comfortably ensconced in Huo Sui Cheng's arms, she sullenly ate breakfast. As soon as she finished eating, Sister Xiao Shu appeared into a sexy and elegant white dress, smiling sweeter than a flight attendant. Sister Xiao Shu's real name was Shu Manyin. It was a beautiful name, but it had no meaning to this family. In this house, her name was Xiao Shu. She was Huo Xiao Xiao's so-called early education teacher. Xu Manyin taught her to read and write by playing games and telling stories. In addition, playing the piano allowed her to accept the influence of music early on. Mr. Master Huo, sorry, I'm late today. If you have nothing to say, I will take Xiao Xiao to the room. Old Master Huo had no other feelings for the girl. He just thought she was beautiful and sang and danced very well. However, Huo Sui Ching's eyes, remembering yesterday's incident, sparkled with interest after yesterday, and he looked at her more closely. Noticing that Huo Sui Ching's gaze lingered on her, Xu Manyin smiled even wider. However, she said almost nothing. Her expression remained the same. She took Huo Xiao Xiao and went upstairs to the playroom. Huo Xiao Xiao knew that Xu Manyin was just one of many women who wanted to be her stepmother. She was also the standard doomed heroine among them. Even though this woman was a minor heroine, she always believed that she was luckier than others who tried to marry Huo Sui Cheng. Right now, she was the one Huo Sui Cheng personally chose to take care of his daughter. And in the future, 
Xu Manyin planned to spend the night with him and become part of the family. But she was also unlucky, because Huo Suiyuan didn't like her at all. He was also a man who didn't want to be used. After Xu Manyin tried to get into his bed again and again, he kicked her out. When she left, she seemed broken and abandoned, but in fact she unceremoniously disappeared. After all, no one knew where she went. But anyone could guess his attitude from Huo Suiqing Za's disgusted eyes, as well as from the careless phrases with which he ordered to get rid of everything connected with her. For the most part, the odds were stacked against her. Xu Manyin held Huo Xiaoxiao as she sat on the piano stool. After playing the song, she took Huo Xiaoxiao's hand and placed it on the piano keys. Xiao Xiao, did you like the song I just played? Do you like playing the piano? Since Huo Xiao Xiao didn't like her, she didn't bother to open her mouth, maintaining an uninterested expression. She always showed her this expression, and Xu Manyin didn't care either. Seeing that there was no one in the playroom, she lowered her voice and said to Huo Xiao Xiao, Xiao Xiao, repeat after me, sister? Huo Xiao Xiao rolled her eyes. Is this really to make her special? Let Huo Sui Ching and old master Huo look at her with different eyes. Sorry, but keep dreaming. She tried to open her mouth and speak, pretending that she was trying. No, Sister Xu. No, not for. Sister Xiao Xu. Huo Xiao Xiao did not answer anything. Xu Manyin insisted. Xiao Xiao, look at me and repeat after me. Sister Xiao Xu. Xiao Xiao. Sister Xiao Xu. Huo Xiao Xiao yawned and didn't want to bother with her anymore. She got down with difficulty and went to her playground, moving her short legs. Her plump fingers slid over the tablet on which she played games and watched cartoons. Judging by the speed at which she had just learned to speak, she believed that as long as she trained hard, 100,000 Chinese characters would be out of the question. Just when Huo Xiaoxiao randomly tapped the tablet, Xu Manyin walked over and continued to teach her to call her sister. Instead of Sister Xiao, if Aunt Xu taught her to speak, perhaps she could do it right now. What's the name of Dad's father? Grandfather? What's your dad's mom's name? Granny. Fun music was playing on the tablet. Huo Xiaoxiao's heart was broken. As a child, she heard the same music. Is she really going to have to do it again today? A 19-year-old girl learning nursery rhymes? What kind of suffering is this? Huo Xiaoxiao had been mentally preparing for this for a long time. A child who is a good student must be fearless and knowledgeable. To speak successfully, she only had to endure this insult. She watched the music with optimism. Yay, yay. Haha <laughs> Su Manin was completely ignored. The door of the game room opened and Huo Suiqing walked in. Huo Xiaoxiao was immersed in self-education, not paying attention to others. But when Xu Manyin saw Huo Suiqing coming in, her eyes lit up. She stood up, greeted him and said with a smile, President Huo, are you here? I teach Xiao Xiao to speak? Huo Suiqing chuckled briefly. President Huo, Xiao Xiao is definitely the smartest of all the children I taught. You worked abroad last year, so you haven't seen your little daughter grow. But at normal, I wrote this down for you. With these words, she looked at Huo Sui Ching with deep eyes. But they are at my house. If you want to see them, I will send them to you tonight. She heard that Huo Sui Ching likes pure and immaculate girls. So today she deliberately wore a white, sexy, waist-hugging dress. With light makeup, she looked sophisticated and charming. The perfume she wore was one that men couldn't ignore. He would definitely remember her for days to come. She also believed that Huo Sui Ching would be enchanted by her today. Moreover, she was undoubtedly proud to be one of the teachers he personally chose to take care of Zhao Xiao. This showed that Huo Sui Cheng trusted her abilities. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at the girl and couldn't help but regret that the night of chaos should have started earlier. Huo Sui Cheng was not a saint, and neither was Xu Manyin. No, this night will never happen. The best way is to kill her ambiguous feelings in the cradle. Thinking of this, Huo Xiao Xiao put the tablet aside, walked towards Huo Sui Cheng, glared at Xu Manyin, and pushed her back a few steps. This action seemed to prohibit Xu Manyin from robbing her father. Huo Sui Cheng raised his eyebrows slightly and looked at the girl. You don't need to come tomorrow. Xu Manyin, Huo Xiao Xiao. Under the shocked and puzzled looks of these two people, Huo Sui Cheng said, can't you see that my daughter doesn't like you? Huo Sui Cheng's answer was somewhat unexpected by Huo Xiao Xiao. Xu Manyin looked pure and graceful. She was an unforgettable beauty. In addition, she graduated from a prestigious university and played the piano and danced beautifully. According to the usual development, her father should have spoiled himself with the beauty first. He would leave this person only after she started talking about plans for the future, ignoring his intentions of just having fun. Why was she eliminated so quickly even before the performance began? Can't you see that my daughter doesn't like you? Huo Xiao Xiao was still shocked. After just one night, the relationship between father and daughter became so deep, they improved so quickly. Are you flying on a rocket? This time, Huo Xiao Xiao was skeptical about her life experience. 
Likewise, Xu Manyin also found it difficult to understand. She looked at the girl in confusion and asked, President Huo, I don't know what you mean. This year I took care of Xiao Xiao. We get along very well, play games, and play the piano together. I don't think Xiao Xiao doesn't like me. Huo Suiqing raised his head. If she likes you, why does she always push you away? Xu Manyin bit her lip and he was speechless. After caring for Huo Xiao Xiao for so long, she felt that the child did not love her. A second ago, she smiles, but as soon as the conversation with other people ends, she immediately begins to ignore her. Xu Manyin also didn't know why Huo Xiao Xiao disliked her. Apparently, she was the one who spent the most time with her. While she didn't know what to say to save herself, Huo Suicheng took her daughter away. President Huo? Xu Manyin stopped him in panic. Tears gathered in the corners of her beautiful eyes, and she looked at Huo Suicheng pleadingly. Xiao Xiao may have misunderstood me. President Huo, you must know my abilities, otherwise you would not have hired me to teach her. Please give me another chance. When beautiful women cried, almost no man could resist. However, Huo Suicheng did not pay attention to such feelings called love. He looked at Xu Manyin with a straight face, without any tenderness, and even frowned. Speak quietly? Huo Suicheng led Xiao Xiao out the door. Father and daughter vaguely heard quiet sobs in the playroom. Huo Xiao Xiao rolled her eyes. She really wanted to tell Xu Manyin to stop crying. Although she did not allow her to sleep with Huo Suicheng, it saved her life. Life is precious. Although one night with Huo Suicheng allowed you to enjoy the moment for a while, later you could lose your life in vain. However, from this point of view, Huo Suiqing was not a person who did not pay attention to others, and he did not seem as fierce as she imagined. She looked at Huo Suicheng. Her eyes looked up a bit more. We continued to rise, all the way to the top. Hey, it's all legs. While at home, Huo Xiaoxiao usually did not go alone, except to train. The first time she looked at others from this perspective, she only saw Huo Suicheng's legs. Huo Suicheng is used to walking alone like the wind. Therefore, he stepped forward, not caring at all that he was holding little Huo Xiao Xiao's hand. Huo Xiao Xiao, who was trying her best to keep up with him on her short legs, followed behind him. Her plump legs seemed to move like a whirlwind, but she could not catch up with him. Soon she missed a step and her left foot tripped over her right, causing her to stagger. She leaned forward and fell, but Huo Suicheng still held her hand. Can you imagine a 189 centimeter man holding the hand of a child less than 80 centimeters tall? Although she didn't want to say it, Huo Suicheng was currently dragging her along. After suddenly falling, Huo Xiao Xiao, who only weighed a few kilograms, was directly lifted by the man. When Huo Suicheng reacted, he had already taken four or five steps. Huo Xiao Xiao was at a loss. Who am I, where am I, and why am I being dragged somewhere? Huo Xiao Xiao raised her eyes to him with difficulty. Huo Suicheng looked down at her and said nothing. After looking at each other for two seconds, they saw shock in each other's eyes. Huo Suicheng was shocked that Huo Xiao Xiao could trip out of the blue. Huo Xiaoxiao was shocked that her father could be like this, really. A father who doesn't care about his daughter's life. She decided to stay away from Huo Suicheng when no one was around. Her life with him was not very safe. After being dragged for a few steps, Huo Xiaoxiao felt some pain in her knee. She began to twist her small mouth, wanting to cry. Huo Suicheng picked her up from the floor and whispered, Don't cry. Perhaps feeling that his tone was too firm, he softened. Your grandfather's in poor health. Don't disturb him, Huo Xiaoxiao. To hide his evil deeds, Huo Suicheng placed her in An Zhao's care and briefly explained the reason for dismissing Zhu Manyin. An Zhao thought for a moment before asking, What about Zhao Xiao's early education? I'll find someone else. Huo Xiaoxiao pulled An Zhao's hand, looked at her father resentfully, and lifted her little skirt, pointing to the fresh red bruise on her knee. It hurts! An Zhao hurriedly squatted down to look and exclaimed, Xiao Xiao, what happened? Why is your knee so red? Where did you fall? Suspect Huo Suicheng coughed quietly, trying to hide his crime by shifting the blame to his daughter. She just accidentally fell. Children often trip. Why worry? You just need to apply a little ointment. Just don't tell the old man. Huo Xiaoxiao looked at him reluctantly. Aunt Zhao frowned. Besides Xu Manyin, she was the one who took care of Zhao Xiao for the longest time. She usually took care of her as if she were her own granddaughter. Therefore, when the girl came across something, she felt uneasy. Aunt Zhao immediately found ointment for the baby. At this moment, Huo Suicheng received a phone call. Young Fu Club? Yes. See you later. Huo Xiaoxiao's ear immediately perked up. Hearing his words, she looked up and saw Huo Suicheng walking up the stairs. Xiaoxiao, you always like to jump. Where did you fall? Are you hurt? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded. You have to be careful in the future, okay? It must have hurt so much. While Aunt Zhao was applying the ointment, Huo Suicheng changed his clothes and prepared to leave. The dark blue suit looked especially beautiful. 
The bow tie was neatly tied under the neck. There was no trace of wrinkles on the trousers, and the leather shoes were bright and spotlessly clean. Huo Suicheng was a little casual in his loungewear, but when he put on his suit, he gave off a cold and indifferent aura. As soon as Huo Xiaoxiao saw her father leaving in a suit and tie, she hurriedly jumped off the sofa and ran over to him. And Zhao frowned again. Xiao Xiao, don't run. Slow down. Huo Suicheng looked at his daughter, who stopped right in front of him. What happened? Huo Xiaoxiao opened her mouth and tried to remember the pronunciation of the words she wanted to say. One by one, she barely had time to spit them out. I want to dig, plant? So useless. What nonsense am I talking about? Go for a walk and play. After intense effort, her cheeks turned red, and she finally explained what she wanted to say, separating the words. She didn't know what old Master Huo was thinking. Over the past year, he has never taken her anywhere. The furthest she had walked so far was simply wandering around their apartment complex. She had never seen the prosperous outside world. It was indecent to take a child where he wanted to go, so he immediately said, I'll take you next time. Play at home today with Aunt Zhao. Play at home? Are you kidding me? I've been playing at home for a year now, and don't think that I don't know. The Yongfu Club is not a place to conduct official business. It was a good place to have fun. Huo Xiaoxiao lifted her skirt, pointed to the place where her knees were red, and expressed her opinion in the shortest words. It hurts. Grandfather, Huo Suicheng tried to translate her words. If I don't take you, will you tell Grandpa? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded seriously. The father and daughter stood silently for five seconds. Huo Suicheng bowed his head, took Huo Xiaoxiao and left, leaving a message. Tell the old man that I took Xiaoxiao with me. In the back seat of the Bentley, Huo Xiaoxiao sat in a child seat in front of the car window, looking at the world around her with great interest. Her eyes were full of strange things that she had never seen before. One year, for a whole year. This year, she saw no traffic, and the bustling city center was isolated from her. How could she not worry? Huo Suicheng sat down next to her and looked at her with slightly narrowed eyes. You're smarter than I thought. You must understand what I'm talking about. Huo Xiaoxiao looked back at him. Sit silently where we want to go later. Play your games yourself. Don't make any noise. Do not cry. Do you understand me? Huo Xiaoxiao thought for a moment. Dad seems to have some doubts about me. Besides, today's performance was indeed a bit over the top. Racking her brains, she looked at him in confusion, saying nothing. Huo Suicheng repeated, Don't cry, don't make noise and be obedient. Is this clear? Huo Xiaoxiao blinked slightly. Just in case, she did not answer Huo Suicheng and turned to the window. Huo Suicheng's eyes flashed with doubt. But before he could think about it, they reached the club. The club was built in European style at the beginning of the last century. It was once a consulate for one country, but was later converted into a club. The doorman at the entrance to the club hurried forward, walked to the door and opened it. Huo Suicheng walked out, but then walked to the other side and picked up Huo Xiaoxiao from the child's seat. Then he entered the club under the astonished gaze of the doorman. Although it was a club, it was not a black and white dilapidated one. Instead, it was elegantly decorated. To enter the club, certain qualifications were required. Not everyone could enter this place. Therefore, the people who came did not create a crowd. Huo Xiaoxiao lay on Huo Suicheng's shoulder, enjoying all kinds of elegant decorations along the way and completely ignoring the shocked looks of the waiters. Although many people came here, it was rare to see anyone taking a child with them. Huo Suicheng is used to being stared at by onlookers. He walked into a private room with Huo Xiaoxiao in his arms, following the waiter. The door opened, and Huo Xiaoxiao's nose was filled with the smell of smoke. She buried her face in her father's shirt and inhaled the fresh and light woody scent of his body. Huo Suicheng stood at the door with his brows furrowed. After a few seconds of pause, he walked around the screen and said to several players in the room, Put out the cigarettes. Let's go to another room. One, two, three players in the hall raised their heads and quickly put out their cigarettes. They were also moved to another room. Four tall men in suits stared at the child sitting on the sofa with eight eyes, momentarily speechless. We're all adults here, and you shouldn't take your child with you, right? Is this your legendary daughter? Huo Suicheng snorted coldly. One of the young men squeezed Huo Xiaoxiao's face and asked her, What is your name? Huo Xiaoxiao knew these people standing in front of her. She answered, Huo Xiaoxiao. How old are you? Huo Xiaoxiao raised her finger. The man smiled. You're only a year old, but do you understand me? She is very smart. Adults all over the world were the same. They always loved to make fun of children. Your father abandoned you when you were born and went abroad. You were raised by your grandfather for so long. So who do you like better, dad or grandpa? Again, he clearly didn't have a good goal in trying to sow discord. She didn't know how many times she'd been asked questions like this since she was a child. However, those who teased her always laughed because she could not speak. When she finally learned to speak, 
Someone asked her the same question. The time has come for an appropriate counterattack. Huo Xiaoxiao tried her best to ask him back, speaking very slowly. Uncle, what about you? Love, dad or grandpa? The sound of the child's voice made the entire room quieter. In the separate room, there were three men, not counting Huo Sui Cheng, and Huo Xiaoxiao knew very well who they were. The person who asked her whether she loved her father or grandfather was Lu Boyin. He was the illegitimate child of the Lu family, recognized 10 years ago. He had a cute face and played with women all day long. After the head of the Lu family died three years ago, the two legitimate sons fought over the family property. Lu Boyin, sitting on the sidelines, watched the tiger fight and benefited from it like a hunter. Despite his appearance, Lu Boyan was not an ordinary person. Although his character was careless, Lu Group did not fall in terms of business. He seemed to sit there carefree, looking giddy and carefree. But Huo Xiaoxiao couldn't tell how many bad ideas he had in his mind. The person who asked her age was Jiang Di, the eldest son of the Jiang family. When he was 25 years old, a car accident paralyzed his body. Thus, the third son of the Jiang family took over the leadership of the company. The result was a complete mess. Not only did his company go bankrupt, but the Jiang group was almost on the verge of bankruptcy. Fortunately, Zhang Zi regained his physical capabilities two years ago, and he quickly filled the gaping hole with a quick turnaround of the situation. He led the Jiang group and sent his third son abroad, who committed suicide there. And finally, Yi Yang, the man who didn't talk much. But in the business world, he was as ruthless as Huo Sui Cheng, who swallowed people and didn't even spit out bones. Moreover, Lady Luck was very kind to him. His wife was Xu Xinyi, a famous actress, and they had a son, Yi Qian, who was now two years old. In general, he had a happy family. All four were sworn brothers. As they say, villains band together to look out for each other. Contrary to her imagination, none of them were good people. Zhang Sui looked down at Huo Xiao Xiao and was somewhat surprised. Brother Huo, your daughter's very smart and quick-witted. Is she really only one year old? Huo Sui Ching raised his eyebrows without denying this remark. You said you would come, but when you arrived, you brought a child with you without warning in advance. Lu Boyang subconsciously wanted to light a cigarette. However, Huo Sui Ching looked at him sternly. He put down the cigarette and leaned down to pinch Huo Xiao Xiao's thick cheeks. Xiao Xiao, right? Come on, say big brother. If you are obedient, this older brother will buy you candy. What kind of thing she has not seen? Still trying to bribe her with sweets? Huo Xiao Xiao felt contempt. <laughs> Baby, wasn't your little mouth chattering just now? Why are you silent? Lu Boyan chuckled. This is not good. He took out the prepared gift from his pocket, opened it, and placed it in front of Huo Xiao Xiao's eyes. Look at this big brother's candy, say big brother, and it will be yours. Before Huo Xiao Xiao could open her eyes and look carefully, she felt a blinding light hit her eyes as he opened the lid. She took a closer look. Diamonds. It was a sparkling diamond bracelet. Older brother? When she spoke, her voice was refreshing and sweet. Oh, it turns out that Xiao Xiao loves fashionable things. But I'm pleased with your sweet voice. Lu Boyan gave her a diamond bracelet from the box. Well, play with it? Many of them like to smoke, but Xiao Xiao felt uncomfortable from the smoke, so Zheng Zi could only fiddle with the lighter. He smiled and said to Huo Sui Cheng, Congratulations on the birth of your daughter? Lu Boyang was not annoyed either. Baby Huo, let's clear things up. Xiao Xiao calls me big brother, so from now on, I will call you little brother. Huo Sui Cheng was too lazy to care about such things. You can call me whatever you want. With the precious diamond bracelet in her hand, Huo Xiao Xiao focused on him and didn't care about what those people were doing in the room. From birth until now, she received many gifts, including necklaces, rings, earrings, clothes, and bags, which were well hidden in her room. When she grows up, they will all belong to her. Although she has seen a lot of good things, rich people don't mind getting richer, right? Of course, the more such things, the better. Huo Xiao Xiao accepted it with satisfaction. The club staff brought some children's toys for her, and two young waiters were also specially appointed to play games with Xiao Xiao. However, Xiao Xiao did not want anyone to accompany her. She left the toys and tablet alone and sat quietly in the corner of the sofa to play alone. The men were separated by a screen and sat at a table in a separate room to play poker. After an unsuccessful game, Lu Boyan sighed and said with regret, I'm having terrible luck today. It would be great if a couple of pretty girls could help me with the cards. Huo Sui Cheng, on the other hand, was on a roll. He won several rounds. No one was shuffling the cards, and the table was in disarray. Huo Sui Cheng leaned back and looked at the defeated people. Yi Yang took out his own chips and threw them to Huo Sui Cheng. You have been abroad for so long that you're probably too busy to mind your own business at home? The vice president of your company has some tricks up his sleeve. Most of the company's shareholders have turned their backs on you. I heard that the next shareholders meeting will vote to remove you. Take a closer look at these materials. 
Guo Suicheng took them and put them aside without looking. Then he looked at Jiang Zi. Jiang Zi handed him his own chips. These are the vice president's things. He does have some brains. His wife and children are all abroad. But they eat and drink at my house, so you can be sure nothing serious will happen. Huo Suiqing turned to Lu Boyang. Lu Boyang smiled. Hey, why are you looking at me like that? The gift for the meeting was given to Xiao Xiao. I am a clean businessman and don't do dirty things. There is nothing more I can do. Huo Suiqing looked away and shuffled the cards. On the other side of the screen, Huo Xiao Xiao, who was sitting on the sofa looking at the tablet, shuddered. She took two more sips of water and wanted to go to the toilet? Children really do too many trivial things. What could she say in such a situation? Be patient. After five minutes, she felt more and more awkward and couldn't help herself. No, I can't stand it anymore. She'll be a laughingstock if she stays here any longer. Having learned a lesson from the past, Huo Xiao Xiao put the tablet down for a while, carefully got off the sofa, walked around the table, walked to Huo Sui Cheng, and silently pulled his trousers. Huo Sui Cheng looked down at her. What's the matter? She continued to pull up his pants. Seeing this, he picked her up and sat her on his lap. Listen, what's going on? Huo Xiao Xiao looked at the other three people at the table and was too embarrassed to say the words out loud. I want to go to the toilet. She moved closer to Huo Sui Ching's neck and, lowering her voice, whispered in his ear, Dad, I want to go to the toilet? Do you want to go? Dad! Dad! Huo Xiao Xiao's face turned red. She covered Huo Sui Ching's mouth with her hand and looked at him with a serious expression, not allowing him to continue. There were so many men here. If he says it out loud, she will lose her face. Huo Xiao Xiao used the crumbs of her stubbornness to protect her broken dignity. Huo Sui Ching was a little shocked and then surprised for a while, feeling funny. She is just a child. How can she be so shy? But he put down his cards, picked her up, and said to several players, wait for me. He then walked to the door and handed her to the waitress. Take her to the bathroom. The waitress walked Huo Xiao Xiao by the hand into the bathroom with a smile. What happened to Xiao Xiao? Huo Sui Ching shook his head and stopped smiling. She's shy. Shy? How old is she for her to start feeling shy? By the way, there is something else. I couldn't say it because Zhao Xiao had been here before. Have you heard the news about Zhao Xiao's mother? Yes. What do you think? Huo Sui Ching put down the card. It has nothing to do with me. In the bathroom, Huo Xiao Xiao sat on the toilet with her short legs dangling, her toes clasped comfortably, and she felt relaxed. Whether it was worthy or not, self-soothing was the most important thing. Having solved her personal problems, and before she could lift her pants, Zhao Xiao heard someone talking outside the toilet door. She didn't hear what exactly was said, but after the footsteps left, silence reigned in the bathroom. A woman's intuition told her that something was wrong. She hurriedly pulled up her pants and carefully opened the door. The waitress who brought her here has disappeared. Huo Xiao Xiao immediately became wary. She always remembered that all sorts of melodramatic scenes could take place in this place. Her father insulted many people but they could not move directly towards Huo Sui Cheng. So, these desperate people could have made her a target. Thinking about this, Huo Xiao Xiao frowned. She needed to get back to her father as quickly as possible. But when she left the restroom and looked around the winding path leading to a secluded courtyard, she did not know whether to go left or right. Girl, why are you here alone? A soft and clear voice came from behind Huo Xiao Xiao. She looked back and saw a woman in a bright red dress walking towards her. The woman was young and there were almost no traces of makeup visible on her face. And yet her skin was white and transparent. Her long hair, curled at the back of her head, was black, and two strands hung down at her earlobe between her straight, sunken collarbones and moved slightly in the wind. So pretty. This was Huo Xiao Xiao's first reaction. But before she could react to who was in front of her, an alarm sounded in her head. Attention! Attention! This is the main character, Su Yuanqing. Huo Xiao Xiao was shocked. How did she meet the main character here? Baby, what is your name? Where is your family? Su Yuanqing's smile became even closer. Huo Xiao Xiao took a small step back. Su Yuanqing was the person who made Huo Suicheng fall in love at first sight. She was also the one who could force him, the main villain, to sacrifice everything to win her love. It can be said that if Huo Suicheng focused on his career, he would be an absolute winner. But he was obsessed with love and died tragically at the hands of his love rival. No, the first step to saving a villain is to never let them meet. If she met her father, it would all be over. A person so obsessed with beauty, seeing such a stunning woman, how could he not be touched? Huo Xiao Xiao quickly made a decision and said to her in an arrogant and domineering tone, Don't worry. She then walked around Su Yuan Ting towards the corridor on the right side. Wait, baby, it's too dangerous for you to be here alone. Can you tell this sister what room you were in? I'll take you to your father. To find her father? Huo Xiao Xiao keenly grasped these words. If she'd to know her, 
Then why did she say that she would take her to her father? How did Su Yuan Ching know that she came with her father? Why did the waiter who brought her to the toilet suddenly disappear? There must be something suspicious about this. Huo Xiaoxiao thought calmly, and after five seconds came to a conclusion. Su Yuan Ching deliberately wanted to get close to her daddy. Although its purpose was unclear, the idea itself smacked of danger. She must be strangled in her cradle. No, don't worry. Hu Xiaoxiao pushed Su Yuan Ching as she walked, her expression serious. Girl, slow down, otherwise you will fall. Huo Xiaoxiao staggered, wanting to move away from her, but her legs were not as long as hers. Damn it. Girl, don't run away. Maybe you want this nurse to take you to the staff? Huo Xiaoxiao felt the worry in Su Yuan Ching's words. Of course there is an ulterior motive. Her words could not be trusted. She could not be deceived. But what room was dad in? This room is a little big. Just when Huo Xiaoxiao was at a loss, a club waitress appeared at the end of the lobby. Her eyes lit up and she ran up on her short legs. The waitress was surprised to see that the girl was holding her by the legs of her pants. She then looked at Su Yuan Ting. Sister, I want to find my father. She pointed at Su Yuan Ting and said sharply, I don't. I recognize her. I don't know her. The waitress definitely knew who the kid was. A few hours ago, all staff were notified of the arrival of a VIP with a child in his arms. Hearing what Huo Xiao Xiao said, she immediately became anxious. But she still continued to smile and said to Su Yuan Ching, May I ask, what can I do for you, young lady? Su Yuan Ting said with a slight smile, It's okay. I just saw the girl alone and was afraid that she might get lost. Don't worry, I'll take her back to the room. Okay, then I'll leave first. Su Yuan Ting glanced at Huo Xiao Xiao, smiled and waved her hand. Sister is leaving, goodbye. Huo Xiao Xiao turned to the side and didn't pay attention to her. The waitress hugged Huo Xiao Xiao and hurried to Huo Sui Cheng's private room. In any case, at such a young age, the guest's daughter was not accompanied by a person outside the room, which was absolute negligence on the part of the club. However, Huo Xiao Xiao wisely said to the waitress, Sister, don't tell dad, just pretend. That wasn't the case, okay? She couldn't let Huo Sui Cheng hear Su Yuan Ting's name. The waitress was somewhat embarrassed. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, I won't, I say. Huo Xiao Xiao made a tough promise. But go to the toilet. Dad won't know anything. The waitress hesitated for a moment and nodded to Huo Xiao Xiao. Returning her to the private room, the waitress considered this proposal over and over again. In the end, she finally reported it to the boss. The manager found a waitress who took Huo Xiao Xiao to the toilet first. He didn't ask the reason and just scolded her. Later, he told Huo Sui Cheng about this with concern. Huo Sui Cheng's eyebrows frowned slightly. Who is this? This lady seems to have the surname Su? The name of? Who did she come with? The manager found it difficult to reveal the private life of their guest. Do you want me to call your boss? This young lady seems to be Su Yuan Ching, the manager said with an embarrassed smile. Su Yuan Ting? Huo Sui Cheng searched his brain for information about this person, but found nothing. As a meticulous person, he always calculated everything several steps ahead, much more carefully than others. All courtyards were separated from each other. The reason they reserved the entire courtyard was so as not to disturb strangers. Without permission, guests from other rooms could not come to them. So how did this woman named Su Yuan Ching get here? Huo Sui Ching watched Huo Xiao Xiao immersed in the tablet and said in a deep voice, I understand. The manager left with a smile after repeatedly apologizing. The people at the table looked at each other. What's the matter? Huo Sui Cheng thought for a moment, buried the doubt in his heart, and shook his head. Nothing. Sitting on the sofa behind the screen, Huo Xiao Xiao looked at the tablet as if nothing had happened. Grr. Huo Xiao Xiao's eyes immediately looked up from the tablet, and she covered her stomach with her hand. She was hungry. Huo Sui Cheng went out in a hurry and did not take her any powdered milk, but she was the one who threatened her father to take her with him. So she did not throw tantrums or get into trouble in the car. If she says she is hungry and wants milk, will he think the baby is annoying him? She had just gone to the toilet, and now she needed food. Thinking about all these troubles, she guessed that next time, Huo Sui Ching would not take her to play. I'll just deal with it. I won't die without food. Gah! Huo Xiao Xiao sighed. She had such a weak stomach. No, even people who are made of steel will feel hungry. Besides, she was still growing, so how could she not eat? This cannot be tolerated. I need milk. Huo Xiao Xiao walked up to Huo Sui Ching pulled his pant leg and looked at him impatiently. Huo Sui Cheng hugged her with one arm, sat her on his lap, looked over her, throwing the card, and asked in a weak voice, What happened again? Again, again. He even said it again. Isn't it natural for a father to take care of his daughter? Isn't that the same problem? Do I need to say this again? It's like I'm deliberately causing problems. Huo Xiao Xiao was furious. I also have character. I won't ask for anything. I won't drink milk today. 
She prepared to get down from Huo Sui Ching, but grr, grr. Huo Xiao Xiao stretched out on Huo Sui Ching's shoulder and whispered in his ear like a mosquito. Dad, I'm hungry. I want to drink milk. Huo Sui Ching glanced at her sideways. To show that she was really not looking for trouble, Huo Xiao Xiao patted her small belly. Grr. The little belly gurgled twice in confirmation of her words. Huo Xiao Xiao thought that she whispered quietly, but in fact it was clearly heard by the people at the table. Lu Boyan, who was sitting next to him, burst out laughing, unable to hold the cards in his hand. Baby, you are so cute. Come here, big brother will give you milk. Huo Sui Cheng looked at her and raised his hand to call the waitress. Please help me make some milk powder in a bottle. The waitress smiled and nodded, but a big question mark appeared in her heart. She served so many guests. However, this was the first time a client had brought such a small child, and it was also the first time anyone had asked for milk. Fortunately, they had everything they needed. It didn't take long before Huo Xiao Xiao received the milk. PR. This is what an elite club means. After kissing Huo Sui Cheng on the face, Huo Xiao Xiao got off his feet and climbed onto the sofa with a bottle in her hands. Holding it in her hand, she turned on the tablet and began drinking milk. At the moment, she was genuinely pleased. Lu Boyan looked at Huo Xiao Xiao lying in the corner of the sofa, sipping milk, and thought out loud, Yi Yang, I remember your son, Yi Qian, who just turned two years old, right? He is about the same age as Xiao Xiao. I think it's best to put them together. Huo Sui Cheng's eyes slid coldly past, and Yang looked at Huo Xiao Xiao, who was comfortably nestled in the corner of the room. Huo Xiao Xiao didn't know that her life was almost entrusted to a two-year-old child who didn't even have hair yet. After drinking the milk, she lay down on her back in the corner of the sofa and began to watch television. From time to time, she noted the characters in the series and grumbled, Jin Xuan, who just entered the palace, is dead. This dear concubine Jin Wan is from the Niu Huju clan. Combined with the actor's indifferent and fierce gaze, it was a magnificent line. Huo Xiao Xiao squinted her eyes to imitate the actor, thinking that she could make the same expression in her eyes. However, she could not speak and could not pronounce these words clearly. In addition, her two chubby, childish cheeks trembled in time with her lips, and her pair of big crystal eyes were not impressive at all. After watching the last episode, Huo Xiao Xiao put down the tablet contentedly. She usually used this tablet to watch cartoons and listen to children's songs. A goat and a big wolf, Peppa Pig. That's what her grandfather watched with her. She was a child who looked only a year old, but her soul was already 19 years old. This made Huo Xiao Xiao feel sad, but she couldn't help it. The children loved watching cartoons. Under the kind gaze of her grandfather, she could only show with all of her might that she liked it and was very interested. She secretly watched seven episodes of this drama for half a month and finally finished it. The time on the tablet was 1648. It was time for dinner. Thinking about drinking milk, she listened to the movement behind the screen, ears perked up. She used to be focused on the drama, not paying attention to what people were talking about at the poker table. Now that she was done watching, she needed to check to see if they were talking about bad things. After some sensitive eavesdropping, she realized that it was nothing more than conversations about business matters. But she did not understand anything, and she felt sleepy. Forget it, I'll just watch something else. She unlocked the tablet and looked for the latest hot show. On the table behind the screen, everyone was equal except for Lu Boyan, who lost all his chips. Jiang Zhi twirled the lighter and lit the flame with a click. I heard that the Jiang family recently had a big project and brought together many companies for industrial integration. Yi Yang lowered his eyebrows and said indifferently, It is common to say that this is industrial integration, but in fact they want to monopolize the market and set industry rules? Monopoly? Lu Boyan grinned. Elusive mockery and sarcasm were visible in his eyes. Isn't it good for all of us to earn money together? Do we have to play Monopoly? What is this story? He's trying to take jobs at so many companies and he's not afraid to offend people to support himself. Zheng Hui has ambition and strength, so it all depends on his means. When Yi Yang finished, he stopped and looked at Huo Suicheng. By the way, recently a resort hotel project was in the planning stage. Are you interested? Resort hotels have never been Huo Group's focus. How did you come up with the idea of finding me to collaborate with? Isn't Lu Boyan more suitable? Lu Boyan sighed. If I had the land on Looming Mountain, this opportunity to make money would not fall into your hands? Huo Suicheng frowned. Looming Mountain? Looming Mountain was located in a suburb outside the city, surrounded by mountains and the sea. Before the suburbs were planned, there was no road to Looming Mountain from the urban area. It was a deserted hill that no one wanted to visit. However, in recent years, the city has developed rapidly. Over the past 10 years, its scale has more than doubled. The once deserted and undeveloped Lumen Mountain instantly became the hottest scenic spot in the suburb. 
with an advantageous geographical location. Twenty years ago, old Master Huo visited her one day. First, he believed that the environment was favorable for the future. Secondly, he bought the mountain to find a place for his future retirement. Brother Huo, doesn't your father want to develop this mountain? It has been standing idle for twenty years. If it had been developed five years earlier, old Master Huo would have already doubled his profits. Lu Boyan lowered his voice. I heard that there is something in Lumen Mountain. Has he never thought about digging it up? Huo Sweetcheng asked without moving a single muscle. Who did you hear this from? Jiang Shi shared information. Who doesn't know that there is something in Lumen Mountain? It's just that your old man talked about it so much that no one could do anything about it even if they wanted to. Seriously, you should know how hot it has been on this mountain in recent years. Don't you feel moved? Huo Sweetcheng fell silent for a moment. It wasn't that he didn't give in to temptation. One day he tried the water, but the old man did not pay any attention to him. He was not interested in profit. What happened? Noticing Huo Sweetcheng, he silenced. Lu Boyan smiled. Uncle Huo is also a determined businessman. He shouldn't be so fussy, right? Huo Sweetcheng shook his head. It's not that simple. Think about it. This is not a scenic reserve. The government also has an idea for its development. Throwing such a big mountain is a waste of time. As soon as the voice died down, Huo Xiaoxiao looked up from the tablet screen and handed it to Huo Suicheng. Dark. She sat comfortably on the sofa watching programs, but then the battery died. She couldn't find the charger for a while, so she had to ask Huo Suicheng for help. But as soon as she approached, she felt one, two, three, four pairs of eyes glance down at her. Their gazes were deep. Lu Boyan even said inexplicably, Is this really so? Huo Xiaoxiao looked at Lu Boyan questioningly. Lu Boyan threw down his cards. No more games? He then stood up and picked her up, ignoring Huo Xiaoxiao's resistance. Is the baby hungry? How about this brother invites you to dinner? The other three at the table looked at each other and stood up to follow him. The dining room was next door. The private room was like a themed suite, with small bridges and flowing water outside, poetic and picturesque inside. Subtle, elegant, and light. The classic style was strong, and even the food was classy. Huo Xiaoxiao's high chair was placed between several people, and a large table was specially set for her. Feeling suddenly cared for, Huo Xiaoxiao was afraid. It was impossible to poison her because she was a child. What else could they do to her? Thinking that it was a false alarm, Huo Xiaoxiao, who was hungry, focused on eating and quickly began to clear the table. The food had a calming effect. She wiped the oil from her small mouth, patted her bulging belly, and felt full. Lu Boyan wiped his mouth and smiled. Is this delicious, baby? Delicious? Listen, your dad brought you to play and eat delicious food. Do you want to listen to your dad? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded hesitantly. Good girl, Lu Boyang praised, touching her small head. Huo Xiaoxiao looked at Lu Boyan blankly, as if he was planning something evil. She ignored him and asked Huo Suicheng, Dad, when are you leaving? Looking at his watch, Huo Suicheng said, Later. Huo Xiaoxiao watched the clock go in a circle. She lay on the sofa, almost falling asleep, and vaguely heard Huo Suicheng say in a low voice, I will come back later. Xiao Xiao still wants to play for a while. Don't worry. I'll take good care of her. Huo Xiao Xiao woke up in confusion, looking blankly at Huo Sui Ching, who hung up the phone in front of her. What she just heard was not very clear. Dad, are we going home? Sleep, good girl. Huo Xiao Xiao rubbed her eyes and went to bed. When she woke up again, she was already on her way back. After sleeping for two hours, Huo Xiao Xiao was in a good mood. She stood up and looked out the window. The Bentley slowly drove into the ground of Huo's mansion. When she arrived, she found that the entire yard was illuminated. The villa was unusually light. Old Master Huo was sitting on the sofa in the hall with his cane. Frowning his brows, he looked at the father and daughter entering through the door. The father and daughter felt an unusual atmosphere at the same time. Huo Suicheng hugged Huo Xiaoxiao and whispered, Do you want to go play next time? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded. Then don't say anything, otherwise dad won't take you to play next time, okay? It didn't sound quite right, as if it was a trap. But old Master Huo was already around the corner, and Huo Xiao Xiao didn't have time to think about it. Huo Sui Ching took her to the living room and said, Why didn't you go back to your room to rest at such a late hour? Huo Xiao Xiao rushed to her grandfather, opened her arms, smiled, and shouted, Grandfather! The indignation on the old man's face immediately washed away when he heard grandfather. Clearing his throat to regain his former composure, he solemnly asked, Do you two know what time it is? It was already 11.05 p.m. With a one-year-old child returning so late, they couldn't blame old Master Huo for getting angry. Huo Suicheng, what's wrong with you? Take a child and come back so late. She's still so small and you're not even careful. Don't you know how dangerous it is to accidentally bump into strangers? Huo Suicheng could only keep his mouth shut 
to prevent the old man from getting even more wood for the fire of his resentment. If you walk with your child for so long, don't you know how to call others to tell them about it? Realizing that the endless lectures would not end, Huo Sui Ching apologized profusely. Sorry to bother you today. Children love to play and don't want to leave when they see something new at the amusement park. Next time I will be more careful. Huo Xiao Xiao? Huo Xiao Xiao looked at Huo Sui Cheng with a question mark on her face, an expression that was difficult to explain. Is this man really that slippery? Just because the child can't speak freely, he can just blame it on me? He is already over 30 years old, but he still abuses children? He is truly a shameless father. Despite his shamelessness, Huo Sui Cheng got the answer he wanted. Old Master Huo looked much better when he heard that it was because of Huo Xiao Xiao. However, he still said a few words. You know very well that Xiao Xiao is still small. She is playful and cannot control her curiosity. But can't you, father, keep this under control? What could I do? She cried and rolled on the ground. Besides, I'm inexperienced. So today I indulged her. You can be sure that there won't be a next time. Huo Xiao Xiao, what are you saying? What do you mean when you say I cried and caused problems? Why are you adding more on top as you already blamed on me? Huo Xiao Xiao never rolled on the ground. She couldn't bear this insult and opened her mouth to refute it. But Huo Sui Cheng gave her a threatening look. Still, was Huo Xiao Xiao the kind of person who was afraid of threats? This is not so. Grandfather, I Huo Sui Cheng, relying on his age advantage, interrupted Huo Xiao Xiao. Xiao Xiao also said that she wants an amusement park. Although the children speak without embarrassment, I think that since she loves to play so much and it is not safe outside, it is better to build an amusement park for her. Huo Xiao Xiao was puzzled. When did I say I wanted an amusement park? You want to play? What is he doing? Grandfather will not agree to such an outrageous request. Huo Xiao Xiao thought confidently, expecting Master Huo to scold him. But old Master Huo was intrigued and even nodded thoughtfully. What you said is quite reasonable. I didn't take Xiao Xiao this year. It was my negligence. Besides, it's not safe outside. It would be nice to build an amusement park. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at him incredulously. The scenery of Looming Mountain is good. Isn't the villa you built there the year before not finished yet? We can choose this place. What do you think? Mount Lumin? Old Master Huo knitted his eyebrows and hesitated. That place? Huo Sui Ching looked at Huo Xiao Xiao and rubbed her knee, which was injured in the morning. Huo Xiao Xiao screamed in pain. Okay, okay, in this place. Build it! And suddenly a whole amusement park will appear for her. Huo Xiao Xiao's eyes were full of tears. She gnashed her teeth at Huo Sui Cheng's evil deeds, feeling wronged. The more you endure, the more angry you become. The more you retreat, the more you lose. Once the skirt was lifted, her bruised knee was exposed. She looked at her grandfather and tears flowed from her eyes. <laughs> okay, Hayden, let's hurt each other. The children's skin was delicate and thin, and Huo Sui Cheng in the morning, without thinking, dragged his daughter four or five steps, resulting in her knee being covered in scratches. After Aunt Zhao treated the wound with medicine, her knee turned from red to purple. That white, delicate, and soft skin on her leg looked scary. She didn't care even if they returned so late, but he used it as a shield. She didn't care that he was using her as an excuse to build an amusement park, but should he have rubbed salt in her wounds after blaming her? Did she count the wounds he inflicted on her? No! If he had stopped earlier, Huo Xiao Xiao would not have done this either. Once the skirt was removed, she was no longer afraid that they would both end up in mutual destruction. As expected, old master Huo was shocked when he saw Huo Xiao Xiao's knee injury. What happened? Why do you have such a bruise on your knee? Huo Xiao Xiao immediately became depressed, but she didn't cry and endured it. She pouted her lips, and in an instant, tears the size of raindrops began to pour out. From time to time, she sobbed as if she was short of air. Huo Xiao Xiao's expression of injustice and resentment was much more painful than crying and screaming. Old Master Huo was heartbroken over his little granddaughter. Don't cry, don't cry, Old Master Huo consoled her. He then wiped Huo Xiao Xiao's tears with one hand and shouted, Go and get the medicine. After giving the order, he couldn't help but grumble. What's going on? You have such a big bruise, but no one noticed? How painful it must be. The medicine was delivered by Uncle Chen and carefully applied to Huo Xiao Xiao's knee. Except for Huo Xiao Xiao's sobs, the living room was silent, and even the drop of a needle could be heard. Nobody knows what happened. Doesn't anyone care about such a small child? Speaking of this, old master Huo seemed to be thinking about something. His gaze moved from Huo Xiao Xiao's knee to Huo Sui Cheng. Tell me, Huo Sui Cheng knew from the moment Huo Xiao Xiao lifted her skirt that he would be scolded today. He remained silent to minimize the sensation of his presence, but still could not escape. And yet he could not tell the truth. She accidentally fell in the morning. Did she fall by accident? Like this? You just watched her from the sidelines and didn't take proper care of her? 
How old is she that you let her fall like that? Old Master Ho suddenly flushed. She's your daughter. How did you become a father? Luckily, it's only bruising and some swelling. She's still a child. What will you do in the future if she breaks her leg? Huo Suicheng's face did not change. Next time I will be more careful. Next time. I think you just don't care. Holding a stick in his hand, he threatened to hit Huo Suicheng's hand. Huo Xiaoxiao was shocked. She didn't expect Grandpa to be so angry, so she subconsciously took his hand. It was a subconscious move. When she reacted, she was already hugging her grandfather's leg. She calmed down for a second, wiping the tears from her eyes. No fights. Even though her villain father was a real jerk, she just wanted her grandfather to scold him, the man who always made her take the blame. But beating him will not lead to anything good. That would be a completely different matter. If her grandfather had actually done this, the meaning would have changed, and there would have been estrangement between them. The hard-earned bond between father and daughter could not be destroyed by that stick. Do not hit me. Don't hit dad. Old Master Ho's cane stopped in the air, and he gave Ho Sui Cheng a fierce look. His eyes seemed to say, you are not as intelligent as your daughter. Grandfather. Grandfather, you two don't quarrel. Okay, Grandpa wanted to hit him. The cane in his hand dropped. Don't be angry. Okay, Grandpa isn't angry. No more tears. Everything will be fine tomorrow. The medicine will help. Grandpa will build a park for you in two days, okay? Huo Xiao Xiao thought about it seriously. Since her cheap father used her as a shield and wanted to build an amusement park, there must be something more than what appeared on the surface. She remembered her dream. Because of Looming Mountain, Huo Sui Ching and her grandfather's relationship was completely destroyed. This will not work. She couldn't let this happen. This time I'll just leave it as is. She was just a child. But she had to put such a heavy burden on her weak shoulders. But it was not just like that. At least she has an amusement park. Good. Good girl. Are you still in pain? It doesn't hurt anymore. Huo Xiao Xiao yawned. The time was already late. After the showdown, old master Huo went upstairs to rest. Aunt Zhao also took Huo Xiao Xiao to her room, and Huo Sui Ching sat on the sofa alone and rubbed his eyebrows tiredly. He was given a cup of hot water. Huo Sui Ching looked up and saw that it was Chen Bo and took the cup. Uncle Chen sighed. After being in the Huo family for so many years, he knew that father and son did not see eye to eye, so he had to give advice. Tonight, when you and Zhao Xiao didn't return, the master was worried, so he took more medicine. Don't take it to heart. Huo Sui Cheng frowned. I understand. By the way, the master values young miss very much, even willing to demolish Looming Mountain to build an amusement park. The steam from the hot water in his hand blurred his eyes. Huo Sui Cheng's tone was flat, and no emotion could be detected in it. Yes, he has never been so kind to people. Uncle Chen laughed. Isn't it because Xiao Xiao is your daughter? If it were someone else... How could he show his emotions like that? His father was not easy to deal with in the business world when he was young. Huo Sui Cheng's education has always been harsh. Tenderness and love were reserved only for Huo Xiao Xiao, a relative of the next generation. Uncle Chen doesn't need to say anything. I understand everything. Huo Sui Cheng stood up without taking a sip of water from the glass. He put it aside. It's already late. You need to rest. Okay, then I'll go to bed first. After Uncle Chen went upstairs, Huo Sui Cheng sat quietly in the living room for a while, and then returned to his room. He did not turn on the light in the room. Standing by the window, he silently looked at the garden outside the window. Huo's mansion was not located in the suburbs. However, the place was soundproof and quiet. This tranquility was ideal for meditation. The old man promised to build an amusement park. It can be said that he released most of the rights to develop Mount Lumen. The resort hotel plus amusement park was one of the highlights. If this project were successful, it would definitely become one of the most popular scenic spots in the city. Mount Lumen. Huo Sui Ching closed his eyes. It seemed that the problem had been solved, but it was just an illusion. The deception could only last for a while. The day will come when the lie will fall apart. By then, he and his father should have started fighting. Click! A faint sound suddenly rang out in the silence of the room. Click, click, click. The door opened slightly. Huo Xiao Xiao took advantage of people's inattention, tiptoed onto a small stool and opened the door of Huo Sui Ching's room. Huo Sui Ching looked at the door when a small head popped in from outside. After looking around, the girl got down from the stool, then carried it into the room and placed it next to the bed, probably to climb onto the bed. But Huo Xiao Xiao's height was still short. Even after using the stool as a step, her legs were dangling in the air. After watching from the side for a while, Huo Sui Ching shook his head and smiled. Finally, he couldn't help but stepped forward, picking up Huo Xiao Xiao. Huo Xiao Xiao, who was suddenly lifted into the air, was shocked and squirmed in Huo Sui Cheng's arms. Don't move? Huo Sui Cheng stopped her movement with one sentence and turned on the light. Seeing that it was Huo Sui Cheng hugging her, Huo Xiao Xiao felt relieved. 
Since the room was dark, she assumed that Huo Suicheng had gone to bed and fallen asleep. How could she know that he would hide in the dark and scare her? Huo Suicheng put her on the bed and looked down at her. Aren't you forbidden to come to my room? Why are you here again? Huo Xiaoxiao wondered whether she should play dumb or not. Huo Suicheng saw right through her at first glance. I know that you are smart and can understand me. Don't not be stupid. Now that her cards were revealed, Huo Xiaoxiao generously admitted, I want to sleep with my father. Why do you want to sleep with me? Huo Xiaoxiao rolled up her pants and pointed to her knee. It hurts. Sissy. Pain. Her wound was impressive. Huo Suicheng's eyebrows furrowed slightly as he squatted in front of the bed. He gently rubbed his palm over her purple bruised knee. Dad will massage this place so that it heals quickly. Huo Xiaoxiao looked at Huo Xuecheng up close. Under the thick black eyelashes, those eyes always had a kind of gloomy melancholy that could not be cleared up. The eyebrows were almost always tightly knit and never relaxed. Dad, why aren't you happy? I'm not unhappy at all. Huo Xiaoxiao reached out and touched Huo Xuecheng's frowning eyebrows. She frowned. Why are you doing this? His hand stopped rubbing her knee. Huo Xuecheng raised his eyes and looked at her wrinkled, plump face. That's how adults are. Huo Xiaoxiao pouted her lips, clearly not believing. Aunt Zhao is not like that at all. Because you make Aunt Zhao happy, then I can make you happy too. Huo Xuecheng, his eyebrows relaxed, and he lowered his head, laughing briefly. I'm not unhappy at all. Liar. Why should I lie to you and you lied to your grandfather? Adults lie. Not good. Huo Xuecheng smiled. It's a life instinct. Huo Xiaoxiao frowned, seemingly not understanding anything. Huo Suicheng didn't expect her to understand. Do you still want to go out with me in the future? Huo Xiaoxiao's frown deepened. Huo Suicheng laughed loudly. Stingy. He lifted the blanket and motioned for Huo Xiaoxiao to go to bed. Don't wet the bed today, do you hear? Huo Xiaoxiao, who was crawling under the blanket, blushed at his words. I hate it. One moment she felt that this father was good, and then he returned to his true character, which was a shame. Huo Suicheng watched her crawl under the blanket without raising his eyes and covering his head. He knew that she was shy, so he unfolded the blanket and said, Okay, no one is laughing at you? Close your eyes and quickly fall asleep. Someday I will take you to an amusement park. She had no interest in amusement parks or anything like that. Instead, she looked at Huo Suicheng with wide eyes. Dad and grandfather, he Huo Suicheng lay down next to her. Sleep. Mm. Oh. The night outside the window was dark, and the moon was hiding in the dark clouds. The child next to him was breathing evenly. In the darkness, Huo Suicheng opened his eyes and turned to look at Huo Xiaoxiao, who was fast asleep. This child always sweated when he slept at night. The hair on her forehead was wet and stuck to it. Sometimes she unconsciously raised her hands to brush them away. She seemed uncomfortable. He reached out and gently stroked her small forehead. He brushed back her beautiful hair and wiped the sweat with his palm. At night, Huo Xiaoxiao had a dream. It was a dream about Huo Suicheng. In it, she was so far away from Huo Suicheng that his face was a little blurry. She saw her father sitting on a chair and leaning back arrogantly. In front of him stood two bodyguards in suits who were pinning a man to the floor in a pitiful position. She didn't hear what he said, so she took a few steps forward and saw that Huo Suicheng's face had changed since he stood in front of her. He was arrogant, like a villain in a TV drama. Realizing that Huo Suicheng might be doing something wrong, Huo Xiaoxiao shouted, Dad! But Huo Suicheng didn't hear her. He said something unknown to the two bodyguards. They pulled the suffering man by the arms, beat him, and drove him into a corner. Huo Suicheng stood up, took out a lighter, and calmly lit a cigarette. He looked at the man and threw away the lighter. The room was in disarray and full of documents that quickly caught fire when exposed to an open flame. The fire gradually spread to the ceiling. In the blazing red light, she saw Huo Suicheng grab the man by the collar and drag him toward the source of the fire. Once he let go, the person would be thrown into the fire pit. Seeing this terrible scene, Huo Xiaoxiao felt that her heart stopped beating for a moment. She was shocked, turned pale, and screamed behind Huo Suicheng, Dad? It was strange that Huo Suicheng seemed to hear her this time. His figure froze slightly, and he slowly looked towards Huo Xiaoxiao. Looking into each other's eyes, they focused on one point in the air. Huo Xiaoxiao was absolutely sure that he could see her, and she happily ran towards him. Don't come here! Huo Xiaoxiao stopped, but the raging fire surrounded her like a fiery snake. The heat around her made her stop. She didn't dare take a step further. Through the fire, she saw Huo Suicheng push away the man he was holding by the collar and walk towards her. Huo Xiaoxiao felt relieved by the sudden feeling of security. But the next second, she saw Huo Suicheng's face change dramatically. She looked up and saw the chandelier overhead falling due to the fire. Huo Xiaoxiao woke up from her sleep and looked at the ceiling. No chandelier, no fire. 
Fortunately, it was a dream. When she remembered the scene from her dream, Kuo Xiaoxiao couldn't help but frown. Was the man in the dream really her dad? Doing bad things, killing and setting fires. Is he really that heartless? But although she only got along with Huo Suicheng for a few days, and he often did not behave as well as she wanted, he was not as fierce as she dreamed. Is this just a dream? The more she thought about it, the more worried she became. How could he be so cruel when he rubbed her knee to relieve the pain? It looks like it was a prejudice. Huo Xiaoxiao felt that this was exactly the case. Yawning, she reached out and rubbed her eyes. Huo Suicheng was no longer in bed, perhaps because of the nightmares. She was sweating profusely and felt uncomfortable with the clothes clinging to her body. Huo Xiaoxiao lifted the blanket and stood up. The bathroom door opened. Huo Suicheng walked out of the bathroom with his upper body exposed, apparently taking his morning shower. Drops of water rolled down his chest and onto his eight-pack stomach. Huo Xiaoxiao blushed. Dad, get dressed. Huo Suicheng, who was walking holding a towel to wipe off the water, was shocked. He didn't expect the child to wake up so early. He immediately found a shirt in the closet and put it on. Huo Xiaoxiao carefully got down from the bed, walking barefoot on the carpet, and stared at him blankly. What about my clothes? While he was fastening the button on his shirt, Huo Suicheng threw the clothes he had taken off on the sofa. Huo Xiaoxiao had just woken up and was still confused and unable to react. When her head was covered by a pile of clothes, her legs trembled, unable to support her body. She stumbled backwards and landed on her buttocks. Things immediately covered her head. Huo Suicheng laughed loudly. Huo Xiaoxiao slammed her fist on the floor with hatred. Well, of course, the dream was true. The father is such a fierce man. Today, he abused children. Tomorrow, he did whatever he wanted. The day after tomorrow, he killed people and burned them. This was extremely cruel. With such a loss of conscience, what else would he not dare to do? Huo Xiaoxiao pulled the clothes off her face, sat down dejectedly, and stared at Huo Suicheng. Huo Suicheng fastened the last button and lifted the girl from the floor onto the bed. Huo Xiaoxiao looked serious. Hmm, you're laughing at me. Xiao Xiao, that's not what my father meant. I will ask An Zhao to dress you. Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed the hem of his shirt and thrust her clothes into his hands. You are dressing me. Do it yourself. How old are you? Do you need someone else to help you with something as simple as getting dressed? Huo Xiao Xiao was straightforward. I am still a child. Children should learn to dress themselves. They had a standoff for some time. Huo Xiao Xiao snorted coldly and stood up from the bed, holding her clothes in her hands. I'll find my grandfather. Okay, I'll dress you. Huo Xiaoxiao, not satisfied with the small win, objected. I don't want you. Huo Suicheng held her hand to prevent her from getting out of bed. You little devil. You will complain if your requests are not fulfilled. Who taught you? I'll find grandpa. Okay, stay calm, I'll dress you. Huo Suicheng frowned, holding in his hand clothes that were an unknown number of sizes smaller than he was used to. He carefully examined her from top to bottom several times, then bent down to put on her t-shirt, pants, and sweater one at a time. Okay then. Let's go downstairs for breakfast. Looking at her t-shirt tucked into her loose, inside-out trousers, the vindictive Huo Xiao Xiao decided not to remind him that he had put her trousers on backwards. Later, she would let Grandpa see this and scold him. Huo Suicheng didn't know how to take care of children. After dressing Huo Xiao Xiao, he was ready to leave. Huo Xiao Xiao gathered her courage while standing on the edge of the bed and jumped towards Huo Suicheng. She hooked her arms around his neck and wrapped her legs around his waist. Breaking out in a cold sweat, he hurriedly hugged her. Huo Xiao Xiao? She looked at him innocently with her big sparkling eyes as if saying, what did I do wrong? She was not at all embarrassed that she had done something wrong. Huo Suicheng hugged her with a sullen face and left. Next time you can not do this, do you hear? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded at him, burying her face in his shoulder. Downstairs, old master Huo was sitting at the dining table eating breakfast. He was surprised to see Huo Xiao Xiao getting up so early. How is it that the lazy little cat got up so early today? Huo Suicheng brought Huo Xiaoxiao to the high chair, allowing her to sit down on her own. Then, the servant brought breakfast. Huo Suicheng had bread and cheese. Huo Xiaoxiao has milk, eggs, and rice porridge, as well as some fruits and vegetables. Huo Xiaoxiao excitedly pointed at her clothes, and then at Huo Suicheng, clothes? Dad put it on. Is this what Dad put on you? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded. Old Master Huo looked at her legs and said, Why are the pants turned inside out? And Zhao, who was standing on the side, quickly lifted Huo Xiao Xiao from the chair. I'll go and change Zhao Xiao's clothes. Huo Xiao Xiao, who remembered her revenge and wanted to see her grandfather reprimand Huo Sui Cheng, was helplessly carried to the living room. She was changed, and when she returned to the dining table, her favorite egg was pricked onto Huo Sui Cheng's fork, and the last piece was about to go into his mouth. Huo Xiao Xiao was a little angry. Why is this person like this? She even eats her baby's eggs. Eggs? 
Huo Suiqing looked around and said, All the eggs have been eaten. Mine. Stingy. Okay, let the cook fry some more. Huo Xiaoxiao extended two fingers to her grandfather and said, Two. Okay, two. She didn't see her grandfather reproaching her father. Huo Xiaoxiao, whose scrambled eggs were stolen, became upset and took a spoon to eat the porridge. Will you go to the company later? Hmm. Huo Suiqing ate his bread and talked to Mr. Huo as if nothing had happened. Today I have a board meeting that I must attend. Vice President Zhou has been with you for a long time. Do you still keep in touch with him? Old Master Huo put down his chopsticks and sighed heavily. He too was confused for a while. Confused for a while? It is impossible to live a happy life. Hearing Vice President Zhou's name, some thoughts came to Huo Xiaoxiao's mind. She remembered that Vice President Zhou was always the one who went crazy with affairs in China when Huo Suicheng went abroad. He even wanted to sabotage the board members in order to throw Huo Suicheng out of the board. Of course, such a person was instantly crushed by Huo Suicheng, who threatened his wife and children abroad. Even knowing that Huo Suicheng did not have to make any compromises to resolve this issue, Huo Xiaoxiao still racked her brains, but could not think of any way to stop him. I have already eaten. I'll go to the company first. Huo Suicheng stood up and left. Dad, Huo Xiaoxiao quickly called him. Huo Suicheng stopped and looked back at her. What happened? The words got stuck in her mouth. In the end, she just spat out the phrase, come back early. Huo Suicheng was slightly shocked, and a grunt came out of his throat. Hmm? On the way to the company, Huo Suicheng frowned and he kept looking out the window. Brother Ching, what happened? Did something happen to the company? Asked Jiao Wu, who was sitting next to him. Huo Suicheng shook his head. No, I just remembered a dream I had last night. A dream? Remembering this dream, Huo Suicheng frowned even more. Fire, documents, people, chandelier, Huo Xiaoxiao. Although it was just a dream, the moment when the burnt chandelier hit Huo Xiaoxiao was still shocking. Just a dream, don't worry. Okay, soon they reached the Huo Group building. Huo Suicheng went abroad for one year to explore overseas markets and seek cooperation to establish branches. His goal was simple. His father took a conservative approach to the company's development and hoped that the company could take advantage of the wind at the right time. Although the development of foreign markets was difficult, everything went well. It was a pity that during his stay abroad, there was a fire in the backyard. Vice President Joe, who had worked in the company for many years, even wanted to team up with the board members to throw him out of the board of directors. Huo Suicheng got out of the car. They arrived on time and the company employees greeted Mr. Huo, who had not appeared for a year. Good afternoon, President. Good afternoon, President. Huo Suicheng walked towards the elevator with expressionless eyes. Before the elevator door closed, Xiao Wu answered the bell and entered the elevator. He then turned to Huo Suicheng. Brother Cheng, Vice President Zhou said that he wants to see you in front of the board of directors. Huo Suicheng apparently expected this. I know. The elevator stopped at his office floor. He had just left when the special assistant to the president came up to him and said, President Huo, Vice President Zhou is now in the living room, saying he wants to see you. Let him come into my office. Okay. Huo Suicheng entered the office. Soon his assistant knocked on the door. A middle-aged man with a calm face walked in behind him. He immediately got down to business. President Huo, I want to talk to you about something. However, Huo Suicheng was kind enough to ask him to sit on the sofa. I remember that today's board meeting was called by Vice President Zhou. Why hasn't the meeting started yet? Vice President Zhou hurries towards me. What's the matter? Vice President Zhou's complexion was clearly abnormal. <laughs> today's meeting was necessary because I agree with several directors that overseas market exploration is not necessary for Huo's current development. We must invest all our funds and resources in the domestic market. There is great risk abroad. It's good that you're young, but you can't let us old people take risks with you. I have provided the directors with a copy of the information on the expected risk and return for foreign markets. I think they will reconsider after reading this information. As far as I know, Vice President Joe seems to be right about people, but not about things. I don't think we have anything to talk about. I hope Vice President Zhou will think twice about the board of directors. After the conversation, Huo Suicheng stood up. Oh yes, I heard that Vice President Zhou sent his wife and son abroad a month ago. Vice President Zhou slowly closed his eyes. That's why he came here. However, I heard that Vice President Zhou's son is not very prudent. He hurt people when he went abroad. He is now detained at the police station. Vice President Zhou sighed. It's my fault that the child is not disciplined. I know that the president has many friends abroad. If you help me, I will not attend today's meeting. Seeing your sincerity, I must help. Vice President Joe worked hard for the company for many years. You should think about your family and teach your children better. It is better to take this opportunity to retire and return home before the end of the year. 
Vice President Zhou jumped to his feet. Huo Sui Cheng, you won? Get your way? Huo Sui Cheng's face darkened for a moment. As he looked at Vice President Zhou, his eyes clouded. Vice President Zhou, am I easy to talk to? You are so unprincipled. Vice President Zhou clenched his teeth and thought about his son, from whom there was no news yet. Looking at Huo Sui Cheng, he took a deep breath and said, Okay, I promise you, that would be great. With these words, Huo Sui Cheng left the office. Xiao Wu quietly followed him. Brother Cheng there in America, after this matter is dealt with, let his son contact him. Yes, it was easy to deceive a man who was more than 10,000 kilometers away that his son was driving drunk. Xiao Wu didn't understand. Although such things are easy to fake, they are likely to be exposed. If they are not careful, it will become a mess. Vice President Zhou had been eyeing his position for some time and would not let him go so easily. Once he is exposed, Vice President Zhou will attack him with weapons in his hands at today's meeting. Apparently, it was possible to fake a drunk driving case and get Vice President Zhou's son to actually end up in the police station. Why did he suddenly change his mind? Eventually, Huo Sui Cheng received his official position in the company. He first convinced the board of directors to invest in foreign projects, and then received a contract signed with his father to develop Mount Lumen. On the day of receiving the contract, Yi Group employees showed up at Huo Group's conference room. Both sides began to cooperate on the Lumen Mountain project. But old master Huo, who was kept in the dark, did not know about it. He had not paid attention to the company's affairs for more than a year. The drawings and plans given to him by Huo Sui Cheng did not reveal any other plans other than building an amusement park on Looming Mountain. So when Vice President Joe confronted him about this, he was furious. Bastard, this bastard. How dare he trick me into developing Lumen Mountain? When old master Huo found out about this, he almost smashed the calligraphy vessel into pieces. Uncle Chen stood outside trying to calm him down, but he didn't dare. Huo Sui Ching returned from the company and entered his father's office. The quarrel became uncontrollable, and Huo Xiao Xiao, who was sleeping in the room, hurried to hear the screams. Xiao Xiao. Listen, uncle, dad and grandpa are arguing in the office. Grandpa loves you the most, right? He is not in good health, so he cannot be angry. Can you calm grandpa down? Huo Xiao Xiao heard a furious quarrel from the half-open office door and was shocked. Will the relationship between father and son break down today? Good girl, go quickly. Uncle Chen opened the office door and let Huo Xiao Xiao in while the two in the office were not paying attention to him. What did you promise me? That this is just to build an amusement park for Zhao Xiao. Why do you want to develop the resort now? Still hiding this from me. Did you ask my permission? Old Master Hua was furious. The vase broke and the pieces hit Huo Xiao Xiao's feet. I'm telling you I don't agree, Mount Lumen. I won't let anyone touch her. Suddenly, footsteps were heard and someone stopped in front of Huo Xiao Xiao. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at Huo Sui Cheng, who had a serious and gloomy expression. She timidly turned around and subconsciously took a step to the right. Huo Sui Cheng glanced at her and wanted to say something, but in the end, he remained silent. He opened the door and walked away. Uncle Chen came in from outside. Looking at the pale face of his master, he said with alarm, Master? Old Master Huo held the table with one hand and waved to him. He was out of breath and said, Go away, I don't want to be bothered. Looking at the chaos everywhere, Uncle Chen was worried about his master's health. However, it was not easy to calm him down at this time so it could only console him before leaving. Be careful about your health, don't get angry. Then he glanced at Huo Xiao Xiao and left the office. Huo Xiao Xiao approached old master Huo and called out in alarm, Grandfather? Before she could say anything, she saw old master Huo bend over. He pressed his hands tightly to his heart, his face turned pale with pain. Grandfather? Old master Huo could no longer speak. With the last of his strength, he pointed in a certain direction, and the word came out of his throat, Medicine? Huo Xiao Xiao saw a bottle of medicine in the corner in the direction of his fingers. She quickly took it. The girl remembered how her grandfather used to take medicine, two at a time. Bam! Old Master Huo collapsed directly onto the sofa. Huo Xiao Xiao didn't care. She poured two pills out of the bottle, opened Grandpa's mouth, and put them inside. Then she shouted towards the door, Uncle! Uncle! However, the office had good sound insulation. Huo Xiao Xiao had a sore throat, but no one came in. After giving him the medicine, Huo Xiao Xiao ran to the door and started banging on it. Uncle, uncle, Xiao Xiao. Huo Xiao Xiao looked back and saw that old master Huo was waking up. She felt relieved? Grandfather? There was a trembling in her voice. Everything is fine. Everything is fine with grandpa. I just couldn't breathe properly. This is an old problem. I just need a little rest. Listening to her grandfather, Huo Xiao Xiao sat on the floor, her legs soft, seeing that she was so worried about him. Old Master Huo stood up trembling with a loving gaze and carried her to the sofa. 
Grandpa knows that Xiao Xiao cares about Grandpa the most? Did you just get scared? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded heavily. Very good. Breathing heavily, the grandfather stroked her on the top of her head. He slowed his movements. Not like your illegitimate father. Huo Xiao Xiao quickly shook her head. Daddy, not bad. She tried to explain, Dad loves grandfather. Love, if that bastard loves me, why did he make me angry? Really? Fine. Grandpa believes you. Of course he didn't believe it. Huo Xiao Xiao was anxious and didn't know how to express it. What she wanted to say got stuck in her throat and she couldn't say anything. Grandpa, let's check on Dad. <laughs> let's check on Dad. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded, bowed her head, closed her eyes and stuck out her tongue, making a faint face. Grandpa, do it. What is this? Grandpa, Dad, Dad will be worried. Dad loves Grandpa. Old Master Huo was still puzzled. Obviously, he didn't understand what Huo Xiao Xiao meant. This game, Grandpa. She bowed her head and closed her eyes, sticking out her tongue, impatiently explaining, Dad will cry and worry. Old Master Huo finally understood what she meant. Do you want me to lose consciousness? Huo Xiao Xiao burst into tears. It was too difficult, really too difficult to explain anything. You, little girl, are thinking about something like that. Even if I die, your father will not shed a tear. Huo Xiao Xiao insisted, Grandfather, play. Dad will cry. Really? Old Master Huo was silent for a moment before hesitantly speaking. Really? Is it true? Grandpa, hurry up, pretend. After speaking, Huo Xiao Xiao jumped up from the sofa and continued knocking on the office door. This time, someone finally opened the door. Xiao Xiao, what's the matter? Huo Xiao Xiao anxiously pointed to the sofa. Grandfather? Pain, Uncle Chen looked at the sofa. Old Master Huo sat with a blank expression, bowing his head and closing his eyes. He convulsively squeezed his heart with a painful expression on his face. Master! Uncle Chen's frightened voice attracted the attention of the servants. Go and inform the young master. What's the matter? Huo Suicheng asked. The old master fainted. Huo Suicheng's face immediately changed as soon as he heard these words. He walked into the office without saying a word. Seeing his father lying unconscious on the sofa, he turned around and barked, call an ambulance. Huo Xiaoxiao remembered how Huo Suicheng walked towards his end step by step. If the cause of the fall was the female lead, then the separation between father and son was the trigger, causing Huo Sui Cheng to lose all his remaining conscience. Since then, he has committed all sorts of crimes, killing and setting everything on fire using ruthless means. Her father may be a scoundrel who gave up on himself, but as a daughter who ate his food, drank his water, and slept in his room, she couldn't see him like that. Only by beginning to bridge the gap between father and son could the further plan of salvation be carried out. What's the matter? Huo Sui Ching looked at his unconscious father and his majestic face changed several times. I also don't know what happened in the office. The master said that he wanted to be left alone. As soon as I entered, I saw that the old master was lying on the sofa, fainting. The master has always had poor health, and the doctor said that he cannot be too excited. It's my fault. I couldn't calm him down then. Chen Bo felt guilty. His master's heart problems began a long time ago. Now his master was old, but besides that, he had suffered a lot in his youth, and this left many scars and pain. Any physical discomfort could cause a heart attack, so the master's medicine was always nearby. In fact, in the past two years, under the supervision of Uncle Chen and others, old Master Huo rarely had a heart attack. But today's quarrel in the office was the most intense that Uncle Chen had seen in this Huo family mansion in recent years. If something really happened to old Master Huo, he would be held responsible. Huo Suicheng froze for a moment. Of course, he knew that his father's sudden illness was not caused by Uncle Chen's carelessness. The main reason was that he refused to give up. Uncle Chen, stop it. It's not your fault. Looking at Huo Sui Cheng's appearance, Huo Xiao Xiao was also a little nervous. She didn't know if her sudden flash of insight was true or if Mr. Huo's trick of pretending to be sick would work. She touched her father's frowning eyebrows. Her immature voice reassured him. Uh, Grandpa is very good. I gave my grandfather some medicine. Did you give your grandfather some medicine? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded and said, Medicine? There are two of me on the floor, Grandpa. Huo Sui Ching, though his eyes, did not reflect anything. He touched his daughter's small, disheveled head and said nothing. After this chaotic episode, the lights of a speeding ambulance pierced the dark, heavy night. Old Master Huo was taken to the ambulance. The nanny hugged Huo Xiao Xiao, but the little girl screamed, Grandfather? I want a grandfather. In fact, she wanted to express more. I am a director. I can't be absent. Huo Sui Cheng's face was calm. He silently took her from An Zhao and went to the hospital with her. They didn't have to wait too long before the emergency room. Soon the doctor came out with a relaxed look and a slight smile on his face. President Huo has nothing to worry about. Old Master Huo has no serious problems. Fortunately, he took the medicine on time. There's no attack now. 
However, we still recommend that the elder be hospitalized for two days. The doctor's words calmed some people present. Huo Sui Cheng closed his eyes. His tense heart finally relaxed, and he breathed a sigh of relief. Sorry to bother you, doctor. It's okay. Uncle Chen, please take care of the old man first. I will talk to the doctor. I will take good care of the master. After that, Huo Sui Cheng followed the doctor to his office, and Uncle Chen and Huo Xiao Xiao followed the gurney to the private ward. As soon as they entered the chamber, old master Huo woke up. He opened his eyes slightly, secretly glanced at Huo Xiao Xiao and asked her, is your father afraid? Uncle Chen, who was sitting next to him, did not have time to rejoice for the health of his master. Hearing this phrase, he immediately understood all the ins and outs of the matter. He couldn't help but laugh and at the same time get a little angry. Master what? What are you doing? Why are you plotting with a child? Huo Xiao Xiao said seriously, Uncle, that is not good. Anger's grandfather. Yes, yes, the young master is wrong, but master, didn't you see how worried the young master was now? How can you pretend to be sick and deceive him? Worried? Will this bastard care about me? If so, then he shouldn't let me get angry. Although the old man's words were strong, his tone was soft and gentle. He couldn't help but ask, is this bastard really scared? Huo Xiao Xiao made up a lie. Dad is worried and still crying. Crying? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded, looked at Uncle Chen and tried to drag him into the water. Uncle saw it too? Old Master Huo looked at Uncle Chen. Uncle Chen was helpless. What else could he say? In this matter, he did not like Huo Sui Cheng's quarrel with his master. And although he was not happy about the master pretending to be sick, in a sense, it was his master who gave in first. In that case, why doesn't he go and ease the relationship between father and son? Yes, the young master is very worried. Don't pretend to be sick in the future. He was scared. Old Master Hua was delighted and there was even a flash of pride in his eyes. I know, I know. As soon as the voice died down, the door of the room opened and steps were heard. Huo Sui Ching walked in from outside and immediately met his father's eyes. There was silence in the room for a moment, and the atmosphere was indescribable. Have you woken up yet? Old Master Huo cleared his throat. With a proud look, he said, I'm fine, it's okay. The doctor said that although it's not serious, your heart isn't in very good shape, this time you will have to spend several days in the hospital. I know my body. I don't need hospitalization. It's better for you to stay in the hospital for a few days and undergo a more thorough examination. I said no. Well, father and son again started quarreling after a few words. Huo Xiao Xiao took her grandfather's hand and stammered, muttered, he is sick so that he can be hospitalized and examined. Grandfather will be good. Chen Bo, for his part, also softened the atmosphere. Yes, sir. See, Xiao Xiao also knows that you are unwell. Why are you so stubborn? Most old people avoided doctors. Old Master Huo really didn't like the smell of disinfectant in the hospital, and the white color immediately made him unhappy. However, since they were so persistent, coupled with the guilt that lay in his heart due to the feigned illness, he reluctantly agreed to stay. Then have a good rest. I'll send someone from home here. I'll come to you tomorrow. Go, go. Huo Sui Ching looked at his daughter. Huo Xiao Xiao took her grandfather's hand and said, Grandfather is sleeping. Xiao Xiao, tomorrow. We'll come to Grandpa. Well, Grandpa will wait until Xiao Xiao comes tomorrow. After speaking, Huo Sui Cheng walked over to pick up Huo Xiao Xiao and left the ward. In the middle of the night, the entire hospital was silent, except for the occasional suppressed cough. Huo Sui Ching held Huo Xiao Xiao with an expressionless face. The sound of footsteps on the floor of the corridor was loud and piercing. Without knowing why, uh -huh. Huo Xiao Xiao felt a little nervous as she looked at Huo Sui Cheng's suddenly expressionless face. A woman's intuition told her that he may have known about the fake illness and wanted to settle scores with her. But what she did was also for the benefit of her father. It was not her fault. More importantly, she was only one year old. What did she know? She didn't know anything. On the way back, Huo Xiao Xiao propped her heart on her hand and yawned in the safety seat. Sleep. Will you sleep later? I just heard everything in the room. When did I cry? Why don't I know? Give me a good explanation. How did you deceive me with your grandfather? Did you eavesdrop? This is too much. Now that you've heard everything in the ward, why not ask grandpa? Why are you asking me, a one-year-old child? Isn't this a mockery? Huo Xiao Xiao was in a panic, but she soon calmed down, thinking that she is still a child. Until she admits it, she will not take any part in this matter. She closed her eyes and continued to pretend to be asleep. But what she didn't know was that Huo Sui Cheng also wasn't sure that she had conspired with his father for this pretending. After all, Huo Xiao Xiao was only over a year old. Knowing his father's character, he was sure that the old man would not pretend to be sick, even if the worst happened. But looking at her long, trembling eyelashes, he realized that she was clearly pretending to be asleep, refusing to look at his face. Deep down, he thought that this child was very similar to an adult. 
He did not know how she had grown during the year of his absence. Huo Suicheng reached out his hand and gently squeezed her plump cheeks. Are you trying to lie to me again? Huo Xiaoxiao's eyes remained closed. Are you really sleeping? Huo Suicheng smiled without giving her away. Okay, then get a good night. Say sleep. Soon they arrived at Huo's residence. Huo Suicheng got out of the car with Huo Xiaoxiao, who was sleeping. He first told An Zhao that nothing serious had happened and then asked her to arrange for people to take care of the old man in the hospital. After ordering all this, he carried Huo Xiaoxiao back to her room. Huo Xiaoxiao's room was an ordinary nursery. The walls were pink and there were dolls and toys everywhere. There was a large crib next to the large bed. He placed Huo Xiaoxiao on the crib and stopped to look around the room. Just when Huo Xiaoxiao thought she had escaped disaster, she heard Huo Suicheng's footsteps sounding in her room. She quietly opened her eyes and squinted. She saw her cheeky father picking up her little baby bag. This small bag was full of gifts that her grandfather had given her over the years. For example, the castle he gave her when they first met. It was made of gold. Another example was the huge amount of money his grandfather gave her during the spring festival, as well as car keys, villa keys, beautiful necklaces, and a number of other valuable things that she received during this week. She even put the bracelet that Lu Boyan gave her last time at the Yonghei Club inside. That little bag was all she had. So why was he touching her bag? Huo Xiaoxiao vaguely felt something was wrong. Huo Suicheng opened her small bag and looked at it, full of precious gifts. He walked to the crib with malicious intent and said to Huo Xiaoxiao, who was still pretending to be asleep, You are still small. These things are easy to lose, so Dad will keep them for you and give them back to you when you grow up. Wait, this is a little familiar. Huo Xiaoxiao remembered the New Year's money that had disappeared forever. What are all adults like now? Is his face too fat, acting like a bandit in front of her? What did he mean when he said he would leave them for her? Isn't this a robbery in broad daylight? Is he short of money or has Huo gone bankrupt, forcing him to embezzle its hard-earned money? Be a man, Dad. Huo Xiaoxiao was faced with a dilemma. If she opened her eyes, she would be faced with the fact that she and her grandfather had pulled a scam and were cheating. If she kept her eyes closed, she would have to watch her hard-earned money be taken away from her. Why on earth should she suffer like this? This must be his revenge. This was definitely his revenge. According to her understanding of Huo Sui Cheng, her father must have been taking revenge on her and her grandfather who was pretending to be sick and deceiving him. He was worthy of being a villain, robbing even his own child. This is too much. If you don't talk, Dad will take it for granted. Too cruel. This is too cruel. This cannot be allowed. Huo Xiaoxiao angrily opened her eyes and accidentally looked into Huo Suicheng's cunning eyes. Awoke, Huo Suicheng held her small bag and even listed its contents in front of her. Villa key, car key, necklace, bank card. You're still little. You do not need it. First, give them to Dad for safekeeping. I'll give them back to you when you grow up. No, grandfather. Grandfather, my. What Huo Xiaoxiao wanted to express was that all of this was from her grandfather. But she couldn't speak well. So she had to pretend to be a bird protecting her food and snatch the bag from Huo Sui Cheng's hands. But she was standing in the crib, and the railing of the crib was higher than her shoulders. No matter how hard she tried to stand on tiptoe, her two tiny hands could not reach the small bag containing her treasures. She became alarmed, standing on the crib and shouting, jumping up and down, Mine! My! My hard-earned money! Huo Suicheng deliberately followed her words. Your hard-earned money? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded heavily. Mine! Didn't you just sleep? You couldn't wake up from my screams. Now you suddenly wake up when your hard-earned money is taken away from you? Still asking, knowing the answer. Huo Xiaoxiao stared at the bag in her father's hand. Yes, since you are already awake, give me a clear explanation why you lied to me and faked a fake illness with your grandfather. He shook the bag in his hand in front of Huo Xiaoxiao. The threat was obvious. Huo Xiaoxiao felt miserable. She was so pathetic. Her father was ruthless. Threatened her by taking all her things just because she was a child? After being fooled by her grandfather, he didn't dare ask him. Instead, he asked her because she was a child. It was her grandfather who pretended to be sick. So why did he come and tease her who was still drinking milk? I hate it. Grandpa, Grandpa said Daddy is bad. Dad, Huo Xiaoxiao wondered how to say bastard. She opened her mouth and growled at him. Dad, you bastard. Damn it. And then, that is bad. Bastard. Grandfather. Huo Xiaoxiao thought for a while, bowed her head and closed her eyes to express her thoughts, choosing words. Huo Suicheng tensed, cleared his throat, coughed twice, and continued to ask. And then, I said, Dad, he loves Grandpa, Grandpa. <laughs> Huo Xiaoxiao shook her head and stammered desperately. Grandfather just simply... It is difficult to explain the whole situation from beginning to end to a child. It was terrible. Judging by his daughter's body language and stuttering words, 
Huo Suicheng probably understood what was happening. Huo Xiaoxiao made wild movements and didn't know whether Huo Suicheng understood. When she stopped to catch her breath, she realized his face had changed. Silence. There was no smile on his face or eyes. Dad? Huo Suicheng reached out his hand and touched the back of her head. Well, I know. Huo Xiaoxiao looked at him with a smile. Now he will have to return the bag to her, right? Although she deceived him, it was for the sake of their father-child relationship. She looked at the small bag in her father's hand and waited for him to return it to her. Who would have thought that her father, who was clearly a little worried, would change his attitude 180 degrees in the next second? I told you you're still small. It's not safe for you to keep such things to yourself. Leave it to me. Dad will keep them for you. When you grow up, I will return them to you. Don't worry, Dad won't touch it. I will keep them safe for you. But, but you, you said. You said that you would give it to me. Did I say that I would give it to you after you tell everything? This man was so vicious that he deceived her. She couldn't stand it. It was truly unbearable. He was a villain who did whatever he wanted, killed people, and set them on fire without a care in the world. What a sneaky trick. Mine! Huo Xiaoxiao jumped up to beat him. But she was too short to even reach the hem of her father, his clothes through the fence of the crib. Behave yourself. When you turn 18, I will give them to you. Where are you going to use it now? Keep hug and sleep. Happy! Little miser, this is punishment for deceiving me. Don't deceive others next time, okay? Huo Xiao Xiao gnashed her teeth. Why did I lie? Because I don't want you to die. It's for your own good. Now that you know the truth, are you going to cross the river and burn the bridge? Without me, you won't even know the cause of your death. Everything Huo Xiao Xiao wanted to say turned into one sentence. A dad is bad. Grandpa really didn't lie to me. This father is really bad. Huo Sui Chen grinned as if he didn't care about her. He squeezed her soft cheeks. It's late. Go to bed. Huo Xiao Xiao, still lying in the crib, watched Huo Sui Cheng leave with her small bag. Her heart was bleeding. This was unacceptable. It was too much. This was all the money she had saved. At least leave something. Even a necklace will do. Huo Xiao Xiao wanted to cry several times, but there were no tears. Lying on the bed, she felt empty. No way, she couldn't just sit idly by. She won't let this happen. Tomorrow I will tell Grandpa about this. I'll tell him that his son stole his granddaughter's hard-earned money. Grandpa will definitely stand next to him and ask him to return my things. And further, Dad treated me so bad today. When I grow up, I will inherit all his wealth. And then I'll spend it all. Huo Xiao Xiao thought angrily when the footsteps in the corridor died down. Huo Sui Cheng returned to his room, looked at his daughter's plump handbag, shook his head, and put it away in his closet. He really didn't need his daughter's things. He simply decided to keep them for her, intending to return them in at least two days. After running around the hospital and home, Huo Sui Cheng was a little tired. He took a bath, lay down to rest, and closed his eyes but could not sleep. He remembered what Huo Xiao Xiao had just told him. I said, Dad loves Grandpa, Grandpa just. Because he quarreled with the old man over Looming Mountain, the old man scolded him for being a jerk. Then, to prove that he wasn't so bad, she made the old man pretend to be sick and lied to her father to observe his reaction. Huo Sui Cheng was helpless. What a child, Looming Mountain. Huo Sui Cheng did not move for a long time. He did not get up until the moonlight outside the window crossed the balustrade of the terrace. He went to the desk and took out an old letter from the corner of the drawer. The letter was very old, but the corners were neat and well-preserved. There was no light in the room. Huo Sui Cheng carefully took the letter out of the envelope using the moonlight behind him. Sui Cheng, this is mom, was the first sentence in the letter. Huo Sui Cheng remembered that when he was a child, a little older than Xiao Xiao, he could already understand some things. In the early days of the business, my father was away from home all year round. His mother, who took care of him, eventually lost all of her love for him, waiting day after day. At noon, on the first sunny day, his mother prepared him a bowl of miso noodles and left the house with a large bag. In fact, that day he felt something and walked his mother to the door. He asked when she would return, wanting her to return early. He felt his mother doubt and worry, but in the end, she left him. Nobody knew where she went. Even though his father's business was getting bigger and he had spent a lot of human and financial resources, he still couldn't find her. To this day, the old man eagerly waited for his wife to return home to listen to her apology, hoping that the family would be as happy as before. Huo Sui Cheng received this letter five years ago, and he didn't show it to anyone. He kept this letter because he wanted to one day give vent to his resentment and bitterness, to tell the old man that the wife whose return he had been waiting for died in the arms of another man five years ago. Boom! Crack! The letter in his hand burst into flames. He placed it on the table and watched as the flames spread, gradually turning the letter into ash. These unresolved childhood doubts disappeared like smoke in the air due to the conspiracy of the old man and his daughter with a false illness. 
Now that the old man still has not lost faith in the return of his wife, it would be good if he continued to wait all his life. He didn't need to know that she became another man's wife and had children with him. After all, not all truth has value. A wisp of smoke rose and dissipated into the cold moonlight. As night fell, silence reigned in the hospital and most of the wards were plunged into darkness. In the dark building, only one chamber was still brightly lit. Old Master Huo did not sleep. He looked at the moonlight outside the window and took a deep breath. When Chen Bo saw that he was still awake, he began to grumble. Master, the doctor said that you are in poor health and need to rest. Old Master Huo was in a bad mood. His tone was slightly depressed. Old Chen, do you think I am too stubborn? Chen Bo laughed. Why are you suddenly saying this? All these years, I have been holding on to Looming Mountain. I even had a big quarrel with Sui Cheng. You, who are unwilling to let the young master cultivate Looming Mountain, must have some reason. Old Master Huo sighed. When I bought Looming Mountain, I plan to settle there with Ying Ying in the future. Madam? Old Master Huo nodded. But later she became disappointed in me. She left before I could bring her here. I always told Sui Ching that his mother would return one day. She will return and live with us on Mount Lumen. The scenery there is good. She should have liked this. Chenbo had heard about these past events, but did not know the truth. He could only console him by saying, Madam will come back someday. Old Master Ho shook his head. She won't come back. She wrote me a letter five years ago. She died. Master, you don't need to console me, Old Master Ho said with a smile. I suspected this all these years. He can develop it if he wants. I won't stop him anymore. About Madam, Old Master Ho sighed. Sui Ching has been waiting for Ying Ying's return since childhood. He waited for so many years. How can I tell him that his mother, whom he hoped to meet, no longer wants him? She married another man and had children in another city. Since he hoped for his mother's return, may he continue to cherish this hope and continue to look forward to her. Chen Bo was silent for a moment. Now that there is a little miss taking on the responsibility of a father, the young master will definitely feel relieved. When it came to Xiao Xiao, the old master's tone was full of love. You're right, there is Xiao Xiao. That night, the three members of the Huo family slept poorly. Among them, Huo Xiao Xiao slept the worst. All night, she thought about her personal money, confiscated by her vicious father. She even had a dream. In the dream, her extremely sinister father was showing off in front of her with her small bag. Xiao Xiao, you see, this is the key to your car. Later, dad will leave with the beauty. This is the key to your villa, because no one lives there. Dad will let his beautiful sister stay there for two days, okay? You're still a child. This diamond necklace is not suitable for you. Your father will give it to your beautiful sister. Huo Xiao Xiao was so angry that she stomped her foot. Her foot touched the railing around the crib, which made her wake up. Remembering this dream, she became so angry that she banged her fists on the bed. Early in the morning, Huo Xiao Xiao woke up before An Zhao arrived. She sat alone in the crib and looked out the window. Like an old man, she lamented the injustice of the world and the sinister feelings in the hearts of people. As the sun gradually rose from the east, Huo Xiao Xiao lamented from time to time about how the world worked. And Zhao pushed the door. Seeing that the child was lethargic, she rubbed the back of Huo Xiao Xiao's head. Xiao Xiao, what happened? Why are you so lethargic? Are you worried about your grandfather? Huo Xiao Xiao was not worried about her grandfather. Her grandfather was fine, but her personal money was a big problem. But deep down, she knew that Aunt Zhao was not the kind of person who could support her. It was useless for her to complain. With a gloomy expression on her face, she said, Xiao Xiao, she misses her grandfather? She wanted her grandfather to come back and scold Huo Suicheng, the shameless bastard. Aunt Zhao reassured her while she dressed her. Okay, the doctor said your grandfather will be fine. He will return a few days after the examination. Be patient. Let's go have breakfast. Huo Xiao Xiao lowered her face. Unhappy, but reluctantly nodded. Only Huo Sui Ching was having breakfast in the dining room. When Huo Xiao Xiao saw him, she felt like her heart was bleeding and her stomach was in excruciating pain. Huo Sui Ching looked better, and when he saw Huo Xiao Xiao, he even patted her little head. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head, not wanting him to touch her. The stingy. Eat quickly. You will go to the hospital to see your grandfather after breakfast. He will be glad to see you. Huo Xiao Xiao, who was drinking milk, stopped and asked, What about dad? Me? Is dad going to go? I need to go to work and I'll arrive at the hospital later. Huo Xiao Xiao's eyes lit up. Huo Sui Ching reached out and wiped the milky stain from her mouth. He laughed confidently. Don't even think about going to dad's room. Dad has already told Aunt Zhao to keep a good eye on you and make sure you don't. I'll go into dad's room. Look who's talking. They say that the benevolence see benevolence. The wise see wisdom. Her sinister father even suspects that his daughter will sneak into his room to steal a small bag while he's away. 
Steal. Is she the person who steals things? Is taking your belongings considered theft? This is called returning your things. He specifically admonished on Zhao. This man's heart is full of poison. She didn't want to know how his company was able to grow so much. After breakfast, Huo Sui Cheng went to the company. Huo Xiaoxiao couldn't sneak into her father's room because Aunt Zhao was closely watching her every move, so she had to go to the hospital. As soon as she entered the hospital, old master Huo was about to leave her. He said that all examinations have been completed. The results will be sent to her grandfather when they are ready. Xiao Xiao, come here and hug your grandfather. Huo Xiao Xiao had a smile on her face, but she was gloomy and silently lay in her grandfather's arms. Seeing her in this state, old master Huo looked at Aunt Zhao and asked, what happened? Xiao Xiao was worried about you, worried about grandpa. The old man stroked her head. Grandpa's all right now. Now let's go home. Huo Xiao Xiao was choked with emotion, but could only nod. A group of people returned to the Huo estate in a grand manner. During the trip home from the hospital, Huo Xiao Xiao was unhappy, and no one could make her laugh. Huo Sui Cheng returned in the evening. He walked into the living room and saw his father sitting on the sofa, frowning, and Huo Xiao Xiao playing with her toys. Why did you check out so early? Old Master Huo looked up at him. I had nothing to do. I'm done with all the examinations. Why should I stay in the hospital? After that, he stood up. Okay, wash your hands and get ready for dinner. Hmm? It seems that everyone has forgotten about the violent argument that took place yesterday in the office. During the argument, no one thought that either of them was wrong. Even after calming down, father and son will never admit that one of them was to blame. Even if the old master was at fault, his way of apologizing was to simply eat. He lowered his head like a child, and this was the only way he could answer. The food on the dining table was emitting steam, but the sound of the sticks colliding was not heard. The atmosphere was very fragile. Huo Xiao Xiao took a closer look at them and separated a small piece of green vegetable from the bowl. Huo Sui Cheng saw her fussy little tricks and looked at her. Huo Xiao Xiao looked up and saw Huo Sui Cheng's dissatisfaction with her being a picky eater. She pursed her lips and aggressively pricked the green vegetables onto her fork. Huo Sui Cheng felt that he was too harsh with her. After all, it was just a small piece of vegetables. If his daughter doesn't want to eat, then don't eat. It's okay. Thinking about this, he took his chopsticks to grab the vegetables in her bowl. Realizing that her father's wand was approaching, Huo Xiao Xiao felt threatened. She took the spoon and lowered her head, stuffing her mouth. Her actions caused Huo Sui Cheng's chopsticks to stop in the air. Old Master Huo was speechless. What's the matter? Eat slowly. Huo Xiao Xiao quickly finished her bowl of rice, the corners of her mouth being covered with rice grains. She timidly looked at Huo Sui Cheng. Dad, I've already finished eating. Xiao Xiao is behaving decently. Her words seemed to cause confusion. For a while, old master Huo thought he had misheard. Xiao Xiao, what are you talking about? Huo Xiao Xiao pouted and got angry, but didn't say anything, didn't cry, just sobbed as if she was being bullied, and just looked into Huo Sui Cheng, those eyes with fear, and timidly said, Dad, Xiao Xiao behaves. In the end, the meaning of her words was finally understood. Old man Huo looked at Huo Sui Cheng in confusion. What's the matter? What did you do while I was gone? Huo Sui Cheng also looked at Huo Xiao Xiao in disbelief. Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't help but sob. Old Huo was furious. Huo Sui Cheng, tell me how you could intimidate Xiao Xiao. Did you scold her? Did you hit her? When I did. I'm telling you, Xiao Xiao was unhappy all day. Huo Sui Cheng, Xiao Xiao is only a year old. Even if she did something wrong, how can you treat her like this? Huo Sui Cheng replied, are you being unreasonable when I hit her? Then why was she so afraid of you if you didn't hit or scold her? Huo Sui Cheng was accused of something he didn't do. As soon as the sticks were released, he raised his voice and said angrily, Dad, you. As soon as these words came out, he stopped. He couldn't remember the last time he said the word Papa. Old Master Huo was also stunned. His angry face instantly calmed down, and he awkwardly turned his head. He took a paper towel to wipe Huo Xiao Xiao's tears. Okay, don't cry. After that, he looked at Huo Sui Cheng again. Calm down, sit down and eat. Xiao Xiao is still young, and if she doesn't understand, you should talk to her. Xiao Xiao, tell Grandpa, what did your father do? Grandpa is here, don't be afraid. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at her grandfather helplessly sobbing. Dad, Dad wants Xiao Xiao to be obedient. Dad just took Xiao Xiao's bag. Bag? What bag? Old Master Huo looked at Huo Sui Cheng. What happened? Huo Sui Cheng took a deep breath. This little lady trained very well. Even the way she complained was top notch. Did she plan this in advance? Uh, it's okay. I think she's still little. It's not safe for her to keep these things, so I just keep them for her. The old master looked at Huo Sui Cheng disapprovingly. Why is it not safe at home? What are you doing with her things? Grandfather, I want to. 
I need my bag. Calm down. Don't cry. Don't cry. He looked at Huo Sui Ching and motioned for him to return it. But you must understand that she is still small. She cannot use these things. Give it to her if she wants it. If you like it too, I'll cook it for you, okay? Huo Sui Ching was truly speechless. Was he the type to be jealous of a child? Okay, I'll return her things later. Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't wait, but she was afraid that her grandfather would not go against Huo Sui Ching. No, I want it now. Huo Sui Cheng was helpless. He put down his chopsticks, went upstairs to fetch the bag, and returned it to his child. Huo Xiao Xiao hugged her recovered child and wiped the haze from her face as if she had received the most precious treasure. The small bag is back. Are you happy? Come on, eat something. Huo Xiao Xiao didn't eat. She lowered her head, pressed the lock of the bag, and opened it. Huo Sui Cheng looked at her as if she was greedy for money, but shook his head. I didn't touch her. Huo Xiao Xiao raised her head and looked straight at Huo Sui Cheng. Touched. Huo Sui Cheng realized that something bad was coming. He was afraid that his little child had some bad intentions. Of course, Huo Xiao Xiao looked at Huo Sui Cheng with tears. My, my gold? Isn't this your gold? Huo Sui Cheng took out a lock from her small bag. This is grandfather's, old master Huo nodded. This is from me. Dad, dad didn't give it to me. Huo Xiao Xiao continued to list the gifts she had received. This is grandfather? That's grandfather's. Grandfather's, grandfather's, uncle, aunt, nothing from father. Huo Sui Cheng shuddered. When he went abroad, Huo Xiao Xiao had just been born. His father had been taking care of her all this year. The full moon, a hundred days and a holiday for a year, were arranged by his father. On those important days, anything that Huo Xiao Xiao liked, old master Huo would give to her without even blinking. On the contrary, until now, he as a father has not given his daughter a gift. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at him confidently. This is all from others, nothing from dad. Huo Sui Cheng's face was black. You're still a child, what do you want? Pfft, old master Huo couldn't help but laugh, but quickly suppressed a smile. He solemnly said to Huo Sui Cheng, look at you, you have become a father, but you must be raised by your own daughter. You went back to China for two or three months. Don't you have any gifts? Huo Xiao Xiao smiled at him, dad is stingy. Old master Huo believed that his granddaughter was smart and beautiful. Following her words, he asked her, what should your father do so as not to be stingy? Give more than grandfather. Old Master Huo looked at him. Did you hear that? Huo Sui Cheng suppressed his anger and squeezed out from his throat. Yes. Oh, you said that you would build an amusement park for Xiao Xiao. Don't lie to her. You are a father. You must set an example. When you promise something, you have to follow through. By the way, build a hotel there too. Looming Mountain is very desolate, so it would be inconvenient for a little girl to stay there for two days. He agreed with Huo Sui Cheng regarding the development of Looming Mountain. Because of Old Master Huo's concession, the dispute from last night ended. You can rest assured I will do so. <laughs> Sit down and eat. Huo Sui Cheng sat down silently and looked at the child, who was secretly grinning at him. He suddenly became angry, but smiled. He really didn't know what the child was thinking right now. Huo Xiao Xiao, who received double the gifts, raised her head. Ha! Everything has its nemesis, an eye for an eye. Want to steal her hard-earned money? Keep dreaming. Huo Xiao Xiao changed the outcome of the battle to her delight, so much so that her tail was raised up. After dinner, Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't wait to sit Huo Sui Cheng on the sofa. Dad, gold! And end this, this, this. Huo Xiao Xiao put her hard-earned money out of her bag one by one in front of Huo Sui Cheng. She even reminded him what gifts he would give her twice later. Don't worry, Dad will remember. Huo Sui Cheng quickly replied. His father's reaction was too straightforward, which surprised Huo Xiao Xiao a little. After playing against Huo Sui Cheng so many times, she felt a little uneasy. No, fear would be the best term to describe it. She felt that there was some kind of conspiracy hidden behind his behavior. She asked him carefully, really? Of course, has dad ever lied to you? Yesterday. That's what Huo Xiao Xiao wanted to answer, but she didn't let it come out of her mouth. If anything, she must be thinking too much. After all, grandfather was sitting here as a protector for her. Was there anything else her father could do to her while she was under his protection? But Huo Xiao Xiao clearly underestimated her father Dad, I want to discuss something with you. In the corner of the living room, old master Huo was busy wiping down an antique vase that he had received from an auction and did not hear Huo Sui Cheng call him. Dad, Dad! Only when Huo Sui Cheng shouted Dad twice did old master Huo raise his head and seem to have heard him. He was unhappy, but quickly calmed down and asked, What's the matter? I want to discuss the Xiao Xiao matter with you. Old master Huo put down his precious antiques and leisurely sat down on the sofa. Speak? Huo Xiao Xiao perked up her ears. Xiao Xiao is almost a year and a half old. I didn't plan anything for her at this age, but as you can see, 
this child is much smarter than ordinary children. While children usually only learn their parents' names, she, on the other hand, can already say a lot of words. Hearing Huo Suicheng's words, Old Master Huo nodded his approval. His little granddaughter was very smart. On the other hand, Huo Xiao Xiao heard Huo Suicheng praising her and immediately became wary, feeling that something was wrong. A trace of a murderous spirit appeared. Since Yao Xiao is so smart, I want to start training her early. Early development? I heard from teacher Xu earlier that she is very talented in language and music. Zhao Xiao also has great talent in these areas, which not everyone has. So I want to invite some teachers to come to our home and give some private lessons to Zhao Xiao in the next two days so that she can get acquainted with piano, music, and painting first. Of course, if she likes to dance, we can also invite a dance teacher to come and see if she needs to do it. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at him blankly. Did she really hear wrong? What did Huo Sui Cheng just say? Give her private lessons, piano painting, and dancing? He's crazy. She's a baby who still drinks milk. What classes do you think she should take? Are you completely crazy? She just wanted a gift. Did he really have to conspire against her like that? No, she's still a child. She can't learn that much. Grandpa shouldn't let this happen. Huo Xiao Xiao believed in her grandfather. After listening to Huo Sui Cheng's proposal, old master Huo thought deeply and even nodded his head. What you say makes sense. Xiao Xiao is quite smart. It would be a loss not to develop her talents. I heard that little grandson Yi had several teachers in his family at an early age. Our Xiao Xiao can't fall behind. Do you agree? Of course, I agree that Xiao Xiao should have the benefits of a good education. But the teachers must be reliable and must treat Xiao Xiao well. I don't like teacher Xu, whom you invited last time. Of course. Huo Xiao Xiao, who was happy because she believed in her victory, unexpectedly did not take into account this miscalculation, which suddenly led to failure. Listening to the two seriously discuss her future study plan, her smile gradually disappeared. Grandfather? Old Master Huo hugged Huo Xiao Xiao, who rushed into his arms. What happened, Xiao Xiao? Do you think your father is right? Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head. When Old Master Huo saw her shaking her head, he hesitated. Huo Sui Cheng said calmly, It's normal for children to be playful. Otherwise, why are adults needed? Isn't it to watch them? Old Master Huo nodded slowly, but still hesitated. Grandfather. Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed her grandfather's sleeve. There was helplessness in Old Master Huo's eyes, and he fell silent. Huo Sui Cheng had a well-thought-out plan. Let's force her now. She will thank us when she grows up. Old Master Huo looked into Xiao Xiao's small eyes and looked away. Huo Xiao Xiao's little heart skipped a beat. Not good. Her grandfather was going to betray her. Of course. Your words make sense. Invite a few teachers home, let them look at Zhao Xiao's foundation, and then teach and observe. Huo Xiao Xiao was speechless. She looked at Huo Sui Cheng with hatred in her eyes. Huo Sui Cheng smiled at her like a loving father. At night, Huo Xiao Xiao lay in her bed, tossing and turning, unable to sleep. The more she thought about it, the more she felt like she had lost. Of course, her father was a cunning and secretive schemer who refused to tolerate any loss, even against his own daughter, his own blood. He had to do everything possible to take revenge on her. The incident began to occupy her mind. It will come back to bite her in the ass as it will later determine her position at home. Huo Xiao Xiao sighed. If she knew that her father would be so arrogant, she would not have provoked him. Now that the decision had been made, she had no way to resist. Besides, what's the difference between a kid and a big bad? Age, firstly, and her personality and experience. Secondly, why did she fight with others? It only took a few words from her father to turn her patron, Old Master Huo, against her. This was no ordinary person. He was not to be taken lightly. Huo Xiao Xiao felt that she had to do something to have a better life in the future, like a salted fish. The night was getting darker, but the light was still on in Huo Sui Ching's room. The development of Lumen Mountain, such a large project, could not be ignored. He took the unfinished business home to deal with it. The night was quiet, like the entire Huo estate. Even if a needle were dropped, it would echo loudly throughout the estate. There was a rustling sound behind the door. Huo Sui Ching raised his eyebrows, put the folder on the table, and looked at the door. Even though the door lock was relatively heavy, anyone could easily open it. Anyone except a child. He would have to use all his strength to open the door. The door lock was lowered, but the door did not open. However, the girl behind the door stubbornly continued her attempts. Gathering all her strength, she finally opened the door. The door opened slightly, and a beam of light rushed out. Huo Sui Cheng saw the little head turn in panic. Just when he thought the baby wanted to sleep with him, she picked up the small white towel wrapped around the stick. Where did she even find them? He thought. Then she crept through the door. Perhaps it was too heavy for a child, but the stick shook noticeably. Huo Sui Cheng did not answer her for a while. What is she doing? 
seeing Huo Xiao Xiao trembling as he picked up the stick and waved it in the air several times while the white flag fluttered. He suddenly understood. Raising the white flag, it was a sign of surrender. Hiding behind the table, Huo Suiqing shook with laughter. Outside the door, Huo Xiao Xiao stood on a small stool, holding a white flag, sweaty and out of breath from fatigue. She sighed, holding a white flag in her hands and waving it several times. However, she did not hear any movement in the room. If not for her despair, who would have endured such humiliation? She had no choice but to resolve this issue. Words were not enough. Besides, what if Huo Suiqing couldn't understand her? If there is another misunderstanding, it will mean new troubles. Therefore, this was the only way she could think of. Raising a white flag was simply shameful. So, of course, Huo Suicheng could understand her meaning. If she had known earlier, she would have found an easy stick. This one was so heavy and her little arms and legs really hurt. Even after she waved, there was no movement in the room. She frowned. I raised the white flag. What happened to Huo Suicheng? Didn't he see this? She tilted her head to look through the crack in the door, just to meet the eyes of Huo Suicheng, who was sitting at his desk with a smirk on his face. Her pupil shrank slightly and she hurriedly lowered her head. What a disgrace. Huo Xiao Xiao's face instantly flushed, and the toes that had stepped on the stool carefully lowered. She was too embarrassed to stay here. She threw away the stick she was holding, grabbed the small stool, and ran away before Huo Sui Cheng could come out and laugh proudly at her. With such difficulty, Huo Xiao Xiao gave up and even raised a white flag. She only hoped that her evil father would be good without bothering her again in the future. She didn't want to start studying hard so early. Huo Sui Cheng opened the door. In the corridor, he saw a short figure swaying and running as if her life was at stake. She stopped in front of the door but lost her balance. The speed was too fast for her. She sat down on the floor with a loud thud. Huo Suiqing clicked his tongue when he saw his daughter sitting on the floor. She stood up with difficulty and rushed into the room. It seemed as if a ferocious monster was chasing her. Bang, the door closed. Huo Suiqing leaned down to raise a sign of surrender, a simple white flag. Thinking of Huo Xiao Xiao's panicked and innocent appearance just now, he couldn't help but shake his head. What a child. The assistant to the president of Huo Group recently discovered that Huo Sui Cheng, who usually reprimanded the employee mercilessly, was in a good mood. Although he did not laugh like before, but according to the employee who interacted with him face to face every day, Mr. Huo was very talkative these days. The president's chief aide came to inform in advance. Pay attention to this in the future. The CEO of Yi Group will come to discuss the looming project with our president. So be careful. I know, I know. Soon the elevator on the floor opened, and Huo Suicheng and Yi Yang walked out of the elevator together. They walked side by side, talking about something, and several assistants followed them. The general direction of the project for the development of the mountain was determined. It was also the first meeting between the heads of the two companies. The two men sat in a conference room with the two companies' key project personnel for the entire day. However, they were still unable to flesh out the details of the project. Closer to dinner, the meeting finally ended, and the people in the meeting room left one by one. Huo Suicheng pushed aside the stack of documents in front of him, took out his mobile phone, and scrolled through something. His brows furrowed. He was clearly unhappy. And Yang stood up and picked up his coat as he walked. Mr. Ho, let's go. They ate almost nothing all day. The men came to a western restaurant and saw several couples sitting at tables. They chose a quiet corner by the window. The restaurant was located on the top floor of a building in the city center. From the window, there was a panoramic view of the entire city, a melodious violin and candlelight created a romantic backdrop. If Yi Young had not been the one who came with him, Huo Sui Ching might have appreciated the view with great interest. So, you could find any place to eat. Why did you choose this particular restaurant? Xin Yi once told me about this place, so I decided to check it out in advance. I will try to bring her here next time. Yi Young took a photo on his mobile phone as soon as he sat down. Huo Sui Ching raised his eyebrows. When did you learn to take photos before eating? And Yang took pictures of Huo Sui Ching Xin Yi asked where I was. If I explain it too easily, I'm afraid she won't believe it and will throw a tantrum. Taking a photo is the most convincing thing. Huo Sui Cheng took a sip of wine, turning to the window. He was too lazy to look at his friend. On the other hand, the steak was soft and tender. With smooth wine and elegant surroundings, it was really good. By the way, I heard that your family is going to invite many teachers. What are you studying? Huo Sui Cheng thought for a moment. It would be a good idea to consult Yi Yang on this matter. He answered thoughtfully. Piano, taekwondo, etc. She'll learn it if she's interested. Anyway, at this age, she does it for fun and to develop some basics. I want to find teachers for Xiao Xiao. Yi Yang frowned slightly. Isn't your daughter one and a half years old? What can you learn at this age? You don't have to study, only for her education and getting the basics. And Yang nodded thoughtfully. 
Yes, your daughter is really much smarter than children of the same age. Yi Qian's teacher is good. If you are interested, I can give you contact information. That would be good. This will save me from having to look. Great, if you like it. Our children will take lessons together, and then you can decide whether you send Zhao Xiao to my home to study or ask the teacher to come to your home. Huo Suiqing's eyes glanced past. Study together? And Yang nodded. Huo Suiqing's expression was strange. It is not necessary. I'll find someone else. Naturally, Huo Xiao Xiao was forced to study. She knew that her father was not a good person, but she did not expect that even after raising the white flag, he still would not spare her. Zhao Xiao, come and tell the teacher which of these two paintings do you like. Use your finger to point to the one you like best. Xiao Xiao, this is paint. When we paint, we use a brush to spread it onto the paper. You see, that's all. Zhao Xiao, touch the keys with the teacher. Yes, exactly. Let's push harder. Huo Zhao Xiao thought, Dad clearly accepted my white flag. Didn't that mean he also accepted my surrender? Then why the hell is he still putting me through this torture? Why? Can't this beautiful couple, father and daughter, talk peacefully to make peace? Why should he hurt me? Teachers came and went all day. The art teacher came first, then the piano teacher, and finally the taekwondo teacher. She somehow made it through the first two lessons. But taekwondo, how could this poor little body endure physical pain along with emotional suffering? Huo Xiao Xiao lowered her head and looked at her wrists, arms, and calves with a painful expression. After looking at them for a while, she was again convinced that her father's heart was too evil. He must want me to die. Before leaving, the Taekwondo teacher politely informed old Master Ho, Master, your granddaughter is indeed much smarter than her peers, but I think her physical development is not that good. She is not suitable to learn Taekwondo. You must wait until her body is fully developed. Standing to the side, Huo Xiao Xiao instantly raised her head upon hearing these words. Just a second ago, she had a pained expression on her face but now it was shining brightly. At the same time, her head continued to nod like a chicken. Although her father did not care about her, the teacher he hired was quite conscientious. Thank you for informing me about this. After hearing from you, I feel that it was useless to ask you to come. Let the driver send you back as compensation. About! No, no. The Taekwondo teacher refused again and again. The family car and is already coming for me since I also have classes there. The Yi Yi family. The fact is that a month ago, Mr. Yi invited me to teach Taekwondo to their grandson, Yi Tian. As far as I know, the grandson of the Yi family is not much older than my granddaughter of the Huo family, right? Yes, old Master Huo, you are absolutely right. The baby is quite sane, well-developed, and suitable for Taekwondo training. Moreover, in his free time, Yi Tian also studies other things, such as piano and painting. Hearing this, old Master Huo shuddered and thought, is this child really that smart? While Huo Xiaoxiao mourned the child named Yi Tian for three seconds. It turns out that everything that she experienced today, a child of about the same age as her, has been experiencing for a month now. What's wrong with adults these days? They seem to think, if I can't fly, let my child work hard and then we'll make him fly. What unreliable parents. Of course, when it comes to intelligence, Yi Qian is still not as smart as Little Miss. Hearing this, Huo Xiaoxiao raised her ears and suddenly felt motivated, like a purple light rushing into the sky, making her suddenly realize, yes, that's right. The root of everything came from the fact that she was so smart. And since there is a child prodigy at home, does he need to be trained? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded thoughtfully. Of course, she knew that for a child like her to suck on a pacifier and drool in bubbles, just crawl around all day without a care in the world. Being a parent was quite stressful, but it's not her fault and no one can blame her, right? Although she had the body of an 18-month-old child, the soul was that of a little 18 or 19-year-old girl. Do you want her to crawl around like a baby, wet the bed, suck on a pacifier, and blow bubbles? Have you ever thought about the psychological endurance of a little girl? Hash one. Even if she, Huo Xiao Xiao, were tired to death and died on the street, she would never be able to stoop so low as to do such shameful things. It is noteworthy that in the next few days, the Huo Mansion, which was usually filled with Huo Xiao Xiao's silvery laughter all day, suddenly fell silent. Huo Xiao Xiao no longer liked to smile or run. All day long, Huo Xiao Xiao, with an unfamiliar look, was jumping on the bed and crawling on the floor. If she was dissatisfied with something, she began to cry. And as if this were not enough, she stopped talking to others. If they called her, she came, joyfully answered questions, chatted, but in reality, all this was incoherent babble. At first, old master Huo thought that she was doing all this just to escape from class. But as the days passed, even the bodyguards began to sense something was wrong. They asked him what had happened to their miss. Why did she stop coming to them to chat as usual? When he was interrogated like this, 
Old Master Huo also felt that there was really something wrong here. He reported this to Huo Suicheng. Huo Suicheng, looking at Huo Xiao Xiao, who was currently biting her pacifier and blowing bubbles, said, I know a famous child specialist. I will invite him to examine Xiao Xiao. Okay, please hurry up, Old Master Huo said nervously. I don't know what happened to my granddaughter. She's acting so crazy. Call this pediatric specialist early and find the problem so we can treat it before anything wrong happens. The next day, when the pediatric specialist came, he asked for some time alone with Huo Xiao Xiao. Half an hour later, he left the room smiling and said, there's nothing to worry about. All right, old master Huo asked doubtfully. Hearing his words, he raised his eyebrows and asked in a cold voice, we can all clearly see that there is something wrong with her. She used to run all day. Although what she said was not very clear, it was still better than now. She laughed at something or someone. She could say two phrases during a conversation, but now does not run, does not laugh, and does not chat. She only sits or crawls. After listening to old master Huo, the child specialist smiled embarrassedly. He thought to himself, isn't this all normal? Huo Suiching noticed the specialist's awkwardness. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chen, for taking the time to check on my daughter. Let my driver take you back. No, no, there is no need to thank me after all. This is my job. After Dr. Chen left, Huo Suicheng glanced at Huo Xiao Xiao, who was crawling around the room. He entered the room and closed the door, blocking the only exit. Bang! Hearing the sound, Huo Xiao Xiao shuddered. For a while, Huo Suicheng silently watched her play, standing at the door with his back straight. He then walked over and sat down in front of Huo Xiao Xiao and just stared at her. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at him calmly and decided to ignore him and continued sucking her pacifier. Two days ago, you raised the white flag. Why don't you understand anything today? The heroes do not mention their bravery. Huo Xiao Xiao, are you being stupid on purpose? Huo Xiao Xiao ignored him as if she didn't understand. Having accepted my white flag, you still called the teachers. So my words and actions don't have any meaning. Are you angry that I invited the teachers even after you gave up? So, you know, okay. Seeing that Huo Xiao Xiao was ignoring him, Huo Sui Cheng pulled her towards him and took the pacifier out of his mouth. When Huo Xiao Xiao realized that her source of happiness had disappeared, she angrily raised her hand to take it away. But Huo Sui Cheng turned her efforts into nothing with his long arm. On top of that, he shook his pacifier in front of her, teasingly. Huo Xiao Xiao was furious at his actions. It is good for you to study music to develop your senses and taekwondo to protect yourself. Although it is too early to learn all this for a smart child like you, it should not be a problem. Defend yourself, just an ass. I think you just want me to die. I'm still a child, but you organize so many courses for me. Can't you wait for my body to grow? Adults, I just can't wait. Huo Xiao Xiao vigorously pounded Huo Sui Cheng, but it was no use. Instead, she was hurt in return. Seeing that she was unable to defeat him, Huo Xiao Xiao thought, I will not be able to defend myself if this person ever decides to scold me. I am always suppressed and offended. As soon as she thought about her grievances, Huo Xiao Xiao became angry and started screaming at the top of her lungs. The scream was loud enough to turn the roof over. At the same moment, the door to the room swung open. Old Master Huo scolded as he approached the father-daughter pair. Sui Cheng, why the hell are you making my granddaughter cry? Making a child cry is a sin, I tell you. Huo Sui Cheng. Old Master Huo rescued Huo Xiao Xiao from the hands of Huo Sui Cheng and began to console her. Okay, okay? Stop crying. Grandpa will take you to Lumen Mountain. There's good scenery there. Besides, Grandpa has a big villa there. Let's live there for two days, okay? Huo Sui Cheng, who was interrupted while teaching his daughter, tried to protest. Dad! Before he could say anything else, old master Huo interrupted him coldly. You can't even calm a child down, you? We're not at all what a father should be. Now go. Tomorrow we are, uh, are going to Mount Looming. Make the necessary preparations. After being instructed and scolded, Huo Sui Cheng was helpless. Looking at the little brat in the arms of old master Huo, who was choking from crying for a long time, he felt offended and decided to defend himself. Dad, children cannot be spoiled. Listen to me, Xiao Xiao is only two years old and she doesn't understand anything. As her father, do you expect her to be reasonable and obedient? Okay, I will arrange everything. Huo Xiao Xiao put her head on her grandfather's shoulder, proudly sticking out her tongue behind Huo Sui Cheng's back. Huo Sui Cheng turned around sharply and the impudent little tongue was caught red-handed. Huo Xiao Xiao closed her eyes and pretended to be dead. Seeing this, Huo Sui Cheng raised his eyebrows and thought, looks like this girl is fine. The coastal area of City C, with the urban area to the east, was just a ruined small fishing village 20 years ago. Over the past 20 years, the small fishing village has developed rapidly, becoming today the second largest industrial park in the city. Further east was Mount Lumen, which the inhabitants of the small fishing village did not dare enter. 
but now it has become the most popular place for youth excursions around the city. Today was the weekend. The sun was shining in the sky, a warm spring breeze was blowing, and it was a good day for a walk. At the foot of Looming Mountain, a clear stream flowed down from the peak. Many people camped near the river and enjoyed a rare time of rest. As the afternoon approached, the aroma of roasting meat filled the air. The open field by the river was covered with picnic rugs, on which five or six young men were sitting. They chatted, accompanied by the laughter of several girls. The barbecue is ready. Hurry up and go eat. The group sitting on the picnic mats stood up and happily settled around the barbecue table. Your barbecue skills are so good. When we come here next time, you should come with us. I don't know if we will have a chance next time. Why do you say that? Do not you know? Pool Group and Yi Group reached a cooperation agreement a month ago. They will soon begin a project at Lumen Mountain, which is said to be a first-class resort hotel. I heard about it, but I didn't expect it to happen so quickly. How did you hear this news? My colleague works at Huo. He told me about it. Do you see that villa on the bay? And it looks like it belongs to the Huo family. Everyone's eyes turned to the mountain road. There stood a magnificent villa, hidden among beautiful mountain forests. Suddenly, the roar of a car came from the mountain road, and the small stones on the river began to tremble. A curious group of people followed the sound. From a distance, four black cars were moving in a line along the only coastal highway around the mountain. They slowly drove into the villa in the mountain forest. Is this the Huo family? I think so. Yesterday I heard that someone came here to clean. Looks like they're on vacation. Hmm. So the rich go on vacation like this, unlike us. Shut up, you. The man at the foot of the mountain was right. Huo Xiaoxiao and her family were actually sitting in the car. To make his granddaughter happier, old master Huo persuaded Huo Sui Cheng to put the villa and surrounding area in order. The next day, he took her on vacation with him. Xiao Xiao, we're here. Listen, do you like the view? After traveling for almost an hour, Huo Xiao Xiao was already dozing and couldn't open her eyes. She seemed to be lying on her grandfather's shoulders, as if she had no bones. Hearing Mr. Huo's voice, she opened her eyes. Instantly, her vision was filled with lush greenery. The salty and humid sea breeze blew through the windows, bringing with it the smell of fresh water. Such a good landscape, such good air. Huo Xiao Xiao was shocked and her fatigue disappeared. The villa, one might say, was built on a cliff facing the stormy sea. The courtyard wall in front of the villa was high, blocking the view from the outside. The blue waters were only visible from the second floor. She really liked it, but she couldn't show it. Huo Xiao Xiao remembered her current role as a one and a half year old child who couldn't do anything. Seeing that Huo Xiao Xiao was silent, old master Huo asked out loud, don't you like it? As if devoid of any interest, Huo Xiao Xiao lay on old master Huo's shoulder and did not say anything. Old Master Huo turned around and stared at Huo Suicheng, who looked like he was on vacation. This damn son really doesn't know how to be a good father. Knowing that the child was not by his side, he still had no desire to win her back. He felt that he should intervene in his place. Suicheng, Xiao Xiao is probably tired. Take her to rest first. Hearing this, Huo Xiao Xiao frowned and thought to herself, I don't want to rest with that bastard father. She wanted to play, play, play. The sea is so blue and the landscape is so beautiful. What's so interesting about staying inside? Huo Suicheng looked around and noticed the reluctance on Huo Xiao Xiao's face. Raising his eyebrows, he said, then I will take Xiao Xiao upstairs to rest. He took Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms and carried her upstairs. And the old man looked back at the villa where he had not been for a long time. His joyful feelings disappeared and were replaced by melancholy. It seemed like endless memories were running through his head. He stood silently in the courtyard for a long time, leaving only after Chen Bo's persuasion. Huo Xiaoxiao seemed to have overdone her acting. Recently, she locked herself at home and sat in her room all day. When she finally arrived on vacation, she was still sitting at home and covered in mold. Looking out the window, the stormy sea waves could be seen crashing against the shore, and the golden sunlight shone, reflecting the sparkling sea. Huo Xiaoxiao stared at the scenery as she was eager to play. Although Huo Suicheng saw her impatience, he pretended to be ignorant. He even sprinkled salt on her wounds, get a good night to sleep and rest, I'll go to the beach. Huo Suicheng went to the locker room to change clothes. The beach here belongs to us. I heard there are a lot of beautiful shells there, as well as crabs and fish. You might even see dolphins in the next two days, but that won't interest you. Hearing this, Huo Xiaoxiao's face darkened. She knew that this bad man was doing all this on purpose to make her angry. She only had one question. Why the hell did this man become my father? He only knows how to hurt a child. After Huo Suicheng changed his clothes, he was ready to go out. Before leaving, he looked at Huo Xiao Xiao and said, Are you really not going with dad? This evil boss's flattery is poisonous. Maybe he's waiting for me to jump into his trap. Huo Xiao Xiao let out a cold snort and snorted in her heart. Do you want to persuade me? 
However, even knowing it was a trap, she decided to jump into it for fun. Am I really that stupid? Huo Xiaoxiao reluctantly spat out the word, I'm coming. She wasn't stupid. It was a strategic retreat. Only by going deeper into the ranks of the enemy could she learn more about him. She wanted to see how cunning her father was. Huo Suicheng squeezed her baby cheeks as he could see right through her hard mouth. Huo Xiaoxiao took on the burden of humiliation and changed her clothes. She was held by Huo Suicheng, and her legs trembled with anticipation. Huo Suicheng knew that this righteous-looking child was not that obedient, so he pulled out a rope that he had specially prepared for Huo Xiaoxiao and tied one end to Huo Xiaoxiao's wrist and the other to his own. Maintaining an obedient character, Huo Xiaoxiao did not say anything along the way. When they reached the beach, she kicked her foot and signaled for Huo Suicheng to put her down. But Huo Suicheng did not immediately agree. First he told her, Don't run, understand? I know? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded, but her legs did not obey Huo Suicheng's words. Seeing the wide blue sea and the fish jumping around, she simply let her legs run freely. Huo Suicheng, who had expected Huo Xiaoxiao to come to such a stunt, pulled the rope in his hand, stopping her from running far away. Slow down, don't run! Forced to stand still, Huo Xiaoxiao gritted her teeth and said, Let go? You have two options. I take off the rope, but we go inside, or you play with the rope. Damn it! Actually threatening me. She pulled the rope between herself and Huo Suicheng. Am I really that easy to scare? Huo Xiaoxiao snorted, pulled the rope, and moved forward with difficulty. But why do I feel like something is wrong? At that moment, in the distance, a girl in a red dress was running along the beach, holding a golden retriever by the leash. Her sweet laughter attracted both of them's attention from time to time. The red color was especially striking between the blue sea and the green mountains, making it harder to ignore her. At first glance, Huo Suicheng felt something familiar. When this golden retriever brought the girl to the two of them, Huo Xiaoxiao finally understood what was wrong. She looked at the leash holding the girl's dog, then turned her head to look at the rope tied to her own hand. Same style, same color. Huo Xiaoxiao and Huo Suicheng looked at each other silently. This dog's lead? Huo Xiaoxiao's heart sank. Damn it, why? Dad, you are such a bad person. Huo Xiaoxiao was furious. She didn't know whether she destroyed the earth or didn't help her great-great-grandfather who fell in her past life, but in this life, she had to suffer from the fate of having such a father. Were her father's words befitting a decent man, or was he just joking? Restrain her with a dog leash so that she doesn't run away? Is he really treating her like a dog? If she is a dog, then who is Huo Sui Cheng? The dog's father? Huo Xiaoxiao glared at Huo Sui Cheng. Her eyes widened like copper coins, shooting with lightning sharpness. She reached out and caused ripples in the rope. The writhing snake darted towards Huo Sui Cheng's wrist. However, due to her lack of strength, the ripples died down halfway, without even touching Huo Sui Cheng's hair. Huo Sui Cheng didn't expect that the rope he was holding was the same color as the dog leash in front of him. Looking into Huo Xiaoxiao's eyes, he knew that even if he explained himself, his stubborn child would not listen. So he decided to just leave everything as it is. Why you? Huo Xiaoxiao pointed at the rope on her hand and became furious. Untie her. Now they were on the shore and the waves were high. How dangerous would it be if he let her run around? Huo Suicheng mercilessly rejected her request without even thinking about it. I'll untie her. We are returning. Not far from them, at a distance of three to five meters, a woman with her golden retriever was approaching them. Woof, woof! The golden retriever barked at Huo Xiaoxiao. Standing in front of the huge golden retriever, Huo Xiaoxiao barely reached the top of the dog's head. Their sizes could not be compared at all. When the golden retriever barked, Huo Xiaoxiao tensed. With a whistle, she ran back with a frightened face and grabbed Huo Suicheng's thigh. Standing guard, she looked at the huge golden retriever in front of her. Her legs were noticeably trembling. Most of all, she was afraid of dogs. It's okay if this dog doesn't bark. But when this happened, her soul almost escaped. Not peeing her pants was the best she could do. Stop! Huo Xiaoxiao quietly touched her pants. Dry, no urine. She felt relieved. The woman in the red dress pulled on the leash, quietly scolded the golden retriever, and apologized to Huo Suicheng. Xiao Jin is spoiled by me and barks when he sees a stranger. Your daughter is not afraid, right? Woof, woof, woof! The naughty golden retriever barked at Huo Xiaoxiao again and even tried to rush towards her. The lady was weak and her grip on the leash was tight. As soon as the golden retriever barked, Huo Xiaoxiao remembered how afraid she was that the dog would chase her without leaving behind. Huo Suicheng's thigh trembled even more. She shouted at the girl, You! Hurry up and take him away! 
Don't you see? Do you see? My legs are shaking. Sorry. The girl apologized again and again. Then she scolded her dog. Xiao Jin, stop barking. Huo Suicheng leaned over, hugged Huo Xiao Xiao, and took two steps back. Huo Xiao Xiao shuddered and pressed herself against Huo Suicheng's neck and refused to turn around. Feeling how much Huo Xiao Xiao was trembling, Huo Suicheng frowned. The previous amazement at the sight of a girl in a red skirt instantly disappeared. He stroked his daughters, trembling back and asked unfriendly, how did you get here? The girl seemed familiar. He got the impression that he had seen her somewhere before. But, come to think of it, he didn't have any memories of the girl standing in front of him. The girl's face reflected embarrassment. Hello, my name is Su Yuanqing. I'm really sorry, I didn't know this was a private beach. Zhao Jin dragged me to the other side of the beach. Sorry to bother you. I'll leave now. Su Yuanqing looked pure and beautiful. The red dress did not diminish her beauty, but on the contrary, made her even more stunning. The small face was too fair and the chin was pointed. When the sea breeze blew, her red skirt fluttered and her beautiful long hair became disheveled. When she lowered her eyes, her pitiful appearance made people's hearts ache. Su Yuanqing, hearing her name, he suddenly remembered the name that appeared on the manager's lips earlier at the Yonghei Club. At that time, outsiders were not allowed to enter the private club. However, Su Yuanqing was able to walk in with dignity and ran into his daughter, who was alone. Today, a man and a dog broke into a private beach. Her behavior was intriguing. Was it just a coincidence? Huo Suicheng didn't believe it. Everything happens for a reason and there is no smoke without fire. He turned and looked into the distance and said to two bodyguards who came out from behind the rocks, take them away. The two bodyguards were harsh and directly asked Su Yuanqing to leave. Su Yuanqing did not expect to be driven out so cruelly. So she anxiously explained to Huo Suicheng, Mr. Huo, please listen to me. I really didn't mean to barge in here. I understand. Now please go away. Your dog is scaring my daughter? Woof! Su Yuanqing pulled the dog's ass rope, wanting to say something to Huo Suicheng. However, the bodyguards forcibly took her away. Unwittingly, Huo Suicheng raised his eyes and saw Su Yuanqing wearing a red dress on the beach in the distance. The feeling of Didi Vu became more and more obvious. He suddenly remembered. He met Su Yuanqing a long time ago. It was at a cocktail party. Back then, Su Yuanqing was also wearing a red dress. Then, after receiving a call from his father that Xiao Xiao had been hospitalized, he temporarily left the cocktail party. After meeting her three times, he realized that there are no coincidences. Su Yuanqing gradually left with her golden retriever. Huo Xiao Xiao finally dared to pull out her head, which was hidden in Huo Sui Cheng's broad shoulder. Now she was too scared to pay attention. But in the end, she realized that this girl was Su Yuanqing. She was the woman who bewitched her asshole father. But her father's reaction now was also strange. Such a beautiful woman, but he did not give in to temptation. He even allowed the bodyguards to mercilessly escort her out. Strange, why such a sudden change in temperament? Okay, now they're gone. Come down and play. Huo Xiao Xiao looked in the direction where the girl and her dog had gone. She breathed a sigh of relief and stepped barefoot onto the soft beach, standing on the dividing line of water and sand as the waves rushed onto the beach. Cold water splashed onto the shore and splashed around his ankles. Huo Sui Ching showed no interest in such a childish game of splashing in the shallow water. He pulled the rope he was holding in his hand and said, don't play for too long. Forced to leave the beach because of Huo Sui Ching's orders, Huo Xiao Xiao looked hurt. She stared at her father as he dragged her away and suddenly remembered that the golden retriever on the beach just now seemed to be the one dragging the man. Slow down. Hu Xiao Xiao pulled the rope on her hand and walked along the beach, gloating that Huo Sui Cheng didn't detect her little thoughts. Still, would you like to rein me in with a dog leash? Are you afraid that I'll run away? As the two of them walked along the beach, Huo Xiao Xiao thought about the shells and crabs that Huo Sui Cheng had mentioned before. She lowered her head for a long time, but found nothing. Where's the crab? Where's the shell? Huo Sui Cheng lied with his eyes open. Maybe he saw you coming and hid in the sea. Here's the spatula. Play with the sand. There were shovels and plastic buckets nearby for a variety of fun on the beach. But Huo Xiao Xiao didn't like to play. If it were possible, she would like to go into the water and soak in the sea for a while. But she realized that her small body was not enough to resist the waves. The sea breeze blew and the waves crashed. For Huo Sui Cheng, whose nerves had been strained since he went abroad last year, this was a good place to rest. He just wanted to close his eyes and rest for a while to free his mind. Under the refreshing sea breeze in the shade, his tense nerves gradually relaxed, and soon he fell into a deep sleep. Huo Xiao Xiao was not interested in the piles of sand. She glanced at Huo Suicheng, who was sitting at a distance from the rope. Dad, 
no reaction. Huo Xiaoxiao quietly walked up and shouted again, Dad, hello everyone. How long have you been with us? What do you feel or maybe you have something to tell us? Tilda, Tilda asterisk, your favorite or not head of this team is in touch. Part-time translator, Kosi. <laughs> it's already been a year since our first birthday celebration. Does anyone here remember our crazy celebration? Oh, August the 13th, 2021. We will be two years old. This is no longer a small date. And we can proudly say that we have already gained a little foothold on our path. And so we are going to extend the celebration for a few days and hope you will join us. To be honest, we have not yet figured out what we will delight you with. But marathons have already become our must-have features. So there will be seven marathons. And just like last year, we will open free chapters with the release of paid chapters of the marathon. Thank you everyone for your active support and love. We love you very much. Stay with us further. Are you sleeping? Huo Xiaoxiao, who had great courage, suddenly became agitated. She untied the rope from her hand and tied it to Huo Sui Ching's left leg. She then removed the rope from his arm and tied it to his right leg. Because the length was too long, she had to go around him several times to tie her legs together. Hold my leash! She picked up the shovel and began to shovel the sand with all her might. She wanted to dig a hole and bury Huo Sui Cheng. I'll bury you in the sand and see how you can scare me again. The plastic bucket soon filled with sand. Huo Xiaoxiao exerted all her strength, dragging the bucket towards Huo Sui Cheng. She then poured the sand at his feet. After finishing, she looked at the sand piled up like a small mountain at Huo Sui Cheng's feet. Suddenly, Huo Xiaoxiao couldn't wait to beat herself. This body was simply limiting her mind. With a beach full of sand, did you have to walk long distances to move the sand three meters? What's going on in her head? Huo Xiaoxiao felt that she was becoming mentally retarded. Why does she have to walk three meters to shovel sand into a bucket? Just shovel the sand into the bucket right at daddy's feet. Moving around was like taking off your pants to fart. Bullshit. There was no need for this. Forget about it. Let's bury him first. Huo Xiaoxiao raised a small shovel and began to shovel sand towards Huo Sui Cheng's feet. Perhaps because he was too tired, even after his foot sank into the sand, Huo Sui Cheng did not wake up. Huo Xiaoxiao worked even harder to rake up the sand. Soon, she finally managed to bury both of Huo Sui Cheng's long legs. For stability, Huo Xiaoxiao patted it with a small spatula. Revenge has been accomplished. I am pleased. Huo Xiaoxiao was also tired after the excursion. She threw the shovel aside and sat down next to Huo Sui Cheng. It was not clear what he was dreaming about, but Huo Sui Cheng frowned and slept restlessly. The sea breeze whistled, causing Huo Xiaoxiao to tremble. You'll catch a cold if you sleep here, won't you? She pushed Huo Sui Ching's hand. She was a little cold. Huo Xiao Xiao looked around. There was a small blanket on a chaise lounge nearby. She stood up, ran over, and took a blanket to cover Huo Sui Cheng. Even though she was a vindictive person, that was a separate issue. After she took her revenge, the score was settled. She was not like her father, who had no integrity. Huo Xiao Xiao yawned. After all the hard work, this weak body did not allow her to remain cheerful. Besides, the sea breeze blew so nicely that her eyelids kept closing. She curled up next to Huo Sui Cheng. Since it was covered with sand, she grabbed a piece of blanket and lay down on it. She then wrapped herself in it, holding Huo Sui Cheng's hand as a pillow. Listening to the soothing sound of the waves and enjoying the sea breeze, she soon fell asleep. She didn't know how long she slept. A seabird flew in, fluttering in the wind, and its cry woke up the sleeping Huo Sui Cheng. As soon as he opened his eyes, Huo Sui Cheng looked at the blue sky and his mind instantly cleared. He suddenly sat up, surprised that he had fallen asleep unconsciously. He didn't know how much time had passed. Xiao Xiao Huo Sui Cheng's face froze. He looked around the beach, but did not find the small figure. He just wanted to get up, but found that his body was covered with a blanket and there was a bulge underneath it. He slowly unwrapped the blanket. A small child was curled up next to him. When he pulled back the blanket, the child seemed to get a little cold and moved closer to him. Hmm. Huo Xiao Xiao opened her eyes in shock. Her newly awakened mind had not yet come to its senses, and she muttered, Dad. Huo Sui Cheng shuddered, looked at the small child with curly hair next to him, and touched her forehead. Normal body temperature? Did you cover me with a blanket? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded, feeling so comfortable that she didn't want to open her eyes. You can't catch a cold? The child's warm breath touched his hand, as if a feather had scratched his heart. Huo Sui Cheng's face softened noticeably. Wake up. Let's go to bed. Huo Xiaoxiao nodded, half asleep. Huo Sui Cheng lifted the blanket covering his body, saw that his feet were buried in the sand, guessed the plan, and shook his head helplessly. Busy with thoughts, he casually stood up and took a step forward, without waiting for his brain to react. However, he tripped and fell forward with his whole body. Bang! The seabird, freely soaring in the sky, 
flapped its wings in fear. Oh no, Kuo Xiao Xiao's eyes suddenly shot open. She had forgotten that she had tied the rope to her father's feet. Looking at Huo Sui Cheng, whose face was buried in the sand, Huo Xiao Xiao stood up and ran on her short legs. Huo Xiao Xiao, Linhai Villa was founded by old master Huo five years ago and completed two years ago. However, this was his first time here. Since old master Huo arrived at the villa, he locked himself in his office and did not let anyone in. That day in the hospital, Uncle Chen learned something about his master's past. Therefore, he was inevitably worried about his behavior, which consisted of seclusion in the office. The villa was a reminder of old master Huo's love for his wife. Be it the decoration or the layout, everything has been done according to the lady's preferences. But when the construction drawings arrived, the old man had just received a letter from his wife. Standing outside the office door, Uncle Chen hesitated several times before finally knocking. Only ten or so seconds later, the voice of Old Master Huo was heard from the office. Come in. Uncle Chen opened the door. Old Master Huo stood in front of the French window, looking at the endless sea with a deep gaze. His owner had aged and was no longer as energetic as in his youth. His back was already hunched, his face looked haggard, and his mood was getting worse every day. Uncle Chen, who had accompanied Old Master Huo for many years, had witnessed the entire process from the time he took over the company until now, when he could already hold his grandchildren. Master, the weather outside is good, and the sea breeze is also pleasant. Can I accompany you for a walk? Old Master Huo didn't answer for a while. Young Master went out with Little Miss for a while, but he hasn't returned yet. Maybe we should go together in search of them? Only then did Old Master Huo turn around, look at Uncle Chen, and sigh, Okay, I know what you want to say. It's not like you to beat around the bush. Uncle Chen laughed. <laughs> I'm worried about you. Obviously, you're in the mood to spend a vacation with your son and granddaughter, but you're moping and relaxing here. It turns out that you also need a rest, huh? Isn't it boring to sit in your office? I'm old and not as energetic as young people. Old Master Huo sat down on the sofa in his office. My tired old body is counting down my life day by day. How can you count the remaining days? You should see Zhao Xiao grow up, get married, and have great-grandchildren. Life is still long. At the mention of Zhao Xiao, the old master's sad face broke into a smile. Zhao Xiao is not even two yet. When she gets married and has children, I may not be around to witness it. Look at yourself. You always say such unlucky things. Why do you care about bad luck when you are half buried in the ground? Old Master Huo sighed. I neglected Ying Ying for my career when I was young, and I neglected my son for my company when I was old. When I see Sui Cheng following my old path, my heart is always worried. Young Master, doesn't he get along with Little Miss? I would be glad if he could be a good father. As his father, I saw him grow up and understand him. Cool and shrewd, does he get along well with Zhao Xiao? Without even thinking that he knows how to be a father until now. But he doesn't, master. Hasn't he been busy with the company lately? If he makes any mistakes, you can remind and teach him. After all, the young master also became a father for the first time. He has no experience. One day he will understand your suffering. Old Master Huo remained silent. After a long silence, he sighed and said, I hope so. Then maybe we should go and find young master and little miss. Old Master Huo stood up, leaning on his cane. Let's go see what father and daughter are playing. Uncle Chen helped Old Master Huo downstairs. As soon as he reached the stairs, he heard Huo Xiao Xiao's alarming cries from afar. Grandfather, 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 grandfather. Huo Xiao Xiao ran at a trot all the way, and tears faintly hung on her frightened face. She looked around the entire living room and saw no one. Seeing that the demon king was chasing her closer and closer, Huo Xiao Xiao became worried. Grandfather? Grandpa, where are you? Your wicked son is going to beat up your beloved granddaughter. Hearing Huo Xiao Xiao's frightened voice, old master Huo also tensed up and went downstairs, answering, uh, Xiao Xiao, Grandpa is here. Don't be afraid. Seeing Grandpa at the top of the stairs, Huo Xiao Xiao seemed to see the light of life. When Huo Sui Ching walked up to the porch of the villa, his daughter hid behind his father, hugged his thigh, and quietly lowered her head to look at him. Huo Sui Cheng entered the front door. Old Master Huo looked at Huo Xiao Xiao hiding behind him and asked with a blank expression, What's the matter? Who is bullying my precious granddaughter? Huo Sui Cheng walked in from outside. The rope in his hand was folded several times and clenched in his hand as he pointed at Huo Xiao Xiao hiding behind Old Master Huo. His face was pale and seemed furious, but more like anger from embarrassment. Huo Xiao Xiao, come out! Faced with such an aggressive tone, how could Huo Xiao Xiao dare to come out? She squeezed her grandfather's legs tighter. She silently raised her head to look at old Master Huo. The resentment in her eyes was obvious. I knew that my father was not a righteous man. 
but I did not expect him to be so cruel. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Ho Sui Ching, who are you showing your character to? Old Master Ho stopped between them and immediately became angry when he saw Ho Sui Ching's posture. If you have something to say, speak clearly. I'm telling you, Zhao Xiao is just a child. Even if she does something wrong, you must be reasonable with her. Huo Zhao Xiao nodded several times. Deep down, she also felt offended. Didn't she tie his feet? Was it necessary to fuss so much with your one and a half year old child? I chased her with a rope all the way. So mean. With these words, Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed this opportunity. Grandfather, dad, dad's hand. Old master Hui frowned. Throw away what you are holding? Huo Sui Chung looked at the rope in his hand and said, Dad, you don't know what she just did. She took a rope and tied both my legs while I was sleeping. If I don't raise her properly today, will she behave wildly in the future? Only then did old master Huo and Chen Bo notice that Huo Sui Ching was covered in a lot of sand, especially his pants and boots. Moreover, there was a lot of sand left in his hair and even on his face. Apart from the sand, there was a bruise on his cheekbone. Chen Bo quickly took a napkin and wiped Huo Sui Ching's face. He also wanted to shake off the sand from his trousers and shoes, but Huo Sui Ching stopped him. Uncle Chen, there is no need to worry. Having said this, he looked at Huo Xiao Xiao again. Come here. Huo Xiao Xiao clung to her grandfather's legs, constantly shaking her head. Hearing Huo Sui Ching's words, the old man also realized that Xiao Xiao was too disobedient. It was stupid to protect the child, but he couldn't watch it without interfering. Finally, he added a few words. She's is still a child. Why do you care so much? You are already an adult. Let's, I'll talk to her. He pulled Huo Xiao Xiao's hand to stand in front of him and said to her seriously, Xiao Xiao, don't be so naughty from now on, okay? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded her head like a dummy, but Huo Sui Ching could not be satisfied with just that. Huo Xiao Xiao, come here. Huo Xiao Xiao ran after Grandpa again in one giant step. <laughs> Grandpa, Grandpa has already scolded me? I'm not done with you yet, come here. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head and hid behind her grandfather. If you don't come here, your little bag will be confiscated. Huo Xiao Xiao raised her ears and showed half of her face from behind old Master Huo. Oh shit, he's threatening me with my bag again. This man always has a plan. He grabbed my weak spot and immediately started threatening me. If she doesn't show her character here, they will treat her like a child. Huo Xiao Xiao shouted to him, Then you? You're throwing away the rope. Can't you see that I'm afraid? Huo Sui Ching threw the rope aside and looked at Huo Xiao Xiao. The girl slowly walked out from behind her grandfather and walked up to Huo Sui Cheng step by step. Do you have anything to say? Wasn't it a joke? Wasn't it just foot binding? It was just a small fall. If you hadn't hurt me over and over again, even after I raised the white flag, I wouldn't have hurt you. You are already 30 years old and you still behave like a child. How mean. If I had known, I wouldn't have covered you with a blanket on the beach. Instead, I would bury you right on the beach. Sorry, that's not what I meant. Well, I accept your apology. As punishment, I'll keep your little bag. I will return her based on your behavior. Huo Xiao Xiao was shocked. No? Why not? You just, you just said you wouldn't take her if I left, and I also apologized. This is a separate question. An apology is an apology, and punishment is punishment. Next time you have such a bad idea, I'll confiscate your bag. Huo Xiao Xiao gnashed her teeth. Liar. You one that even understand such a small joke. You're worse than a child. I'll take her. Chen Bo came at the right time and took Xiao Xiao away. Okay, okay. And Zhao prepared a lot of delicious food for Zhao Xiao in the kitchen. Let's come and take a look. Thank you, uncle. After they left, Mr. Huo said disapprovingly, I don't have to protect her unconditionally, but Zhao Xiao is still young. Don't be so strict with her. Don't you protect her unconditionally? Huo Sui Cheng casually shook the sand from his hair. You're just spoiling her. Did you ever spoil me as a child? Old Master Huo's expression froze. This is completely different. Why is everything different? After all, Zhao Xiao is still small. It's not that small. She could come up with such a terrible idea and you still treat her like an ordinary child? Then I'll talk to you in advance. Don't hit her. Don't worry, I have a sense of proportion. Dusk gradually fell. In the place where the sea merged with the sky, the orange sunset became brighter and brighter, slowly sinking below the horizon. It gave way to the bright moon in the sky. Huo Xiao Xiao curled up in her nest, feeling sorry for the small bag she had lost. Now she was full of regrets. She would not have tied the rope to her father's feet if she knew it would lead to such a terrible outcome. She couldn't let this continue. Her father will always be okay as long as she suffers. At first, the relationship between father and daughter was warm and affectionate. However, when old master Huo pretended to be sick and lied to Huo Sui Ching one day, things got out of control. However, she did everything she had to do, even raising the white flag. 
but Huo Suicheng refused to let her go. Huo Xiaoxiao sighed faintly. Being an adult didn't help either. Having to come up with countermeasures due to her lack of experience with her father in her previous life was causing a headache. Huo Xiaoxiao got out of bed and moved her small stool to reach the tablet on the table. After successfully unlocking, she started searching for the following topics in the search bar. How should a daughter communicate with her father? What to do if the father does not understand his daughter? How to improve the relationship between father and daughter? What if a father doesn't love his daughter? Huo Xiaoxiao looked through several search results and came to several conclusions. One, act like a child. Two, show love to your father. Three, rely on your father. Four, communicate with her father more often. She seemed to understand something. She needed to express her love for her father. Raising a white flag or something like that is not love. She had to figure out a way. Looking around, she finally settled on the colored pencils on the table. The girl put the tablet aside, climbed onto the stool, unfolded the drawing paper on the table, and took out the colored pencils. She had not yet learned to draw, so she could not even draw a straight line. But it didn't matter. As a child, she still couldn't draw straight. So after 10 long minutes, the stick figure painting was finished. Huo Xiaoxiao didn't know how to describe it. Father Stick took Daughter Stick for a walk to the sea to show that the slightly taller figure was her father. She drew a few bushy hairs on her father's head. Huo Xiaoxiao wanted to please her father with her drawing and believed that she would succeed. The daughters were their father's cotton jackets. When he sees his daughter's drawing, a father and daughter holding hands on the seashore, his fatherly heart will become warm and he will be touched. She could almost imagine how her father would praise her when he received the painting. Huo Xiaoxiao admired her masterpiece. This is ugly. Of course, she had no talent for painting. Forget it, it's still not for me. She got down from the stool and took this intricate painting to the door of Huo Suicheng's room. The door to the room was half closed, leaving a gap. Huo Suicheng's voice faintly came from inside. At the door, she hesitated. Her father looked very angry today. What if he throws her out? After some time, she finally decided to open the door, slowly entered the room and handed him the drawing. Huo Suicheng had already noticed Huo Xiaoxiao at the door and wanted to know what tricks this kid was playing. He waited a moment before she came in and handed him the drawing. Did you draw it? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded. This painting? Huo Suicheng looked at his daughter's drawing and frowned. Sea, sun, beach, stick figures. It is commendable that his daughter was able to draw such a picture when she was only one and a half years old. But Huo Suicheng didn't want to admit that this drawing depicted him. It's a good drawing, but it's probably you and Grandpa. Huo Xiaoxiao pointed to the thick hair on the head of the adult in the painting. It's Dad. Grandfather is so kind to you. Why don't you draw your grandfather? Your grandfather raised you, and he will be sad when he finds out. Huo Suicheng hugged her, took out an eraser from the table, wiped off some thick hair from the head of the adult in the painting, and put the paper into Huo Xiaoxiao's hand. Go and show it to grandfather. You can't make grandpa sad, okay? What do you mean? Don't you like it? Huo Xiaoxiao's fantasy was shattered. I even drew a picture for you. Don't you still love me? Not a bit touched. Are you really my father? Huo Xiaoxiao was angry. Why do modern adults lie so blatantly? Finally, she gathered her will into a fist and strained her brains to make her father happy. But in the end, he didn't even flinch. Well, okay. Since he refuses to admit that he is the one depicted in the picture, so be it. But why does the father behave this way? Can't he give his daughter some love? What an infection! Even if the emperor himself appeared today, I would still draw dad, not grandfather. I drew dad, Huo Xiaoxiao said, pointing at the drawing, trying to find the right words. Today on the shore, dad, I... Sorry, dad, so I drew you. The explanation turned out to be crumpled, but the essence was clear. She had not done well earlier on the shore, so she drew him as an apology. Frowning his brows, Huo Suicheng looked at the drawing and, feeling Huo Xiaoxiao's hopeful gaze, replied, I have already forgiven you for what happened this evening when you apologized. In Huo Xiaoxiao's heart, it seemed that his father's words meant, I have already forgiven you. There is no need to apologize for the drawing. In other words, he didn't like the drawing. It may not have turned out very beautifully, but it was your daughter who drew it. Your daughter, do you understand? Can't you just praise where is your sincerity now? Thinking of this, Huo Xiaoxiao returned to her room with the drawing, climbed onto a chair, lay down on the table, and continued drawing. She drew another person. He had a flat, pumpkin-like head, a large watermelon-like body, eyes wider than his mouth, hands larger than legs, and thick hair. What a horror. Having finished, she rushed into the room and again handed the drawing to Huo Suicheng. This is dad, this is grandfather, and this is me. The whole family is assembled, all three of them. Huo Suicheng looked at the most shapeless person depicted in the picture. After a few seconds of silence, he squeezed out, Well, great. 
Kuo Xiaoxiao's eyes lit up with praise. So dad likes it. Don't be angry. I've already forgiven you, so I'm not angry. Show your grandfather. He will be happy. Kuo Xiaoxiao hastily nodded and, beaming with hope and joy, said, I'll go? I'll go show grandpa. She took the drawing and hurried to old master Huo's room. As old master Huo was getting ready for bed, there was a quiet knock on the door. He opened the door, looked down, and saw a child standing on his tiptoes, moving his legs and trying to show a drawing with both hands. Grandfather! Grandfather! Drawing! Seeing the drawing, old master Huo was surprised. He took the drawing with one hand and hugged Xiao Xiao with the other. Did Xiao Xiao draw this? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded and pointed to the drawing. This is grandpa, this is dad, and this is me. Old master Huo was not as picky as Huo Sui Cheng. He sincerely believed that his granddaughter did a very good job and praised her warmly. Xiao Xiao is very good at drawing. You are very gifted. Have you already shown it to dad? <laughs> yes, dad likes it. Old Master Huo really appreciated the drawing. He understood that this was the first drawing in the child's life, and such events should be treated with respect. Grandfather will then find a frame and hang the drawing on the wall, okay? Grandfather, you don't have to be so sophisticated. She sensibly assessed her work and would never have become so vain as to lose her head from words of praise. Frame and hang on the wall so that he would be constantly visible and reminded of this incident. Of course, Zhao Xiao would have suffered embarrassment, but the drawing turned out frankly terrible. She shook her head like a rattle. No? Yes, this is for dad. For dad? Dad was angry this evening. I drew it for my dad. Old Master Huo immediately realized. So our Zhao Xiao is apologizing to dad like that? Okay, then we'll hang it in dad's room. He will be very pleased. Huo Xiao Xiao remembered her father's expression when she saw the drawing. Maybe, not good? Maybe. Not good? With a smile on his face, old Master Huo took the drawing and walked towards Chen Bo with Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms. Having found it, he has to choose a suitable frame for the picture and carefully hang it on the wall. Chen Bo, seeing the drawing, also appreciated it without a bit of reproach. Did Xiao Xiao draw this? Flawless. Uncle Chen will definitely find a frame for your work. No sooner said than done. Chen Bo immediately found an A4 frame, then wiped the stains off the glass before showing it to Huo Xiao Xiao. Her terrible creation was perceived as a masterpiece of fine art, which made her blush. She felt a little awkward. Give me the drawing, said old master Huo. Took the frame from Uncle Chen and headed upstairs to Huo Sui Ching's room. Entering the room, old master Huo looked around and, feeling Huo Sui Ching's perplexed gaze on himself, pointed to the wall where the bed stood. Well, Xiao Xiao, shall we hang your drawing here? Only after these words did Huo Sui Ching notice the frame in his father's hand, and his heart trembled. What, what are you talking about? Old Master Huo smiled and showed him the frame. This is Yao Xiao's first drawing. I think this is a very important event, so I asked Chen Bo to select the frame. Zhao Xiao drew it especially for you, so let it hang in your room. Huo Sui Ching wanted to object, but Huo Xiao Xiao took the initiative and concluded, Excellent! Finally, Old Master Huo turned to Huo Sui Ching and said, Look how good Zhao Xiao is. She knows how to draw in a way that will calm you down. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded in agreement. Huo Sui Ching sighed and accepted his daughter's drawing. They rarely come to this villa anyway. I understand. Let the picture stay with you for now. Then I will call the workers to hang him. Huo Sui Ching looked at the frame in his hands. It turned out well, talented. Huo Xiao Xiao was shocked. Let's invite an art teacher. Let him come in a couple of days. Xiao Xiao's talent should be given more attention. Okay, let's do that. Huo Xiao Xiao was speechless with this decision. Soon a worker arrived and hung a drawing on the wall which the owners of the house called a cute work of art. While hanging the drawing on the wall, he couldn't help but laugh a couple of times. What are you laughing at? Huo Sui Cheng asked, looking into the room. You misunderstood? The worker hastened to explain the situation, seeing the cold expression on his face. I just think that your daughter did a very nice job. Go away, Huo Sui Cheng answered coldly, looking away. The worker quickly got ready and left. Although this villa was visited only during vacation, it was decorated thoroughly. The designer worked on every inch of it. Everything was clearly thought out, starting with the design as a whole and ending with the vases. The paintings on the walls were not particularly famous, but nevertheless, they cost a lot of money, and a picture drawn by an innocent child looked out of place among them. Apart from Huo Xiao Xiao, no one in this family had the privilege of painting so that their work would be framed. Huo Sui Ching looked at the drawing for a while. The man with thick hair looked like him, except for his hairstyle. They say that a daughter is given to her father so that he will love her. Why then did Huo Sui Cheng feel like his daughter had been sent down to him as punishment? Every day she came up with new tricks. The frame seemed to have some 
dust left over from nailing the picture to the wall. Huo Suicheng stretched out his hand and wiped the frame. The next morning, Huo Xiaoxiao woke up in a cheerful mood. When she gave the drawing to her father last night, she hoped that she had made peace with him and that they would never hurt each other again. She was relieved of the psychological burden, and that was probably why she slept well. There was only one detail left that bothered her. Her grandfather forbade her to play in the water. Why else come to the beach if not for water games? Boring. Throughout the day, Huo Xiaoxiao's swimsuit never came in handy. She walked around with a plastic bucket, holding hands with her grandfather, who constantly told her not to go too far. She eventually returned, collecting several shells. Still, it's better than being under the control of my father yesterday. There was a swimming pool in the backyard of the villa. While climbing the stairs, she heard a splash of water and rushed to the pool on her short legs. The pool was quite big. Next to it were chairs and barbecue stoves. Dad! Huo Xiaoxiao screamed when she saw someone swimming in the pool. Dad! Huo Xiaoxiao screamed when she saw someone swimming in the pool. Huo Suicheng, swimming in circles in the pool, noticed his daughter standing near the edge with his peripheral vision. He rose above the water, leaned his elbows on the side of the pool, and threw back his damp hair, under which his broad forehead was hidden. Drops of water flowed from his forehead along the high bridge of his nose and rolled into the pool. What an injustice. Huo Xiaoxiao was wearing a swimsuit, but her father is swimming. Huo Xiaoxiao glanced at her father, muscular abs. A clearly visible relief and proportionally folded hands gave his image strength. Blinking her big black eyes quickly, Huo Xiaoxiao grinned, took a step back with her right foot, and rushed towards her father like a bullet. Huo Suiqing was stunned by the suddenness of what was happening. His face changed. He jumped back anxiously and caught Huo Xiaoxiao, who was jumping from the edge of the pool. Huo Xiaoxiao, he cried. Without even thinking whether she was doing the right thing, Huo Xiaoxiao hugged her father's neck and dangled her short legs in the water. A dad swim! Who gave you permission to jump? Huo Suiqing asked, looking at his daughter with slight fear. Dad is here! Huo Xiaoxiao answered with confidence. Now Huo Suicheng realized how determined his daughter is. There are no limits for her. Get up, Huo Suicheng said, pushing Huo Xiaoxiao to the edge of the pool. <laughs> no, dad, teach me. <laughs> I want to swim too, the daughter answered, hugging his neck even tighter. What did she learn yesterday? Always rely on your father. Listen to what I say. I will teach you when you grow up. I want it now. Huo Xiaoxiao, why are you forcing me to teach you a lesson in obedience? The girl fell silent. She knew that her father had been wanting to hit her for a long time. Holding Huo Xiaoxiao in his arms, Huo Suicheng rose from the water, walked to the edge, took a towel, wiped his daughter, and sat her in a chair. He was about to dry himself when he heard a sound behind him. Turning around, he saw Huo Xiaoxiao happily splashing in the pool and rushed towards her to pull her out of the water. Cuff, I'm, I'm fine, Dad! The girl reassured her father, coughing in his arms. Nothing bad happened. Finally, Huo Suicheng breathed a sigh of relief. We'll discuss this later, Huo Suicheng said in response to his daughter, his uncontrollable laughter, combing her wet hair back. Huo Xiaoxiao was not at all frightened by this. Dad, go? Come here, she screamed. In this situation, Huo Suicheng was helpless. He slowly swam back and let his daughter grab his hand and dangle her legs in the water. Hold your breath before your head hits the water. Calm your feet. Now inhale. For a swimmer like Huo Suicheng, swimming was already familiar. But Huo Xiaoxiao had never learned to swim even in her previous life. After several dives, having swallowed water, she already regretted her decision. Swimming was so difficult. In addition, water pouring out through the nose caused discomfort. Dad, dad, no, 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 Huo Xiaoxiao protested, wanting to finish her training, but her mouth was filled with water again. Don't be afraid, dad is with you. A pair of strong hands lifted her drowning body. Rising above the water, Huo Xiaoxiao took a deep breath. Under Huo Suiqing's control, the girl gradually became more confident in the water until she finally let go of his hand. Delighted with the result, she swam like a dog. Huo Xiaoxiao had no idea that swimming was so easy. Dad, Dad, look, I can do this too. Clever girl. Her picky father condescended to praise for the first time. Dad is smarter. Huo Xiaoxiao shouted joyfully, swimming up to Huo Suicheng. She was in seventh heaven. Before Huo Suicheng had time to answer, a cry was heard from behind. Huo Suicheng, what are you doing? Seeing her grandfather, Huo Xiaoxiao became even more happy and continued swimming. Grandfather, I can swim. Dad taught me. Huo Xiaoxiao wanted to show old master Huo her outstanding swimming skills, but Huo Suicheng carried her out of the water. Aunt Zhao and others fussily brought towels to dry Huo Xiaoxiao. Only then did Huo Xiaoxiao notice that there were three or four maids carrying buckets of coals in the house. 
Huo Suiching wiped her hair and turned to old Master Huo. You don't understand? She got into the water and wanted to learn to swim. Of course, she's still small, but you can't blame me for everything. She doesn't know anything yet, but you are an adult, old Master Huo said and turned to Huo Xiao Xiao. Xiao Xiao, she doesn't know anything yet, but you are an adult, old Master Huo said and turned to Huo Xiao Xiao. Xiao Xiao? Huo Xiao Xiao blinked and politely apologized. Sorry, Grandpa. I did wrong. I won't do it again. Xiao Xiao's reassurance worked. Grandfather's expression became softer. Grandfather, what are they doing? Huo Xiao Xiao asked, pointing to the servants with buckets. Old Master Huo leaned over to wipe Huo Xiao Xiao himself. They caught a lot of seafood. At night in the yard, we will steam and fry them. But since some people do not listen, Grandfather decided. BBQ picnic? Huo Xiao Xiao acted spoiled and kissed her grandfather without a hint of shame. Grandfather's the best. Old Master Huo found this behavior funny. Go change clothes, otherwise you'll catch a cold. Okay. Huo Xiao Xiao happily stomped to the top floor to change clothes. When she descended, dusk had already fallen and the sun was slowly sinking into the sea. An Zhao and the others were preparing the barbecue grill. Huo Xiao Xiao did not sit still. She eagerly followed the process, walked around the yard, and from time to time urged the servants. Huo Sui Cheng and Old Master Huo sat down at the wooden table. Today the moon was beautiful and illuminated the entire courtyard. Colored light bulbs hung from the trees and gave the yard even more illumination. Huo Sui Cheng uncorked a bottle of wine and, enjoying the moment of peace, poured it for his father. Sitting down, Old Master Huo held his lower back and wrinkled his eyebrows. He was definitely uncomfortable. Huo Sui Cheng noticed this. Your lower back has been really sore lately. I'll take you to the doctor for an examination. Everything's fine. I was sick with it, even in those years when you were a child, Old Master Huo calmly answered, sitting down at the table. When I was little, as a child, you were even more of a prankster than Zhao Xiao. Like her, you were learning to swim then. I didn't let you jump into the pool yourself. While pulling you out of the water, I injured my lower back and have not healed it since then. Your mother even spanked you a couple of times for it. You sulked at her for two days in a row. Huo Sui Cheng was silent for a moment. I don't even remember my mother hitting me. Well, of course you don't remember. You were still little then. Little? How much? Not older than Zhao Xiao, but much heavier. The waves splashed quietly. The breeze evoked the salty, humid atmosphere of the ocean. I vaguely remember what my mother looked like. Huo Sui Cheng lowered his eyes. Many years have passed. She probably regretted it. Otherwise, she would not have written to him asking him to visit her when she was seriously ill. Maybe? Old Master Huo looked back at the green hills. So when does the project start? The fifth of next month? It's a good day. Huo Sui Cheng remained silent. Then it won't be so quiet. Old Master Huo sighed. Dad, I'm sorry. It's okay. This place has been empty for over 10 years. It's time to work on it. I used to disagree with you and put pressure on you like a father. But now you are ready, so work hard and don't upset me. Don't worry. I will not disappoint you if you transfer the company to me. A year ago, Old Master Huo still doubted whether to transfer his share of the company to Huo Sui Cheng. Now he thought about it with relief. He raised his glass and clinked it with Huo Sui Cheng. From now on, the company's in your hands. Now I'm calm. Swallowing the wine, he felt the aroma of fried seafood in the air. Huo Sui Cheng put down his glass. When did you and your mother divorce? Old Master Huo's hand went numb for a moment. She announced a divorce before we got divorced. It so happened that at that time, the company was going through bankruptcy. I didn't want to involve her in this, so we just got divorced. Why didn't you tell me about this? You were small. What was the point of talking to you about this? But you didn't tell me, even when I grew up. What's the point of talking about this if you're already an adult? If you told. Wouldn't you be so naughty? Look at Xiao Xiao. Old Master Huo glanced at Huo Xiao Xiao frolicking in the middle of the barbecue. My daughter's all about you. Well, yes, and I'm all about you. Huo Sui Cheng smiled. How rude, Old Master Huo grumbled, staring at his son. Finally, Huo Xiao Xiao took the crispy fried chicken leg and ran to her grandfather. Grandfather, here's a chicken leg for you. Grandfather, so you're treating him. But what about father? Old Master Huo smiled, accepting the treat. Huo Xiao Xiao stared at the oranges lying on the table and took one. Standing on her tiptoes, she gradually peeled the fruit with her white fingers, then removed the fibers from the slices and stuffed them into Huo Sui Cheng's mouth. Father bit into the slices and felt the sweetness of the orange mixed with the freshness of the breeze. Of course, Mount Lumen is a picturesque place, but it was located next to the sea, which is why the air was quite humid. Old Master Huo, with his health, should not have stayed here for a long time. Huo Xiao Xiao was a playful child, and her immune system was not yet strong, so her grandfather was afraid that she would catch a cold from the sea breeze 
and believed that it was not advisable for her to stay here for a long time either. And although Huo Xiaoxiao assured her grandfather that she was completely healthy and would not get sick, he still tried to drive her into the house under the pretext of his illness. Soon, old master Huo officially retired and entrusted the management of the company to Huo Suicheng. At the same time, a joint project between Huo and Yi, Mount Lumen, was launched. For several days, Huo Suicheng was so busy with the project that he decided not to even return home. Before Huo Xiaoxiao had time to feel freedom, a workshop opened in Huo Huo's mansion, where fine arts teachers were invited to develop her talent. However, despite all her professionalism, the teacher was not much different from an ordinary servant. Her views were the same as the others. Seeing Huo Xiaoxiao's drawing hanging in Huo Suicheng's room, she also admired the child's skill. Listening to the teacher's praise, Huo Xiaoxiao even thought that her skill was comparable to Da Vinci. She was ashamed in front of Da Vinci for such thoughts. Old Master Huo and the teacher literally bombarded Huo Xiaoxiao with praise, which only made her interest in art grow. Xiao Xiao draws excellently, yes it is, but may I know why you painted the sky green? Huo Xiao Xiao glanced at her, drew a red sun in the empty lower left corner, and turned the drawing upside down. I drew grass? The teacher turned to Old Master Huo and smiled awkwardly. Huo Xiao Xiao also turned to her grandfather. Grandfather, I want to go play, she said her eyes wide open. She wasn't the type to sit still. It had been two months since she last went to Lumen Mountain. Over the past two months, the doctor came to old Master Hoi much more often and tirelessly told him to rest more and get better. To top it all off, Huo Suicheng was too busy with company affairs, so there was no one to go out with Huo Xiao Xiao. For days on end, Huo Xiao Xiao was unattended. In a couple of days? I'll go out with you in a couple of days, old Master Huo said in a weak voice. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. After finishing the lesson, the teacher turned to old Master Huo before leaving. Sir, young miss is very smart and easily learns new things. Her intellectual and emotional development is much higher than that of many children of this age. I don't think she should be homeschooled right now. Given her current condition and mood, I suggest starting to introduce her to other children her age or slightly older. It is harmful for a child to be bored within four walls. Old Master Huo nodded in agreement. In the evening, when Huo Suicheng returned, he told his son about the situation and suggested sending Huo Xiaoxiao to kindergarten. She's only two years old. It's too early for kindergarten. Huo Suicheng immediately objected. You work all day, but the doctor told me to stay at home. I can't trust Huo Xiaoxiao to others. If you think it's too small, maybe send it in six months. What do you think? Huo Suicheng thought for a moment and did not answer. Old Master Huo sighed. There is no woman in this family, he said, focusing his gaze on his son. You. I'll do as you say. I'll send her to kindergarten. Huo Sui Ching responded immediately. Then he lowered his head and looked at his watch. I have a banquet in the evening? I'll probably be back late. Go to bed early. Banquet? What banquet? Mr. And is celebrating his birthday today. Forgot? Mr. Huo immediately understood everything. What kind of memory have I become? I almost forgot. Since it is a birthday celebration, Huo Xiao Xiao can also go. Take it with you. Today she said that she wanted to go play. Another time, Huo Sui Ching refused after thinking a little. But Huo Xiao Xiao, who was standing outside the door, heard everything. Great. They keep me at home, like in prison. Dad is going to go play without me, probably because I'm still small and there's a lot of trouble with me. Huo Xiao Xiao was so indignant that she wanted to push the door and ask Dad why he didn't take her to the holiday if it would be so much fun. But she changed her mind. What if he still refuses? No, we need to think of something else. Footsteps were heard outside. Huo Xiao Xiao rushed downstairs and saw a car parked at the entrance. The passenger door was open and Xiao Xiao jumped onto the seat when no one was looking. There was more than enough space under the seat. To ensure that the driver and father did not discover her, Xiao Xiao covered herself with a black briefcase. When the lights in the cabin go out, no one will notice me. Brilliant. While Huo Xiao Xiao was enjoying her cleverness, she heard the back door open. Then the door closed and Xiao Wu, as the driver, drove away from Huo's mansion. The car moved smoothly along the road. Find a couple of kindergartens, collect more information, and pass it on to me. Kindergartens? The old man is not feeling well, and I don't have enough time now, so it's better to send Xiao Xiao to kindergarten. Huo Suiching Da's voice came from the back seat. Huo Xiao Xiao, who was in the passenger seat, overheard the conversation and her heart trembled. That's the end. What I was so afraid of would happen. Although living in the mansion had become boring, Xiao Xiao would prefer to stay there rather than sit all day in kindergarten and study mathematics. The thought of playing in the sand with other children made her feel uneasy. Okay, I'll collect the information as soon as possible. Okay, there was silence. Huo Xiao Xiao, crawling under the seat, 
was about to get out when Huo Suicheng Des' phone rang. After picking up the phone, Huo Suicheng frowned and raised his voice. What? Is Yao Xiao missing? Have you looked everywhere? How could she just disappear like that? Xiao Wu, turn around. We're going to Huo's mansion. As soon as the conversation ended, Huo Xiao Xiao got out and, as if wanting to surprise Huo Suicheng, hugged the back of the seat. Dad, I'm here! Xiao Wu broke out in a cold sweat from what he saw. Hiding downstairs was very dangerous. If the break had worked, I shudder to think what would have happened to Huo Xiao Xiao. Huo Suicheng's expression changed suddenly. As he moved Huo Xiao Xiao to the back seat, he couldn't stand it and screamed. Huo Xiao Xiao, who gave you permission to go there? After that, he took the phone and said, Uncle Chen, tell your father not to worry. Xiao Xiao is with me. A few words later, he hung up. Huo Xiao Xiao was hit by a blast of cold air and she trembled. She didn't know what mood her father was in now, but she still leaned back and asked, smiling affectionately. Dad, are you angry? Huo Sui Cheng looked unhappy. Xiao Wu, let's go back. He was going to bring her home. Huo Xiao Xiao gritted her teeth. Unfortunately, she couldn't cry. There weren't hard enough tears to cry. So she quietly squeezed her thigh and immediately began to cry in pain. Daddy doesn't love me. Who gave you permission to hide in the car? Me. I heard everything. Grandpa told you to take me, but you hate me. I'm naughty. That's why you didn't take me with you. Do you think you can hide in the car if I don't take you myself? Who taught you this? Do you know how dangerous this is? Huo Suiching was not just angry. Seeing Huo Xiao Xiao crawling out from under the seat, he sweated with fear and was still breathing heavily. He couldn't imagine what could have happened to the two-year-old hiding in the front seat if Xiao Wu had suddenly braked or something else had happened. Seeing her father's frowning brows and stern gaze, Huo Xiao Xiao realized that she had made him very angry. She blinked and tears began to flow. She hugged Huo Sui Cheng's hand and rubbed the tears all over his suit, sobbing. Dad, I'm sorry, I just wanted to go with Dad. But Dad hates me. Seeing Huo Sui Cheng's indifference, Huo Xiao Xiao climbed onto his lap and, reaching out to his face, smoothed out the wrinkles between his eyebrows. Dad, don't hate me. Dare to say such a thing? Huo Xiao Xiao felt goosebumps running over her skin. Being a daughter was so difficult. When her soft hands smoothed his eyebrows, he seemed to calm down and realized that he had no choice but to take her with him. If you were a boy, I would whip you right now. What cruelty. Huo Sui Cheng took a deep breath, hugged Huo Xiao Xiao with one arm, looked at the tears hanging from her face, and took out a handkerchief from his pocket and wiped it away. Huh, I haven't seen Dad for a long time. I missed you? Okay, let's go to the holiday. Xiao Wu looked in the rearview mirror and noticed how Huo Xiao Xiao pressed herself against Huo Sui Ching Sa's chest with a malicious expression on her face. He froze for a moment and turned the car around. Okay. Half an hour later, the car drove up to Ayas Mansion. When getting out of the car, Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed her father's tie and asked, Dad, are you still angry? Huo Sui Ching pulled her out of the car and entered the house without saying a word. Only after a while did he answer. Not angry. We'll discuss this later. I'm not angry. We will discuss this later. Huo Xiao Xiao did not answer anything. She suddenly regretted her impulsiveness. Grandfather will probably scold her again when she returns home. Although Huo Sui Ching was late for Mr. Yi's holiday, he was not the only one who came with the child. Both adults and children wanted to have fun. Mr. I, I wish you happiness and a long life. My father asked me to give you this modest gift. Please accept. Mr. I was already over 70, but despite his age, he was in good health. Accepting the gift, he looked at the little girl sitting in Huo Sui Cheng's arms, and immediately realizing who she was to him, he turned to her with a smile. What is your name? Huo Xiao Xiao. How old? Almost two years. It turns out that you are a year younger than Yi Qian. Do you know Yi Qian? He is my grandson. Do you want to make friends with him? Huo Xiao Xiao didn't care about small children and looked at her father. Mr. Yi patted Xiao Xiao on the head. I heard that your daughter is very smart, and today I was convinced of this. Xiao Xiao is still small and doesn't understand much. I'm sorry for the trouble. If children are noisy, this is quite normal. In my opinion, this is a manifestation of vitality, said Mr. Yi, and taking out a red envelope, he thrust it into Huo Xiao Xiao's hand. There are a lot of children here today. Go play with them. Huo Sui Cheng did not object. Then for now, meet the guests, and I will take her. Of course, of course. Huo Sui Cheng walked further, holding Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms. Halfway there, they were greeted by Yi Yang, who was greeting the guests. Brother Huo, Huo Xiao Xiao turned around at the sound. She was still under the impression of that Uncle Yi whom she had seen at the Yonghe Club earlier, and the bright woman in a white dress and long skirt who was lovingly holding his hand. Huo Xiao Xiao saw her on TV. She was Xu Xin Yi's celebrity. Xiao Xiao, greet them. Hello, uncle and aunt. 
Kuo Xiaoxiao followed her father's instructions. Xu Xinyi had only a son, and she always wanted to have a daughter, but her husband refused to conceive, citing his wife as health. Seeing the little girl who looked like a pink jade figurine, her heart filled with love. Whose is this adorable child? What's your name? Huo Xiaoxiao. Xiaoxiao? Xu Xinyi couldn't help but squeeze Huo Xiaoxiao's plump, childish cheek. Do you want to hug auntie? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded helplessly. Before coming here, she already knew that she would be questioned, pinched and hugged. Mr. Huo, Yi Yang said that your daughter is very smart and began to speak at the age of one year. I had been interested in seeing her for a long time and now, finally, we met. I also heard that you are looking for a teacher for her. Have you found it yet? Yes, I found it. Huo Suicheng nodded. That's good. You men, talk about your own things for now, and I will take Xiao Xiao to the other children. I will return it when you leave, Xu Xinyi said and turned to Huo Xiao Xiao. Xiao Xiao, auntie will take you to play with the other children, okay? Huo Xiao Xiao didn't really want to go, but under Huo Suicheng's watchful gaze, she could only follow the instructions. She nodded in agreement. I'm sorry for the trouble. Huo Suicheng nodded to Xu Xinyi. Nonsense. The guests kept arriving. The children ran and jumped around the house, and it was unknown what kind of chaos the celebration could turn into. Xu Xinyi took Huo Xiaoxiao in her arms and left. Along the way, she exchanged a couple of phrases with her. Xiaoxiao, I have a son, Yi Qian. I'll introduce you later. Will you be friends with him? Good. That's great. On the first floor on the right side of the hall, there was a children's room. When the door opened, the children's noise became even louder than the adults' conversations. Toys of various sizes were placed on the floor and two employees were looking after four or five children. Madame, Xu Xinyi nodded, put Huo Xiaoxiao on the sofa and sat next to her, then addressed all the children present. Come closer, children. Now aunt will introduce you to a new friend. When four or five children between the ages of three and five ran towards Huo Xiaoxiao, her eyes opened wide in despair. She was too busy to listen to what Xu Xinyi was saying to these real children. She regretted it very much. Why did I risk listening to my grandfather's moral teachings by following Huo Suicheng? What was wrong with staying home and playing alone? There were so many children that her brain was literally bursting with noise. Come on, help your aunt take care of Zhao Xiao. Got it. Good boy. Chu Xinyi looked at the boy sitting on the edge of the sofa and enthusiastically solving a Rubik's Cube. Yi Qian, come here, she said, arching her eyebrows. Oh, the boy said barely audibly, raising his eyes but remaining in place. What are you doing? Come here and meet your sister. Her name is Wu Xiao Xiao. Take care of her like a brother, okay? Yi Chen lowered his eyelids and showed no signs of interest. Got it? He replied lazily. Seeing his tired, lazy reaction, Xu Xinyi tried to understand why this little devil was so popular. Having a son was calmer. He behaved like an adult without childish hyperactivity. But it would be better if she had a daughter. Thinking about this, Xu Xinyi laughed and turned to Huo Xiao Xiao. Xiao Xiao, this is my son, Yi Chen. You can play with him. If you want something, you can tell Yi Chen or the other children. If you are wrong, you can tell me, okay? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. Well, then I'll go. Have fun, said Xu Xinyi, pinching Xiao Xiao's plump, childish cheek one last time and left the room. As soon as Xu Xinyi left, Yi Qian turned away and concentrated on solving the Rubik's Cube. It was clear from his face and movements that he was not like the other children in this aura room. Huo Xiao Xiao almost suffocated, seeing all these toys on the floor and children's cartoons on TV. At home, she had never been so childish. Seeing another Rubik's Cube lying next to Yi Qian, she jumped off the sofa and walked towards him. Yi Qian looked up. Can I play with this? Huo Xiaoxiao asked. Come on. Huo Xiaoxiao didn't pick up the Rubik's S cube. Instead, she looked at Yi Qian with great interest. Usually children look adorable, but Yi Qian, who inherited the best features of Yi Yang and Xu Xinyi, did not seem cute to her. Before this, Huo Xiaoxiao had never met other children, especially ones as unusual as Yi Qian. Huo Xiaoxiao was still an 18-year-old princess in her heart, so... She couldn't yet help but pinch him. Yi Qian stopped and holding the cube in his hands, looked at her coldly, let go. Huo Xiaoxiao pinched him so hard that he had to open his mouth. But instead of letting go of Yi Qian, she grabbed him with both hands. This child was good at everything, but had a bad character? No? Without saying another word, Yi Qian fought off Huo Xiaoxiao Das, evil hands, then bowed his head and isolating himself from the world, continued to play with the cube. Huo Xiaoxiao remained silent. This child had a very bad temper. She looked at the cube spinning in his hands. After all, Yi Qian was too small to solve it. Thinking about this, Huo Xiaoxiao took the second cube and began to rotate its faces with deft movements. Gradually, the speed of the movements increased, and this attracted Yi Qian's attention. 
When Huo Xiaoxiao was finishing, Yi Chen Sai's gaze was firmly glued to the cube. After a few clicks, Huo Xiaoxiao had a completed Rubik's cube in his hands. Shocked by what he saw, Yi Chen sat with his mouth open. Huo Xiaoxiao had already played a lot earlier, so the Rubik's cube was not something new for her. Finally, she had a chance to show off her skills. Finally, she is free. Do you want me to teach you? Confusion was visible in Yi Chen's size. If you allow me to touch you, I will teach you. Huo Xiaoxiao shyly shook the completed cube. Yi Chen blinked. The confusion receded and he showed naivety and embarrassment. However, he was calm and relaxed. Good, but only for a minute, he answered in a childish voice. Yes, Huo Xiaoxiao cried out joyfully, holding his soft cheeks. It was a funny feeling. Yi Chen's face turned red from Huo Xiaoxiao's touch. He mentally started counting down and stopped when he counted to 60. Oh, you can't touch me anymore. Give me another minute to touch, otherwise I won't teach you. You. Yi Chen wanted to be indignant, but Huo Xiaoxiao took her training seriously. Boys should learn to stand up for themselves and not trust others too much. Got it? Huo Xiaoxiao finally understood why adults like to grab her cheeks so much. The child's face was soft and tender like an egg, and it seemed that if you pinched it, water would flow out of it. Who would not be addicted to this feeling? There is a saying, if there were no tiger, the monkey would become the king of animals. For two whole years, Huo Xiaoxiao pretended to be a small child, but now she finally felt superior to a group of children. If she could fool her father, why should she fool three and four-year-old children? Besides, Yi Chen turned out to be quite sweet. He didn't cry, didn't act up, didn't get angry when she lightly pinched him. He tried to act like an adult and made a condescending face, which made her want to squeeze him even more. Huo Xiaoxiao kept her word and continued to squeeze him shamelessly for several minutes. Yi Qian, who could hardly bear Huo Xiaoxiao's grip, blushed, not knowing whether from shame or from the touches themselves. Okay, Yi Qian said, enduring the bullying. He waited another 60 seconds and grabbed Huo Xiaoxiao's little hands. That's it? Huo Xiaoxiao rubbed his face red and reluctantly let go, and then took the Rubik's Sess cube. Here, look at the cube and listen. When you have a second layer, slide left and up, right and down, flip right, then left. When you get across, move the lower right one to the left and up, diagonally. Top left, top right, bottom left, and top right. Turn clockwise, left and down, left and up, left, left and down, counterclockwise. Down, left, and up, right and down, right, right. After a few turns, the Rubik's Cube clicked and successfully returned to its original state. The emotions in the child's eyes could not be hidden. Huo Xiaoxiao quickly noticed the admiration and recognition in Yi Qian's eyes. She thrust the Rubik's Cube into his hand. Remember? Now you know how to play. Yi Chen was a little confused. If you remember what I said and rotate slowly, you will learn, Huo Xiaoxiao said, hiding her deceit. The rules of the Rubik's Cube were too complex for a child of Yi Chen's age, and it would take him longer to master them. Children care not so much about the result of learning something new, but rather about the process. At one time, Huo Xiaoxiao played with a Rubik's Cube for several weeks in a row. Be patient and learn. No, you said you'd teach me, and I don't know how yet. I did not say that. The learning method is the same for everyone. Start playing slowly and gradually you will learn. Yi Chen raised his eyebrows, probably realizing that he had angered Huo Xiaoxiao with his words. He thought he could easily master assembly, but he was wrong. You want to leave until you teach me? Huo Xiaoxiao made a dissatisfied face. Little thing, I can leave whenever I want. Let's see how you stop me. Yi Chen grabbed her wrist tightly. Huo Xiaoxiao was a head shorter than Yi Chen, and her arms and legs were obviously not as strong as his. She tried to pull out her hand, which Yi Chen grabbed, but couldn't. What is it, Yi Chen? The children asked, crawling from the other side of the room. She's lying, Yi Chen said, pointing at Huo Xiaoxiao. Yi Chen was probably very popular in this group. The bald boy blocked Huo Xiaoxiao's path and looked at her threateningly. Huo Xiaoxiao found herself surrounded by four or five children. They were older, taller, and stronger than her, so she would not have been able to escape. Why did you lie to my brother? Huo Xiaoxiao remained silent. Brother? What a close-knit team. This is how her persecution began. What are you doing? Get out of the way. No, if you don't teach me, you won. I'd go home today. Yi Chen's words sounded arrogant, but his face showed no emotion. On the contrary, he was straightforward, as if Huo Xiaoxiao owed him money. Seeing what was happening, the servants took a step forward. Sir, the lady asked to take care of her little sister. Have you really forgotten? And we take care of her. We don't poison her. Yes, yes, how can we poison her? She's the one who's poisoning Yi Chen. Here, she's not crying. We didn't poison her. The servants looked. Indeed, Huo Xiaoxiao is not crying, and they fell silent. Still, it was not easy to deal with these children. Come on, apologize to our brother. 
Yes, apologize? You want to leave until you apologize? Kuo Xiao Xiao remained silent. Are you up against me? With her fragile body, she would not have been able to withstand even one attacker, let alone a group. What kind of children went today? They are so small, but they are already bullying. Everyone stared at her, and she would not have left so easily. Maybe for me. Cry? But honor is more important. She wouldn't accept defeat. How can she, who is mentally mature, be bullied by children? This is a disgrace. Huo Xiao Xiao would not allow herself to be defeated by these children. If you want me to teach you, so be it, Huo Xiao Xiao thought. But then let everyone allow me to squeeze them? Yi Chen looked at the brothers. As long as you teach Yi Chen, you can do whatever you want. Yes, that's it. Okay, there you go. Huo Xiao Xiao handed the Rubik's Cube to Yi Chen and explained what to do while he played. Here on the second layer. Slide left and up, right and down, turn right, then left. At the intersection, place the lower right in front of the upper left. Diagonally, top left, top right, bottom left, and top right. Clockwise up, bottom left, top left, left, bottom left, counterclockwise. Down, left, and up, right and down, right, right. There was a click and soon Yi Chen had a ready-made cube in his hands. Understood? Now do you know how it's done? Huo Xiao Xiao arched her fingers and continued in a theatrical voice. I showed you three times. If you still don't succeed, I want that be able to help you here. Exactly, three times. Well, Yi Chen, can you? Although Yi Chen was still a child, he would be ashamed to admit to his brothers that even the third time he did not understand what to do. Up left, down right, scroll right, then left. I can. Huo Xiao Xiao sat down on the sofa with an important look. Come, line up. It was especially important for these children to sacrifice themselves for the sake of friendship. They promised, and therefore will not go back on their words. A handful of kids lined up in front of Huo Xiao Xiao. However, Huo Xiao Xiao did not spare them either. She squeezed them without any mercy. Their tender children's faces turned red from her light pinches. It was not difficult to give their faces a peachy blush. The door opened, and a maid entered the room, smiling. Children, grandfather, and he will cut the cake. Shall we go eat? Yes. The children took turns joyfully following the maid. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at Yi Qian. He was holding a Rubik's Cube in his hands and smiling distractedly. Little one, if you allow your brothers to bully me, I will arrange this for you. A large cake with more than a dozen layers was brought into the hall, and the guests immediately gathered around it. Mr. Yi, along with Yi Yang and Xu Xinyi, began cutting the cake. Entering the hall, Huo Xiao Xiao saw only a sea of legs. Hue Yue, what happened to your face? Why is it so red? The boy named Yue Yue pointed to Huo Xiao Xiao, searching for Huo Sui Ching throughout the hall. She pinched me. The child's face was red from the pinching. Naturally, his mother did not like it. She immediately took Huo Xiao Xiao's hand. Whose child are you? Why did you offend my son? I didn't offend him, Huo Xiao Xiao answered, looking at the boy. If I didn't offend him, why does he say that you pinched his face? Chen Chen, why is your face red? Jing Jing, what happened to your face? After three or five questions, the parents' attention turned to Huo Xiao Xiao. She was silent. It seems like I accidentally got carried away. Yes, I still offended them a little, but it was still for fun. Besides, these kids drove me crazy. I didn't offend them. They, they themselves allowed us to pinch them. Were we allowed to pluck them? Chen Chen, did you really allow her to pinch your face? Chen Chen looked at Huo Xiao Xiao and did not say a word. After receiving no response from Chen Chen, his mother turned to Huo Xiao Xiao. Whose child are you? Where are your parents? Huo Xiao Xiao wanted to look around to find support, but someone lazily picked her up. Being in a state of shock, she heard a clear voice. Well, baby, remember your brother? Huo Xiao Xiao looked up. Lu Boyan was holding her in his arms. Huo Xiao Xiao had already seen him at the Yonghe Club. Brat. What a good girl. Remember your brother? Chen Chen's mother's voice sounded less confident. Mr. Lu, she... Your daughter? No, no, no. I alone would not have been able to create such a wonderful daughter. Lu Boyan laughed, then turned around and raised his voice. Brother Huo, whose daughter is this? Huo Sui Ching, holding a glass of wine, walked up to the crowd, looked at Huo Xiao Xiao and the others, and answered in a low, cold voice. My, what is it? Mr. Ho, this is your daughter? Is something wrong? Chen Chen's mother became worried. What's going on here? The confusion attracted Mr. Yi's attention, and he tried to see through the crowd what was happening. I'll check, grandfather, Yi Yang reassured him. He walked up with Xu Xinyi, looked at those gathered, and asked with a smile. What happened? Chen Chen's mother pointed at her son's face. In general, nothing like that? I just saw that my son's face turned red, and I thought that he was being offended. When I asked him, it turned out that Mr. Huo's daughter had pinched his face. Xu Xinyi crouched down to take a closer look at Chen Chen. Chen Chen, tell me, 
Was it Zhao Xiao who was squeezing your face? Chen Chen nodded. The children whose faces were pinched by Huo Xiao Xiao stood nearby. There was a blush on their faces. Guys, did Zhao Xiao pinch you too? The children nodded in unison. Yi Chen, who was late, also came up with a red face. Yi Chen, what's wrong with your face? Why is it red? She pinched me, Yi Chen answered, looking at Huo Xiao Xiao. Huo Xiao Xiao, who was sitting in Lu Boyan's arms, immediately attracted everyone's attention. She didn't answer. She felt awkward. The situation was clearly not in her favor, and she had nowhere to go. Lu Boyang stood up for Huo Xiao Xiao with a smile. So, children, Huo Xiao Xiao is the youngest among you, and you say that she offended you? Aren't you ashamed? Huo Sui Ching looked at Huo Xiao Xiao, who hugged Lu Boyan Sa's neck, and obviously wanted to avoid awkward questions, and stretched out his hands to pick her up. He knew exactly what kind of character his daughter had. She would definitely have the nerve to do something like that. Children often have conflicts, so we, adults, should constantly separate them. Huo Xiao Xiao lay down on Huo Sui Cheng's shoulder. Hearing his words, she turned and said, They themselves allowed themselves to be pinched. I didn't intentionally offend them. Are you allowed to pinch yourself? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. If you don't believe me, ask Yi Qian. No, a boy named Chen Chen intervened. First, she offended brother Yi Qian, and then we allowed her to pinch us. Little one. Better tell the truth. Jing Jing, is this true? The boy named Jing Jing nodded. There are several servants in the nursery. I'll ask them what's going on. Xu Xin Yi quickly said, seeing that Huo Xiao Xiao.s crime was almost exposed. Soon the servants came from the nursery. They didn't know exactly what happened to the children. The only thing they saw was Huo Xiao Xiao taking turns pinching the children's cheeks. Huo Xiao Xiao, pressing herself against Huo Sui Cheng's shoulder, replied, First of all, I taught Yi Chen how to play with a Rubik's Cube, and they themselves allowed me to pinch them. Secondly, I didn't offend them. On the contrary, it was they who offended me and did not let me go. I'm younger than them. How can I offend them? Huo Xiao Xiao was a two-year-old girl, and the others were three or four-year-old boys. It was obvious which of them was stronger. Maybe the boys didn't offend Huo Xiao Xiao, but how could she offend them? Huo Sui Ching lowered his head and asked, Did you offend them? No, I didn't. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head. Hearing this, Huo Sui Ching calmed down. I'm sorry, Xiao Xiao is still young. This is her first time at a banquet and also her first time seeing so many children. My daughter says she didn't hurt other children and I probably didn't either. No, I definitely believe her words. Jing Jing, is that so? The boy named Jing Jing nodded. Chen Chen supported him with a nod. Then why did you say that she offended you? She pinched our faces. Mom, the last time I pinched girls' faces, you said that I was hurting them. Isn't it? She pinched our faces. Mom, the last time I pinched girls' faces, you said that I was hurting them. Isn't it? The mother didn't find what to answer, but Huo Xiao Xiao tried to explain what happened. If you didn't allow me to pinch you, then I would have offended you. But you, you yourself allowed me to pinch, which means I didn't offend you. Got it? So ask my forgiveness. The boy's faces turned red. Embarrassment was clearly visible on the faces of some parents. Hearing Huo Xiao Xiao's explanation, they didn't, they didn't know where to go from shame. Sorry, Mr. Huo, we were too hasty in blaming your daughter. Chen Chen, come on, apologize. Chen Chen and the other children apologized in unison. Their faces became even redder. Huo Xiao Xiao glanced at Yi Qian, but he remained silent. He remembered that Huo Xiao Xiao had not fully taught him how to play a Rubik's Cube, and he refused to apologize. Huo Sui Cheng did not answer and patted Huo Xiao Xiao on the back. Are you tired? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded with a yawn. She was bored with these kids. Without waiting for the end of the banquet, Huo Sui Cheng left early under an unclear pretext. On the way home, Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't help asking, Dad, aren't you going to ask me? Ask about what? About the fact that I offended the children? You're still a child, so it's normal? Huo Sui Ching answered indifferently, looking at his daughter. Is this the right way to raise children? Huo Xiao Xiao thought. If a child offends others without asking permission and without good intentions, maybe it is because his father is not raising him correctly. Fortunately, she already had an adult consciousness. Another child in her place would have grown up arrogant and cruel. But why didn't I know before that you can play with a Rubik's S cube? Huo Xiao Xiao tensed. To avoid the question, she closed her eyes and pretended to be asleep. Dad, I want to sleep. Seeing her eyebrows trembling, Huo Sui Cheng laughed helplessly. Ever since Huo Xiao Xiao became a child, she had only one answer. When Huo Sui Cheng and Huo Xiao Xiao returned to the Huo mansion, the banquet at the Yi family mansion also came to an end. After seeing the guests off, Yi Yang and Xu Xin Yi asked Yi Qian what happened in the nursery that night. Yi Qian, tell mom what happened last night. Did Zhao Xiao offend you? Yi Qian thought about what happened and replied, 
I played with a Rubik's cube. She also knew how to play. I wanted her to teach me, but she said she wanted to pinch my face first. So I allowed her. And then what? I didn't learn, and she showed me how to play again, but I still couldn't do it. I didn't want to let her go. I wanted her to continue teaching me, but she refused, so we didn't let her. What happened next? Then she agreed to teach me if we allowed her to pinch our faces. That's why our faces turned red? So, Huo Xiaoxiao didn't offend you? Yi Qian shook his head. Why didn't you say it right away? You didn't ask. Plus, she said she would teach me how to play with a Rubik's Cube, but I haven't learned it yet. Xiao Xiao is right. It takes a long time to learn how to play with a Rubik's Cube. You slandered her today, do you understand? You said that she pinched your face, but you didn't say why, just as you didn't. You say that you allowed her to pinch you. You lied about it and slandered her. Yi Qian was a little shocked. It turned out like that time when Dad accused you of stealing eggs without asking why you threw them away and called you a liar. I didn't steal the eggs or throw them away. Yi Qian objected and then it dawned on him how these two cases were connected. So what should I do? What did Dad do that time when he slandered you? Dad apologized? Yi Qian answered, looking at Yi Yang. What else? He bought me a gift. So? I should apologize to Huo Xiao Xiao and buy her a gift. That's it. It is important to admit your mistakes and correct them. Moreover, Huo Xiao Xiao is younger than you and is your sister. As a brother, you have a responsibility to take care of her. Well, okay, two days after your grandfather's birthday, it will be your birthday. Then we will invite Huo Xiao Xiao to the celebration and you will personally give her a gift and ask for forgiveness, okay? Yi Qian anxiously turned his gaze to Xu Xinyi and she, will she definitely come? You will find out if you call her and invite her to her birthday. Yi Qian nodded. Yi Yang called the Huo family. When the other end answered, Yi Qian picked up the phone, plucked up courage, and said, Uncle, I want to talk to Huo Xiao Xiao. The other end of the line laughed and slowly asked in a kind voice, Should I talk to Xiao Xiao? Who are you? I am Yi Qian. Oh, so you are a kid from the Yi family? Wait, Xiao Xiao will come over soon. Well, I'm not in a hurry. Yi Qian sat on the sofa, straightening his back holding the phone with one hand and unconsciously squeezing the pillow with the other. He listened with bated breath to the sounds coming from the phone and was a little worried. Yi Chen learned from his own experience how unpleasant slander is. That time he almost cried from resentment. Perhaps Huo Xiao Xiao is crying too. Hello? Huo Xiao Xiao. This relaxed voice came from the phone. Yi Chen pursed his lips. His face immediately turned red and he blurted out, I am, I am Yi Chen. It's my birthday in two days and I want to. I want to invite you. Oh. Hearing the emotionless, oh, Yi Qian lost confidence in himself and quietly asked, you? Will you come? <laughs> I don't know. Yi Qian was a little upset. I I'll be waiting for you at the holiday. Having said this, Yi Qian wanted to quickly hang up, but unable to resist, pressed the phone to his ear and added, come. Finally, he ended the call. Did she agree? Yi Qian wasn't sure. She said she didn't know. Well, okay, there's still a couple of days until the birthday. During this time, you will pick up a gift for her. Yi Qian nodded heavily. With obvious reluctance, he chose his favorite car from his secret base. He wanted to give it to Huo Xiao Xiao as a token of apology. On his birthday, the whole house was decorated with balloons and ribbons, and many friends came to celebrate. That night, Yi Qian put the typewriter on the bedside table and said solemnly, I'm sorry, Huo Xiao Xiao. He always remembered that he owes Huo Xiao Xiao an apology and will definitely give her a gift when they meet again. Huo Xiao Xiao didn't show up at Yi Qian's birthday party. She did not promise to come in that telephone conversation. So the agreement was not broken. The reason for this behavior was simple. After Yi Qian's call, Mr. Huo looked at Huo Xiao Xiao with a smile and asked, Has Yao Xiao made friends with someone? Huo Xiao Xiao thought about it seriously. They met only once, and the result of their meeting was not very pleasant. Therefore, she is not their friend, right? Why did young master Yi call you? He invited me to his birthday. Do you want to go? These children had pretty cute faces, but they acted naive and ignorant. If Huo Xiao Xiao teased them, they would probably cry, and they would not be able to have fun with them. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head and made it clear that she would be bored at the festival. Mr. Huo did not insist when he saw that Huo Xiao Xiao was uncomfortable thinking about it. Well, okay, if you don't want to go, so be it. Let's talk about something else. Huo Xiao Xiao froze. Well, here it begins. She knew that sooner or later this day would come, but she did not expect it to be so soon. Shouldn't children be sent to kindergarten at age three? Why should she go to kindergarten if she is only two? Kindergarten? Yes, you always wanted to go play, didn't you? There are many children in kindergarten with whom you can play. Before finishing his sentence, Mr. Huo noticed Huo Xiao Xiao's slump. Actually, I really want to send you to kindergarten. 
I would like you to be with Grandpa every day, but Dad still wants to send you to kindergarten, and I can't convince him. Dad? Yes, Dad, this comrade who constantly panics and does business all day long. But it doesn't matter. If you don't want to, Grandpa will discuss it with Dad again. Huo Xiaoxiao nodded. The next night, Huo Suicheng returned home in a tense state. After dinner, Mr. Huo carefully watched his son. Huo Suicheng's desk was littered with documents. Frowning his brows, he sorted through the papers one by one. Mr. Ho leaned on his cane and glanced briefly at the documents scattered on the table. Lately, you've been leaving early and coming back late. You seem to be having difficulties. What happened? Huo Suicheng frowned, put down the documents, and rubbed his eyebrows. <laughs> I'm afraid the Lumen Mountain Project will have to be suspended for a while. What's the matter? Huo Suicheng stood up and handed the document to his father. They dug up something. Now you should wait until the relevant authorities conduct a study. Ancient tomb? Huo Suicheng lowered his eyebrows. Mr. Huo quickly looked through the documents and frowned. He definitely didn't expect this. Didn't you explore the area? How come you suddenly discovered an ancient tomb? She was too deep. We have never descended to such a depth? Huo Suicheng sighed. Carrying out work in such places was strictly prohibited. Let's take Xi'an, for example. Previously, this city was the capital of the 13th dynasty and ancient tombs were found in it at every turn. Tombs were often discovered during the construction of subway tracks, but construction was forced to be suspended while the relics were being recovered. With any luck, Huo Suicheng would have to wait for the archaeologists to extract the contents of the tomb. After that, he can continue working on the project, probably in a year or two. However, if he is unlucky and it turns out that the tomb cannot be excavated, then he will have to close the project. Mount Lumen is located by the sea. Who would have thought that there was a tomb hidden underneath? Mr. Huo noticed that Huo Suicheng's eyes narrowed a little. Seeing the anger in his son's eyes, he guessed his thoughts. Think first, then do, Mr. Ho said coldly. Just imagine how many people are counting on you now. Close the project according to the rules. We will not allow Huo Group to go bankrupt. I have my own plans for this, so don't worry. The wrinkles between Mr. Huo's eyebrows deepened. Do you remember the terms of the contract? You just followed them for a few days, and... Now you're getting into trouble again? Huo Suicheng remained silent. By the way, don't forget to resolve the issue with the kindergarten for Xiao Xiao. Huo Suicheng's eyebrows straightened slightly. I collected some information about several kindergartens. If you don't mind, I'll show two of them in a few days. I'm glad you're working so hard on this, Mr. Huo said in a serious tone. But you should discuss the situation with Xiao Xiao in advance. What if she doesn't want to? Huo Suicheng didn't attach much importance to this. And Young says that children who just came to kindergarten don't want to go at first, but then they get used to it? Then I have nothing to worry about. Talk to Xiao Xiao and figure it out yourself. Huo Suicheng looked at his father. Why are you looking at me? Mr. Huo was a little taken aback. You usually deal with issues concerning Xiao Xiao yourself, don't you? I am powerless in such matters, Mr. Ho answered, coughing. Lately, my health has been deteriorating and I don't have enough strength. So I entrust the solution to this issue to you. The father's answer seemed suspicious to Huo Suicheng. It was not yet nine o'clock, and Huo Xiaoxiao had not yet gone to bed. She took a bath, changed clothes, and talked to Aunt Zhao. Auntie, food today? The fish is delicious. She was only two years old, so her speech had not yet gained coherence. Besides, there were some words that she needed to think carefully about before speaking. The best way to learn to speak is to talk more. However, the situation sometimes got out of control, and even the bodyguard, seeing Huo Xiaoxiao, tried to hide from her. If Xiao Xiao liked it, I'll do it again tomorrow. But my grandfather said that dad wants to send me to kindergarten. Xiao Xiao is already two years old. You can go to the nursery and play with the children. Don't you want to go? Auntie doesn't like Xiao Xiao. Otherwise, why do you want to send Xiao Xiao to kindergarten? Huo Xiao Xiao hugged Aunt Zhao and rubbed her neck. Xiao Xiao doesn't want to part with her aunt. I want to play with my aunt and grandfather. Aunt Zhao did not give in to Huo Xiao Xiao's manipulation and patted her on the head. Shameless Xiao Xiao. Auntie doesn't love you? Who loves you then? Besides, you won't stay in kindergarten forever. Auntie will pick you up every day, okay? Then, if Xiao Xiao doesn't want to, can't he go? If Huo Xiao Xiao could, she would skip kindergarten and go straight to primary school. She would rather show off her intelligence to younger students. She absolutely did not want to command small fry who had no intelligence. Just the thought of having to listen to the roar of kindergartners all day long made Xiao Xiao feel like her mind was bursting. But she couldn't help but go. All parents send their children to kindergarten. Even if she resisted, the father would stand his ground. This is nonsense. All children go to kindergarten. Okay, it's late. Go to bed early. Huo Xiaoxiao climbed under the covers and closed her eyes. 
It would be wonderful if she could convince her father not to send her to kindergarten. It's worth talking to Huo Sui Chung sometime. We definitely have something to talk about, thought Aunt Zhao. After her experiences these days, Huo Xiaoxiao thought that although her father was acting insincerely, he was not as evil and scary as the system claimed. It even seemed to her that perhaps the mission to save the villain that the system had entrusted to her had already been completed. Perhaps if Huo Xiaoxiao talks to his father, going to kindergarten can be avoided. Ajo reminded her, Darling, before you are three years old, anything can happen. Your father's killers have not yet shown their strength. Don't let yourself be deceived by this calm. Well, I do not. What is it? You greatly underestimate Huo Suicheng. Huo Xiaoxiao always thought that A Xiao was trying to scare her. The main character was Su Yuanqing, but the girl didn't know whether Huo Suicheng was interested in her. Considering how Huo Suicheng treats women, he would rather die alone. But little is known about the main character yet. Maybe he will kill his father. If you think about it, there was nothing to worry about. A Xiao was silent. You didn't think so before. The moonlight outside the window, passing through the branches of the trees, cast strange shadows on the windowsill. The branches swayed in the wind, and the shadows moved with them, which looked a little creepy. Huo Xiaoxiao lifted the blanket, got out of bed, opened the door, and sneaked towards Huo Sui Cheng's room. The door was closed tightly, and a strip of light was visible on the wall. Huo Sui Cheng's voice came from behind the door. Kill and throw into the sea? Huo Xiaoxiao silently retreated from the door. I'm sorry for the trouble. Stop, what's happening? Obviously something's wrong. With her ears pricked up, Huo Xiaoxiao was in a mixed state. Maybe I misheard? Father just said. Kill, throw it into the sea? Kill who? Pisces, chickens, of people? Maybe not. Huo Xiaoxiao continued to listen to the conversation. Should I teach you the basics again? Huo Sui Cheng asked in an unnaturally cold voice, completely different from the one he usually speaks at home. And now you're telling me that the tomb has been excavated? Find someone. Go underground and bury it in place. I don't want to listen to your explanations anymore. There can be no solution. I'll decide for you myself. Think about your parents. Huo Xiaoxiao froze in place. With an uneven step, she took a couple of steps back and fell. If she heard her father's words correctly then. The villain! This is what cruel villains usually say, sparing no one. Kill and throw the body into the sea. Bury it on the spot! Dig a grave! He is also threatening his parents. Huo Xiaoxiao, her heart was pounding. She swallowed nervously, but her father was so good at home. Why did he suddenly talk like that? The tiger is cruel, but he will not kill his children. Was he lying to her because she was still a child? Huo Xiaoxiao, who overheard her father's conversation, was no longer in the mood to talk to him about kindergarten. Movement outside the door attracted Huo Sui Cheng's attention. He hurriedly hung up the phone, opened the door, and saw Huo Xiaoxiao crawling on the floor in the corridor. Huo Xiaoxiao turned around frantically. There was a light burning behind Huo Sui Cheng, and his shadow completely covered her. Hey, why are my legs numb right now? Huo Xiaoxiao raised her eyes. Move your damn legs! Huo Sui Cheng was dressed in a business suit with a tie tied just under his Adam's apple. This was the first time Huo Xiaoxiao had seen such intense coldness and indifference in his eyes. The longer Xiao Xiao looked at him, the more he seemed like the scoundrel she usually saw on TV. Was my father pretending all this time? Has he surpassed me in acting? Huo Xiaoxiao was completely confused. She doubted what was happening, but no, she wasn't stupid. She knew she should trust her father. Perhaps she misunderstood his words. What's happened? Huo Sui Cheng asked when he saw Huo Xiaoxiao. He bent down and picked up his daughter from the floor. Feeling her tension, he lightly stroked her back. His face became calm as before. Were you looking for me for some reason? I am. Huo Xiaoxiao began in a trembling voice, not having time to calm down. After hesitating, she decided to ask directly. I just heard, you said, throw into the sea. Huo Sui Cheng pinched his daughter's cheek. I'll throw you into the sea too if you don't listen. Huo Xiao Xiao was numb with shock. Huo Xiao Xiao was stunned and couldn't believe her ears. Throw me into the sea? Even the most treacherous tiger would not dare to kill his children. Is father really that cruel? No, he's probably bluffing. Yes, he's just bullying me, right? Well, I do not. Why not? Huo Sui Cheng asked. No, don't throw me into the sea. Seeing Huo Xiaoxiao's frightened, wide-open eyes, Huo Sui Cheng grabbed her cheek and replied, Be obedient and I won, throw you out. Hearing this, Huo Xiaoxiao stared at her father indignantly. Huo Sui Cheng looked at her sad face with a satisfied expression. His anger immediately subsided, and the man sat down with Huo Xiaoxiao at the table. Why aren't you sleeping? It's late. I want to, I want to be with Dad. Dad still has work, so go to bed. Just as Huo Sui Cheng began to rise, Huo Xiaoxiao grabbed his tie and accidentally squeezed his throat. 
Dad, I want to. Something to say? Hmm. Huo Sui Ching nodded, cleared his throat, grabbed her hand to loosen the tie, and took a deep breath. What's the matter? Huo Xiaoxiao immediately let go of the tie and looked at her father with big, innocent eyes. Grandfather says that you want to send me to kindergarten. You always wanted to go play, didn't you? There are many children in the kindergarten who will play with you. Huo Sui Cheng saw how sad his daughter became. Don't you want to go? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. I want to be at home with my grandfather and dad. I don't want to go to kindergarten. Usually you shout that you want to go somewhere and play all day. Now, when we give you such a chance, you no longer want it? Huo Sui Cheng paused and continued. Grandfather himself decided that you would go to kindergarten. You know that I cannot resist his decisions. Listening to Huo Sui Cheng, Huo Xiao Xiao became quiet. A question immediately appeared in her head. Why did Grandpa say something different that time? But Grandfather didn't say that. He said that it is you who want to send. Before Huo Xiao Xiao could finish speaking, Huo Sui Cheng interrupted her. Okay, if you don't want to go, I want to insist. Huo Xiao Xiao was filled with joy. Is the father ready to change his mind? I give you the right to decide for yourself whether you will go to kindergarten or not. It all depends on you. From me? Huo Sui Cheng pulled out a coin from the box. Do you know what this is? Logically, Huo Xiao Xiao had not yet seen the coin, like many other things, so she had no way of knowing what it was. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head. This is a coin? Huo Sui Cheng answered and showed her the obverse and reverse. We will drop her off and decide whether you will go to kindergarten or not. Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't wait to try. When flipping a coin, the chance was 50-50. It was worth the risk. Holding the coin between his slender fingers, Huo Sui Cheng explained the rules of the game to Huo Xiao Xiao. I'll toss a coin and let it fall on the table. If the obverse comes up, you will go to kindergarten. And if the reverse comes up, that means you won, go. Huo Xiao Xiao wanted to say something, but in the end, she decided to remain silent. Her father bribed her with this offer. And how does he keep so many tricks in his head? So, obverse or reverse? Do you want to show off your skills? Do you think that if I'm a child, you can fool me all you want? Did he really think she was a child? After explaining the rules, Huo Sui Cheng tossed the coin with his thumb and index finger. The coin flew into the air, spun around several times, and landed on the table. The obverse fell out. He brought the coin to Huo Xiao Xiao so that it could be seen more clearly. Look, the obverse fell out, which means we are going to kindergarten. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at her father sadly. She was curious to know how he tossed the coin. After finishing speaking, Huo Sui Cheng tossed the coin again. After spinning, the coin fell on the table and froze as if glued. At the same time, she also lay with her obverse upward. Huo Xiao Xiao squinted at what she saw. Wow, cool. Huo Xiao Xiao wanted to hit herself to see if it was a dream. What she saw definitely looked cool, but at the same time, it seemed illogical. Who exactly was Huo Sui Cheng if he could flip a coin with one toss? Maybe he offends his daughter like that. Give it up too, said H Sui Cheng, putting a coin in her hand. Huo Xiao Xiao was silent and was already starting to get angry. Why is he giving me a coin? Will my role have a different result? If my father wants to send me to kindergarten, he could say so. Why these throws? If he is an adult, and does that mean he can hurt children? He has no conscience. Huo Xiao Xiao tossed the coin angrily. She turned around several times in the air and fell onto the table with a sharp ringing sound. But due to inertia, even after falling, she continued to rotate. The rotation speed began to decrease and the pattern became clearly visible on both sides of the coin. Huo Xiao Xiao was almost lying on the table and watching the coin with an unblinking gaze. She knew that the chance of the coin becoming edged was low, but she still wondered whether in this case, she would go to kindergarten. The pleasant sharp sound of a spinning coin gradually became quieter and finally, the coin stopped with its reverse facing up. Huo Xiao Xiao was stunned and couldn't believe her luck. She joyfully turned her head and pointed at the coin. Dad, reverse for Huo Xiao Xiao. This was a childish miracle. The throne coin could still be reversed. This means that now Huo Xiao Xiao will not go to kindergarten. Huo Sui Cheng blinked. Really? Take a closer look. Huo Xiao Xiao heard a short ringing sound. Turning around, she saw that the coin was now facing up. But I just saw the coin turn backwards. How could she just turn over so easily? This is impossible. It defies logic. Huo Xiao Xiao glared at Huo Sui Cheng. That cunning father must have turned the coin over while I was looking away. Dad did something. What did dad do? There was just a reverse. Now the coin lies differently. Dad probably shook the table. Do you have proof? Huo Sui Cheng asked with objection. I am? Huo Xiao Xiao began, but couldn't find the right words. She really had no proof. How can you blame dad if you have no evidence? Listening to Huo Sui Cheng, Huo Xiao Xiao was angry. 
He doesn't admit defeat and instead counterattacks. The reverse fell out. No, the reverse. Reverse. Obverse. The villain was definitely acting like a villain. If in the city you are known as an influential hard worker, do you think it's possible to offend your own children at home? Huo Xiaoxiao gritted her teeth and thought about what to answer her father. Since you think the reverse has fallen, flip it again. Toss it again? Getting reversed once was already a great success. Where can I get luck on the second throw? If you refuse to throw again, we will accept the existing result, that is, the obverse. According to the rules adopted at the beginning, you will go to kindergarten. Hearing her father's words, Huo Xiaoxiao hurriedly grabbed and tossed the coin. Huo Xiaoxiao once again concentrated on the coin falling and then watched it spin and bounce on the table. The coin stopped with a click. Obverse! Seeing the result, Huo Xiaoxiao was disappointed. So the obverse fell out. In two days, dad will help you get ready for kindergarten. It's late, so go to bed. With these words, Huo Suicheng put away the coin and lowered Huo Xiaoxiao from the table. Well, go to sleep. Huo Xiaoxiao could only hide his anger. She should have obeyed even if she didn't want to. After all, Huo Suicheng was much stronger than her. She was weak and now is not the right moment for outrage. Huo Xiaoxiao stamped her foot and ran away. But that was not the end. Returning to her room, Huo Xiaoxiao did not fall asleep for a long time. She was outraged by Huo Suicheng's manipulations. Wow, she was so angry. Why is he so shameless? Can he stop talking nonsense? Maybe he also runs the company. If so, how does he do it? The more Huo Xiaoxiao thought about what happened, the angrier she became. Finally, she understood a simple point. By giving up positions, she only suffered defeat. No, she should have thought of another way to get out of this situation. Huo Xiaoxiao stood up resolutely and looked intently at the marker lying on the table. Exactly. Taking the marker, Huo Xiaoxiao went to Huo Suicheng's room. At this time, the father was working in the office and had not yet returned to the room. Huo Xiaoxiao opened the door and went straight to the clothes closet. Behind the glass door hung countless ironed white shirts and suits. Huo Xiaoxiao climbed onto the chair with difficulty, reached for one of the shirts, took it off and put it on the floor, and then took a black marker and drew a large turtle on the back. During her practice with a fine arts teacher, her drawing skills increased significantly. She had previously been unable to draw straight lines, but now she was able to clearly draw a turtle. Huo Xiaoxiao finished drawing, but this was not enough for her. She only released half of her anger. After enjoying her masterpiece, Huo Xiaoxiao hung the shirt back in the closet. But instead of returning to her room, she climbed onto Huo Suicheng's bed and slept sweetly until dawn. Although Huo Xiaoxiao liked to sleep, it was still easy to wake her up. Hearing the slightest movement, she immediately woke up. Opening her eyes, Huo Xiaoxiao looked out the window. It was light. Huo Suicheng stood up and headed to the bathroom. Suddenly, Huo Xiaoxiao remembered her plan. She rubbed her eyes, smoothed her hair, and giving herself an absolutely cheerful appearance, got out of bed. Sneaking again to her father's closet, she took out a white shirt with a turtle painted on it and returned to bed. When Huo Suicheng came out of the bathroom, Huo Xiaoxiao was happily jumping on his bed. Dad, why did you get up so early? Huo Suicheng asked languidly, who was already about to go to the wardrobe to change clothes. Dad, here? Huo Suicheng walked over, looking at the white shirt in Huo Xiaoxiao's hands. Turn around, I want dress dad. Huo Suicheng was slightly dumbfounded. You? Are you dressing me? Turn around. Huo Xiaoxiao nodded, holding her shirt by the collar. Seeing Huo Xiaoxiao's new idea, Huo Suicheng couldn't help but laugh. He put down the silk towel, turned his back to Huo Xiaoxiao, and sat down. Dad, raise your hands. Huo Suicheng raised his left hand and put it in his sleeve, then did the same with his right hand. Done? Huo Suicheng straightened up and straightened his collar and buttons. Why are you so caring today? Dad worked hard, Huo Xiaoxiao answered, narrowing her eyes with a smile. The hand with which Huo Suicheng was buttoning his shirt froze, and his heart felt warm. He extended his hand to Huo Xiaoxiao and pinched her plump, childish cheek. It's not much. Huo Suicheng tightened his tie and put on his leather shoes. After completing his preparations, he went down with Huo Xiaoxiao for breakfast. Mr. Huo noticed the smile on Huo Xiaoxiao's face. Why are you laughing so joyfully early in the morning? It's a secret? Huo Xiaoxiao smiled slyly, glancing sideways at Huo Suicheng. Already keeping secrets at such a young age? What kind of secret is this that Grandpa doesn't know? Huo Xiaoxiao shook her head and made it clear that she wouldn't tell anything. Okay, don't tell me. Grandfather doesn't need to know the little girl's secrets. Having said this, Mr. Huo turned his gaze to Huo Suiqing. Have you already told her what we discussed yesterday? Huo Xiaoxiao had keen hearing, so she was able to hear her grandfather's words. Grandfather, Dad said he would send me to kindergarten in two days. 
Grandfather, can I go to kindergarten a few days later? Hmm? I want to stay at home for two more days with Dad. Oh, you small fry, don't you want to be with Grandpa? Guo Xiaoxiao looked puzzled. Dad said that my grandfather wants to send me to kindergarten. Grandfather, doesn't want to play with Xiao Xiao. Hearing Huo Xiao Xiao's words, Mr. Huo looked at Huo Suicheng, put down his spoon and snorted dissatisfiedly. Huo Suicheng also put down a piece of bread. He was fed up with his daughter's words. Yes, I'm full. There is a lot of work at the company today, so I will go. After saying this, he stood up and hurriedly left. Grandfather, Dad, Xiao Xiao, don't listen to the nonsense that Dad says. He's the one who wants to send you to kindergarten. How dare Grandpa send you there? Grandpa wants you to stay with him for a few more days. Huo Xiao Xiao blinked and nodded. Huo Group, Company President's Office. Since there might be an ancient tomb under Looming Mountain, the project should have been suspended until the archaeological team provided accurate data. However, the project has been idle for a day, and further inaction would have entailed significant investment losses. This was a serious problem. Yi Group also did not dare to take risks. So, in the morning, Yi Yang arrived at Huo Group to meet with Huo Suicheng. The archaeological team has not yet provided an answer, but according to information from insiders, there is most likely a tomb located under the mountain. Tomb? Yi Yang frowned. How can there be a tomb there? I don't all know. But if you decide to continue excavating and still preserve the tomb, the project will take years at best. We can't wait that long. Yi Yan shook his head. Huo Suicheng frowned. Even if archaeologists give the go-ahead to continue the work, I'm afraid that the highest officials have already decided to take the ancient relics under protection. In this case, we will no longer be able to resume the project. And Yang raised his eyes. What do you think about this? Huo Suicheng subconsciously rubbed his fingertips. From the look in his eyes, it seemed like he had a plan in mind. But before he could answer, there was a knock on the door. Come in? Having received permission, the assistant pushed the door and entered the room. Mr. Ho, a team of archaeologists has arrived and is waiting for you in the hall. I see. Go, Huo Suicheng replied, raising his eyebrows. Okay, and Yang continued, the experts are already here. The results of the study are probably ready. If they really decide to take custody of the tomb, what will you do? I can wait a little, but... The project will not be closed, Huo Suicheng replied, narrowing his eyes. But you don't want to? Huo Suicheng looked closely at Yi Yan, and he understood what he meant. Think about it. This is a big risk. I understand, Huo Suicheng answered with a stern face and stood up. Let's go meet the archaeologists. Maybe because the room was insufficiently ventilated, or maybe just because it was stuffy. Huo Suicheng took off his jacket, threw it on the sofa, and followed Yi Yang into the hall. Several assistants accompanying Huo Suicheng noticed something was wrong. Mr. Huo, what's the matter? Huo Suicheng asked without slowing down. The assistant stared at his back and hesitantly tried to explain the situation. You, on his back. Huo Suicheng tilted his head and frowned slightly. What the hell is going on? Yi Yang took a step behind Huo Suicheng and saw a large turtle painted on his shirt. His serious face was literally bursting with laughter. Brother Huo, your daughter draws well. Huo Suicheng didn't understand the reason for this strange behavior, but as he walked past the mirror in the conference room, he saw a large turtle painted on his back. He remembered Huo Xiaoxiao's helpfulness in the morning and immediately realized what had happened. He glanced around at those present. They were all nodding and smiling. Huo Suicheng turned and walked back. The turtle appeared in all its glory. Brother Huo, what about the meeting? It will wait, Huo Suicheng said, waving his hand. Huo Suicheng had never seen such a nasty child in his life. She seemed like an innocent child, but at two years old, she was much smarter and more sensitive than other children her age. Others say she's smart and sweet, but everything she does gets her into trouble. Huo Suicheng kept a spare shirt and suit in the office. He took off his shirt with the turtle on it, took out a clean one, and changed his clothes. Only now did he notice the back of the shirt. Taking the shirt, he was finally able to see the turtle painted on it. The drawing turned out to be realistic. For a two-year-old child to draw such a turtle was a sign of a natural gift. Huo Suicheng thought for a moment. Perhaps Huo Xiaoxiao didn't draw this turtle on purpose. However, having known his daughter for a year already, deep in his soul, he understood. Still, on purpose. Grandfather completely let her go. She got so out of hand. Throughout the meeting with the archaeological team, Huo Suicheng maintained a cold, stony expression. If Yi Yang had not helped resolve the situation, the meeting would not have gone so smoothly. President Huo, our team is currently conducting research on the tomb. So far, based on the results, we believe that this tomb may have been created before the Ming Dynasty and is well-preserved. We are now determining whether the tomb can be opened. Huo Suicheng nodded. 
Of course, the tomb in Looming Mountain could have been opened, even if it was well-preserved. Workers were needed to open the tomb so archaeologists could remove the relics. We have nothing more to report for now. We hope President Huo and President Yi can continue to cooperate with our department. At the end of the meeting, the head of the expert team stood up and shook hands with Huo Sui Cheng, Yi Yang, and others present as a sign of gratitude. Thank you for your support in archaeological work. As soon as progress is made in excavating the tomb, we will inform you both. Huo Sui Cheng nodded and asked the assistants to escort the team. After the team of experts left, Yi Yang sighed heavily. As I understand from their words, they want to take the tomb under protection. It is located next to the sea, and on the other side is a mountain. Excavating a large tomb will not be difficult, and even if they decide to guard the tomb, there will still be those who are willing to sacrifice their lives for money, right? And Ian thought about it. Sometime later, he said, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the turtle on your back. Did Zhao Xiao draw it? Wonderful drawing. She is very talented. Huo Sui Cheng stood up abruptly. I will contact you when there are progress, if that's all you can go. For the rest of the day, Huo Sui Cheng walked around with a dissatisfied face and cursed. Seeing him in the state, the employees froze in place. Several assistants knew that the boss was angry. They shuddered with fear and, just in case, mentally prayed for the preservation of their jobs. Huo Xiao Xiao has never felt as exhausted as she does today. She was in a restless state all day. She was a little sorry for what she had done. Although last night her father had treated Huo Xiao Xiao like a stupid child, and she had been drawing the turtle in a good mood. Now she didn't want to face him when he returned home. Perhaps my father just wanted me to have a fulfilling childhood. In addition, he had been planning to train me for a long time. Huo Xiao Xiao had fun making fun of her father, but now she was afraid of the consequences. Perhaps today she crossed the line of what is permitted. No, I must find a way to escape, Huo Xiao Xiao was thinking, when suddenly a voice came. Xiao Xiao, come here. Here's the information about kindergartens that dad gave to grandfather. Which one do you want to go to? Mr. Huo entered the room holding a tablet and showed Huo Xiao Xiao the information about kindergartens that Huo Sui Cheng had forwarded to him. At this age, Huo Xiao Xiao was only able to understand part of the words Mr. Huo said. These kindergartens were the best with excellent teachers and high quality education. However, she was amazed by the exorbitant cost of education. Huo Xiao Xiao did not want to choose a kindergarten or attend it simply because her grandfather decided so. She even did not decide whether she wanted to go at all. Grandfather, you don't love me anymore. How is this possible? Grandpa loves you more than anything in his life, didn't I say that? Dad decided to send you to kindergarten, so do what I say and choose kindergarten. Otherwise, Dad will be angry when he returns at night. If so, then, maybe grandfather. Should I say that I won and go to kindergarten? If Dad doesn't listen, let Grandpa beat and scold him. Mr. Huo laughed loudly. Well, okay, when Dad returns at night, Grandpa will scold him. How can he send Xiao Xiao to kindergarten so early? Huo Xiao Xiao's eyes lit up. But understand, Xiao Xiao, if Dad doesn't listen to me, I won't have a choice either. Huo Xiao Xiao's mood fell sharply at these words. Mr. Huo found Huo Xiao Xiao's expression funny, smiled and bowed his head, coughing. Mr. Are you okay? Grandfather? Grandfather is fine. Mr. Huo waved his hand, clearing his throat. Huo Xiao Xiao walked up to him. Grandfather, you look like. There was a cartoon on TV in which an old turtle walked slowly and relaxed along the seabed. Huo Xiao Xiao pointed at the TV. Grandfather, you will be like that turtle. You will live a thousand years. Huo Xiao Xiao's words made Mr. Huo laugh. Does Xiao Xiao hope that grandfather will live a thousand years? Yeah, listen to what Xiao Xiao says. Grandpa will definitely live a long life. Grandfather, turtle. Huo Xiao Xiao suddenly had an idea. Fumbling with her short legs, she rushed to her room, found a suitable piece of clothing, and drew a turtle on it, then found her grandfather's ironed clothes in the laundry room and returned to the first floor. Grandfather, look, I drew a turtle. Aha, uh -huh. did Zhao Xiao draw it herself? You did well. I want to draw the same for my grandfather, Huo Xiao Xiao said, showing his clothes. Mr. Huo would definitely not refuse Huo Xiao Xiao just because it was his clothes. Okay, draw? With great enthusiasm, Huo Xiao Xiao drew a turtle on Mr. Huo's clothes. Having finished the drawing, she pointed to two turtles. This is mine, this is my grandfather. Where is daddy's? I've already drawn it for him. You are shameless, Xiao Xiao. Do you draw for your dad first and only then for your grandfather? Huh, no, I love grandpa more. Dad is bad, he wants to send me to kindergarten. Mr. Huo smiled. Mr. Huo, your son has returned? Bo Chen said. Huo Xiao Xiao and Mr. Huo looked at the door. Huo Sui Ching walked in with a gloomy look, holding a shirt in his hands and walked seven or eight steps to the room. He didn't say a word on the way from the door to the room. 
His eyes burned with rage. Huo Xiaoxiao was scared and subconsciously wanted to run away, but she thought, wait a minute. I can't escape. If I run away, it means I admit guilt. What is the fault? It's not my fault. Her father was also in thought. She just drew a turtle. And why am I so angry? Looking at his face, Huo Xiaoxiao felt like she had committed a terrible sin. Finally, Mr. Ho asked, What's the matter? Why so gloomy? Mr. Huo Xiao's words reminded Huo Sui Cheng that he had always protected and loved Huo Xiao Xiao. No, first I will teach the child a lesson and then I will tell him about what happened. Huo Sui Cheng softened his expression with difficulty and replied, Nothing like that, you. This is what I think about the kindergarten. Let Xiao Xiao choose herself. She's still a child. How can she know what is best for her? Huo Sui Cheng leaned towards Huo Xiao Xiao to hug her, but she, frightened, took a step back. He raised his eyebrows and hugged his daughter, reaching out to her. Father, I will talk to Xiao Xiao about the situation with the kindergarten. We'll be back soon. We'll go talk it over. Mr. Huo waved his hand, realizing that Huo Sui Cheng would show his villainous side. Huo Xiao Xiao panicked. Her father was taking her away from her grandfather to teach her a lesson. Grandfather, don't scream, Huo Sui Cheng whispered. Huo Xiao Xiao fell silent, and Huo Sui Cheng carried her to the second floor all the way to the room. When the door closed, only father and daughter remained in the room. Huo Xiao Xiao took a deep breath. Do not panic. Calm down. It's not such a big problem. Dad, Huo Sui Cheng unfolded his shirt and showed her the turtle painted on the back. You're drawing? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded honestly. Did the teacher teach you this? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded again. Very good drawing. I didn't expect that you can draw a turtle so well now. You have talent, and I'm very happy about it, but Huo Sui Cheng's voice suddenly changed, and he asked seriously, didn't the teacher tell you that you can only draw on the board and paper and not anywhere else? She said, then who allowed you to draw? Huo Sui Cheng's words sounded too rude. Huo Xiao Xiao stepped back in horror and looked at him timidly. In the morning, you specially took out this shirt and put it on me? Why, uh, yeah? Huo Xiao Xiao panicked and, stuttering with anxiety, continued with difficulty. I want, I want to draw. If you want to draw, you can draw on paper. Why are you drawing on daddy's shirt? Do you know that doing this is wrong? Of course, Huo Xiao Xiao knew that it was wrong, however. If her father had not treated her like a fool last night, she would not have been so angry with him. Huo Xiao Xiao's eyes filled with tears. She looked at her father with a pitiful look and nodded. Huo Sui Cheng looked at her seriously. I originally planned to return the backpack to you tomorrow, but because of your mischief, I decided to wait. I will return it when I see an improvement in your behavior. Huo Xiao Xiao was silent. Pain pierced her heart. Her lips pursed. Her nose began to run unbearably and her eyes gradually filled with tears. And yet, she tried to hold back, rubbing her head and smearing away the tears. Dad. However, Huo Sui Cheng's iron heart did not waver. Mm. By the way, this shirt is dirty because you drew on it. If you do something wrong, you have to deal with the consequences. After finishing, Huo Sui Cheng picked up Huo Xiao Xiao, carried her to the bathroom and stuffed the shirt into her hands, and then took out the detergent and basin. Wash it? Huo Xiao Xiao silently looked at Huo Sui Cheng, it was already difficult for her to restrain herself, and tears flowed in three streams. I won't wash it, she answered. You drew this, so wash it. No, Huo Xiao Xiao refused, hugging herself tightly and shaking her head in tears. Uh, why not? You drew, which means you will wash it, right? But wash it off, Dad will help you. Huo Xiao Xiao looked incredibly sad. She hugged her father's shirt like a child, but refused to wash it. Seeing how strict Huo Sui Ching was with her, she howled softly. Don't cry, wash it already? Two tears fell on the shirt. Sobbing, Huo Xiao Xiao put the shirt in a basin, filled it with water, squeezed out the detergent, and began to mournfully rub it with her small hands. However, the turtle was drawn on with the marker, and even after an entire day, the shirt could not be cleaned with regular detergent. Huo Xiao Xiao rubbed her shirt until the basin was filled with foam, but the marks from the marker were still not washed off. She continued to wash, and the tears fell into the basin, drop by drop. Dad, I can't wash it. In fact, Huo Sui Cheng did not want Huo Xiao Xiao to wash the shirt, but only took the opportunity to teach her a lesson. Have you realized your mistake? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. Finally, Huo Sui Cheng calmed down, took Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms, and washed off the foam from her hands under the tap. No more drawings on daddy's clothes, okay? He asked quietly. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded again. After such an incident, Huo Xiao Xiao was slightly shocked. She barely even ate at dinner. Seeing her in this state, Mr. Huo became worried. What did you say to her when you went up with her? He asked Huo Sui Cheng, This morning she took a shirt out of the closet and put it on me? Huo Sui Cheng answered, swallowing a piece of food. 
I didn't attach much importance to it, and only when I arrived at the office, I discovered that she had drawn a turtle on my back. So I taught her a lesson. Turtle? That's all? Ho Suiching nodded. She shouldn't let things get away with this. You are completely letting her go, which is why she is becoming more and more mischievous. Mr. Huo put down his chopsticks and looked at Huo Xiao Xiao. Xiao Xiao, come here. Let Grandpa hold you. Huo Xiao Xiao timidly glanced at Huo Sui Cheng and climbed into Mr. Huo's arms. Once in his arms, she burst into tears. It seemed as if a dam had broken. Feeling her grandfather's care, Huo Xiao Xiao gradually lost control of her emotions and finally let out a loud cry. She raised her head and pointed at Huo Sui Cheng with tears on her face. Dad forced me to. Forced him to wash his clothes and the turtle. The turtle is missing. Wash clothes? She got it dirty, so let her wash it herself, right? Ho Sui Cheng tried to explain. Mr. Ho looked at him reproachfully. <laughs> Come on, grandfather, turtle. The turtle is missing. It's okay. Everything's fine. Don't cry. If dad doesn't like it, don't draw for him anymore. But grandpa likes it, so draw for him. Ho Sui Cheng looked puzzled. Before he could ask anything, Mr. Huo and Huo Xiao Xiao stood up from the table and left. Uncle Chen realized what was happening and sighing turned to Huo Sui Cheng. Why didn't you inquire about what was happening? What happened? Uncle Chen brought Huo Xiao Xiao's t-shirt and Mr. Huo Sali's shirt into the room and spread them on the sofa. They both had a small turtle painted on their backs. This was drawn by Xiao Xiao. Judging by her explanation, she wants parents and children to wear similar clothes with images of turtles. Yesterday, Xiao Xiao watched a cartoon about the adventures of turtles. There was an old turtle that lived for over a thousand years. Xiao Xiao said that she wants Mr. Huo and you to live to be a thousand years old, just like that turtle. Huo Sui Cheng was speechless for a while. As if he felt a lump in his throat, he could not say a word. Huo Xiao Xiao is still small and therefore does not understand that it is wrong to behave this way, but she has good intentions. How can you force her to wash a shirt? Remembering how he treated Huo Xiao Xiao just now, the grief in her eyes and the tears dripping into the basin, Huo Sui Cheng felt mixed emotions. He had never felt guilty before. Meanwhile, the crying in the living room became louder. Sir, calm her down. Uncle Chen tried to reason with him. Huo Sui Cheng held chopsticks in his hand, but he was no longer in the mood to eat. He put his chopsticks aside and stood up. Huo Xiao Xiao cried hot tears and literally punched a hole in the ceiling with her scream. Okay, stop crying. You will no longer draw for dad. Draw only for grandfather. He doesn't like your drawings, but grandfather values them very much. Mr. Huo reassured Zhao Xiao, looking at Huo Sui Cheng. He made it clear that he was unable to calm her down. Huo Sui Cheng extended his arms to Huo Xiao Xiao to hug her, but she, noticing him, rushed into Mr. Huo's arms. She grabbed his neck and refused to get off. Uh, I do not want to go to dad. Dad, go away, she cried. Huo Sui Cheng froze in embarrassment, forgetting to lower his hands. Okay, then don't go to dad. I hate dad. Okay, let's not pay attention to him. I washed off my dad's turtle. If you washed it off, so be it. No big deal. Stop crying. Dad can't live for a thousand years. Maybe. Even if daddy's turtle is washed away, he can still live a thousand years. Finally, Huo Xiao Xiao calmed down, but only because she was tired of crying. Huo Sui Cheng sat in the living room and looked a little lost at the t-shirt and shirts with images of turtles lying in front of him. His turtle was almost completely washed away. Now the outlines of the turtle were already difficult to distinguish, while from the other two it was clear that the child had tried hard to draw them. She wanted my father and me to be like that old turtle who lived a thousand years. Huo Sui Ching closed his eyes. It's just a shirt with a turtle on it. He shouldn't have acted so impulsively. On the contrary, he should have directly asked about what happened before making any decisions. Mr. Huo came down from the second floor, looked at Huo Sui Ching sitting on the sofa and sighed heavily. She's already asleep? Yes, answered Huo Sui Cheng. I know that you became a father for the first time and you lack experience but at least show patience with the child. You can't just blame her without asking why she acts the way she does. You told her to wash off the picture she drew for you. Do you know how upset she was? I already understand further. I will be more attentive to this. At midnight, the door to Huo Xiao Xiao's room opened slightly. A warm orange lamp was burning above the large bed. Huo Sui Ching slowly walked to the edge of the bed. The child was obviously already asleep. She cried until her eyelids were swollen. There were tears on her face, and even in her sleep, she continued to sob. Huo Sui Cheng reached out his hand, touched her face, and gently wiped the tears from her cheeks. Huo Xiao Xiao's wet eyelashes trembled as she sobbed. Huo Sui Cheng leaned over and kissed her on the cheek. Mr. Ho was right. He lacked neither experience nor patience. Often, he treated children the way he wanted, without taking into account their interests. It's just a child's drawing. Why be so cruel to her? 
The girl, lying on the bed, stirred and quietly opened her eyes. Holding Huo Sui Cheng's little finger, Huo Xiao Xiao cried out in alarm. Dad? Huo Sui Cheng shuddered. Did I wake you up? He asked softly, seeing her reddened eyes. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head and timidly hiccuped. You? Are you still angry? Huo Sui Cheng felt the warmth of Huo Xiao Xiao's hand holding her little finger, saw her timid look, heard her hesitant voice, and sobbing. His heart melted and he hugged his daughter. Are you scared today? Huo Xiao Xiao lay down on his shoulder and nodded. Next time. Ick, can you not be so angry with me? So Xiao Xiao wants to draw another turtle for dad? Huo Xiao Xiao looked at him with clear, wet eyes. I thought daddy didn't like it. Dad likes it. Can you draw another turtle? Huo Xiao Xiao bit her lip and seemed to be thinking. Do not want. You and grandpa have a turtle, but I don't... Dad said to wash it off. Draw another one and dad will never wash it off. <laughs> really? Really? Huo Xiao Xiao thought about the request and reluctantly replied, Then, okay, I'll draw you another one, but with one condition. With what condition? Dad, you, you can't throw me into the sea. Huo Sui Cheng was dumbfounded. He didn't expect Huo Xiao Xiao to remember what he said to her that night. I won't throw away, and yet you can't throw away others either. Of course I won't throw away others either. And further, you can't offend me. Of course I won't offend you anymore. And yet you cannot offend others. Who did I offend again? Huo Sui Cheng asked a rhetorical question. In general, you can't offend anyone? Okay, so be it. I won't dot offend anyone again. Huo Sui Cheng laughed. More conditions? My backpack. Huo Sui Cheng remembered the promise. I'll return it tomorrow. Huo Xiao Xiao raised her head and looked at Huo Sui Cheng with hopeful eyes. It's possible. Can I not go to kindergarten? Huo Sui Cheng stretched out his hand and wiped away her tears. No. Grandpa is not well, so he won't be able to take care of you every day. Xiao Xiao will go to kindergarten and draw and play with other children, okay? Is Grandpa sick? Grandpa takes medicine every day and needs rest. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded understandingly. Then, then I'll go to kindergarten, but don't forget to pick me up. Huo Sui Cheng patted Huo Xiao Xiao's head. Of course I will pick you up. How can I forget? The entire next evening, Huo Xiao Xiao walked around Huo Sui Cheng's room with a marker, and the clothing incident seemed to have come to an end. Xiao Xiao no longer remembered how many turtles she had drawn. She only knew that the next day, the employees of Huo Sui Cheng's clothing company brought a lot of new suits. These days, Huo Sui Cheng would leave early and return late. Mr. Huo's health gradually faded, and the doctor tirelessly told him to get more rest. After thinking about the situation, Mr. Huo again discussed sending Huo Xiao Xiao to kindergarten with Huo Sui Cheng. Wellington Bilingual Kindergarten was one of the most expensive private kindergartens in the city of Xixi. The annual tuition fee there was 198000 However, despite the high cost, there were more than enough people willing to study there. Many parents puzzled over how to enroll their children in this kindergarten. It was planned to send Huo Xiao Xiao there. However, she was not happy about it. From the moment she found out that she would go to this kindergarten, she was no longer happy. In her previous life, she studied for over 10 years. Now, after two years of carefree life, she had to learn again. She did not have time to prepare for this psychologically and would like to spend another year in peace. Be that as it may, she herself chose this kindergarten and she could only come to terms with it. Huo Xiao Xiao tried to convince herself that she was ready to learn and would not be bored anymore. Our Xiao Xiao is so cute in this suit, Mr. Huo admired. Now put on your backpack. Listen to dad when you go. But now, see you later. Grandpa will pick you up. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded and took the backpack that Mr. Huo had already prepared. Actually, there was nothing important in her backpack, only a few toys and a light snack. In short, they were meant to calm Huo Xiao Xiao down if she lost her temper. There are no children who do not cry on the first day of kindergarten, so Mr. Huo believed that Huo Xiao Xiao would be no exception. Huo Sui Cheng was to accompany her, which made Mr. Huo feel relieved, since he would not have to see the sad expression on his granddaughter's face. Huo Sui Cheng was waiting for his daughter downstairs. Seeing Huo Xiao Xiao running down the stairs with a backpack on his back, he bent down to pick her up. Although Huo Xiao Xiao was still small, she weighed twice as much as other children her age. So it took Huo Sui Cheng some effort to hold her. Huo Xiao Xiao turned around and waved to Mr. Huo. Grandfather, I'm leaving. Don't forget to pick me up. Go, go. Grandpa will pick you up on time. Hearing Mr. Huo's assurance, Xiao Xiao hugged Huo Sui Cheng's neck. Dad, let's go. Seeing the backpack on Huo Xiao Xiao's back, Huo Sui Cheng decided to help her. Are you having a hard time? Dad can hold it? I can do it myself, answered Huo Xiao Xiao holding onto the strap of her backpack. Huo Sui Cheng smiled silently and, holding Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms, walked towards the car. Mr. Ho stood at the gate of the mansion 
and watched the Bentley disappear at the end of the street. Mr. Ho, they have left? Chen Bo began. Let me take you to the house. When will Zhao Xiao be released? Mr. Ho sighed heavily. At three o'clock? So I'll go get her at two. The doctor said that you should rest. I'll take her myself. How can I do this? Mr. Ho looked at Chen Bo reproachfully. I promised Zhao Xiao to pick her up from kindergarten. Today is her first day. How can I, being her grandfather, break my promise? But it's just a trip to kindergarten. Does it require a lot of strength? Chen Bo didn't answer. Seeing Mr. Huo's stubbornness, he could only agree. At this time, Huo Sui Cheng was quite restless on his way to kindergarten, and he gave instructions to Huo Xiao Xiao. In kindergarten, it is forbidden to swear with other children and offend them. If other children offend you, quickly report it to the teacher, understand? Huo Sui Cheng was not worried about Huo Xiao Xiao being wronged. On the contrary, he was afraid that she would offend others. After all, Huo Xiao Xiao was such a little devil. Huo Xiao Xiao sat in a child's seat and looked at the flow of passersby and cars outside the window. I know, she answered absentmindedly, turning around. What's the point of offending these children if my brain might explode from their screams? You are also prohibited from running and playing dangerous games without the permission of the teacher. Here, I bought you this watch. If you wear them, I'll know where you are. Huo Sui Cheng took out a smartwatch and put it on Huo Xiao Xiao's wrist. Don't take it off, okay? Huo Xiao Xiao turned the watch on her wrist? The face with dark hair is dad. If you press it, daddy's phone will vibrate and I will know that you miss you. If you want to talk, press it twice like this. Huo Sui Cheng demonstrated the function by pressing the watch, which immediately displayed his number. You can call at any time. As soon as Huo Sui Cheng fell silent, his phone rang. He pressed the green button and his voice came from the clock. Don't be mischievous in kindergarten, do you hear? I hear, Huo Xiao Xiao answered, bringing the watch closer. Adults are so hard to please. Huo Sui Cheng hung up the phone and pointed at the old man with gray hair shown on the watch screen. The face with gray hair is grandfather. If you click on him, you will hear his voice. Huo Xiao Xiao gently pressed the screen and after five seconds, Mr. Huo's voice was heard. Xiao Xiao, grandfather, I'm not in kindergarten yet. This, this is my number. Remember, I will call often. Listening to his voice, Huo Xiao Xiao imagined how grandfather rushed to the phone and his expression. Okay, grandfather remembered. Xiao Xiao is not at home. Grandpa, you should get more rest. Okay, Xiao Xiao, I'll do that. Then I'll switch off. Bye, grandfather. With these words, Huo Xiao Xiao showed the watch to Huo Sui Cheng. Good girl, Huo Sui Cheng said, touching her head. My daughter is undoubtedly smart, sometimes even too smart. A two-year-old child mastered using a smartwatch the first time. This was the first time Huo Sui Cheng had seen something like this. He had doubts about what happened, but in the end, he accepted it as a given. Huo Sui Cheng's daughter was incredibly smart. What did that mean? This meant that she was a genius. Wellington Kindergarten was located not far from the Huo family mansion, a 30-minute drive. This was one of the reasons why he was chosen. There was nothing unusual about Huo Xiao Xiao entering kindergarten at the age of two, but enrolling at this time of year was rather an exception to the rule. After getting out of the car, Huo Sui Cheng took Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms and entered the kindergarten. The director and manager were already expecting them. Hello, Mr. Ho. I am Director Zhou. Nu. No. We've already met. Is this Xiao Xiao? Huo Xiao Xiao got down from Huo Sui Cheng's arms and holding his hand, looked at the young-looking Principal Zhou. Hello, Director. Xiao Xiao, are you really only two years old? Director Zhou was surprised. Yes? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. You are very polite, answered Principal Zhou and pointed to the teacher standing next to her. Zhao Xiao, this is your future class teacher. Her surname is Zhu. You can address her as Miss Xu. If you get hungry or feel unwell or someone offends you, contact her. Huo Xiao Xiao, as a newcomer, needed to make a good impression. Hello, Miss Xu, she said and looked politely at the teacher. Miss Xu looked young. She had slightly chubby cheeks, which gave her a friendly look. Hello, Zhao Xiao. I'll take you to the other children's class, okay? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded and looked at her father. I'll take her myself, Huo Sui Cheng said, holding her hand. Director Zhou smiled. Miss Yu, see Zhao Xiao and Mr. Huo out. Okay, Mr. Huo, follow me, Miss Xu replied. On the way, she turned to Huo Sui Cheng. Mr. Huo, on the first day of kindergarten, children cry out of habit and ask their parents to stay with them, so don't that turn away from Zhao Xiao and treat her with understanding. Otherwise, the trip would be in vain. Miss Xu understood how anxious the first day could be. She saw many children in kindergarten, and among them, there was not a single one who did not cry or make noise. Okay, Huo Sui Cheng agreed. Hearing this, Huo Xiao Xiao curled her lip. Cry and not let dad go. 
How can I cry when so many people are looking at me? This is a shame. Miss Shu stopped outside the classroom where the teacher was giving lessons to the children. Taking Huo Xiao Xiao's hand, Miss Shu signaled that it was time for Huo Sui Chung to go. Xiao Xiao, Dad is leaving. Now listen to the teacher, and in the evening, Dad will pick you up. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. Don't forget to come. Okay, I won't forget. After saying goodbye, Huo Sui Ching turned around and left. He mentally repeated to himself that he couldn't help but turn his back on Huo Xiao Xiao and be gentle with her even if she cried. But why can't I hear her cry? Huo Sui Ching turned around. The corridor was already empty. Miss Xu's voice came from the classroom. Children, today we have a new student. Her name is Huo Xiao Xiao. Let's clap for her as a sign of greeting. Applause began. Xiao Xiao, from today they are your classmates. Do you like it here? I like it? Huo Sui Cheng was speechless. He had been preparing for this day psychologically for a long time, but it was all in vain. But Xiao Xiao had previously completely refused to go to kindergarten, but now she didn't even resist. Thinking of this, Huo Sui Cheng walked out of the corridor and looked into the classroom window. Seeing that Huo Xiao Xiao had no fear or discomfort, he breathed a sigh of relief. After briefly saying goodbye to Director Zhou, Huo Sui Ching was about to leave the kindergarten, but before he could get into the car, the bell rang. Mr. Ho, I have prepared what you talked about. If you give the go-ahead, I will continue the excavations this night. Even if archaeologists want to preserve the tomb, in this case they are powerless. No one knew whether the tomb at the foot of Mount Lumen would be secured or excavated before archaeologists thoroughly examined it. But even if it is decided to preserve the tomb, the situation can easily be turned in their favor, and archaeologists will have no choice but to go down into the tomb and remove the relics. Mr. Ho, are you listening? Huo Sui Ching fell silent for a moment. Preparations for the project began when he learned that there was a tomb under Mount Lumen. For every day of downtime, the company suffered large losses. And, if the project was finally stopped, the damage caused would be invaluable. Just as he was about to answer, the phone vibrated and a cute message was displayed on the screen. My daughter misses you. Huo Sui Ching was stunned. A slight smile formed at the corners of his lips, and his gaze softened for a moment. Please hold off on this and await further instructions, he replied, accepted. After hanging up the phone, Huo Sui Cheng opened the notification, clicked on the image of a girl in the pink dress, and the watch on Huo Xiao Xiao's wrist immediately vibrated. Xiao Xiao, remember me? I'm Miss Xu. A voice came from the phone. Throwing off the mask of the class teacher, Miss Xu leaned towards Huo Xiao Xiao with a smile. Of course, Huo Xiao Xiao remembered her. It was Xu Man Yin. She took care of Xiao Xiao for about a year, but Huo Sui Cheng fired her because she wanted to become her foster mother. During this time, she was able to get a job in Wellington. That's for sure. Enemies meet on a narrow road. To be honest, Xu Man Yin was a beautiful, educated woman with a graceful figure. Despite her arrogant behavior, she had many admirers. When she first entered the Huo Mansion, she saw the wealth and influence of its inhabitants and decided that this was the place for her. She also noticed how much effort and financial resources go into caring for a child. And having met Huo Sui Cheng, she felt that in the entire universe, only he was worthy of her. Moreover, at that time, she was the only woman next to him, the one and only. Xu Man Yin believed that one day, Huo Sui Cheng would like her. As long as Xu Man Yin tinkers with Huo Xiao Xiao and enjoys her trust, the role of Madame Huo is guaranteed. She took care of Huo Xiao Xiao for about a year while Huo Sui Cheng was abroad. Unfortunately, she did not achieve her goal and Huo Sui Cheng kicked her out the very next day after her return. It was difficult for Xu Man Yin to understand the reason for this outcome. She tried her best to take care of Huo Xiao Xiao, treated her with understanding and tenderness, and even believed that she could replace her mother. But why didn't Huo Xiao Xiao like me? Xiao Xiao, from today I will be your teacher again, so listen to me. Miss Xu even thought that perhaps God had given her a second chance. Huo Xiao Xiao seemed to see strong affection for her in her eyes. Now that Huo Xiao Xiao is in her class, Xu Man Yin will no longer miss the chance to communicate with Huo Sui Cheng through her. She would not let another woman near him, especially one with bad intentions. Okay, Miss Xu, answered Huo Xiao Xiao, and you are really smart. Xu Man Yin raised her head and looked at the students. The classroom was divided into five zones. A block zone, a doll zone, an art zone, a reading zone, and a science zone, with two or three children in each zone. As I remember, Xiao Xiao likes to play with blocks, right? I'll take you to them. Three boys were playing in the area with blocks. Miss Xu brought Xiao Xiao over to them. Zhu Zhu, this is Huo Xiao Xiao. She also likes to build with blocks. Is it okay if she joins? The boy named Zhu Zhu 
glanced at Huo Xiao Xiao, curled his lips, and reluctantly agreed. Okay, Xiao Xiao, you can play here. Chu Zhu, don't offend Xiao Xiao, do you hear? With these words, Xu Man Yin walked away to check on the other children. Huo Xiao Xiao smiled at the boy, who was clearly hostile towards her. She didn't know what Xu Man Yin was planning, to cause trouble for her or to save her from her offenders. Miss Xu deliberately made Huo Xiao Xiao's life difficult by letting her play with harmful children and subjecting her to attacks so that she could later earn her respect by saving her. Adult life is very difficult, Huo Xiao Xiao thought. As soon as Miss Xu left, Zhu Zhou pushed Huo Xiao Xiao, and she lost her balance and sat on the floor. Don't play with us? Actually, Huo Xiao Xiao didn't want to play. But after hearing Zhu Zhu's words, she decided to ask. Why can't I play with you? No means no, the boys answered arrogantly. This is our place. Go play with the dolls. An ordinary child would probably be seriously afraid of these devils in the flesh. But how could Huo Xiao Xiao allow herself to be afraid of the little one? I don't want to play with you either. You can't even build a house out of blocks. You are so stupid. Boys were always praised for their intelligence, and until this moment, no one called them stupid. Huo Xiao Xiao's remark caused strong emotions in them. What did you say? We are not stupid. Huo Xiao Xiao pointed at the cubes scattered on the carpet with her eyes. Can you? Of course we can. Then build, or you are still stupid. It was more profitable for Huo Xiao Xiao to incite them. The three children sat on the floor with an angry look. Taking a sip of milk from a nearby bottle, they got down to construction in earnest. The set of blocks was intended to build several houses of different colors and a car, but for a two or three year old child, assembling any of these parts was a difficult task. The children spent a long time fiddling with the cubes, but were only able to complete half of the set. The other half lay in a heap nearby. Huo Xiao Xiao took out a cheese stick from her backpack and watched with pleasure as they fumbled around in confusion. From time to time, she made sarcastic remarks. <laughs> what, you can't? Well, okay, if so. If you are stupid now, you will become wiser in the future. You, you'll see. After a lot of fiddling with the cubes, the construction was never completed. Huo Xiao Xiao finished the cheese stick and stood up. Look, in less than five minutes, she built an entire building. What a great fellow she is, one of the boys whispered to Zhu Zhou. Speak more quietly, otherwise she will hear that we are praising her. Zhu Zhou looked sideways at him. But she's really great and also very sweet, the boy continued in a whisper. I want to play with her. Huo Xiao Xiao had keen hearing and was able to hear what they were talking about. She grinned contentedly. Come on, this is a first grade level task. Um, you're not stupid. That's why we let you play with us. Yes, play with us. But we only allow you to play with us. Oh, you small fry, I can hit you with a bottle. Chu Yin, who was meanwhile telling stories to other children, looked at Huo Xiao Xiao. These three boys always acted like masters because they were raised to be bossy and capricious. They always liked to offend other children, and they turned a deaf ear to constant moralizing. Huo Xiao Xiao was younger than them, and they would probably offend her. If Huo Xiao Xiao were offended, Xu Man Yin would definitely come over to calm her down and reprimand the offenders, which would earn her respect. But when she saw Huo Xiao Xiao and the boys, who did not even obey the teacher, play happily with the blocks, she was shocked. Zhu Zhou, you didn't offend Xiao Xiao? We didn't offend her, Zhu Zhou muttered. Fine, don't hurt her. Huo Xiao Xiao raised her eyes and looked at her. Do you want to take me? I was daydreaming. She was no longer two years old. Children are sent to kindergarten only so that they can play in another place and find friends. After playing indoors and drinking milk, the group moved outside. Huo Xiao Xiao and other children went outside, where they had fun on the slide and swing. She couldn't imagine that she would play like this all year. Xiao Xiao, the children called her. We took the swing for you. Climb up and we will lift you up. Huo Xiao Xiao remained silent. This is not necessary. Xiao Xiao stepped onto the swing. She was so small that she was unable to climb on her own and had to rely on the help of other children. No, this cannot continue. After all, popular wisdom says, whoever you mess with, you will gain from it. If she continues to play with children, she will become more and more naive. Another group of children was playing in the park. Three boys from that group rushed toward them, about to start fighting for the swing. Hey, you've been playing here for a long time. Give this place to us. Huo Xiao Xiao no longer wanted to play, but such rudeness attracted her attention. At such an early age, they were already forming gangs and hurting other children. No, I still want to play. Zhu Zhu and the other two boys shielded Huo Xiao Xiao. Leave, leave, the leader spoke, putting his hand on his belt. Do you know who we are? We are an average group. You go away and we will play. Wow, 
Ho Xiao Xiao thought. You little devil, your nose hasn't matured yet, and you are already putting pressure on others just because you are a year or two older. We won't leave. We came here first. How can we give you a place? We are older than you. You are only two or three years old. Do you want to fight? We will tell the teacher. And that's all the little one can do? Oh, you? Huo Xiao Xiao almost had a heart attack. What was happening looked both funny and childish at the same time. And most importantly, she took part in it. Zhu Zhou bit his tongue, and a child from the middle group grabbed Huo Xiao Xiao and tried to pull her off the swing. Huo Xiao Xiao did not have time to react and easily lost her place. In surprise, she took a few steps back and fell to the ground. Fortunately, the ground was covered with a thin layer of sand, and she was able to avoid damage. Zhu Zhou ran to Huo Xiao Xiao to help her up, clenching his fists in indignation. Xiao Xiao, don't be angry. I'll help you beat him when you're older. Huo Xiao Xiao's teeth clenched. How can this little girl offend her? Before Xiao Xiao could do anything, a childish figure rushed to the scene and pushed the arrogant boy off the swing. The boy arrived in time and struck the offender. You? You hit me! Friends immediately came to his aid. At the same time, the attacker's friends rushed over. Eventually, five or six children crowded around the swing. The children exchanged blows and pulled each other's hair. Two of them fell to the ground and rolled around in a ball. The scuffle sent sand flying all over the area. In the midst of this chaos, two children climbed onto a swing and fought with particular fury. Damn, they started a wall-to-wall -wall fight in a kindergarten. Several teachers hastened to separate the fighters. Let go, Yichan, let go of your hand. Unclench your teeth, don't bite. Stop. Stop fighting, do you hear? Huo Xiao Xiao turned around when she heard a familiar name. It turned out that Yichan was the first to stand up for her. He sat astride the howling boy and beat him. She hasn't seen him for over a month. It seemed that he had grown up during this time. Finally, the teacher managed to separate the children. What's happened? Why did the fight suddenly start? He asked, catching his breath. They are offenders, Yi Qian Su's friend replied, pointing to the boy who pulled Huo Xiao Xiao off the swing. Offenders? Who did they offend? They offended a student from the junior group, Xiao Xiao. Yes, we saw everything. They were the ones who offended Xiao Xiao. These children made an impression on her. By the way, she saw them all at the Yi family's festival. The boys' names were Jing Jing, Yue Yue, and Chen Chen. They are great for attaching such importance to friendship. Xiao Xiao, who is Xiao Xiao? That's her. They pulled her off the swing and threw her to the ground. For a moment, all the teachers stared at Huo Xiao Xiao. In this case, Xiao Xiao was ready to support her defenders. With tears in her eyes, she nodded, showed her hands smeared in sand, and screamed in pain. Of course, she wasn't in that much pain. It's just sand. Seeing this, the teacher of the junior group hurriedly took Huo Xiao Xiao to the medical office. Children who were injured in the fight were also sent one by one for examination. Yi Chen and his friends didn't suffer too much, but the boy he beat had several bruises on his face. The medical office was filled with sepulchral crying and wolf howls. You hit me. I'll tell dad everything. I want to go to mom. Oh, 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 it hurts. I'll complain to grandma. Huo Xiao Xiao's brain was bursting with noise, but she calmly allowed the doctor to wipe the sand off her hands with a cotton swab. Seeing how she calmly, without crying, offered her palms, the doctor was amazed. You are very smart. After the most chaotic fight in the history of the kindergarten, Principal Joe personally appeared to the participants. Having found out the circumstances, he turned to the silent Yi Qian. Qian Qian, have you been told that if other children offend someone, you should inform the teacher about it? Yi Qian nodded. Then why did you put up such a fight? Yi Qian remained silent. Many of the children who were sent to this kindergarten were from wealthy and respected families. Inform your parents, said the director, examining the bruises on the face of the beaten boy. Huo Xiao Xiao's hands were completely cleaned of sand. There wasn't a scratch on them. Huo Xiao Xiao walked up to Yi Qian and poked the bruise on his cheek. Does it hurt? She asked quietly. Yi Qian rubbed his injured cheek. Wincing from pain, he still restrained himself. It doesn't hurt. Meanwhile, the boy, who was rubbing medicine into the damaged areas nearby, let out a terrible cry. Ay, 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 it hurts. It is quite normal for children to get into fights because they do not yet understand what they are doing. However, there hasn't been a massacre like this in Wellington for a long time. As soon as the children had a conflict, the teachers immediately tried to suppress it. Therefore, today's fight happened by pure chance. At that time, the teachers were busy with other children and could not keep track of the fighters. So in the blink of an eye, the children clashed with unprecedented fury. Director, we have already informed the parents about what happened. Okay. The crying in the medical office subsided. In particular, this applied to those children who were beaten by Yi Qian. They cried the loudest. 
It's good that they were calmed down in a timely manner. Huo Xiaoxiao watched the doctors and teachers hovering around the wounded children and trying to console them. However, Yi Qian and the others did not cry, despite the bruises on their faces, and silently endured the pain. They stood quietly on the sidelines, and the teachers did not pay attention to them. The teacher, Yi Qian, and the others have not yet been cured. A creaky child's voice rang out, reminding the teachers of the children, completely forgotten in the bustle. They hurriedly brought Yi Qian and the other children to the doctor for examination. The doctor carefully examined the bruises on Yi Qian's face and took out a cotton swab and ointment. Listen, I'll rub in the ointment now. If it hurts, you can cry. Just don't move, understand? We won't pay, Yi Qian answered. We are no longer two years old at our age. It's a shame to cry. Yes, that's right. The guys from the middle group offended the younger ones and still dared to cry. What a shame. Crying offenders. Hearing these words, the children who had stopped crying howled again. The teacher, tired of what had happened, turned to the children who had just spoken and reprimanded them. Lu Jingyi, Xiang Chen, Jiang Yui, I forbid you to speak. The children curled their lips and whispered to Huo Xiao Xiao, Are you okay, Xiao Xiao? We saw how he pushed you. Even after being beaten, they still cared about her. I'm fine, Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. Thank you for helping teach them a lesson. They always offend others. We have long noticed how disgusting they are. It's good that you're okay. Don't worry, if someone hurts you, we will beat him. Since you are Yi Qian's friend, then you are our friend. Suddenly, a child standing at the door ran up. Lu Jingyi, I heard that your mother's coming. Xiang Chen, your dad is coming too. Lu Jingyi and Xiang Chen, who seemed ready to go against the whole world, immediately panicked. Is mom coming? Is dad coming? It was clear from their anxious expression that they had never had any punctures in kindergarten before. Zheng Yue, will your dad come? My dad has been abroad for several days. He definitely wanted to be able to come, Zheng Yue answered proudly. Then, Yi Qian, is your dad coming? My dad also went abroad, answered Yi Qian. What about mom? She's filming now. So only my dad and Shang Chen's mom will come? Seeing the fear on the children's faces, the doctor laughed. Well, are you afraid when you're scared? Why weren't you afraid to fight? The doctor's teasing made Lu Jingyi and Shang Chen even more panicked. Auntie, you're saying it wrong, Huo Xiaoxiao intervened. They stood up for me because they saw how they offended me. They didn't want to fight. They, worthy of praise for fighting for justice. Having said this, she turned to Lu Jingyi and Shang Chen. Do not be afraid. Even if your parents come, they won't blame you. The doctor looked at Huo Xiaoxiao in amazement. Child, of course, it's good that they fought for justice. But if you mindlessly get into a fight, trouble will arise. Huo Xiaoxiao understood what the doctor meant. The children who entered this kindergarten came from wealthy and respected families. Neither of them had a difficult childhood, and although the children did not know about the family connections of their comrades, the parents knew each other by sight. If it turns out that the parents of the beaten boy are influential people, then the parents of Lu Jingyi and Xiang Chen will have to shift all responsibility for what happened onto their children. After the children's wounds were healed, the teachers separated all the children into their groups. Xu Manyin led Huo Xiao Xiao. Xiao Xiao, I have already contacted your dad. He will be here in the evening, along with the parents of the other children. Don't be afraid, I will be with you. Huo Xiao Xiao already knew what Xu Manyin was aiming for, and raised her head and yawned. She believed in Huo Sui Cheng. Her father would never love such a cheap woman. As soon as Huo Xiao Xiao entered the classroom, Chu Zhou approached her with an angry face. Xiao Xiao, are you okay? This time I was useless. I couldn't protect you or the swing. Just wait, I'll grow up and beat the children who hurt you. Two other boys supported him, clenching their fists. And so do we. We will avenge you when we grow up. Huo Xiao Xiao shuddered with laughter. The children's world was so charming and innocent that she immediately wanted to cuddle their evil faces. That means you should grow up quickly. The three boys nodded and, taking their bottles, sucked on them at the same time. If they drink more milk, they will grow up faster. At three o'clock, the children were picked up from kindergarten. The students became quiet as they waited for their parents or guardians. The child who was the first to be picked up raised his head proudly. Under the envious gaze of his comrades, he, holding his backpack, went home. Huo Sui Cheng arrived after the fifth child was taken away. Seeing Huo Sui Cheng, Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed her backpack and rushed towards him. Uh, Dad! She screamed, jumping into his arms. Huo Sui Cheng took her in his arms. How did Xiao Xiao spend her first day in kindergarten? Huo Xiao Xiao eagerly began the story. Dad, I'll tell you now. Today. Today, when I was playing outside, one of the children wanted to take the swing away from me. And then, then he grabbed them, and he held me, held. 
Huo Xiaoxiao was so excited that it was difficult for her to formulate sentences clearly. Her language abilities simply couldn't keep up with her thoughts, causing her to stutter. Xu Manyin, smiling, also came out to Huo Suicheng. Hello, Mr. Huo. Remember me? I am Xu Manyin. Huo Suicheng had already recognized her character, but he did not expect that she would accidentally work in a kindergarten. I can tell you about today. No, my daughter will tell you herself. With these words, Huo Suicheng, holding Huo Xiaoxiao in his arms, left, almost without looking at Xu Manyin. He already knew about what happened, but still asked Huo Xiaoxiao to calm down and slowly tell him what happened. Huo Suicheng ignored Xu Manyin, as expected. Huo Xiaoxiao continued the story with a smile. Then he grabbed the swing and pushed me to the ground. But it didn't hurt me? She spread her hands, carried away by the story. Yi Chen and his friends beat up the bad guys to protect me. They all got hurt. Then Huo Xiaoxiao remembered the doctor's words and asked anxiously, Dad, will Yi Chen and his friends be okay? They protected you. What will happen to them? Will Dad help them later? They protected you, so I will definitely be on their side. The promise made by Huo Suicheng made Huo Xiaoxiao feel better. The parents of several students entered the principal's office. An arrogant voice was heard belonging to the parent of the offender. Director, I sent my son to kindergarten so that he could study and not to be beaten. Look at his face. There is no living space on it. How do you generally raise children? They dared to beat my child. I'll tell you what, I won't leave it like that. Another parent entered the conversation. The director told me what happened. I think your son is not so blameless in this case. He was the one who started it first. Maybe my son made a mistake, but only because he didn't know when to stop, so he got excited. Did you get excited? Here is direct evidence that children learn from their parents. Look at my son's face. Do you think he got excited? By the way, your son said that mine offended someone. The child does not yet know how to push with full force. How can he offend someone? Yes, and your son beat mine. In any case, fighting is wrong. Let them now apologize to my son. Don't judge me for such rude words. Children should be raised well so that they do not develop violent tendencies when they grow up. Huo Xiaoxiao hugged Huo Suicheng's neck. It would definitely not be easy to deal with them. Feeling how tightly Huo Xiaoxiao was clinging to him, Huo Suicheng frowned slightly. He opened the door to the director's office and saw several fragile but aggressive women sitting on the sofa. Mr. Ho, here you are. Please, take a seat. Huo Suicheng sat down on the sofa. Allow me to introduce you. This is Huo Xiaoxiao's father, Mr. Huo. So, Mr. Huo... The director just explained what happened. Your daughter said that my son hurt her, for which other children beat him. However, my son is always obedient and never starts first. I want to ask your daughter, did my son really hurt her? Huo Xiaoxiao glanced at Lu Jingyi and Xiang Chen, who were quietly standing next to their parents, and Yi Qian and Jiang Yue, who were standing next to the housekeepers. She immediately realized that they had been slandered. There is so much noise from these adults and their children are also listening. I offended you, Huo Xiaoxiao said. I played on the swing. He suddenly ran up and asked to let him play. When I refused, he pushed me to the ground himself. He just pushed you. Where did he offend you? Chen Shen's mother immediately objected. Doesn't this mean that he offended me? He's older than me and he pushes because he's taller. Didn't he offend me? My son was just playing with you. How can you say that he offended you? Huo Xiaoxiao admired those adults who were willing to distort facts to protect their children. If she weren't a child unable to express her thoughts clearly, she would even argue with them. Blowing her lips, she turned to Huo Suicheng and hugging his neck began to cry, Dad, he hurt me and pushed me. I fell to the ground and it hurt. Huo Suicheng stroked Huo Xiaoxiao's head. If your son didn't hurt my daughter, does that mean she's lying? That's not what I mean. I just think that children don't understand a lot. Besides, if you say that my son abused her, do I just have to believe it? Did you see it yourself? Even if the father personally saw what happened, she would still defend her son and claim that he was just playing. Huo Xiaoxiao snorted coldly. It is not difficult to guess how a child grows up by looking at his parents. With such and such a mother, it is no wonder that he likes to offend others. Huo Suicheng leaned slightly towards Huo Xiaoxiao. Unfortunately for you, today is my daughter's first day in kindergarten. I bought her a smartwatch with a voice recorder and turned on the recording in advance, just in case. Huo Xiaoxiao immediately stopped crying. Dad was spying on me. Fortunately, today I didn't say anything unnecessary. Otherwise, the situation would have turned against me. Huo Suicheng started playing the recording. From the clock came the sound of today's games on the street. Hey, you've been playing here for a long time. Give this place to us. No, I still want to play. Go away. The boy says voice rang out with a clearly discernible sense of superiority. Leave, do you know who we are? 
We are an average group. Go away and let us play. We won't leave. We came here first. Why are we giving up our place to you? Because we are older than you. You are only two or three years old. Do you want to fight? We'll tell the teacher. And that's all you can do, little one. Oh, you? The sound could be heard of Huo Xiao Xiao falling. Then screams and sounds of blows were heard. This recording confirmed that the guys were the offenders after all. Huo Xiao Xiao raised her face with tears on her cheeks and shouted, Well, you said that your son does not offend others. Fortunately, my father wrote everything down. Otherwise, you would have continued the slander. You are adults and still behave like this. Shame. The faces of some parents were distorted. Finally, the director decided to take the initiative and intervened in the conversation. I know that Chen Chen looks beaten, but don't worry. The doctor examined him. It was just a skin lesion. Children have a fast metabolism, so in two days he will be fine. After all, the showdown started with Chen Chen, and I cannot take his side. I suggest we all just forget about it. They are all children, and they inevitably have conflicts. The parents looked at each other and seemed unwilling to accept this proposal. My son can be arrogant, but, director, look how beaten he looks. Besides, he should have stood up for himself. So he didn't do anything wrong, right? The mother's refusal to admit the mistake was beginning to infuriate those present. Huo Suicheng raised his eyes and glanced at those present with a gloomy expression on his face. Since you know that your son seeks to dominate others, you as a parent should pay attention to his upbringing. Don't blame others for your own child's indiscipline. You, don't forget that you're talking to Huo Suicheng. The director intervened, hoping that mentioning the surname would cause more respect among the parents. Cheng Cheng's mother was not interested in business, but when she heard Huo Sui Cheng's name, she remembered the Huo family that her husband had once mentioned. Despite her limited knowledge of business, she understood that the more friends she had, the more life paths were available. The fewer enemies, the more money. In that case, there was no need to insult Huo Sui Cheng. At that same moment, the arrogance disappeared from her face. Mr. Ho, my son is still small and doesn't know much. He didn't want to offend your daughter? Cheng Cheng's mother began embarrassedly. Let's forget about it. That's all. Principal, I don't want my son to study in the same class with these children. Then I'll transfer Cheng Cheng to another class? Yes, any class that doesn't have these brawlers will do. The parents did not want to risk losing face and, dragging their children with them, left the place of negotiations. Although the parents decided to leave everything as it was, the beaten children, who wanted to hear Yi Qian and the other children being scolded, were unhappy with the decision. Mom, why didn't he apologize for hitting me? My face hurts. Calm down, Cheng Cheng. Let's not think about it. Let's talk when we get home. No, I want them to apologize. Don't worry. Seeing that the mother was not on his side, the child raised his head and began to cry. Tears flowed down her cheeks. Realizing that the director's office could again turn into a booth, the mother took her son in her arms and left. What a crybaby. Shame on you. Huo Xiao Xiao made a face at him, and an even louder howl came from the corridor. The director apologized to Huo Sui Ching for today's incident. Mr. Huo, I'm sorry that this happened on the first day, but you can be sure that in the future, our kindergarten will definitely pay more attention to this aspect. We won it. let this happen again. That's good. Huo Sui Ching nodded. Lu Jingyi's father and Zhang Chen's mother smiled at Huo Xiao Xiao. Mr. Huo, your daughter is very smart. Huo Sui Ching stroked Huo Xiao Xiao's head. Thank you for protecting my daughter today. That's what men do. Xiang Chen replied, patting his stomach. Yes, if anyone offends Yao Xiao again, we will stand up for her. The father slapped Lu Jingyi lightly on the head. Do what is right, but be careful, understand? I know, I won't hit you in the face anymore. Hit? Next time, contact your teacher. Oh. Lying on Huo Sui Ching's shoulder, Huo Xiao Xiao looked at Yi Chen, who was quietly standing next to the Yi family's housekeeper, and winked at him. Yi Chen pursed his lips in surprise. This is how the incident with the showdown in the kindergarten ended. On the way back, Huo Xiao Xiao looked at Huo Sui Cheng in fear. Dad, I was so scared today. Huo Sui Cheng grabbed her face. Really? I think you weren't scared at all. You speak so well. Who taught you? Didn't you notice that my legs were shaking? Okay, tell Dad what you're afraid of. I'm afraid that they will outwit you and hurt me. Huo Sui Cheng understood what she was hinting at. Who will offend you? Huo Xiao Xiao frowned. Yes, I know that Miss Xu cares about me because of you, like many uncles and aunties. Without you, they definitely wouldn't care about me so much, that's why. Dad, you have to work to earn a lot of money. Don't do anything bad, otherwise no one will support Xiao Xiao, and she will have a miserable life. Huo Sui Cheng wondered why Huo Xiao Xiao had such worries at her age. Okay, Dad needs to work to earn money and support you. I love you, Dad, Xiao Xiao smiled. Returning home, Huo Xiao Xiao 
still under the impression of what happened, colorfully described the situation to Mr. Huo. She paid special attention to the moment of falling to the ground. Grandfather, these children are so disgusting. He just grabbed my hand like this and pushed me to the ground. At first, Mr. Huo listened with genuine interest, but when he heard that Huo Xiao Xiao was bullied in kindergarten, he felt pain in his heart. Grandfather pulled her towards him and carefully examined her from head to toe. Pushed you to the ground? Are you hurt? No. The ground was full of sand? It didn't hurt me. My hands are fine. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head, stretching out her white tender palms. Fine. Next time, if someone bullies you, tell your teacher. You are still small, so you might get hurt. Mr. Huo was extremely worried. Perhaps Huo Xiao Xiao was the youngest in kindergarten, and due to her age, she was easy to offend. If not for his serious health condition, he would never have agreed to send his child to kindergarten at such an early age. Understood. And then, Yi Qian and his friends beat the little villains and made them cry. Mr. Ho laughed loudly. And what happened then? Then the director called the parents. They wanted Yi Qian to apologize. Yi Qian and the others protected me, so I protected them. Clever. After listening to Huo Xiao Xiao's story about her adventures, Mr. Huo thought about what had happened more than once and became uneasy. Perhaps he was in a hurry to send the girl to kindergarten. Other children bullied her on the very first day. He did not even imagine that she would be offended when she was left without his supervision. She is still very young and does not understand much, so she will be offended. Mr. Huo sighed. He believed that his granddaughter was weak, small, and helpless, and unconsciously imagined how she was bullied in kindergarten. The more he thought about it, the more he feared for her. Finally, he went up to the second floor and directly expressed his opinion to Huo Suichung. I think Xiao Xiao shouldn't go to kindergarten yet. She is still small and does not know how to stand up for herself. Let's wait a couple more years, and then we'll send it. What do you think about that? Huo Suiching probably guessed why Mr. Huo suddenly changed his mind. So you heard about what happened? Mr. Huo did not deny it. When you were a little over two years old, I sent you to kindergarten. On the first day, you beat the children and made them cry. But unlike you, she is just a little girl. She will be beaten and insulted. You're not feeling well. You want to be able to take care of her all day? And yet I can stay with her for another year or two. Let's stop there. Don't send Xiao Xiao to kindergarten tomorrow. The old man had a tense relationship with both his parents and his son. So he gave all his tenderness and love to his granddaughter. Perhaps Mr. Huo himself did not realize that feelings of guilt and remorse had become part of his love for Xiao Xiao. Huo Sui Ching fell silent for a moment. He didn't want to contradict Mr. Huo, but he didn't want to agree with his decision either. Father, let Zhao Xiao decide for herself tomorrow. If she is bullied in kindergarten, she definitely won't want to go. I respect her opinion. How do you look at this? Mr. Ho thought about it and deciding that this was a reasonable decision, nodded in agreement. Okay, let it be as Zhao Xiao wants. Let's not force her. Of course. With that, they decided. The next morning, Huo Xiao Xiao got dressed and taking her backpack, waited for Huo Sui Cheng to take her to kindergarten. Zhao Xiao, you didn't... Want to go to kindergarten, did you? Mr. Ho asked. Tell your grandfather honestly, do you want to go to kindergarten? If you don't want to, we won't go. Grandpa will play with you at home, okay? Huo Sui Ching also came down. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at her father. Huo Sui Cheng said that grandfather was not well and needed rest. If she stays at home, his health will only worsen. Moreover, after yesterday's events, she believed that it would be great to go through life's journey from the very beginning with an adult consciousness. She would be able to look at life differently. Nothing bad would happen. Grandfather, I'm going to kindergarten? Mr. Huo looked puzzled. But you always wanted to stay at home. At this moment, Huo Sui Ching went down to the first floor. Are you threatening her just now? Mr. Huo asked, throwing a sharp glance at him. Huo Sui Ching looked emotionlessly at the duo of grandfather and granddaughter. No, grandfather, I really want to go to kindergarten. Don't worry. If someone offends me, I will tell the teacher. Besides, there are children who will protect me. Huo Xiao Xiao said, smiling widely. Grandfather, take care of yourself. If I'm bored, I'll call you. Raising her hand, she pointed to the smart watch. Mr. Huo sighed and patted Huo Xiao Xiao's head. Xiao Xiao cares so much about Grandpa. Okay, let's eat first. And after breakfast, Grandpa will take you to kindergarten. I'll take her, Huo Sui Cheng said. The company and the kindergarten are in different directions. You're already busy with work, so I'll send it. Still, it's not far to go. Okay, I won't object. Huo Sui Cheng went to the company. Then, after breakfast, Mr. Huo took Huo Xiao Xiao to kindergarten. Along the way, he repeated to her that if someone offended her, she should quickly inform the teacher about it and not fight like her father when he was a child. 
When the conversation turned to Huo Sui Cheng's childhood, Huo Xiao Xiao perked up. Grandfather, when did dad go to kindergarten? Did he bully others when he was a child? She asked with interest. When your dad was little, I was too busy and sent him to kindergarten? He was only a few months older than you back then. Wow, little one, how harmful he was. On his first day in kindergarten, the children cried bitterly, and the teacher called the parents. Certainly, when I arrived, your father was wearing torn clothes, although the children he beat looked even more pathetic. Why did dad fight? Did other children bully him? Mr. Huo fell silent for a moment and sighed. I do not remember. Xiao Xiao, grandpa wants to ask something. You, do you miss your mom? Huo Xiao Xiao was stunned. For so many years, grandfather and father completely refused to say the word mom. Why did he suddenly mention her today? Until this moment, she hadn't thought much about her mother. The last thing she remembered about her was a hand lightly stroking her arm when she was just born. Mr. Huo touched Huo Xiao Xiao's cheek with concern. I don't know, Huo Xiao Xiao answered gloomily. I haven't seen her, so I don't miss her. In fact, her mother didn't even come to her in her dreams. To see and remember dreams, you must live to be three or four years old. So she never saw the one who gave birth to her. Huo Xiao Xiao did not have sincere affection for those whom she did not see and who did not appear in her life. Then another question, do you want to have a mother? Huo Xiao Xiao thought seriously. If she had lived to be three or four years old, she would have been happy to see her mother, but only to find out what she looked like. The father did not love that woman, so it would be stupid to ask for family reunification with tears in his eyes. She was fine without her mother. Grandfather, do you know that my kindergarten teacher is Miss Shu, the same one who was at home? And what? Mr. Huo asked, listening carefully. I know Miss Shu wants to be my mother, but I don't want her to be my mother. If dad has someone he loves, I will also try to love her, but not like Miss Shu. Huo Xiao Xiao stopped, not knowing how to explain. In general, in general, but not like Miss Shu. If Huo Xiao Xiao has a foster mother, then there will also be a foster father. She was afraid that her father would choose a treacherous woman and she would give her a younger brother or sister, causing Xiao Xiao to be neglected. The women her father came into contact with were difficult to communicate with, each more mysterious than the other. Looking at the situation from this point of view, Huo Xiao Xiao felt that her future was at risk. If she wasn't careful, she wouldn't have a good life. Now she hoped that her father would keep his eyes open and not allow women to seduce him so easily. Oh, you naughty girl, who taught you that? Mr. Huo smiled. I heard others say that if dad finds mom, he won't want to be with me anymore. How can this be? If that happens, grandpa will kick him out. Deep down, Mr. Huo knew that Huo Sui Ching was only in his early 30s. At his age, unlimited possibilities for building a future are available. If he does find a partner one day, it will be a smart decision. Then what kind of mother will dad like? Huo Xiao Xiao asked. Mr. Huo was dumbfounded by this question. In so many years, he had never seen Huo Sui Cheng start a relationship with any women. When Xu Manin came to the Huo family mansion, he even thought that Huo Sui Cheng liked these kinds of women. Well, grandpa doesn't know. I promise, if one day your dad wants to find your mom, he will ask your permission. Otherwise, I won't spare him. Grandfather's the best. 10 minutes later, the car stopped at the kindergarten. Mr. Huo personally sent Huo Xiao Xiao, standing with a cane at the door of the kindergarten. He watched as the teacher greeted her. He sniffled and his wrinkled eyes gradually filled with tears. If Mr. Huo had not been so busy with the company's affairs at one time, he would have seen Huo Sui Ching entering the kindergarten in the same way. Xiao Xiao, come here quickly. I took your place. As soon as Huo Xiao Xiao entered the room, she saw Zhu Zhou sitting in the cube area with his hands on his hips. He called her and two other children stood nearby on guard and did not let the others near. Huo Xiao Xiao walked lightly towards the playing area and Zhu Zhou hurried to give way to her. This place is especially for you. Before Huo Xiao Xiao could say a word, the teacher turned to Zhu Zhou. Zhu Zhu, weren't you told not to offend others? I don't taught offend anyone, Zhu Zhou objected. No, then why did you take this place? What if other children want to play with you? Zhu Zhou pursed his lips and did not answer. Didn't the teacher tell you that everyone can play together and that taking away toys from others is prohibited? Zhu Zhou nodded reluctantly. I am glad Zhu Zhou and Xiao Xiao were able to become friends, but you should try playing with other children. We should share, understand? Got it. The teacher patted Zhu Zhou on the head with a smile and looked at Huo Xiao Xiao. You can continue playing? Zhu Zhou immediately pulled Huo Xiao Xiao into the playing area and invited him to play with the cubes. Perhaps Huo Xiao Xiao's vision dimmed when she sat down, but it seemed to her that a shaggy head galloped outside the window. It was probably Lu Jingyi, one of those who stood up for her yesterday. 
The window was located quite high. How did he manage to jump like that? Having no idea what was happening, Huo Xiao Xiao walked to the door and quietly stuck her head out. Jiang Chen and Jiang Yue were outside the door. They crouched down and tried to lift Lu Jingyi, and he tried to climb onto the windowsill with his small hands. He kicked the wall at a distance of five to six centimeters from the ground and helped himself up by gritting his teeth. Yi Qian stood behind the trio and, standing on tiptoes, peered into what was happening in the room. The window was located at a height of more than one meter. It was impossible to say for sure, but judging by Huo Xiao Xiao's height, the window was slightly higher than her. Thus, even if Xiang Chen and Jiang Yue tried to get Lu Jingyi to sit down, he would still not be able to look above the windowsill. Lu Jingyi Yu, did you see? A little higher, I don't see. Lu Jingyi, you are so heavy. Have you recovered or what? The two children holding him were sweating from fatigue. I see what's inside. Don't move. Xiang Chen and Zhang Yue trembled while holding Lu Jingyi. You? You see? Don't worry, I'm watching. It's strange. Why can't I see? What are you doing? Huo Xiao Xiao asked, looking at them, and stepped forward. The four of them looked back together, and Xiang Chen and Zhang Yue unclenched their hands. Xiao Xiao, you are here. Poor Lu Jingyi did not expect such a development of events and hung like a bag on the windowsill. Grabbing the windowsill, he held on with all his might. Oh, oh, I will be there. I'm going to fall. With these words, Lu Jingyi unclenched his hands and fell on his butt. Lu Jingyi, are you okay? Lu Jingyi stood up and shook off the dust from his hands. Everything is fine. We just wanted to see if you were in the room. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at the height of the windowsill and wondered what they were thinking about. There is a door. Why did they decide to climb onto the window? Why are you looking for me? Yi Qian wants to give you something. Me? Yi Qian walked up to her, holding a gift box. This is for you? Wo Xiao Xiao did not answer. Why is he giving me a gift for no reason? Maybe this is gratitude for the fact that I defended him in the director's office yesterday? What is this for? Yi Qian pursed his lips and seemed to feel embarrassed in front of such a crowd. He closed his eyes and blurted out, I am sorry. One question after another arose in Huo Xiao Xiao's head. What are you apologizing for? That time you taught me how to play with a Rubik's Cube, but I didn't understand you, so I want to apologize. I give you my favorite car. Forgive me, Huo Xiao Xiao remembered her first meeting with Yi Qian. A lot of time has passed since then. I taught him how to play with a Rubik's Cube at his grandfather's birthday, and right? It was so long ago, but he still remembers. I wanted to apologize when you came to my birthday, but you didn't come. Yi Qian initially kept a serious expression on his face, but the more he spoke, the more he blushed. Huo Xiao Xiao was not interested in the car, so she said, Apology accepted, but I don't want the car. But, but I only have a car. Yi Qian was confused. Lu Jingyi looked at them and asked anxiously, Huo Xiao Xiao, if you don't like the car, then what? Yes, what do you like? Let's find a solution. I don't want anything. Huo Xiao Xiao Yu. Didn't forgive Yi Qian? I forgave him. Then why don't you want his gift? Lu Jingyi asked, If you don't want anything from Yi Qian, then you haven't forgiven him? Yes, you didn't forgive him. Xiang Chen and Zhang Yue agreed. What stubbornness. Okay, I want candy. Candy? Lu Jingyi asked, checking his pockets, and turned to the others. Do you have anything? Where do we get girly food from? Yi Qian, do you have it? Yi Qian shook his head. Huo Xiao Xiao, wait here. We'll go and buy you candy right now. With these words, the three dragged Yi Qian to get some candy. When they returned, Yi Qian, breathing heavily, handed Huo Xiao Xiao a large bag full of candy. I bought you all the candy that was in the store? Huo Xiao Xiao fell silent, anticipating that her teeth would hurt badly. But in order not to disappoint the children standing in front of her, she happily accepted all the candies. You accept Yi Qian's sweets, which means you can't be angry with him anymore? Huo Xiao Xiao could only assure the children, okay, I won't be angry with Yi Qian anymore. Hey, we'll invite you to play later. Well, we're off. Bye. Having calmed the children, Huo Xiao Xiao finally sighed with relief and with difficulty, dragged the bag of candy into the room. All the children circled around her with envy. Wow, Zhao Xiao, you have so many candies. Who bought them for you? Can I? And can I? I want it too. At this age, children's teeth are growing, and they are not allowed to eat too much sugar. Their parents kept them under strict control, so they rarely got to eat candy at normal times. Huo Xiao Xiao wanted to allow it, but when she turned around, she saw that the four friends had not left yet. They took turns continuing to watch her. No, it's a gift, so I won't give it to you. But if you want sweets, I'll bring them tomorrow. You promised, remember? Okay. Having made a promise, she turned around. Four kids had already left. At this moment, the teacher intervened. Okay, kids, do not surround Huo Xiao Xiao. Well, sit down now. The teacher will tell you a fairy tale. The children sat down and prepared to listen. Cho Zhou, sitting next to Huo Xiao Xiao, 
leaned towards her and quietly said, Xiao Xiao, I saw everything. That guy gave you candy. Why did he give you so many sweets? I don't know. Xiao Xiao, my mother says that you shouldn't take candy from people you don't know. But I know him. He stood up for me yesterday, remember? Do you remember him because he fought for you? Huo Xiao Xiao remained silent. Can you give me some candy? Zhu Zhou asked, looking at her hungrily. Huo Xiao Xiao glanced at him, took out one candy from the bag, and quietly handed it to him. Now just don't tell anyone. Zhu Zhou accepted the candy. Listening to what Huo Xiao Xiao said, he immediately hid it carefully. Don't worry, I won't not tell anyone. Having finished the story, the teacher suddenly asked the children, Children, do your parents tell you fairy tales when you are at home? Of course, at night. At night, Dad tells me fairy tales. And Mom tells me too. I have a task for you, the teacher continued. When you return home, let your parents tell you a fairy tale. And tomorrow I will ask some of you to retell it. The one who tells the best story will receive a reward, okay? Uh, yes, tell me a fairy tale. Huo Xiao Xiao thought about it. It seems that her father never told her fairy tales. Usually Aunt Zhao did it. Can a father tell a story? Huo Xiao Xiao doubted it. In the evening, Aunt Zhao came to pick up Huo Xiao Xiao. Aunt Zhao, where is Grandpa? Mr. Huo is waiting for you at home. Aunt Zhao noticed that Huo Xiao Xiao Dada's backpack was stuffed with something. She took it and shook it. Xiao Xiao, what, so heavy in your backpack? Candies, Yi Chen gave this, Huo Xiao Xiao answered, showing the contents of the backpack. Xiao Xiao, you shouldn't eat too much candy, otherwise your new teeth will be ruined, understand? Give them to me for safekeeping, I won't eat them. Okay, that's good. A clear, clear voice was heard. Huo Xiao Xiao, is this your mother? Zhu Zhu walked up to her, holding the hand of a young and beautiful woman, who laughed when she saw Aunt Zhao. No child, I am not Xiao Xiao's mother. I am her nanny, not a nanny, but an aunt, Huo Xiao Xiao corrected her. Aunt Zhao froze for a moment. Yes, aunt, she said with a smile. Aunt? asked Zhu Zhu, where is your mother? I don't know, answered Huo Xiao Xiao. Hearing her son's words, Zhu Zhou's mother smiled guiltily at An Zhao and turned her gaze to her child. Zhu Zhu, didn't I tell you that it is forbidden to ask such questions? Why? Mother Zhu Zhou smiled helplessly. <laughs> Sorry, I completely let my son go. It's okay, the children don't understand yet, Aunt Zhao reassured her. Okay, then we'll go, Zhu Zhu's mother said, dragging her son away. Huo Xiao Xiao, see you tomorrow. Zhu Zhou said goodbye. See you tomorrow. Let's go, Xiao Xiao. It's time for us to leave, too. Fine, Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. At the gate of the kindergarten, Yi Qian looked in Huo Xiao Xiao's direction and asked in bewilderment, Grandfather, where is Huo Xiao Xiao's mother? She's no longer with her, Grandpa Chen answered. Where did she go? Grandpa Chen didn't know how to tactfully explain to Yi Qian that Huo Xiao Xiao's mother abandoned her. She refused her. Grandfather Chen was surprised at Yi Qian's insight. Who told you that? I heard Dad and Mom talking. Huo Xiao Xiao's mother left when she was just born. Keep in mind for the future, you are forbidden to remember Xiao Xiao's mother in her presence, not to mention the fact that she abandoned her. Otherwise, Xiao Xiao will be upset, understand? Grandpa Chen said in a serious tone, Don't worry, Grandpa, I want that talk about it. Yi Qian nodded. After returning home, Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't wait to go into Mr. Huo's room and tell him about all of today's events. Yi Qian gave you a big bag of candy? Show it to Grandpa. Aunt Zhao opened her backpack. So many sweets. This Yi Qian must really like you. Xiao Xiao is simply a miracle. Already on the second day, she made so many friends. So, Grandfather, don't worry that I will be bullied in kindergarten. I have many friends, so no one will dare to offend me. Yes, now Grandfather is calm. Did Grandfather have a good rest today? Yes, look, I'm still in bed. Okay, Grandfather, get some rest. I'll invite you to dinner together. Okay, go play. Huo Xiao Xiao ran out of the room. Huo Suicheng has been very busy lately. Because of the looming mountain problem, he was under a lot of pressure. The project was suspended and losses grew every day. When he took a shower and came out of the bathroom, his daughter was already lying in his bed. He walked to the bed, lifted the blanket, and saw Huo Xiao Xiao staring at him. Why are not you sleeping? It's already late. I'm waiting for Dad to come and tell me a fairy tale. A fairy tale? Usually Aunt Zhao tells you. This is the task given by the teacher. I want you to tell a story. Huo Xiao Xiao explained and handed over the candy. Here, eat it. Grandfather bought this for you? No, Yi Qian gave it to you. He bought a lot of sweets, a whole bag. Huo Sui Cheng put the candy on the edge of the table. Children should eat less candy? Huo Sui Cheng answered and sat down on the bed. What story do you want to hear? Huo Xiao Xiao crawled up to him and wrapped herself in a blanket. Anyone dad tells you? Huo Sui Cheng took Huo Xiao Xiao Dada's book of fairy tales 
and ran through the pages. Huo Xiaoxiao leaned against his hand and looked at the book with interest. A long time ago, at the bottom of the deep, deep sea, there stood a majestic castle in which six mermaid princesses lived. The youngest of the princesses fell in love with the prince and, in order to be with him, asked the witch to turn her fishtail into legs. Huo Suicheng's voice was attractive and pleasant to hear, but Huo Xiaoxiao was yawning. Her ears were numb from these stories, but to her surprise, she did not want to sleep. Later, the little mermaid turned into a bubble and sank to the bottom of the sea. Having told the tale of the little mermaid, Huo Suicheng frowned and apparently did not agree with the moral of the story. Do you know what the meaning of this fairy tale is? According to Huo Xiaoxiao, it was just a fairy tale about the pure nature of the little mermaid, perseverance and self-sacrifice. The little mermaid lost her voice and tail for the sake of the prince and then turned into a bubble and disappeared forever, said Huo Suicheng. Therefore, the meaning of the fairy tale is to never harm yourself for the sake of others, especially for the sake of men. Do you understand? Huo Xiaoxiao fell silent. Huo Suicheng put down the book and looked at her with hostility. Huo Xiaoxiao, did you hear what dad said? Huo Xiaoxiao didn't know how to describe the shock she experienced. Her father really was that cold. Children her age are usually told fairy tales about the goodness and beauty of the world, and her father lectured her about how terrible men are. If you, when you grow up, dare to harm yourself for the sake of a man like the little mermaid, I will break your legs, do you hear me? Huo Xiaoxiao took the chance. Dad, now I'll tell you a story too. The teacher told her today. What fairy tale? A long time ago, a rich man's wife fell ill from illness. She later died and left only a loving, kind-hearted, beautiful daughter. Soon, the rich man married another woman, but she treated her kind and beautiful stepdaughter very poorly. She beat her, scolded her, and forced her to sleep in the kitchen. She forced her to carry water, light a fire, cook and wash, and treated her with disdain. The girl worked every day, but her father ignored her and allowed her stepmother to abuse her. And then, then the girl ran away from home. The girl's father was very ashamed. He regretted what happened, but he could not find his daughter. Huo Suicheng was speechless. Although he had never been told fairy tales, he was still familiar with the fairy tale of Cinderella. Now she seems another. Father and daughter stared at each other. Dad, what kind of story did you tell? The little mermaid. But why is the tale you told different from the one Aunt Zhao tells? What does Aunt Zhao say? Aunt Zhao says that the little mermaid is kind, modest, and sacrifices herself for the sake of others. She is a good little mermaid. Huo Suicheng looked at Huo Xiao Xiao with a serious expression. Xiao Xiao is undoubtedly a little mermaid, kind and selflessly sacrificing herself for the sake of others. Dad hopes that you will be kind too, but you should remember that you should love yourself first. Dad won and let you hurt yourself for the sake of others, understand? Huo Xiao Xiao raised her head and blinked and asked, did the little mermaid do something wrong? Dad doesn't like what she did. If dad doesn't like it, then I won't follow her example. What fairy tale did you tell me? Cinderella. Huo Suicheng pinched her face. Grandfather told you this? He asked. Grandfather didn't uh, tell me anything. Huo Xiao Xiao stopped and, looking pitifully at her father, continued, Dad, you'll find me a stepmother like Cinderella? His father? Will my stepmother treat me well? If she doesn't like me and treats me badly, will Daddy take care of me? Or will he hurt me along with her? Don't give me food, don't give me milk. Make me sleep in the kitchen, cook food, and wash clothes. Dad already made me wash my shirt. So, Dad, you will hurt me together with your stepmother? Huo Suicheng didn't know what to say. The more Huo Xiaoxiao spoke, the more pitiful she looked. She bent her fingers, counting the questions, and continued. If my stepmother gives birth to a brother or sister, will Dad kick me out? Huo Suicheng remained silent. But Grandfather said that if Dad wants to find me a stepmother, he will first ask my permission. Otherwise, he will not spare you. Huo Xiaoxiao sighed heavily. I want my grandfather to live for a thousand years, protect me, and not let me wash and cook. Huo Suicheng hit her on the head. What are you thinking about at your age? Did I say that I would find you a stepmother? Huo Xiaoxiao writhed in pain and held her head in her hands. One day you will find me a stepmother, she said in a pitiful voice. They say, if there is an adoptive mother, there will be an adoptive father, as in the fairy tale about Cinderella. Huo Suicheng pinched the bridge of his nose. He was very busy with company affairs. Where would he get the strength to look for a woman? Dad, will you find me a stepmother? Do you love me? Will you love me when you find me a stepmother? You. Huo Suicheng listened to his daughter's questions about her stepmother and gradually lost his temper. Shut up and go to sleep. Dad can't stand me anymore. If you don't sleep, I'll make you sleep in the kitchen like Cinderella. Huo Xiaoxiao lay down and covered herself with a blanket. Good night, Dad. 
Huo Suicheng tucked the blanket in and turned off the light. Good night. Perhaps Huo Xiaoxiao thought about it too much. So such thoughts even appeared in her dreams. That night, Huo Xiaoxiao had a dream. She dreamed that her father married another woman. This woman was Su Yuanting, the same one who had turned her father's head in one of Huo Xiaoxiao's previous dreams. Huo Suicheng really liked her, and Huo Xiaoxiao could only accept it. Huo Xiaoxiao became Cinderella from a fairy tale. She slept in the kitchen, and Su Yuanqing ordered her to serve tea, wash clothes, and cook food. Moreover, her father turned a blind eye and allowed her stepmother to abuse her. Huo Xiaoxiao was so angry that she packed a bottle of milk in her backpack and prepared to run away so that her father would regret what happened but could never find her. Before leaving, she went to her father to see him one last time, but heard a voice from behind the door. Su Yuanting forced Huo Suicheng to kick Xiao Xiao out of the house. If you don't like her, kick her out? Huo Suicheng told Su Yuanqing. Huo Suicheng suddenly woke up. Looking at Huo Xiao Xiao sleeping next to him, he stood up and took a sip of water. He froze for a moment, thinking how absurd the dream he had just had was. He had a hard time understanding how he could dream such a thing. How could he dream about Su Yuanqing? whom he had only met a couple of times. Moreover, in his dream, he even married Su Yuanqing. Then, I'll just leave. Huo Xiaoxiao muttered in her sleep, snoring. You don't have to kick me out. I, I'll leave myself. Huo Suicheng touched Huo Xiaoxiao's forehead and suddenly laughed. Definitely. What you think about during the day is what you dream about at night. Despite her age, this little devil had a strong character, stronger than anyone else. If he had offended her as in his dream, she would have really run away from home. No one will kick you out, imp. As if hearing his promise, Huo Xiao Xiao stopped muttering. Her eyebrows relaxed and she fell asleep peacefully. The morning after the nightmare, Huo Xiao Xiao was so lethargic that she had difficulty moving. In kindergarten, she was depressed and listened to fairy tales that her parents told other children. Her head was filled with thoughts about the little mermaid told by her father. And even during the day, Huo Xiao Xiao could not get rid of thoughts about this fairy tale. Father thinks too much of himself. Does he, by instilling adult ideas in me at such a young age, really think that a two-year-old will understand what it means to not harm himself for someone, especially a man? Wonderful, said the teacher. Now Huang Yuechi retold us the fairy tale that dad told her. So anyone else want to share their parents' stories? Me, 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 me. I want to share. Several children enthusiastically extended their hands. The teacher looked around and her gaze fell on Huo Xiao Xiao, sitting to the side. Xiao Xiao, do you want to share with your comrades the fairy tale that your parents told? Huo Xiao Xiao's thoughts were somewhere far away and did not pay attention to the teacher at all. Zhu Zhou, sitting next to her, nudged her with his elbow, and she immediately returned to reality. Fine, now Huo Xiao Xiao will tell a story. Let's clap for her. Loud applause rang out in the room. Huo Xiao Xiao wanted to say something, but hesitated. Well, it's time to tell a fairy tale. Without an ounce of embarrassment, she went out into the middle of the room to tell the fairy tale about the little mermaid that Huo Sui Cheng told her at night. A long time ago, at the bottom of a deep, deep sea, there was a castle in which six mermaid princesses lived. The youngest princess fell in love with the prince. To be with the prince, she asked the witch to turn her tail into legs. Later, the little mermaid turned into a bubble and sank to the bottom. With these words, Huo Xiao Xiao looked at the teacher. Teacher, I'm finished. Did Huo Xiao Xiao tell a good story? Yes. The children answered unanimously. So, Huo Xiao Xiao, can I ask, what is the meaning of this fairy tale? The meaning of the fairy tale is this. Huo Xiao Xiao stopped, remembering the adult ideas her father had instilled in her in the dream she had. She was still a little angry. The meaning of the fairy tale is that the little mermaid lost her voice and tail for the sake of the prince. In the end, she lost her life, turned into a bubble, and sank to the bottom forever. So we should not harm ourselves for the sake of anyone, especially for the sake of men. First of all, we should love ourselves, and only then others. The three or four-year-old children sitting in the room did not understand Huo Xiao Xiao's story, but the teacher fell silent after hearing it. Xiao Xiao, this, dad told me this. Dad? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. The teacher smiled awkwardly. Well, okay. Xiao Xiao, you told a wonderful story. Go back to your seat. Huo Xiao Xiao sat down. Zhu Zhou leaned towards her and whispered in her ear, Don't worry, Xiao Xiao. I'm not like this prince. I wouldn't harm you. Oh, Huo Xiao Xiao sighed, looking at him. So, children, let's finish with fairy tales for now. In the evening, some of you will also tell your stories. Miss Shu will sing you a song soon, but for now, I, I'll go away. Bye. The teacher smiled, left the room, and headed to the director's office. Mr. Zhou, 
Can you give me the contact information of Huo Xiao Xiao's parents? What happened to Huo Xiao Xiao, Miss Sun? Yesterday I gave the children the task of asking their parents to tell them a fairy tale at home. Huo Xiao Xiao is only two years old, but the fairy tale she was told is too much. Adult. Miss Sun retold Huo Xiao Xiao's fairy tale. Did they really tell her that? Director Joe asked in surprise, not believing his ears. Why would I lie? Of course, it's good that parents tell educational tales, but not like this. I still need to contact them. Okay, I will give you the contact information. Director Zhou found the phone number of Huo Xiaoxiao's parents in the phone book and Miss Sun called. Hello, are these Huo Xiaoxiao's parents? I'm a teacher from Wellington Kindergarten, Miss Sun. Teacher Xiao Xiao? Wait, I'll call the gentleman. Okay. In the evening, Mr. Huo came to pick up Huo Xiaoxiao. As soon as she got into the car, Mr. Ho asked her what she was playing, whether she had been bullied, and whether she had eaten well. After the obligatory questions, he finally got down to business. I heard that Dad told you a story last night. What kind of fairy tale was this? Tell your grandfather. Huo Xiao Xiao retold the story. Dad said that if I dare to behave like this in the future, he will break my legs. Grandpa, is Dad really going to break my legs? I'm scared. The more she spoke, the more terrible Mr. Huo's face became. How dare he? Don't listen to Dad. He's just scaring you. Yes, I won't worry about it. Grandfather, live for a thousand years so that Dad can't easily offend me. Okay, Grandfather will live for a thousand years. Returning home, Mr. Ho told her many warm and sweet stories. However, when Huo Sweet Chung returned, Mr. Huo came downstairs with a dissatisfied face. From time to time, an angry voice could be heard from the living room. From the sound of it, Mr. Huo was scolding her father. Huo Xiao Xiao rubbed her hands and quietly lay down near the stairs to listen. Why are you telling this to a small child? Children are told fairy tales so that they can have pleasant dreams. Do you think she understands what you're telling her? <laughs> what stories do other parents tell? Which one did you tell? You, as a father, are obliged to protect her. Just don't say that you're really going to break her legs. You can't frighten her anyway. You talk to her and promise that you won't scare her anymore. Huo Sui Ching found Mr. Huo's indignation ridiculous. Father, do you think she was scared? Is it true? You yourself say that she is still small. How could she remember this? Besides, I said everything correctly. It's just early education. She's only two years old. Why does she need your early education? Are you a father or not a father? Go away! Huo Xiao Xiao listened to these words with pleasure, but suddenly the voices died down. Footsteps were heard on the stairs. The girl quickly got up and ran to hide in her room. If you think about it, grandfather scolded father quite well. Why tell children so much about reality? You just scared your daughter. That's why they scold you. The door opened and Huo Sui Ching entered the room. Dad, did you complain to grandpa today? He asked, holding his daughter with one hand. No, Huo Xiao Xiao answered, her eyes widening in shock. No? No? Grandfather asked if Dad told me a fairy tale. I told him what Dad told me. I didn't complain. Did I just tell Grandpa a fairy tale? And nothing else? No? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. Huo Sui Ching looked into Huo Xiao Xiao's cunning eyes and pinched her face. Well, okay. Dad apologizes and will never say again that he will break his legs. Dad promises that he will never find Xiao Xiao's stepmother. Then Huo Sui Ching took a pen, a piece of paper, and confirmed his promise in writing. Ai, Huo Xiao Xiao. No, Huo Sui Ching. I promise that I will never find Huo Xiao Xiao's stepmother. If I break my promise, I will break my leg. Dad, you made a mistake. You wrote that the validity period of the certification is up to 18 years. Yes, Dad was wrong, Huo Sui Cheng answered after taking a closer look. And crossing out 18, wrote 25. After finishing writing, he took Huo Xiao Xiao Tse's hand and asked her to stamp it with her finger. Dad, what are you doing? Huo Xiao Xiao protested. This is Daddy's promise. Grandfather asked me to give you a guarantee so that you would be calmer. No, just put your stamp on it. Why do you need mine? Huo Xiao Xiao tried to pull her wrist out of Huo Sui Ching's hand, and her face turned red. Dad will put his seal, and you will put yours too. Behave yourself. Don't move. Press your finger here, and you won't have a stepmother. No stepmother? Or rather, there will be no boyfriend. Huo Xiao Xiao began to struggle in his arms. Do you consider me illiterate? How dare you? In fact, the assurance said, I, Huo Xiao Xiao. Promise that I will not fall in love until I am 25. Otherwise, I ask my father to break my leg. 25, you are too cruel. Is it really necessary to do this to me? I will never put a stamp. Dear Dad, I, Huo Xiao Xiao, promise that I will not fall in love until I am 25 years old. If I break my promise, I ask my dad to break my leg. Witness, Huo Sui Cheng. Looking at how Huo Sui Cheng naturally and naturally read the promise, Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't believe her eyes. But why? Why did it all come to this? She was so angry that she felt discomfort all over her body. 
Of course, last night she was comfortable lying on the bed with her father. She even curled up in his arms, listening to him tell her a story and teach her a philosophy of life. So what now? Why is he now making me sign a declaration of renunciation of love? Ask? Am I asking dad to break his leg? I ask for a word here that is clearly superfluous. She is simply asking to be used. Am I really that easy to manipulate? Huo Xiao Xiao could only struggle in Huo Sui Cheng's arms. Unfortunately, she was too small and weak. Huo Sui Cheng grabbed both of her hands and was about to put a stamp on the dubious document that he himself had written. Her father was single until he was about 30. This is probably his revenge. He wants me to be single too for over 20 years. Most likely it is. Huo Sui Cheng was really that cruel. No. Don't want, Huo Xiao Xiao continued to fight desperately, resisting her father's tyranny with all her might. If she gets the seal, does that mean she'll have to choose between her boyfriend and her leg in the future? Maybe this is some kind of cruel joke? Suddenly, Huo Sui Cheng found it more difficult to restrain his fiercely resisting daughter. Huo Xiao Xiao, you yourself wanted me not to look for a stepmother for you. Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't help but admire her father. Even in such a situation, he dared to talk nonsense. If he really didn't intend to look for Huo Xiao Xiao at that stepmother, he would have written about it in the assurance. Why deceive a two-year-old child into signing a contract under the pretext of caring for her? Fortunately, mentally, she was no longer a child. Otherwise, her father would definitely have fooled her. You! You put the stamp yourself! I don't want... Seeing that Huo Sui Cheng grabbed her fingers and was about to put a seal, Huo Xiao Xiao screamed in despair. Grandfather! 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 You can scream as much as you want. Even if you scream at the top of your lungs, Grandpa wanted to hear you. She had completely forgotten that the room was highly noise-reducing. Even if fireworks were lit inside, no one outside would hear it. No, 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 Dad. I don't want to sign the affidavit. Let Dad find it. Wonderful stepmother. You look for a girlfriend, and I'll look for a good guy for myself. There is no need for us to fight each other. No, Dad promised you yesterday, so he'll keep his word. No, 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 Dad. Huo Xiao Xiao's screams suddenly died down, and she stopped resisting. The seal was affixed, a bright red imprint of her palm formed on the sheet of assurance. Huo Sui Cheng let go of Huo Xiao Xiao's hand and looked at the seals on the assurance with an incredibly satisfied expression. After reading it carefully, he turned to Huo Xiao Xiao. So, Dad wrote the assurance? Don't worry. Dad will strictly follow him and want to find you a stepmother. Huo Xiao Xiao was silent. She wanted to never see her hypocritical, vindictive father again. She got off Huo Sui Cheng's thigh with a dissatisfied face and walked towards the door, stomping angrily. Finally, she turned around and, hitting Huo Sui Cheng on the hand, left a red imprint of ink that had not yet dried. Huo Sui Cheng carefully took the reassurance, looked at Huo Xiao Xiao's angry expression, and didn't attach any importance to her childish reaction. He even took a rag and smiling wiped the ink from her palm. Dad wrote you an assurance? What are you unhappy about? Huo Sui Cheng asked hinting that Huo Xiao Xiao couldn't read. Huo Xiao Xiao was willing to take the risk and tell him to his face what she thought about this assurance. She wanted to tear his 30-year-old face. How dare he offend his own child? Well, go tell your grandfather. These words made Huo Xiao Xiao even angrier. Why is my father like this? Huo Xiao Xiao left, stomping angrily. Five minutes later, a loud scream came from below. Grandfather? Huo Sui Cheng raised his eyebrows and couldn't help but laugh. Dad, he... Huo Xiao Xiao shrugged helplessly. What's happened? Calm down. Speak more slowly. Dad. Dad forced me. He offended me. Huo Xiao Xiao tried to find words, not knowing how to explain that her father forced her to sign the agreement. But Mr. Ho obviously already guessed what we were talking about. Offended? How did he hurt you? He. He. Looking at Huo Xiao Xiao and not understanding anything, Mr. Huo laughed and tried to calm her down. Okay, Xiao Xiao, don't worry. Dad loves Xiao Xiao the most. He won't hurt you, especially when Grandpa is here. Grandpa just scolded him so he wouldn't dare to offend you. But father really offended her. He made her sign an agreement forbidding her from falling in love before she turned 25. However, she could not say this because she lacked literacy. Huo Xiao Xiao was upset about the agreement and the fact that her grandfather did not stand up for her, despite the complaint, made her even more sad. Now she could no longer manipulate her grandfather so easily. Her father learned from his mistakes and understood how to calm her grandfather down before he began to understand what was happening. He's plotting behind my back. What an abomination. Huo Xiao Xiao, why are you sad? Asked Zhou Zhou, who had been watching Zhao Xiao all day. During the day, Huo Xiao Xiao did not smile even once. Zhu Zhou knew that his mother made the same face when she was sad, so he knew that something was wrong. I'm not sad. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head, 
You're lying, you're sad. Chu Zhou leaned towards Xiao Xiaoxir and whispered, I'll bring you a chocolate bar tomorrow. It's very tasty. You will definitely have more fun when you eat it. Huo Xiao Xiao didn't really like chocolate, but she still agreed to calm down at least a little. Come on. Okay, I'll bring it tomorrow. The teacher stood in the middle of the room and clapped to attract the children's attention. Remember, children, tomorrow will be Saturday and after Saturday will be Sunday. These are weekends. These days you will be able to stay at home with your parents. Of course, you can take a walk, but be careful not to go to dangerous places, okay? Okay. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at Zhu Zhou with regret. You won't be able to bring me a candy bar tomorrow? Then I, I'll bring it on Monday. Well, okay. Since the next day was a day off, many expensive cars stopped near the kindergarten. Mr. Ho arrived late and couldn't park at the gate, so he parked on the opposite side of the road. When he took Huo Xiao Xiao away, it turned out that she was the only one left in the group. Did Xiao Xiao wait a long time today? Grandfather was late. Next time, I'll arrive early. I didn't know I'd wait long. The parents of other children arrived too early. Grandpa, let Brother Xiao Wu pick me up next time. You don't have to come yourself. Do you feel sorry for Grandpa? I feel sorry for Grandpa and don't want him to overwork himself. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. Mr. Huo stroked her head. Okay, next time let Brother Xiao Wu pick you up. By the way, Grandpa asked Dad to go somewhere with you tomorrow. Where do you want to go? When talking about Huo Sui Cheng, Huo Xiao Xiao immediately lost his mood. No, I'll stay at home with my grandfather. Mr. Huo smiled even wider. Okay, Grandpa will play with you at home. As she walked out of the kindergarten gate, Huo Xiao Xiao heard someone calling her and turned towards the voice. Not far from the road, she saw Yi Qian and an energetic old gentleman approaching them. Of course, Mr. Huo recognized the old man next to Yi Qian. Old man Chen, why are you suddenly taking the child away? Mr. Yi has been unwell lately? Lao Chen answered, smiling. Yi Qian's father went abroad and his mother was filming. So Mr. Yi sent me to pick him up? Mr. Huo turned his gaze to Yi Qian and extended his hand. Is this Yi Qian? So many years have passed. It seems like only yesterday I was holding this little boy when he was born. Hello, grandfather. Yi Qian greeted him obediently. Good girl. Mr. Chen smiled. Three or four years have passed. How are you? I never had the chance to visit you. Nothing. Everything is fine. Huo Xiao Xiao stood aside and quietly listened to the conversation. When she heard that Yi Qian's father had gone abroad and his mother was busy filming, a thought flashed through her mind. Grandfather? She turned to Mr. Ho, pulling his sleeve. Mr. Ho lowered his head. What's the matter? Is Yi Qian, is dad not at home right now? Yes, not at home. And mom is not at home either? Yes, what is it? Tomorrow's a day off. Since we are not going to kindergarten, I want to invite Yi Qian to play at our house. His parents are not at home anyway, and his grandfather should get more rest. Yi Qian is home alone and probably bored. Do you want to invite Yi Qian to play with us? Mr. Ho smiled. Yes. Then you should ask Yi Qian if he wants to come to us. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at Yi Qian. Yi Qian, I invite you to my home? Do you want to come? Of course, Yi Qian didn't expect Huo Xiao Xiao to invite him over. Actually, he wanted to go, but he couldn't make such decisions himself. I want to, but first I have to ask my grandfather for permission. Mr. Huo looked at Lao Chen. I can't say anything about this. Lao Chen smiled. But if the young master wants to go, I'll call Mr. Yi and ask. Okay, wait a little, Lao Chen said, turning away to make a call. Yi Qian approached Huo Xiao Xiao. Huo Xiao Xiao, have you already run out of the candies that I gave you? I brought some more. Do you want it? Huo Sui Ching ordered to hide the bag of candy so that Huo Xiao Xiao could not eat it. Don't want. Children should not eat a lot of candy, otherwise their teeth will become damaged. Oh, then I'll bring something else next time. What do you like to eat? Huo Xiao Xiao thought about it. She was forbidden to eat many of the things she liked. Cheese sticks. Okay, next time I'll bring them. Listening to the children's conversation, Mr. Ho laughed loudly. Yi Qian, I heard that when Xiao Xiao was bullied, you stood up for her? I didn't have time to thank you enough. Don't thank me. I did what I should have done. Don't worry, Grandpa. I will continue to protect Xiao Xiao and won't let anyone hurt her. At this moment, Lao Chen ended the call. Senior Master agrees. Tomorrow I will bring the young master to your mansion he said with a smile. The longer Mr. Huo looked at Yi Qian, the nicer he seemed to him. He even began to respect him. Why wait until tomorrow? Let him come today. Don't worry, we have everything. We won't leave it to waste. Mr. You, old man Yi, will agree with me? Mr. Huo assured Lao Chen, and, taking Huo Xiao Xiao and Yi Qian by the hands, headed toward the car. Well, let's go home with Grandpa. Bye, Grandpa Chen. Lao Chen could only wave goodbye. Bye? Since the weekend started tomorrow, Huo Sui Cheng returned early from work. Believing that the child he had bullied last night was still angry, he stopped by the bakery and bought a cake to appease Huo Xiao Xiao. 
As he entered the Huo family's mansion, he heard loud laughter coming from the living room. Still, children's moods are very changeable. She just recently laughed just as merrily. Huo Sui Cheng shook his head and grinned as he carried the cake into the house. As soon as he entered the living room, a toy car crashed into his shoe. A four-year-old boy ran up to pick her up. Huo Sui Cheng's face took on a gloomy look. Yi Qian? He asked the boy. Yi Qian raised his eyes to Huo Sui Cheng and frightened by his gloomy face, took a step back. Hello, Uncle Huo. Why are you here? Yeah, yeah. Yi Qian opened his mouth, feeling even more fear of him than of his father. It seemed that he was not welcome here. Huo Xiao Xiao ran up to them on her short legs. She had a sweet smile on her face. Dad, let me introduce you to Yi Qian, she said, taking Yi Qian's hand. We'll have him all weekend and we'll play together. Huo Sui Cheng frowned and probably didn't particularly favor children. Dad bought me a cake? Huo Xiao Xiao asked in surprise, taking the box. Yi Qian, Dad bought us a cake? Huo Sui Cheng looked at the happy faces of the children standing in front of him. Children shouldn't eat a lot of sweets? He said with an important look, taking the cake from Huo Xiao Xiao. First, have lunch, and then I'll see how you behave. And maybe I'll give you a piece. Children have very sensitive intuition, thanks to which they sense any emotional changes around them. They are also able to sense whether others like them or not. Yi Qian, seeing Huo Sui Cheng, felt that he did not like him. He remembered what his mother told him. When visiting, you are obliged to follow the rules established by the owners of the house. You shouldn't create conflict situations just because you're a child, understand? Adults don't like capricious children. If adults don't like you, it means you're doing something wrong, and that's why they're angry. Following his mother's instructions, Yi Qian sat quietly at the table and ate. There were several dishes in front of him, but he tried not to extend his chopsticks towards Huo Sui Cheng, even if he wanted to take his favorite pork ribs. Mr. Huo, noticing that Yi Qian did not eat much, handed him the fish belly. Yi Qian, you are visiting Grandpa, so don't that be so modest? Eat whatever you want. Thank you, Grandpa Huo. Huo Xiao Xiao saw that Huo Sui Qing was about to take the ribs. Before his chopsticks touched the food, she quickly picked up the ribs and placed them on Yi Qian's plate. Yi Qian, eat some ribs. Aunt cooks them very tasty. Huo Sui Cheng pointed his empty chopsticks toward the shrimp, but before he could take them, his daughter immediately grabbed them and handed them to Yi Qian. Yi Qian, the shrimp are also very tasty. Raising his eyebrows, Huo Sui Cheng looked at Huo Xiao Xiao and reached for the chicken wings, but she obligingly put the wing aside for the guest. Yi Qian, I highly recommend the wings. They are also very tasty, delicious. Seeing a mountain of food forming on his plate, Yi Qian glanced sideways at Huo Sui Cheng and immediately looked away. I've had enough. I want to eat all of this, he said awkwardly. Eat slowly? My aunt cooks a very tasty food. Huo Sui Cheng finally realized that his little daughter was still angry with him. Mr. Huo smiled as he watched Huo Xiao Xiao eat his food with chopsticks. You help Yi Qian with food, but you haven't eaten a crumb yourself. Aren't you hungry? Yi Qian is our guest. He doesn't come to us every day. That's why I take care of him. Huo Xiao Xiao answered with a smile. You stupid girl, take care of yourself first. Huo Sui Cheng, trying to remain calm, wanted to take a bowl of soup. But before he took the spoon, Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed it. Huo Xiao Xiao? He reprimanded his daughter, raising his eyebrows. Do you want some soup, Dad? She asked, taking the spoon with a smile. I'll pour it for you. Having said this, she put the bowl to her side and spoon by spoon poured duck soup. As soon as Huo Xiao Xiao filled the bowl to the brim, she put down her spoon. She carefully handed the bowl to Huo Sui Cheng and hurried him with a trembling voice. Dad, faster, it's hot. The soup poured into the bowl was like her love for her father. There was so much of it that it almost spilled over the edge. A greasy film even formed on the soup. Huo Sui Cheng took the bowl from Huo Xiao Xiao's hands and accidentally splashed some onto the back of his hand. The soup was not very hot. There was only an unpleasant sensation from the fat. Huo Sui Cheng did not like this and frowned and took a napkin to wipe his hand. Grandfather, I'll pour you some soup, Huo Xiao Xiao suggested. Grandfather doesn't need it. Eat it yourself. Despite her grandfather's words, Huo Xiao Xiao still poured half a bowl for him. Yi Qian, do you want soup? I don't. Yi Qian wanted to object, but did not have time to finish. Then I will pour it for you? Huo Xiao Xiao handed him half the bowl with a smile. Eat more soup to grow faster. Oh, thanks. To your health. As my grandfather says, make yourself at home. Huo Xiao Xiao turned her gaze to her father. Dad, why aren't you eating? Huo Sui Cheng threw away the napkin, moved the bowl of soup to his daughter, representing her love, and put more food on her plate with chopsticks. Eat more to grow faster? 
Kuo Xiaoxiao frowned when she saw a bowl of soup in front of her and a pile of food on her plate. Eat slowly without leaving any traces, said Huo Suicheng, putting his chopsticks aside and getting up from the table. Father, I'm full. Bon appetit. He left the dining room, and Mr. Huo looked at Huo Xiaoxiao with concern. Huo Xiaoxiao made a face, curling her lips and sticking out her tongue. After finishing her meal, she lay down on the sofa and patted her belly, which was full of food and remembered that her father ate almost nothing at lunch. Perhaps he is still hungry. Dad worked at the company to earn money. But when he returned home, he could not even eat his fill. Huo Xiao Xiao was a little worried. Let him starve for a couple more minutes. Then I'll bring him something to eat. After all, it was his own fault that he forced me to put a seal on the promise, she thought angrily. Huo Sui Cheng came down and looked at Huo Xiao Xiao and Yi Qian sitting on the sofa. Are you finished? He asked. Yes, and Chao. Cut the cake I brought and distribute it to everyone. Yes, sir, I will do it now, Aunt Zhao answered from the kitchen. The cake brought by Huo Sui Ching was special, baked especially for children. It was a wonderful cake surrounded by cream and chocolate. The top was sprinkled with white chocolate stars, and there was also a figurine of a girl in a skirt with a crown on her head. Aunt Zhao cut the cake and divided it equally. The girl in the skirt was given to Huo Xiao Xiao. Usually Huo Xiao Xiao would eat two pieces of cake after finishing the main course. But today she ate too much. I could still taste the soup in my throat. She wanted to try the cake, but she couldn't fit in anymore. Huo Sui Cheng placed the cake in front of her. Dad bought it especially for you. Eat. Huo Xiao Xiao immediately forgave her father, as he had planned. After lunch, her stomach swelled like a balloon. But her father still offered her cake. How would she eat it? The next piece was served to Yi Chen. Thank you, uncle, but I wouldn't be able to eat anymore, he replied, hiccuping. Mr. Huo walked over and Seeing a piece of cake, frowned. Why did you cut the cake right after lunch? I won't be able to eat it either. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. You really can't? <laughs> yeah, I can't. Okay, Huo Sui Cheng said, taking a piece of Huo Xiao Xiao. An Zhao, Xiao Xiao is full. The cake won't last long, so share it with everyone. Well, okay, I'll share it now. There were more than a dozen servants in the Huo family mansion, including drivers and bodyguards, and each of them would get a piece. Huo Xiao Xiao jumped up in indignation. Previously, she suffered from tooth decay for half a month because of sweets, so she was forbidden to eat sweets. It had been more than six months since she last ate cake and other high-sugar foods. Finally, she has a chance to eat the cake, but it is being given away to others. If Huo Xiao Xiao can't eat her piece now, maybe she should save it for later? She would eat it later if there was a better opportunity. Couldn't her father leave a piece for her? Auntie? She turned to Aunt Zhao, standing next to her, and looked at her with burning eyes. Do you want to eat it? I won't eat it now, but can you leave me a piece? Okay, I'll leave a piece for you and Yi Qian. Huo Xiaoxia's eyes flashed even brighter. Thank you, aunt. Unlike her father, An Zhao treated her kindly. When the cake was finally divided, all that was left was a box. Auntie left us a piece. Huo Xiaoxia whispered in Yi Qian's ear. We can eat it at night. After falling silent, she noticed Huo Sui Cheng coming out of the kitchen with a piece of cake. She clearly remembered that she asked An Zhao to leave her this piece with stars. Huo Xiao Xiao was surprised and rushed to the kitchen to check if there was still cake left. Of course, the piece that she asked to leave disappeared. Dad, aunt left it for me. Huo Sui Cheng didn't care. The cake can be stored for a long time, otherwise it will give you a stomach ache. If you don't eat it now, dad will help you finish it. In front of Huo Xiao Xiao, he cut off a piece of cake with a spoon and put it in his mouth. Sweet? Huo Xiao Xiao looked at him with a dissatisfied face. When did my father change his behavior so dramatically? The baby cake even seemed to make his cheeks swollen. Did he really take her for a fool? It's just a piece of cake, so why fuss? If you don't want it, don't eat it. Ho Xiao Xiao. <laughs> Do you want to eat cake? Yi Chen asked her. The mere mention of cake made her angry. However, she still really wanted to taste it. Want? I haven't eaten it for a long time, but today it won't fit into me anymore. The next time you come to me, I'll buy you a big cake. <laughs> really? It's, really, I'll buy it if you come. Well, okay, then next time I'll come to you. Huo Xiao Xiao could resolve the situation later, but she wanted to deal with it right now. To add to the grievance of last night, another one was added. It is unbearable. Huo Xiao Xiao quietly dragged Yi Qian to her father's office. She remembered that after her father made her stamp it, he put the document in the drawer. While Huo Sui Cheng was not looking, she wanted to show her grandfather what kind of disgrace her father forced her to sign. Huo Xiao Xiao, what are we doing here? Huo Xiao Xiao turned to Yi Qian with a serious look. Yi Chen, don't dad call me Huo Xiao Xiao anymore. Just call me Xiao Xiao. But why? Because dad calls me Huo Xiao Xiao and you are not my dad? Yi Chen sighed in puzzlement. 
Is this your dad's office? What are we doing here? Yesterday I drew something and put it in his box. I just want to pick up the drawing. Will you watch for me? Yi Qian never allowed himself to touch anything in his father's office and, looking at Uncle Huo, he believed that he would not stand on ceremony. If Yi Qian touches his things, then Yi Qian hesitated. So will you help me? Hearing Huo Xiao Xiao's request, Yi Qian frowned, gritted his teeth, and nodded. Okay. The couple began their secret operation. While Yi Qian was watching the door, Huo Xiao Xiao barely climbed onto her father's chair and found that it was too far from the table. She went down and tried to move him closer, but the chair was too heavy and she would not have been able to move it alone. Yi Qian, help me move the chair! Yi Qian ran up to Huo Xiao Xiao, and together, using all their strength, they moved the chair to the table. Seeing that the distance was sufficiently shortened, Huo Xiao Xiao sent Yi Qian back to the door, climbed onto the chair and opened the drawer, but her attention was drawn to the document lying in it. The cover said Project A and Z. A and Z Project. The name seemed familiar, as if she had seen it before. Just a minute. Suddenly, Huo Xiao Xiao remembered the turning point in Huo Sui Cheng's career that she had seen in her dream. Since the Lumen Mountain project was suspended, Huo Sui Cheng took a risk and hired tomb robbers to extract the contents of the tomb in advance. But someone with bad intentions discovered his plan and, although there was no direct evidence, that Huo Sui Cheng initiated the extraction of artifacts. Huo Group suffered significant losses and loss of reputation. So to compensate for the damage, Huo Sui Cheng worked with another company on the ANZ project. As a result, the investment failed and he lost money. Huo Group's fortunes were undermined. And if Huo Sui Cheng had not stopped the development of subsidiaries, Huo Group might have gone bankrupt. However, this incident marked the beginning of the company's path to losing its resources. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at this document and suddenly felt an imminent collapse. It can't be like that. Father should not participate in this project. However, Huo Xiao Xiao was happy with the current situation. If she had not come to her father's office for the promise, she would not have known that he was even planning this project. Probably due to the suspension of the Lumen Mountain project, he lost his peace. How can this be? If Huo Sui Cheng is leading such an important project, how can he be so impatient? Huo Xiao Xiao looked around and noticed a bottle of ink standing on the table. Squinting one eye, she pulled the bottle towards her, twisted the cap, and poured all the liquid into the drawer. Gradually, all the documents became saturated with ink. Huo Xiao Xiao understood that destroying one document was not enough. She should have found another way to force her father to leave the project. But now, Huo Xiao Xiao heard muffled footsteps and panicked, as if her father was already standing next to her, holding the belt stands next to her, holding a belt. This image automatically flashed through Huo Xiao Xiao's thoughts, and she suddenly felt uneasy. Hmm, they're just documents. Why would her father be so angry about them? No, you shouldn't. You not think that my father will just let me get away with this. Stop, you shouldn't dwell on this. This Anne's project is certainly very important. If father really takes part in the A and Z project, does that mean that the Huo family will go bankrupt in the future? In the original script, Huo Sui Cheng lost his reputation among his colleagues due to problems with the Looming Mountain Project. So he concentrated all his efforts on the ANZ Project, and the Lumen Mountain Project itself was suspended. Indeed, he found himself in a difficult situation, as written in the script. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at the ink-soaked documents in the box. The ANZ Project was probably of particular importance to her father. He will definitely beat me for what I did. Huo Xiao Xiao ran through her memories, but did not find any in which she was beaten. Xiao Xiao, are you finished? Yi Qian asked quietly, squatting near the door. Huo Xiao Xiao woke up from her thoughts, closed the drawer, and climbed down from the chair. Finished? Did you find him? No. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head. What should we do now? Perhaps I forgot where it is. Okay, let's leave. The couple hurried to flee the crime scene, but Huo Xiao Xiao still felt anxious and frightened. She could deceive herself, but not others. The father will soon find out about what happened, and it is unknown how he will react. Yi Chen, I want to ask you something. What's the matter? Your father ever hit you? Yi Chen widened his eyes at her. Wu Xiao Xiao was embarrassed by his gaze. Did he beat you? She suggested. Yi Chen did not hide his emotions. He was ashamed that his father beat him. He blushed at Wu Xiao Xiao's guess. And you? Why do you ask? Just curious. Tell me, why did Dad beat you? Did it hurt? How did he beat you? I don't remember. You are lying. You definitely still remember. Well, tell me. It seemed to Qian that it was a shame to talk about this, and he wanted to avoid the question. But Huo Xiao Xiao insisted on her own. Just, I don't like eggs. I threw them away and lied about eating them, so Dad hit me with his hand a couple of times. So you got spanked? 
Did it hurt? No, it didn't hurt, Yi Qian answered, blushing. You're lying. You were definitely hurt, Huo Xiao Xiao said, looking at him thoughtfully. Yi Qian's face turned even redder and looked like a ripe apple. Huo Xiao Xiao became worried. Yi Qian's dad seemed so kind and calm, but he hid his son for such a trifle. Huo Xiao Xiao stained documents that were important to her father. Given his temperament, he will think that she did this on purpose. Imagining too much is harmful, Huo Xiao Xiao thought. Did you do something wrong? Yi Chen asked, seeing the anxiety on her face. I stained my father's documents. Hey, then you should urgently confess to your dad and ask for forgiveness. Usually, Yi Chen didn't even dare to go into his father's office, let alone spoil his documents. Uncle Ho seemed scary to him, even in a normal mood, and even if he was angry. Huo Xiao Xiao was doomed. He will definitely beat me. Yes, exactly. Huo Xiao Xiao looked away. This child was still small and did not understand how and when to calm others down. However, even Yi Qian saw how cruel Huo Xiao Xiao's father was. This time, she outdid herself. No, I can't just sit and wait. I should think of another way to resolve the situation other than admitting the mistake and apologizing. What if dad doesn't accept the apology? What if dad doesn't accept the apology? What if her father, who always considered her existence an inconvenience, took the chance to beat her? Still, she should plan her actions more clearly. Right now, she needed a new plan. Find grandpa? No, this way I will only get rid of the effect but not the cause, which lies in the father. You can be nice to him, said Yi Qian. This time, Huo Xiao Xiao widened her eyes at him. When dad beat me, Yi Qian continued. Mom told me to act flirtatiously so that he wouldn't beat me next time. But I think it suits you girls better. Act flirtatiously. Oh. Huo Xiao Xiao immediately imagined bending over, hugging her father, pouting her lips and calling him daddy. Goosebumps ran through her body. It's a joke, acting so promiscuous. Even if Huo Sui Cheng decided to kill her today, she would not flirt with him. Do not even think. I'll just go to my father and apologize. Huo Xiao Xiao walked down the stairs. Yi Qian was a little worried, but followed her. Huo Sui Cheng and Mr. Huo sat on the sofa and chatted about life. Huo Xiao Xiao suddenly remembered that her father barely ate at dinner. So she covered Yi Qian Xia's mouth and urgently dragged him to the kitchen where Aunt Zhao was cleaning. Aunt, can you help me cook the noodles? Aren't you full now? Aunt Zhao asked, smiling. Dad hasn't eaten yet. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head. I want to feed him. Aunt Zhao looked out from the kitchen and lightly pinched Huo Xiao Xiao's cheek. Okay. Having heated the water, Aunt Zhao put noodles in it, added vegetables, boiled shrimp, fried an egg, and sprinkled the dish with green onions. Ten minutes later, a bowl of noodles, egg, shrimp, and herbs appeared on the table. Aunt, give it to me. I'll take it to Dad. Are you sure you'll take it? Aunt Zhao asked suspiciously. I'll help her? Yi Qian decisively suggested. No need, I can handle it myself. Okay. Aunt Zhao put the bowl on a small tray and carefully handed it to Huo Xiao Xiao. The tray was securely held in her hands. Well, bring it. Thank you, aunt. Huo Xiao Xiao glanced at the bowl and step by step carried the tray into the living room, where Huo Sui Cheng and Mr. Huo were discussing the company's affairs. Do not do anything regarding the Mount Lumen project. The tomb is located near the sea. It still won't last long in the humid sea air. If you take risks, Huo Group's reputation will be completely destroyed. I'll think about it some more. Is thinking still necessary? Do not even think about it. As soon as Mr. Huo fell silent, Huo Xiao Xiao tremblingly entered the living room with a bowl of noodles. Mr. Huo's face softened as if by magic. Huo Xiao Xiao, what are you talking about? He asked with a smile. I prepared noodles for dad. Huo Xiao Xiao answered, turning her gaze to her father. Did you cook it yourself? I watched Aunt Zhao prepare it myself. Huo Xiao Xiao brought the noodles to Huo Sui Cheng. Dad, you didn't eat much at dinner, so you're probably hungry. Here, eat some noodles. Huo Sui Cheng took the noodles in surprise. Is this for me? Yes. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded, trying to look sincere. Huo Xiao Xiao is so caring. Mr. Huo smiled. Grandfather, are you hungry too? No, Grandpa is not hungry. Then Dad, eat faster? Yi Qian nervously watched what was happening, standing to the side. Mr. Huo noticed him and waved his hand. Yi Qian, why are you standing there? Come to us. Huo Sui Cheng looked up at Yi Qian. Noticing his anxious expression, he looked at the noodles and stirred them suspiciously with his chopsticks. These kids didn't put anything like that in the noodles, did they? Seeing Huo Sui Cheng stirring the noodles but not daring to start eating, Huo Xiao Xiao became worried. She climbed onto the sofa, clung to Huo Sui Cheng, and blew on the noodles. Well, the noodles are no longer hot. Dad, eat. How touching. Do you want to tell Dad something? At dinner, Huo Xiao Xiao was opposed to Huo Sui Ching, and now he found it hard to believe that she had changed her attitude towards him so dramatically. 
Huo Xiaoxiao did not show it and nodded calmly. Yes, I wanted to tell Dad something, but let Dad eat first. After Huo Xiaoxiao's words, Huo Sui Cheng suddenly became interested and, under his daughter's watchful gaze, finished the noodles. Huo Xiaoxiao handed him a napkin. Well, tell me what's the matter, said Huo Sui Cheng. Huo Xiaoxiao sat down next to him and sighed with a depressed look. Dad, I'm sorry. What have you done? Huo Sui Cheng narrowed his eyes. This time, Huo Sui Cheng had not yet had time to change his clothes when he returned home. He was wearing the same shirt and trousers, and his belt was still fastened. Huo Xiaoxiao swallowed. She felt awkward. She mentally tossed between the decision to confess and the desire to fight to the end. Huo Xiaoxiao remembered how many times Huo Sui Cheng tried to provide her with a carefree childhood, but who knows how he will behave with her this time. Just in case Huo Xiaoxiao decided to try to flirt, she bent over, took her father's hands and shook them, then pouted her lips and blurted out in a lovely voice, Dad, Xiao Xiao loves you more than anyone? What do you love more, me or work? Huo Sui Cheng fell silent and a little later shouted, Aunt Zhao, bring the dust blower. Dad, forgive me. I accidentally stained the documents in your office, but I didn't mean to. Huo Xiao Xiao admitted, but her heart was still pounding. Well, of course. My father has been wanting to beat me for a long time. Mr. Huo was indignant at Huo Sui Cheng's words. Well, why are you scaring her? Yes, the documents are dirty, but don't you have a copy on your computer? Yi Chen heard Huo Sui Cheng asking for a dust blower, and his palms were sweaty. But when Mr. Huo stood up for Huo Xiao Xiao, he decided to speak out. Grandfather Huo, Xiao Xiao didn't want to? She, she just wanted to take what was in the box, and so it happened. Yi Chen! Huo Xiao Xiao screamed, wanting to rush to him and sew his mouth shut. Yi Chen just said something he shouldn't have said. He revealed her secret. Huo Sui Cheng looked at Yi Chen seriously. Should I take what was in the box? And what is it? Yi Chen pursed his lips and did not answer. Mr. Huo looked at Huo Sui Cheng, smiled and patted Yi Chen on the back. Don't worry, Yi Chen, I'm with you. Continue. Yi Chen glanced sideways at Huo Xiao Xiao and hesitating continued. Xiao Xiao said that there was something in the box and we went to pick it up. And then the documents turned out to be dirty. Something? Huo Sui Cheng clarified, turning his gaze to Huo Xiao Xiao. Huo Xiao Xiao gritted her teeth. The contract that dad made me sign last night, I wanted to show it to my grandfather. Huo Sui Cheng went upstairs, and Huo Xiao Xiao climbed onto Mr. Huo's leg. Mm, grandfather, I didn't want to. Dad, won't hit me, right? Don't be afraid. I'll be with you and one tot let him hit you. Mr. Ho reassured her. Aunt Zhao came out of the kitchen with a dust blower in her hands. And why did the gentleman ask you to bring a dust blower? She asked. Seeing the dust blower, Huo Xiao Xiao panicked and screamed, Take it away! Take it away! Take it away! Aunt Zhao didn't know what was happening and was in a stupor. Footsteps were heard from above. Huo Xiao Xiao quickly got off the sofa, snatched the dust blower from Aunt Zhao Sa's hands, and threw it under the sofa to get rid of the punishment implement. Seeing Huo Sui Cheng calmly walking down with a stack of documents in his hands, Huo Xiao Xiao panicked and hid behind Mr. Huo. Yi Chen quietly sat next to her to protect her. Huo Sui Cheng's expression did not bode well. The bottle of ink was empty, and the thick stack of documents was completely saturated with ink, and it didn't look like an accident at all. Huo Xiao Xiao, come out! The bottle of ink sat securely on the table. Tell me about the time you accidentally took the lid off and spilled ink into the drawer. Huo Xiao Xiao burst into tears. Does he even know who I did this for? Not for his sake alone, but for the sake of the whole family. She constantly finds herself in difficult situations, acting with good intentions and not being able to explain it. Mr. Huo shielded Huo Xiao Xiao inside. Why can't you just sit down and calmly tell everything? These are just documents, aren't they? Have an assistant print new copies tomorrow. Do you have to be so angry? Huo Xiao Xiao poked her head out from behind him and nodded. Yes, Dad shouldn't be so angry. I'm not angry. I just want to hear your explanation. You said you accidentally stained the documents. How did you get them dirty by accident? Huo Xiao Xiao didn't know how to answer. You lied to me. Huo Sui Cheng shouted and reached out to Huo Xiao Xiao to grab her. Huo Sui Cheng? Mr. Ho rushed to cut him off. Father, don't bother me with dealing with this issue. Huo Xiao Xiao hid behind Mr. Huo, but that was not enough. As soon as Huo Sui Cheng extended his hand to her, she hugged Yi Chen in a panic and screamed, Dad, I really didn't mean to. Yi Chen was shocked. Realizing that Huo Xiao Xiao had hugged him, he hugged her tightly and looked up at Huo Sui Cheng. Uncle Huo Xiao Xiao, Xiao Xiao really didn't want to? Didn't want the inkwell to open on its own? Huo Xiao Xiao, you come here and we can talk about your lies. I'll get you now. Huo Sui Cheng, don't you dare talk to her like that. What are you doing? Stop it! Don't touch her! Wait, 
Mr. Huo grabbed Huo Suicheng's hand and glanced at the stack of stained documents. On an unstained portion of the document, the inscription ANZ, ANZ, ANZ project, Huo Suicheng was stunned. Father? Mr. Huo looked unhappy. Taking the stack of documents from Huo Suicheng's hands, he carefully flipped through the pages and making sure that it was definitely an ANZ project, threw them on the coffee table. How many times have I told you you can't touch the ANZ project? Huo Xiaoxia was also shocked. She turned to Mr. Huo and saw him furious. I remember? Huo Suicheng answered with a frown. Then tell me, what do you need these documents for? After a pause, Huo Suicheng calmly replied, due to the suspension of the Looming Mountain project, the company is incurring significant losses. If the ENDS project is successful, we could recover up to 90% of lost funds. You didn't listen to what I was saying at all? Do you know what effect the ANZ project will have on local companies when it enters the domestic market? If ANZ turns out to be successful, then it's okay. And if not, then it will simply leave the market. But do you know how many companies will take up arms against you in the future? And most importantly, our company can fall infinitely low. And that doesn't suit me. Don't even think about this project. Mr. Huo's remarks were like a ray of light in the darkness. Huo Xiaoxiao was so grateful to him that she almost burst into tears. In the original script, Mr. Huo retired, so he did not know about Huo Sui Cheng's decisions. But now the situation is different. Grandfather still retained the ability to control his father and did not allow him to do whatever he wanted. I think that Huo Xiaoxiao did well to spill the ink. If this had not happened, I would not have even known that you decided to take on the ANZ project. Huo Xiaoxiao tilted her head to the side. Instead of thanking me, he was going to beat his daughter. What an evil father I have. Uh, father. Don't say anything. Mr. Ho waved his hand. I don't want to hear anything about the ANZ project. The conversation is over. Huo Suicheng felt in his heart that Mr. Huo would not give in so easily. A little earlier, he also thought about this project. If successful, it would bring significant profits. But now, Huo Suicheng glanced at Huo Xiaoxiao, hiding behind Mr. Huo. Her facial expression changed. Now she no longer seemed pitiful and frightened, but on the contrary, rejoiced at the victory. He sighed. The ink was spilled in time. Aunt Zhao, where is the dust blower? She's gone, Huo Xiaoxiao answered smugly. Aunt Zhao went to the pantry and returned with a new dust blower. Sir, why did you need it? Huo Xiaoxiao gnashed her teeth. Why do we need so many dust blowers? Before Huo Suicheng could do anything, Mr. Huo took the dust blower from Aunt Zhao's hands and looked at his son reproachfully. You dare to beat her in front of me? Do you dare raise your hand to her? I haven't hit you since you were a child. Do you want to remember what it's like? An Zhao finally understood Huo Suicheng's intentions and was indignant. Master, she is still a small child and does not understand much. Just calmly explain to her what's what. How can you beat her? Yi Qian also fixed his gaze on Huo Suicheng. Without uttering a word, he made it clear through his movements and gaze that, like the others, he did not agree with his decision to beat Huo Xiao Xiao. Almost everyone present was on Huo Xiaoxiao's side, and this gave her courage. Yes, yes, she nodded. I try for the benefit of my father, and in return, I receive nothing but punishment. He might as well thank me. Huo Suiching almost laughed out of anger as he looked at Huo Xiaoxiao's face, which resembled that of a sneaky little devil. Of course, with so many allies, Huo Xiaoxiao had nothing to fear. Under the gaze of those present, Huo Suiching glanced angrily at Huo Xiaoxiao, but was unable to scare her. If you touch daddy, things again, no one will save you. He picked up a stack of documents thrown on the coffee table and went up to the second floor. Don't be afraid, Mr. Hua tried to reassure Hua Xiaoxiao. Dad is just angry. If he dares to hit you, tell me and I will do it for him. Mr. Hua returned the dust blower to An Zhao. Now Hua Xiaoxiao will be afraid of dust blowers for the rest of his life? Auntie, quickly burn all the dust blowers? Of course, of course. I'll burn it now, An Zhao laughed. We managed to sort out the situation and Huo Xiaoxiao felt relieved. Although she was unable to find the assurance her father had forced her to sign, she was glad that she had not been beaten. The father's project was spoiled and the Ho family was not threatened with bankruptcy in the near future. Okay, we sorted it out. However, Xiao Xiao, you are forbidden to climb onto dad's desk. He's so tall, what if you fall? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded. You're also forbidden to touch daddy's things, understand? Huo Xiaoxiao nodded again. It's late, so go to bed. You will sleep in the same room as Yi Qian, just don't whisper to him until late. Huo Xiaoxiao turned to Yi Qian in surprise. Sleep with him? Isn't there another room in the house? Of course, there were rooms for guests in the house, but the beds in them were not equipped with sides, like in a nursery, so it was unsafe for the child to sleep on them. Only Huo Xiaoxiao's bed had bumpers, and there was enough room for two. 
Zhao Xiao doesn't want to? Boy and girl alone at night? Well, so be it. Even though we are of different genders, at the age of three or four, there is nothing to worry about. Huo Xiao Xiao quickly shook her head. I didn't say I don't want to. I will sleep with Yi Qian in the same room. Yi Qian, do you agree? Yes, Yi Qian answered, blushing slightly. Good night, grandfather. Yi Qian and I will go upstairs. Go, just don't forget to wake up early. Why do we need to wake up early? Huo Xiao Xiao asked, puzzled. I almost forgot, Mr. Huo smiled. Dad said he would take you for a walk. Tomorrow? For a walk? Dad? Huo Xiao Xiao frowned. Then? Will Dad definitely take us for a walk? Mr. Huo seemed to have already forgotten what had happened and smiled awkwardly. Don't think about it. Even if he doesn't take it, there will be many more chances to take a walk in the future. Grandfather. It struck nine o'clock in the evening. Huo Sui Cheng's office was lit by a desk lamp. Huo Sui Cheng sat at the table with his back to the large window. The darkness in the corner blended perfectly with the darkness outside the window. He sat for almost an hour, looking at the stack of stained documents lying in front of him, and tiredly rubbing his eyebrows. Work on the Mount Lumen project was postponed many times, as were a number of other important plans. Because of this, Huo Sui Cheng was under enormous pressure. Projects in Australia and New Zealand. Huo Sui Cheng looked gloomy. He was aware of the riskiness of this project and understood that there are no investments without risk. The most important thing was to proudly endure difficulties and wait for insight. This project may be risky, but Huo Sui Cheng did not think that the situation with him was as dire as Mr. Huo saw it. He opened the box and was about to put documents in it, among which was a certification signed by Huo Xiao Xiao. Her palm print was much smaller compared to his palm. Thinking about what this little devil had done tonight, he became even more gloomy. Sometimes it seemed to him that this child was actually an adult. She definitely couldn't read, but she was still worried about what was written on the assurance. At this moment, the door handle suddenly turned. The sound of the door opening was clearly audible in the silence of the night. Huo Sui Cheng stood up and walked in the slightly opened door. There was a rustling sound behind the door, followed by a child's whisper. Yi Qian, be quiet. Don't let him notice us. Why did we come here? I want to check if dad is still angry. We should calm him down so there won't be any trouble. A head poked out from behind the door. I don't see Uncle Huo. How can this be? Take a closer look. E. I took a closer look, but still didn't see him. <laughs> That's nonsense. Well, move away. I will take a look myself. The door opened wider, and a fidgety head poked its head into the room. Huo Xiao Xiao looked up and saw Huo Sui Cheng tilting his head. They made eye contact. Huo Xiao Xiao's eyes opened wide and her pupils constricted slightly, as if she had seen a ghost. She took a few steps back, and before Yi Chen realized what was happening, she grabbed him by the collar and ran away. Yi Chen did not have time to react and allowed himself to be dragged by Huo Xiao Xiao. While running, he tripped and fell to the floor. Run! Faster! Huo Xiao Xiao hurried him, helping him up. Looking at the backs of the fleeing couple, Huo Sui Cheng immediately got rid of negative emotions. For some unknown reason, Huo Xiao Xiao's words flashed through his mind. Dad, you should work hard to earn money. Don't do anything bad, otherwise Huo Xiao Xiao will be left alone, without support, and will eke out a miserable existence. If a promiscuous child grows up to be arrogant and power-hungry, will his life really be that miserable without support? Huo Sui Cheng couldn't imagine what Huo Xiao Xiao would be like when she grew up, but he frowned as he imagined that she would one day be bullied in a place where he couldn't be there for her. It's not easy to communicate with her. Those who may offend her will show special cruelty towards her. He didn't want to listen to her cry in grief. He wouldn't stand it. After thinking a little more, Huo Sui Cheng returned to the table and put the certification sheet in the drawer. The document that Huo Xiao Xiao had ruined lay quietly on the table. Huo Sui Cheng froze and, clenching his teeth, threw it into the wastebasket. Well, okay, I still want not ask enough of the children. Meanwhile, Huo Xiao Xiao, who ran to her room dragging Yi Qian behind her, closed the door and put her hand on her stomach in horror, taking a breath. Scared to death, almost to death. Why are we running? Yi Qian asked, breathing heavily. You said that you didn't see dad. Huo Xiao Xiao said bitterly, and he was standing right outside the door. I did not see him. So what should we do now? Huo Xiao Xiao thought seriously about the question. Considering her behavior today, her father definitely won a take her for a walk. But a lot of time has passed since she last walked. Even an adult cannot endure such confinement, let alone a child. Huo Xiao Xiao needed a plan. Aunt Zhao, carrying two bottles of milk upstairs, ran into Huo Sui Cheng in the corridor. Mr. Huo? Huo Sui Cheng glanced at the milk bottles, this is for Zhao Xiao and Yi Qian. Children have a fast metabolism, so they should be fed again. I'll carry them myself. Aunt Zhao gave Huo Sui Cheng the milk. 
The man took the bottles and headed to Huo Xiaoxiao's room. Upon entering, he immediately saw a slide in the corner of the bed, covered with a blanket. It was already late, but the children were not sleeping and were simply hiding under the blanket. They did not move even when Huo Sui Cheng entered the room. Huo Sui Cheng stood silently next to the bed, looking at the slide and reached out his hand to pull the blanket off it. The two children under the blanket stared at him in shock. Huo Xiao Xiao was taken by surprise. She was very anxious after being threatened with a dust blower twice. My father didn't come to beat me, right? Dad? Uncle Ho? Huo Sui Cheng held out the milk bottles. Huo Xiao Xiao glanced at the bottles in his hand. She reluctantly crawled to him, took the bottles, and crawled back, then handed one bottle to Yi Qian, and the couple sat down on the bed and sucked on the milk. Silence reigned in the room. All that could be heard was the gurgling of the milk. Even after Huo Xiao Xiao finished the milk and returned the bottle to Huo Sui Cheng, she did not dare to speak to him. Huo Sui Cheng took the empty bottles and silently left the room. Huo Xiao Xiao and Yi Qian stared at each other. Uncle Huo is probably still angry. Don't croak. He didn't say anything, which means he's still angry and won. I'll take us for a walk tomorrow. Shut up. Huo Xiao Xiao sighed helplessly as she lay on the bed. My father has such a difficult character. Even now, silently giving us milk, he showed his displeasure. He definitely won't take me for a walk. Well, okay. What difference does it make whether he takes me for a walk or not? We just have to wait a couple more years, and I... He, I'll go for walks myself. The door opened again, and Huo Sui Cheng walked in with two pieces of cake. Cake! Huo Xiao Xiao was inspired. Is this for us? Come here. Huo Xiao Xiao and Yi Qian hurried to get out of bed and took the cake from Huo Sui Cheng. After you eat, brush your teeth and go to bed. Holding a fork in her hand, Huo Xiao Xiao carefully asked, Dad, are you still angry? What do you think? Well, how can you not be angry? Thinking about this, Huo Xiao Xiao cut off a piece of cake with a fork and stood on her tiptoes, handing it to Huo Sui Cheng. Huo Sui Cheng leaned over and accepted Huo Xiao Xiao's treat. The fluffy piece of cake covered in cream melted in his mouth and seemed even sweeter than at dinner. Huo Xiao Xiao looked at her father hopefully. The light from the lamp reflected in her eyes and looked like countless stars in the clear night sky. I did not want, I won't touch daddy's things anymore. Will dad forgive me? If he forgives then, can do anything? Anything? Huo Xiao Xiao gritted her teeth and nodded. She was ready to make a sacrifice for the happiness of the family. Huo Sui Cheng laughed, seeing her serious expression and lightly stroked her head. Okay, dad forgives you. Is it true? Huo Xiao Xiao asked with her eyes wide open. Yes? So will you take Yi Qian and me for a walk? Where do you want to go? Huo Xiao Xiao looked at Yi Qian. Where do you want to go? Huo Sui Cheng in turn looked at Huo Xiao Xiao. Where do you want to go? Huo Xiao Xiao became thoughtful. There weren't many places for children and she did not really want to go to the playground. But in the company of dad, the situation changed dramatically. To the underwater exhibition. Good. Go to bed after you've eaten. Tomorrow morning, I'll take you both to the underwater exhibition. Thank you, dad. Huo Xiao Xiao smiled. Still, her father was easy to calm down. All it took was a piece of cake. After finishing the cake and brushing their teeth, the children went to bed. Late at night, a dark silhouette crept into the room. Huo Xiao Xiao was sleeping, lying on her back, half covered with a blanket, and holding a Rubik's Cube in her hand. Before going to bed, Huo Xiao Xiao taught Yi Qian how to play with a Rubik's Cube, but the children were so tired that they fell asleep. Huo Sui Qing looked at the sleeping Yi Qian and covered him with a blanket then leaned towards Huo Xiao Xiao, intending to take her to his room. At this moment, a call notification appeared on the phone screen, seeing that Yi Yang was calling. Huo Sui Cheng went out to the balcony to answer. I heard that Yi Qian is with you now. Is he playing pranks? When are you coming back? And Yang was silent for a while before answering. <laughs> I've been busy lately, so it will take some more time. What? Come back quickly. Your son misses you. Waking up, Huo Xiao Xiao found herself in Huo Sui Cheng's bed, she had no idea how she ended up here. Has Yao Xiao woken up yet? An Zhao asked as she entered the room. Huo Xiao Xiao, with disheveled hair, sat on the edge of the bed and yawned. I am still sleepy? Aunt Zhao stroked her cheek and smiled. Get up quickly. The master wants to take you to the aquarium. Oceanarium? Huo Xiao Xiao perked up and immediately cast aside all drowsiness and jumped out of bed. Aunt, help me get dressed. The aquarium is waiting for me. As I was told, you wake up much faster when you are getting ready to go somewhere. Where is dad? Mr. Ho is waiting for you downstairs. Yi Qian has already woken up, only you are still sleeping. Hurry, hurry, hurry! An Zhao excitedly hurried Huo Xiao Xiao, feeling as if she was being released from prison. Without having time to get dressed and wash, Huo Xiao Xiao ran down the stairs, 
Good morning, grandfather. Good morning, dad. Good morning, Yi Tian. Yi Tian woke up early and was already having breakfast, sitting at the table with Huo Suicheng and Mr. Huo. You're already full of energy this early, Mr. Ho said and raised his mug of milk as a sign of greeting. Huo Xiao Xiao smiled and climbed onto the chair. Today, dad will take us to the aquarium. Will grandfather come with us? No, grandfather will not go, but you go. But promise me that you will not misbehave. Run around and eat without asking, okay? Okay, grandfather, be calm. I will look after Yi Chen and dad. Mr. Huo squeezed Huo Xiao Xiao's face. If you are so smart, then grandpa has nothing to worry about. Huo Xiao Xiao ate breakfast and drank a mug of milk. Seeing how carefree Huo Xiao Xiao was, Huo Sui Ching wiped her mouth with a napkin. Eat more slowly. Dad, why did I sleep in your room at night? Mr. Huo and Yi Qian turned to Huo Sui Ching. You walk in your sleep. It's normal for children, Huo Sui Ching replied, sipping the milk. Huo Xiao Xiao, holding a fork in her hand, looked at her father in bewilderment. Am I sleepwalking? At such an early age, really, why didn't I know? Does he walk in his sleep? Mr. Ho asked worriedly. Is this true? Don't worry, this is normal for children. It will pass with time, Huo Sui Cheng replied, and then turned to Huo Xiao Xiao. Do you know what it means to sleepwalk? Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head. It means that you run into your dad's room in a dream and don't remember it. What? Mr. Huo became worried. If Huo Xiao Xiao sleepwalks, then it's not safe for her to sleep alone. Sui Cheng, let her sleep with you for now. Watch her at night and wait until she stops sleepwalking. Huo Sui Cheng frowned and looked awkwardly at Huo Xiao Xiao. Behave well when you sleep. Huo Xiao Xiao sighed reluctantly. After breakfast, Mr. Huo asked Huo Sui Cheng several times to check the things he would take with him. Huo Sui Cheng had never looked after two children before. The situation was unsafe, so it was worth inviting An Zhao and Xiao Wu to keep an eye on them, just in case. On weekends, the traffic flow increased, and the trip to the aquarium, which usually took an hour, stretched into two. Huo Xiao Xiao and Yi Qian sat in their children's chairs and played with a Rubik's Cube. Yi Qian followed her instructions, but he still couldn't learn to play. Huo Xiao Xiao reached out to Yi Qian and took the cube to show it again. Look, the intersection of the horizontal and vertical lines is called a cross. Now let's turn it like this. Well, now you understand? Huo Sui Ching overheard Huo Xiao Xiao Dot's explanation and doubt crept into his thoughts. Who taught you this? For a two or three year old child to solve a Rubik's Sussex cube so deftly, the teacher taught me? Huo Xiao Xiao tried to push away the responsibility. And you learn so quickly, it's very simple. Like this, like this, like that, that says it ready. Huo Sui Cheng still would not be able to look into Huo Xiao Xiao's head and find out what was going on there. So he left the questions. After all, there are many gifted children who are interested in the Rubik's S cube. However, Yi Chen was clearly puzzled. Yi Chen twirled the Rubik's cube and stopped again. I still don't seem to understand. It's normal. Practice more and you'll understand. Sit up straight. Huo Sui Cheng reminded the children. Huo Xiao Xiao sighed and straightened up in her chair. The traffic jam near the intersection finally cleared up, and after half an hour, the Bentley slowly pulled into the parking lot. On weekends, there were a lot of visitors to the aquarium. Parents and children walked here and there. The children laughed, shouted, took pictures, and demanded tasty treats. Huo Xiao Xiao sat in Huo Sui Cheng's arms, and Aunt Zhao grabbed Yi Qian tightly. When they entered the aquarium, Huo Xiao Xiao saw the huge water rides and was eager to try them out, however. Even if she really wanted to, she would not be allowed in because of her height. Huo Sui Cheng became worried when he saw Huo Xiao Xiao's reaction. Dad, let me go? Huo Xiao Xiao asked, swinging her legs. Huo Sui Cheng looked around at the crowd gathered in the aquarium and frowned. Just don't run away. No one will look for you if you get lost. Got it? The man let Huo Xiao Xiao off his hands. Having gained her freedom, the girl immediately dragged Yi Qian to an ice cream card, decorated with images of seals. Aunt, give me three horns. Yi Qian, what kind of ice cream do you want? I want it. Chocolate? Yes. Auntie, give me chocolate, strawberry, and mango. Huo Xiao Xiao asked and leaned towards Yi Qian's ear. Are you going to give me a bite later? I'll only bite once. Okay. Huo Sui Cheng and An Zhao followed the children. The ice cream girl looked at the children standing in front of the cart and the calm, pleasant-looking man who approached them and immediately perked up. Children, you only took three cones? Maybe you forgot someone. I almost forgot about Dad and Aunt Zhao, Huo Xiao Xiao said, turning around. Huh. Aunt, give me five horns. Dad will pay. Huo Sui Cheng came closer and grabbed Huo Xiao Xiao by the ear. You take a lot. What if ice cream gives you diarrhea? Three would be enough. Three? Huo Xiao Xiao raised her head. Daddy won't be there. Huo Sui Cheng didn't deny it. But when the ice cream was ready, 
Kuo Xiaoxiao understood what her father meant. One for Yi Chen, one for An Zhao, and one for him. Huo Sui Cheng took Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms and handed her the ice cream. Children should not eat a lot of cold things. I allow you to eat only half? What about Yi Chen? He's older than you. And Zhao smiled. I won't eat. Huo Xiao Xiao can eat mine if he wants, she said, handing her horn to Huo Xiao Xiao. Thank you, aunt. Huo Xiao Xiao reached for ice cream, but Huo Sui Cheng prevented her from taking the coveted cone. Aunt Zhao, eat yourself. Xiao Xiao will only have half. Huo Xiao Xiao glanced at her father. Huo Sui Cheng raised his eyebrows. Don't you want to? Then dad will eat it himself. Huo Xiao Xiao took a bite of ice cream and asked, Dad, where are we going? To the aquarium. What's so interesting about it? Sea animals? Huo Xiao Xiao tried to distract Huo Sui Cheng with questions in order to quickly eat the ice cream. Who are sea animals? Sharks, turtles, jellyfish, and many sea fish. What is a jellyfish? Huo Xiao Xiao asked, having already eaten half of the ice cream. Huo Sui Cheng looked at her and snatched the cone. You are only allowed to eat half, but it will remain uneaten. Huo Xiao Xiao pouted. There won't it be any left, answered Huo Sui Cheng, and took a couple of bites of ice cream. Dad will eat it. My father took the food from me. What a disgrace. I want to go down. Huo Xiao Xiao kicked her legs. Huo Sui Cheng let her down. Yi Chen quietly walked up to her and whispered in her ear, Don't be angry. I left you my ice cream. I didn't even touch it. Here you go. The hot weather melted the sharp corners of the ice cream, making it look like cartoon turd. The back of Yi Chen's hand was stained with melted ice cream. Yi Chen, you are so kind. Huo Xiao Xiao was delighted, and looking back at her father to make sure that he was not looking, she took a couple of bites of the ice cream in Yi Chen Se's hand. Huo Sui Cheng glanced at Huo Xiao Xiao and noticed the chocolate stains around his mouth. He was both angry and found it funny. Huo Xiao Xiao, wipe your mouth when you finish eating Yi Chen. Huo Xiao Xiao was discovered, but she didn't stop and grabbed Yi Chen's hand and stuffed her mouth with the remaining ice cream. That's it. Aunt Zhao immediately leaned over to Huo Xiao Xiao and wiped her mouth with a napkin, then leaned over to Yi Chen and wiped the ice cream stains off her hand. Seeing that her father was about to scold her again, Huo Xiao Xiao quickly dragged Yi Qian to the entrance of the aquarium. Sir, Aunt Zhao turned to Huo Sui Cheng. They came here to have fun, so don't that be too strict with them? Huo Sui Cheng looked at her helplessly and remained silent. There was a long line at the entrance to the aquarium, but it was not necessary to line up at the VIP entrance. When Huo Xiao Xiao and Yi Qian ran to the front of the line, the visitors noticed them and Huo Sui Cheng walking behind them. The visitors secretly took out their phones and took pictures of them. Did you see this? These children are so cute. And the father follows them, right? Handsome. The kids are so much like him. Hearing the negotiations in the queue, Huo Sui Cheng couldn't help but frown. Father of two? Yi Qian's father? Huo Xiao Xiao noticed that Huo Sui Cheng had fallen behind them and stopped and called out to him. Dad, hurry up. Look, the visitors, negotiations continued. She really is his daughter. But why does my father seem familiar as if I've already seen him? Have you already seen him? I don't know where and when, but it seems to me. Oh, I remembered. How could I forget? And who is it? This is my boss. Negotiations in the crowd immediately stopped. Following the guide, Huo Xiao Xiao and the others entered the tunnel. Entering the tunnel, the girl was mesmerized. Behind the glass, a deep blue was visible. The shadows of the waves cast by the lighting were reflected on the sand, and marine life swam through the tunnel. Huo Xiao Xiao had already been to the aquarium, but she was still amazed by what she saw. She went to the wall, touched the glass, and felt the coolness of the water. Suddenly, a turtle swam up to her. She's beautiful, Huo Xiao Xiao said, pointing to the turtle. Yi Qian, do you know who this is? Turtle? Yi Qian nodded. Do you know how long she lived? Yi Qian shook his head. A thousand years. Really? Yi Qian asked, his eyes widening. Didn't you watch the adventures of the turtle? That old turtle looks exactly like this one. She lived for a thousand years, so this one probably lived the same amount. Yi Qian nodded in understanding. Huo Sui Cheng shook his head and laughed when he heard Huo Xiao Xiao's naive reasoning. There was a click. An Zhao took a photo of two children standing near the tunnel wall and talking about the turtle. Huo Sui Cheng destroyed his daughter as misconceptions. This is a different turtle. She is only a little over 30 this year. The real thousand-year-old turtle is further away. Really, Yi Qian, come on, I'll show you the thousand-year-old tortoise. With these words, Huo Xiao Xiao dragged Yi Qian forward. Slow down, Huo Sui Cheng called out to her. Dad, hurry up, Yin, she answered him. The further the company moved along the tunnel, the larger the space in it became. Sculptures began to appear behind the glass, and the number of sea animals was replenished with larger sharks, jellyfish, and colorful fish. 
Yi Chen, look at that big fish. This is a blue shark. Pretty, huh? Beauty, Yi Chen answered, frowning. Do you know what that colorful fish is called? I don't know. It's called rainbow. Look how many flowers she has. The guide standing nearby smiled. What a smart child. This fish is indeed called a rainbow fish, but its full name is rainbow angelfish. Rainbow angelfish? Kuo Xiao Xiao asked and turned to her father. Huh? Dad, this fish is very beautiful. Is it possible to have one at home? Yes. Kuo Xiao Xiao didn't expect her father to agree so quickly and couldn't believe her ears. Really? The shark is also beautiful. We can take her too if you want. And before Huo Xiao Xiao could say yes, Huo Sui Ching added, But you will have to feed her. Huo Xiao Xiao fell silent. She knew that her father would not agree so easily. Xiao Xiao, go to Yi Qian. Now Aunt Zhao will take a photo of you. Fine. Huo Xiao Xiao was delighted and hugged Yi Qian Si's shoulders. The children posed for a photograph, pressing their faces together. Dad, let me take a picture of you. Do you know how? Of course I can. All you have to do is press a button. To prove her abilities, Huo Xiao Xiao took the camera from Aunt Zhao and ran three to four meters away. Since Huo Xiao Xiao was not tall enough, she could only shoot from a bottom-up perspective. At the same time, Huo Sui Cheng had long legs. And when Huo Xiao Xiao looked at the camera screen, the entire photo was covered with his legs. Dad, smile! Huo Sui Cheng looked at the camera and raised his eyebrows. Huo Xiao Xiao looked out from behind the camera and pointed at her father. Dad, make your mouth smile! Huo Sui Cheng had no choice but to lift the corners of his lips with his fingers. Dad, you should smile like that, Huo Xiao Xiao said, lowering the camera and pointing at herself, showing two rows of rare baby teeth. Smile like me, show your teeth, just take a photo. No, Huo Xiao Xiao snapped with a serious look. Dad, smile quickly. Huo Sui Cheng rarely smiled. In the few photos in which he was present, there was not even a hint of a smile. He looked at the camera and tried to tense the muscles at the corners of his mouth. In the end, he sighed and walked up to Huo Xiao Xiao. Okay, now daddy will take a photo of you? Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed the camera strap and, reaching for it, forced Huo Sui Cheng to sit down and then extended her hand to him and grabbed his mouth. Smile? To Huo Sui Cheng, a uh, surprise, Huo Xiao Xiao, the soft hands lifted the corners of his lips. The tense lips relaxed and formed a slight curve. Even his gaze melted and, acquiring warmth, created the illusion of love and kindness. Huo Xiao Xiao took a step back and took this valuable photo. Did you take a photo of me? Yes, the photo is ready. Dad smiles wonderfully. Huo Sui Cheng looked at the photo and found it difficult to recognize himself. The company continued moving through the tunnel. The space became even wider, and more and more sculptures and structures appeared behind the glass. Dad, look, there's a mermaid. An aquarium employee in a blue mermaid costume swam freely behind the transparent wall of the tunnel. From time to time, she swam near the wall to greet the children. Huo Xiao Xiao waved to the mermaid, who swam up to her and blew out a bubble of air, which gradually took on the shape of a heart. Huo Xiao Xiao smiled at her and blew her a kiss. Children, have you heard the fairy tale about the mermaid? The guide asked with a smile. The guide smiled. Children, have you heard the fairy tale about the little mermaid? Dad told me? Huo Xiao Xiao answered and turned to Yi Chen. Yi Chen, did you hear? No. Do you want to listen? I'll tell you. Okay. Huo Xiao Xiao cleared her throat and began, a long time ago, Seven mermaids lived at the bottom of the sea, and the youngest of them was the most beautiful. One day, the youngest went to the surface of the water and saved the prince. Yi Qian listened attentively to the story. Finally, before dawn, the little mermaid turned into sea foam and disappeared. From what he heard, Yi Qian saw his face shrank into a heap. Is the little mermaid dead? Why did the prince turn out to be such a scoundrel? Yes, such a scoundrel. And the little mermaid has such a tragic fate. In order to save the prince and be with him, she lost her voice, tail, and dagger which her sisters brought her from the witch. She refused to harm the prince and chose to die. But I can't harm myself like this little mermaid, right, Dad? That's right, answered Huo Sui Cheng. Yi Qian frowned in puzzlement. But where is the little mermaid's father? The sisters gave their beautiful hair to the witch. Why didn't her father help her? Didn't he love her? Huo Xiao Xiao thought, this is a good question, but it should have been asked to Hans Christian Andersen himself. I don't know, but her father wouldn't love her anyway, right? She left her relatives for the sake of others. Her father definitely didn't love her for this. If the little mermaid had not disappeared, he would definitely have broken her leg. More precisely, a tail. The mermaid behind the glass swam among schools of fish. The light of the lamps and the waves created bizarre patterns on the sand. Swimming away from the tunnel wall, she approached the sculpture standing on the sand. The sculpture represented a large figure of a man with a trident in his hand. 
Huo Xiaoxiao looked at Huo Sui Cheng indignantly. Dad, why didn't the mermaid's father save her? Didn't he love her? Why didn't you help her? Was he angry that she hurt herself for the sake of others? Or because the sisters sacrificed their hair and the prince didn't care what happened to her? After a long silence, Huo Sui Cheng looked at the sculpture standing at the bottom of the tunnel and took Huo Xiao Xiao into his arms. This is the father of the little mermaid, he said. The father of the little mermaid? Huo Xiao Xiao was surprised. Didn't I tell you the ending of the fairy tale? The little mermaid turned into sea foam. That's the end, isn't it? It wasn't that her father didn't love her or didn't want to help her. He wasn't angry that she hurt herself for the sake of others. He loved the little mermaid and therefore did not want to control her. When the little mermaid turned into sea foam, he swam to the witch and asked to be turned into a statue in exchange for saving his daughter. Huo Xiao Xiao was amazed. Did the little mermaid regret it when she was reborn? Yes, she did. She kissed her father and said that she realized the mistake she had made. Since then, she has been swimming at the bottom and guarding the statue of her father. Then will the little mermaid's father wake up? No. Why? Because making any decisions entails consequences. As long as the little mermaid has a father, no one will harm her. But her father is dead. He will not be able to protect her. Thanks to this story, the little mermaid has grown and will not allow anyone to harm her. Dad, Huo Xiao Xiao whispered while kissing Huo Sui Cheng. Are all fathers like this? Yes, all fathers are like this. The aquarium that Huo Xiao Xiao and the others came to was the largest in City C, covering an area of more than 30 hectares and including more than 40 attractions. On weekends, it was literally flooded with visitors. A special feature of this aquarium was the presence of restaurants. Despite the high cost of food, parents were ready to provide their children with the best. At lunchtime, crowds of visitors formed in restaurants. Sometimes there was a long queue and demand significantly exceeded supply. This time too, a queue of children and parents formed near one special themed restaurant. I told you, an indignant voice was heard in the queue. Let's stop by the cafe and have a fast food snack. But no, you have to come here. But fast food doesn't have enough nutrients. Chen Kian is still growing and should eat properly. Be patient a little longer. Dad, Chen Kian is hungry. Chen Kian, calm down, wait a little longer. It's almost our turn. Mom took milk with her. Here, have a drink to calm your stomach. The woman pulled out a bottle of milk from the stroller and gave it to her daughter. Oh, so this is your daughter? How cute. The girl standing next to her in line admired when she saw such an adorable child. Yes, this is my daughter. Her name is Chen Kian. Listen, Chen Kian, you were given a compliment. What should I say? The girl named Chen Kian clenched her arms and, holding the bottle, silently looked at her fan. Sorry, she a little shy. This is normal for children of this age. My son is the same. He doesn't say a word in public. How old is your daughter? A little more than two. So small. This restaurant is one of the most popular in the aquarium. If you arrive too late, you'll have to stand in line. It's even harder for children. If you don't take milk or something else with you for a snack, they may not be able to stand it. But don't worry, you won't have to wait too long. I was here last week. In the middle of the conversation, two restaurant employees walked out to the assembled line. Well, it seems it's time to give your number. The woman smiled. So, which one do you have? We have 103. So I'm a little late. Mine is 115. The visitors waited in line, but the restaurant staff never asked them to name their numbers. One of the visitors, losing patience, took a step forward. Excuse me, are there any free seats? I'm sorry, the restaurant employee smiled, but there are no empty seats right now. You'll have to wait a little longer. I've already been waiting for a long time. My son is hungry. Why am I still waiting? I'm really sorry. Understand that these are the hours when restaurants have the most customers. After these words, the line burst into indignation, but the restaurant employee kept a smile on his face. Several customers entered the restaurant, after which the waiter approached Huo Sui Ching and company. Excuse me, are you Mr. Huo? Huo Sui Ching nodded, holding Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms. Come on in! Seeing Huo Sui Ching and the others entering the restaurant unhindered, the customers standing in line became even more indignant. What kind of restaurant do you have? Why do we have to wait so long while others jump in? We apologize to everyone present, but he is a member of our aquarium club. Member of the club? I'm also in the VIP category. Dear, he is a member of the club, so I'm sorry, but you will have to wait a little. Without waiting for the visitor's answer, the waiter entered back into the restaurant. Well, what kind of attitude towards customers? Aren't we all VIPs? Not at all. The waiter said that a club member and a VIP are different categories. What's the difference? You only have a VIP pass, and this citizen paid an entrance fee of half a million yuan and another hundred thousand for membership in the club for a year in advance. In response to the explanation, surprised gasps were heard from the crowd. Pay the entry fee of 500,000 yuan 
and pay an additional 100,000? What a waste. One of the visitors was amazed. This rich man spent so much money, but how many times a year does he come here? Dad, why aren't they letting us in? Chen Qian asked in surprise, because someone took a seat in advance, but dad forgot to take it, so they don't let us in. Then don't forget to take a table next time. Okay, I won't forget. Have you finished your milk? I finished it, answered Chen Qian and returned the bottle to her mother. Mom, I finished my drink. Mom, what's wrong with you? Noticing how gloomy his wife's expression was, Father Yan Qian took her hand and gently asked, What's the matter, Wenxin? Are you hungry? I'm fine. Ji Wenxin shook her head, trying to hide the panic in her eyes. I'm just tired from a long walk. Maybe we should go to another restaurant. I didn't think there would be so many people here. Her husband tried to reassure her. It's okay, Ji Wenxin answered and smiled weakly. Huo Xiaoxiao, having been in the aquarium since the morning, was also hungry. She had a weakness for fast food, but her father did not approve of it. And besides, it was not in vain that they had come all the way around the aquarium. Unlike the entrance to the restaurant, the room itself was quiet and spacious, and the huge floor-to-ceiling windows offered views of the most significant objects of the park. Huo Xiaoxiao lay down on the table and watched her father order. Damn, I can't believe I'm not allowed to eat fried chicken and burgers when I visit a theme park. Instead, I am forced to eat everything clean, healthy, and nutritious. What a shame. Steamed eggs with crab, wild yellow croaker, steamed grouper with anchovy and mushrooms, abalone marinated in sake, milk stewed in abalone sauce, four servings of sirloin steak, three servings medium rare, and one medium bitter asparagus, vegetable salad, three glasses of orange juice, and one glass of water. The waiter listed the ordered dishes. Mr. Ho, would you like anything else besides this? Fried chicken, Huo Suicheng replied, looking at Huo Xiaoxiao. For Huo Xiaoxiao, this was a pleasant surprise. Dad, you and Yi Chen are only allowed to take one piece each. None. Oh. Huo Xiaoxiao sighed sadly. Although the restaurant was packed with customers, orders were served quickly, and soon the table was filled with dishes. At this moment, Huo Sui Cheng's phone rang. I should answer. An Chao, look after the children, he said, getting up from the table. Don't worry about them. After Huo Sui Cheng walked away, Huo Xiaoxiao looked at the portion of fried chicken and set aside a few pieces for Yi Tian and Zhao and herself. After eating one piece, she reached for the second, but Aunt Zhao stopped her. Xiao Xiao, the master said to eat only one piece. Aunt, and I want another piece. Dad won't know anyway. It won't work that way. It's bad for you to overeat. It's not harmful. While Aunt Zhao wasn't looking, Huo Xiao Xiao took another piece. Xiao Xiao, Aunt Zhao reprimanded her. This is the last piece. In fact, this piece was far from the last. Xiao Xiao. And Zhao pulled her back again and looked at her indignantly. I'll take another piece. Dad won't know. Don't eat anymore. After waiting for two years, Huo Xiaoxiao couldn't afford to miss the chance to eat fried chicken. Auntie, I've never eaten this before. Let me eat. You'll still have time to eat later. And I want it now, now? Huo Xiaoxiao began to chew faster, and the chopsticks clicked in her hand. And Zhao couldn't control her, so she decided to scare her. You've already eaten all the chicken. Don't cry when Mr. Huo finds out about this. Until Auntie tells you Dad won't know. And Chen, don't say anything either. Another piece, and another, and another. Huo Xiaoxiao learned a lesson from her past mistakes, and wiping her mouth with a napkin, turned to the waitress. Auntie, take away the empty plate and bring another portion of chicken. Okay. Yi Chen took a piece of chicken from his plate and put it on Huo Xiaoxiao's plate. Here's another piece for you. I didn't touch it. Yi Chen, you are so kind. While Huo Xiaoxiao was devouring fried chicken, Huo Sui Cheng who was on the balcony of the VIP area at that time, finished the phone conversation. Mr. Ho, a gentle, timid voice was heard from behind. Huo Sui Cheng turned around and saw Ji Wen Xin. There was uncertainty in her eyes. Remember me? Huo Sui Cheng examined her carefully and after much thought clarified, Ji Wen Xin, it's me. I just returned and didn't expect to meet you. What's the matter? Hope lit up in Ji Wen Xin's eyes. I have a question. That girl. Huo Sui Cheng's expression was indifferent as if he was talking to an ordinary stranger. My daughter, he replied. Ji Wenxin was happy for a moment, but her surprise gradually faded due to Huo Sui Ching's indifference. How did she live all these years? Good. Ji Wenxin bit her lip. Because of my brother, you have problems. I already told him not to bother you anymore. You are more reasonable than your brother. Mr. Huo, I was forced to do this, but I can. Ms. Ji, I think that in your current situation, it is worth refraining from making any requests. I know, but I'm still her. Xiao Xiao never asked about her mother. If she asks one day, I'll tell her. But for now, I don't want her to find out about you from anyone. 
Huo Sui Cheng interrupted her without hesitation. He had no compassion for the woman standing in front of him. He rarely looked at situations from the perspective of others and did not seek to understand their hardships. If it weren't for that night at the hotel three years ago, they probably wouldn't have crossed paths again. Ji Wenxin lowered her head in embarrassment. I understand. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Ho. Huo Sui Cheng walked past her with a stern face. Ji Wenxin never thought that she would see him again after three years. She thought about that fateful night three years ago and the separation that broke her heart two years ago, and she didn't know if she had done the right thing. Returning to the VIP area, Huo Sui Cheng heard Aunt Zhao saying something. Xiao Xiao, if the master finds out you want to be happy? Huo Sui Cheng raised his eyebrows and looked at Huo Xiao Xiao. What is it that I don't know? Nothing like that. I want ice cream, but my aunt forbids me. Exactly? Huo Sui Cheng asked as he sat down at the table and looked at Aunt Zhao. Huo Xiao Xiao quietly clenched her hands and looked at Aunt Zhao with pleading eyes. Yes, Xiao Xiao was begging for ice cream? She sighed helplessly. You already ate this morning. Aren't you afraid that your stomach will hurt? Huo Xiao Xiao tried to restrain herself and whispered in her mind, Don't eat, don't eat. Huo Sui Ching glanced at the portion of chicken that seemed to have not even been touched. Why didn't you eat? She was waiting for dad. Huo Sui Ching looked at the untouched plate of fried chicken again and couldn't believe that he had such a decent daughter. Have you really not eaten fried chicken? I was waiting for dad? Huo Xiao Xiao calmly repeated, without even blushing. Huo Sui Cheng looked at Aunt Zhao, but she only smiled sluggishly, then turned her gaze to Yi Qian, and he hurried to lower his head. Looking intently at Huo Xiao Xiao, he handed her a piece of chicken. Eat. Thank you, Dad. Huo Xiao Xiao avoided being exposed and sighing in relief, took her chopsticks and served a soft piece of fish to Aunt Chao. Auntie, eat? Okay. Hey, <laughs> you eat too. Even though Huo Xiao Xiao had already eaten a whole plate of fried chicken, she still shamelessly stared at Huo Sui Cheng. Dad, can I have another piece? Only one. This is the last one. Thank you, Dad. Huo Xiao Xiao took the chicken leg and, like a hamster, stuffed her mouth with meat. Having gnawed the leg, Huo Xiao Xiao wisely decided to refuse the additional portion. After a whole plate of chicken, there would still be no more room for it. Dad, I'm full. Aren't you hungry? Why did you eat so little? I'm full, Dad. Now you will eat too. Huo Xiao Xiao felt discomfort in her stomach. This time, she definitely overate and already felt the side effects of her greed. Huo Xiao Xiao realized that her small body was unable to digest so much fat. Soon the company finished dinner and the waiter brought the bill. Mr. Huo, your bill was 23,528 win. Huo Sui Cheng usually did not review the bill, so he immediately handed the waiter a bank card. Yes, one moment. Having risen, Huo Sui Cheng accidentally glanced at the bill. He was used to reading text out of the corner of his eye, so he noticed that the order included two servings of chicken. Two portions? Huo Sui Cheng looked at the bill. Why does it say two servings of chicken? He asked, looking at Huo Xiao Xiao. I don't know. <laughs> Xiao Xiao, do you want me to call the waiter? Huo Xiao Xiao fell silent, and at that moment, the same waitress entered the VIP area. When the door opened, Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed Yi Qian and ran away. Who Xiao Xiao? Xiao Xiao, stay where you are. Huo Sui Cheng took the bank card and followed the children. The restaurant hall was filled with visitors. Huo Xiao Xiao dragged Yi Qian towards the exit. Xiao Xiao, don't run away. When Uncle Ho asks, I will say that I ate it myself. No. Do you think my dad is that stupid? He knows that I ate it. We should leave quickly before it gets blown in. Suddenly, a little girl came out from around the corner. Huo Xiao Xiao did not have time to stop, and the couple crashed into her at full speed. The girl flew back and sat on the floor, and Huo Xiao Xiao tripped over Yi Chen and fell with him. Ooh, it hurts! The girl cried. Qian Qian, what is it? Her mother immediately came to her and took her in her arms. They crashed into me, Qian Qian said through tears, pointing at Huo Xiao Xiao and Yi Chen. Did you crash? Are you hurt? It hurts! The woman looked at Huo Xiao Xiao, frowning. Whose child are you? Why are you running around like crazy? Where are your parents? Yi Qian helped Huo Xiao Xiao get up and looked at the woman. Sorry, sorry, auntie, we didn't mean to. Huo Xiao Xiao added, where are your parents? How can you run around the hall when there are so many people here? Don't you know it's dangerous? Both Qian and Huo Xiao Xiao fell silent. It's okay, Qian Qian, don't cry, the woman reassured her daughter. Qian Qian pointed to her legs. It hurts. Stop crying, Qian Qian, your legs are fine. And Zhao came up from behind. Xiao Xiao, why are you running around like that? Be careful, you might fall. And I fell, Huo Xiao Xiao answered upset, turning around to look at her. Where did you fall? Let me see. I hit my head, but it doesn't hurt. Yi Chen also fell. Yi Chen, are you hurt? 
Yi Qian shook his head, and we accidentally bumped into this aunt's daughter. Aunt Xiao looked at the woman holding the child. I'm sorry, is your daughter okay? So you are theirs? I am their nanny? What hooligans they are, the woman said, displeased. It's dangerous to run when there are so many people here. What's going on? A low voice was heard. Huo Sui Ching arrived at the scene and coldly looked at Ji Wen Shin holding the child. Xiao Xiao accidentally bumped into this girl. An Zhao hastened to explain the situation. Did you apologize? Huo Sui Ching asked, looking at Huo Xiao Xiao. She apologized. Then let's go. Without looking at Ji Wen Xin, Huo Sui Ching walked up to Huo Xiao Xiao and picked her up. Are you hurt? Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed her head and winced. I hit my head? Don't run in the crowd anymore. Hmm? The girl who was knocked down by Huo Xiao Xiao was still crying. Huo Xiao Xiao looked over Huo Sui Cheng's shoulder. For some reason, Huo Xiao Xiao had an inexplicable feeling in her heart when she saw this woman with the child. It was a familiar feeling, as if she had already seen her. Huo Sui Cheng and the company were already leaving the restaurant, but Ji Wen Xin stood in the same place with a pale face. The first time, Ji Wen Xin was too far away from Huo Xiao Xiao, but now that Huo Sui Cheng held her daughter in his arms, she was able to see the girl up close. Wenchen, what happened? Why is Qian crying? Asked the man who came to her. Dad, exclaimed Qian. The man immediately took Qian in his arms. What is it, Qian? Now, someone bumped into me. It hurts. Who crashed into you? <laughs> I don't know. They've already left. Gone? The man turned his gaze to Ji Wenchen. <laughs> Wenchen, what's going on? Ji Wenchen, at a loss, took a deep breath and smiled tightly. Nothing like that. It's simple. Just two children running around the hall crashed into her. Chan Kian is fine. The man had nothing to say about this. Okay, it doesn't matter. I've reserved a seat in the VIP area. Let's go. Okay, Ji Wenxin nodded distantly. Huo Sui Cheng, holding Huo Xiao Xiao in his arms, silently left the restaurant. Huo Xiao Xiao was lying on his shoulder. Her heart was filled with excitement. Noticing Huo Xiao Xiao's change in mood, Huo Sui Cheng, who planned to talk to her later, put his hand on her back. What's happened? He asked quietly. Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head. Were you hurt? Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head again. Huo Sui Cheng fell silent. He knew how important the mother's presence was for a child. He was curious to know what Huo Xiao Xiao was thinking when she saw the mother holding her crying daughter and comforting her. Maybe she was jealous. Maybe she was wondering why others have mothers and she doesn't. What if she asks where her mother is? Are you sleepy? And Zhao asked Huo Xiao Xiao. Do you want to sleep? Huo Sui Ching repeated with warmth in his voice. Huo Xiao Xiao nodded. Let's stay at the hotel. On the territory of the Oceanarium, there was a unique hotel, the main feature of which was an underwater room. Behind the curtains hid a blue sea, separated by an inch-thick glass, behind which schools of colorful fish swam. Huo Xiao Xiao did not have time to admire the features of this room. She lay lazily on the bed, holding her stomach, and not wanting to talk about anything. She could only accept what she had done. Huo Xiao Xiao regretted eating a whole plate of fried chicken alone, but she decided to keep quiet about it. Otherwise, her father would punish her for ordering an extra portion. Huo Xiao Xiao tossed and turned in bed and reproached herself for her greed. She knew that the child should not eat too much fried food, but she could not resist. Still, the chicken was so delicious. Now Huo Xiao Xiao felt heavy and had no time for games. So the whole day went down the drain? Yi Qian sneaked into the room and climbed onto the bed. Xiao Xiao, what happened to you? Too much fried chicken? I feel sick, Huo Xiao Xiao answered sluggishly. I'll tell Uncle Huo. The girl immediately grabbed Yi Qian. No, you can't tell him. If Dad finds out, he will teach me another lesson. But you feel bad, don't you? I'll just get some sleep and I forbid you to talk about it. Yi Qian became worried. Maybe I should tell Aunt Zhao. No, Aunt will tell Dad. I'm fine, really. I just want to sleep. I heard there will be fireworks in the evening. How about we run them together? Are you sure you'll recover? Definitely. Well, okay, rest. Yi Qian nodded awkwardly. Finally, turning away from Yi Qian, Huo Xiao Xiao exhaled in relief and looked at the ceiling. Would she really have to wait for the food to digest? If so, she will miss the entire evening and not watch the fireworks. No, she couldn't give up games. She needed a plan. Huo Xiao Xiao had overeated more than once. She should either take drugs to speed up digestion or burp. It was impossible to get the drugs, so there was only one way left. Huo Xiao Xiao opened her eyes and looked around. There was no one around. She jumped out of bed and walked barefoot into the toilet. After thinking about her decision near the toilet, she decided to put her hand in her mouth. It's not that painful to regurgitate the contents of your stomach. Huo Xiao Xiao put her index finger in her mouth and again and again. Nothing happened. Is, is my hand really that small? Why didn't I succeed? Huo Xiao Xiao looked thoughtfully at her short fingers. 
This will not work. We need to find another way. Clutching her stomach, she returned to her room, examined the surrounding objects, and fixed her gaze on the spoon lying on the table. She soon abandoned this method. What if I stab myself in the throat with a spoon? The result is not worth it. After thinking about the situation and not finding a solution, Huo Xiaoxiao returned to bed and held her stomach. However, she was optimistic and decided that perhaps the food would be digested in her sleep. However, after half an hour, the food not only was not digested, but also began to cause even more discomfort. Huo Xiaoxiao got out of bed angrily. This is too much. I just ate fried chicken and now I'm facing these consequences. I'm still a child. What's wrong with being a little greedy? As if other children aren't greedy. It became even harder for her. How will her father perceive her suffering? The room on the second floor was empty. Plumes of smoke slowly floated from the balcony, and a silhouette was visible through the wide open French curtains, fluttering in the wind. Huo Sui Chung stood on the balcony, holding a lit cigarette between his fingers. Clouds of smoke slowly rose and were immediately carried away by the wind. No parent wants their child to have the kind of childhood they experienced themselves. Huo Sui Cheng was no exception. He still remembered the day his mother left the family. From then on, he felt a deep disgust for his father and for those who asked where his mother was, regardless of the intentions of the questioners. Huo Xiaoxiao didn't understand this yet. When she turns three or four years old, she will definitely be asked mockingly why she doesn't have a mother. If Huo Xiaoxiao asked me about her appearance, how would I explain to her that her birth was just an unwanted accident? How can I explain why her mother left her? Old Mr. Ho never answered this question. Should I answer this to Huo Xiaoxiao? Now, having reached maturity, Huo Suicheng understood what his father felt, not knowing how to explain. Children have high emotional sensitivity. There were many mothers and daughters in the park, and Huo Xiaoxiao was probably worried about what she saw. To top it all off, they met Ji Wenxin today. Remembering the gloomy expression on Huo Xiaoxiao's face when leaving the restaurant, he felt angry. Dad, a weak voice was heard from behind. Huo Suicheng turned around in surprise and, seeing Huo Xiaoxiao, put away the cigarette. Why are not you sleeping? What are you doing here? I can't sleep? Huo Xiaoxiao answered painfully. It was windy on the balcony. Huo Suicheng picked up Huo Xiaoxiao and returned to the room. Huo Xiaoxiao wondered why her father was smoking alone on the balcony. People usually smoke when they feel lonely or angry. Be that as it may, my father was in a bad mood. If so, should I continue to anger him? The heaviness in her stomach caused Huo Xiaoxiao great discomfort. After thinking about what had happened several times, she gathered her strength and decided to ask, Dad, why do you smoke? Are you in a bad mood? Well, yes. Why are you in a bad mood? Because of difficulties at work? Huo Suicheng was slightly surprised. How did you know that dad was having difficulties at work? Grandfather told me Ho Yao Xiao tried to calm her father down. Dad, you don't need to worry. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine soon. Don't be angry. Huo Sui Cheng pinched Huo Xiao Xiao's his cheek. Okay, let's not talk about dad. Why aren't you sleeping? Huo Xiao Xiao pouted and looked at Huo Sui Cheng with tears in her eyes, hoping for his pity. It's hard for me? Huo Sui Cheng's heart was filled with sadness. Certainly. There is no child who does not think about his mother. Huo Suicheng didn't want to mention her mother because he didn't know how to talk about her. Xiao Xiao, Dad knows why it's so hard for you, but I want to say, Dad, do you know? Of course Dad knows. You can't hide anything from me. Huo Xiao Xiao was shocked. Come to think of it, Father clearly saw the double portion of chicken on the bill, but did not dare to deal with Huo Xiao Xiao on the spot, probably to save face. So, will you blame me? Why should I blame you? It is not your fault. Huo Xiao Xiao was pleasantly surprised. When did father become so soft? In the restaurant, it seemed like he was about to teach her a lesson, but now he is being so generous. Finally, the father began to behave like a father. Dad, you are so good. Huo Xiao Xiao was touched. She lay down in Huo Sui Cheng Zha's arms and began to confess at length what she had done. Dad, I'm sorry, I really didn't mean to. I've never eaten such delicious chicken before, so when you left for a phone call, I ate the whole plate. I ordered a second plate so you wouldn't notice. I was just greedy. I didn't want to deceive you. Huo Suicheng fell silent, and I asked Aunt Zhao to play along with me. It is not her fault. So that's why it's hard for you? I ate too much fried chicken? Huo Xiao Xiao grabbed her stomach. I can't stomach it. My stomach is swollen and it hurts. Huo Suicheng did not answer. So it wasn't because she saw someone's mother? Huo Suicheng felt a lump in his throat. He thought about what to say, but the words seemed to be stuck in his throat. He smoked so many cigarettes spent so much time thinking, blowing clouds of smoke, just because of a misunderstanding, not knowing about the change in her father's mood, 
Kuo Xiao Xiao continued. Dad, can you buy me something to ease my digestion? I want to take another walk later. Kuo Xiao Xiao looked at Huo Sui Cheng hopefully, but he still didn't answer. His expression lost its tenderness. Kuo Sui Cheng turned pale, clenched his teeth, tensed his chin, and looked as if he wanted to eat Huo Xiao Xiao alive. Huo Xiao Xiao thought about what she had just said, but couldn't figure out what was wrong with her explanation. Why did the father change his face so much? Dad! Huo Sui Cheng pursed his lips for a moment before uttering a single word. You have been silent since we left the restaurant. Is it because you got a stomach ache from fried chicken? Huo Xiao Xiao nodded hesitantly. And only because of this? Is there another reason? Huo Xiao Xiao asked carefully. That girl you bumped into today and her mother. Huo Xiao Xiao immediately became worried. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I won't run away anymore. Huo Sui Cheng stared at Huo Xiao Xiao and took a deep breath. At this moment, he felt as if he was preparing to face his greatest enemy, but he found himself fighting with a handful of children. He was so angry that he even laughed. Hu Xiao Xiao. <laughs> they tell you not to eat ice cream, but you eat a whole cone. They tell you not to eat chicken, but you eat a whole plate. You will contradict your father in everything. So, do you still want to go for a walk? Huo Xiao Xiao looked at him sadly. The father returned to his usual state. Why is that? Just now, he was so gentle with Huo Xiao Xiao and clearly said that he did not blame her. And then when she confessed everything, his mood changed dramatically. Was he pretending to be kind to get me to confess? What deceit? Huo Xiao Xiao got off his hands and was indignant. Dad, you can't break your promise. You are my dad and I am your daughter. If you break your promise, I will follow your example. Huo Sui Cheng laughed irritably again. Huo Xiao Xiao is just an ignorant child. How can she think about all this? Huo Xiao Xiao, why are you better? When did you change so much? Do you remember what dad told you that time you messed up the documents? Grandfather said, grandfather is not here. Huo Xiao Xiao fell silent, listening to another lecture from her father. Calm down, don't panic. This is a big problem and panic will not help here. Huo Xiao Xiao deflated her cheeks and burst into crocodile tears. Other children are allowed to eat fried chicken, but I'm not. Other children are allowed to eat ice cream, but I am not. Dad doesn't scold other children, but he scolds me. Dad, you've been wanting to beat me for a long time, haven't you? If you want, hit me. I won, then tell Grandpa. But now I'm very bad. So can you buy me some medicine first and beat me later? Huo Xiao Xiao felt as if fried chicken was stuck in her throat. The worst part was that she couldn't even burp, and her mouth was filled with the taste of chicken. However, seeing the doubt in her father's eyes, she realized that she had told more than usual. Her father didn't believe her at all. It's true. Dad, touch your stomach. It's so swollen. Huo Xiao Xiao exclaimed and grabbed Huo Sui Cheng's hand and placed it on her stomach. Children usually have a small belly, but Huo Xiao Xiao's belly had turned into a bulging mass, soft and round like a jelly candy. You always had such a belly? Huo Xiao Xiao fell silent. What a stubborn father I have. Then smell it? Huo Xiao Xiao said and burping in Huo Sui Cheng's face pointed to his throat. The fried chicken is stuck in my throat. Sensing the chicken spirit, Huo Sui Cheng frowned and immediately pulled back. You hear it? You hear it? Huo Xiao Xiao opened her mouth wide and leaned forward arrogantly. Huo Sui Cheng closed his daughter's mouth? Will you still be so greedy? Huo Xiao Xiao shook her head. Huo Sui Cheng picked her up and put her in a corner. Stay here while the food is digested. With these words, he headed towards the door. Dad, where are you going? Look for a dust blower. Huo Xiao Xiao was silently alarmed. The door closed. Huo Xiao Xiao stood in the corner staring at the wall, swinging her hands. She rubbed her swollen belly and burped. Time passed, but her father did not return. He wasn't really going to find the dust blower, was he? Did he really decide to beat me while my grandfather was not around? Well, okay, let him just beat me. Huo Xiao Xiao thought about it and sighed obediently. If this helps get rid of the discomfort in the stomach, so be it. Be that as it may, her father always wanted to provide her with a full-fledged upbringing. Perhaps by beating her, he will stop constantly thinking about it. While Huo Xiao Xiao was indulging in thoughts, the door suddenly opened. The girl turned around and immediately burst into tears. And the father finally returned and, most importantly, did not bring a dust blower. Huo Xiao Xiao knew that her father was not so cold and heartless. Come here, I brought you some medicine. Huo Sui Cheng put a pack of pills and a bottle of syrup on the table. Which one do you want? This? Huo Xiao Xiao answered, pointing to the syrup. Huo Sui Cheng pulled out the bottle from the box. Huo Xiao Xiao eagerly grabbed the bottle and put it in her mouth. The syrup did not taste particularly bitter. On the contrary, it was even a little sweet, a strange combination of sweet and bitter, with a pungent medicinal aroma. Huo Xiao Xiao frowned, feeling the bitterness and sweetness on her tongue, and gradually began to swallow the syrup, 
trying to endure its taste. She did not feel better after taking the syrup. On the contrary, she felt a wave of nausea rolling over her. Which is better, medicine or chicken? Chicken. Do you want more? Not anymore. Next time I should eat less, Huo Xiaoxiao thought. It is unknown whether the medicine worked or the placebo effect, but Huo Xiaoxiao felt a little better. Better? It's not so hard for me anymore. Huo Xiaoxiao answered in a sweet voice. Dad is a very good healer. Are you going for a walk today? Huo Xiaoxiao blinked, yawning. She couldn't sleep because of the pain in her stomach. But now, after taking the medicine, she felt sleepy again. No, I want to sleep. Then you can sleep in the room on the ground floor. What about Yi Qian? Aunt Zhao took him for a walk. Oh Huo Suicheng sat on the sofa and began typing on the tablet. Huo Xiaoxiao looked at the screen and saw that almost all the text was in English, which she did not understand yet.